Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter, 81. Between the dark mountains, the roaring wind and rain and the flashing thunder reflected everything in a violent and terrifying way. In the post house behind the white wolf, the businessmen were still immersed in the magic of the peach blossom wine. After they took the liquor, not only did their fatigue disappear, but many of their old diseases healed without medicine. The cheerful atmosphere was noisy in the post house. But when the laughter came out, Lu Hang looked up at the dark night sky and his heart moved. He saw new clouds gathering slowly in the dark. Clouds of lightning and thunder. Soon, a blazing thunder flickered under the night sky. In the roar of terror, the huge thunder fell outside the post office. Boom! A terrible thunder burst, startling all the businessmen in the house. But as soon as they got up, the huge white wolf came in from outside. Lu Hang was calm in the face of everyone's tension. Nothing to worry about. Let's have a rest. Lu Hang calmed the crowd with his words, and then returned to Xiao Ai. The little girl with silver hair and ears is looking at Lu Hang in surprise. She doesn't know why Lord Wolf God wants to drop the heavenly thunder. Lu Hang didn't explain, so he lay down beside the campfire, closed his eyes, and began to absorb the thunder that he had just received. Although Lu Hang only used one heavenly thunder in the mountain before, and he had plenty of heavenly thunders in his body. But now there's nothing to do anyway. It's better to lead another thunder into the body. It is necessary to be fully ready at all times in this dangerous world. In the post house, it was temporarily quiet. Although the excitement of drinking peach blossom wine didn't subside, when they saw the wolf god lying down to rest, they didn't dare make any more noise. They all lay down silently and were ready to sleep. What happened today is amazing. First, they met the fierce beast Shih Tzu that had been entrenched here for decades, and then they got the wine from the wolf god. Everyone was very excited. Even if they lay down, they couldn't sleep. But the wolf god rested not far away, and everyone dared not speak. So next to the campfire, a group of men lay on the ground, staring at each other with wide eyes, but dared not say a word. Such silence lasted until midnight, when the excitement of the crowd gradually subsided, and the group of businessmen finally fell asleep one after another. In the corner, Lu Hang is still absorbing the thunder. It takes hours to absorb even only one piece of thunder. Beside Lu Hang, a little girl with a dark cyan ancient sword on her back sat with her knees crossed and eyes closed, also cultivating. The wind and rain kept beating the eaves and windows of the post house until the second half of the night. And, also faintly, there is an increasingly violent trend. The rainstorm outside the house was violent. Between the dark mountains, something was gradually approaching. When the blazing lightning cut through the sky, you could vaguely see that on the desolate mountain road, there was a red wedding procession walking silently. The harsh swona's sound gradually approached the post office. The little girl next to the fire was the first to open her eyes, startled. The visitors didn't want to hide at all. Even though they were a few miles away, the gloomy and terrifying smell had already spread all over the world, making people feel cold. Xiao Ai looked at the white wolf beside her. Its eyes were shut and they didn't seem to be aware of the outside world. Seeing the wolf god's attitude, the little girl directly stood up and walked towards the door. When the gate of the post house was pushed open, the wind and rain poured in, waking up all the men in the sleeping caravan. They rubbed their sleepy eyes and looked at the direction of the door. They saw a white lightning cut through the sky, and the pale light almost drowned everything. But what followed was not deafening thunder, but a burst of mournful and strange sounds. In the rainstorm outside, something was approaching. And very fast. All the men in the caravan jumped up, looking frightened and couldn't sleep anymore. Swona Swona. The people looked at each other and looked shocked. Is it the Red Lady? Did we run into the Red Lady? Among the people, Hua Feng was silent and his expression was bitter. He subconsciously looked at the little girl at the door. The rumors of the Red Lady were fierce and terrifying. Even when he was in his heyday, he could not escape if he met the Red Lady. 
But now there is a wolf god on the side, maybe. Huafeng struggled to stand up and came out of the door with the crowd. The cold wind was howling and raging in the mountains. Under the eaves of the post house, the little girl with silver hair and animal ears was looking coldly at the direction of the galloping road, without saying a word. When she saw the crowd coming, she asked, May I ask you, what kind of demon is this red lady? Everyone looked at each other, and Huafeng finally explained with a wry smile. In fact, we don't know what the Red Lady is. Though in recent years, rumors of the Red Lady have been circulating in the Fire Pass country. They say that a few years ago, a large family wanted to get married, so they took eight big sedans along with rich betrothal gifts to the girl's home to secure the marriage. But on the way back, the wedding team ran into a natural disaster, and everyone died miserably in the wilderness. The bride died before she got married. Her resentment was hard to resolve, so she turned into a fierce ghost and raged in the wilderness. If a living person meets her, the living person has no chance to survive. It is more terrifying than the fierce and evil beasts. It is said that when the Red Lady appeared, the first thing people would hear would be this sad and strange swona sound. While Huafeng explained, there was already a weird red team coming this way on the dark road. The blazing light of lightning reflected everything in the world to white, and also made everyone in front of the post house see the wedding procession on the galloping road. The bleak bright red suddenly appeared in the mountains. All the people in the wedding procession were dressed in strange red costumes. Both men and women wear blood-red scarves, which cover their faces and make people unable to see their faces. But the strange and stiff steps and the exposed pale skin were suffused with a shivering chill, like walking corpses one after another. The harsh sound was getting closer and closer. Seeing this scene, all the people of the caravan were frightened and subconsciously hid behind the little girl. Standing in the wind outside the post office alone the little girl stared at the approaching wedding procession indifferently. In front of the wedding procession, there was a dark, strange beast, whose body was like an ox, but it was much smaller than an ordinary ox, and its body size was about the size of a dog. The dark chain is worn on the back of the black beast. As the evil beast ran, the chain made a clashing sound. This dark ghost of the evil beast is clearly the soul of Shih Tzu that they met in the mountain before. And the red sedan chair in the wedding procession faintly exudes a breath of terror and evil. Obviously, the evil thing in the sedan chair is the evil that killed Shih Tzu. Chapter, 82 Xiao Ai's expression was cold and impassive. Even though the blood-red and strange wedding procession had an aura far stronger than hers, she was indifferent. And the strange wedding procession came to a stop about five feet away in front of the post office, and then slowly stopped in the panic of everyone's eyes. The two strange figures who walked in front of the team, playing Swona, are now bowing their heads and were no longer making any sound. In the rainstorm, only the Shih Tzu soul, who was chained but was still screaming and struggling, howled angrily at the people outside the post office, as if it was identifying something. Xiao Ai glanced at the sky overhead and found that there was no aura of heavenly thunder clouds in the dark clouds. Probably the wolf god lord led the thunder into the body, and then scattered the heavenly thunder clouds, otherwise, the demon didn't dare to get so close. Coldly looking at the red sedan chair in the wedding procession, the little girl said nothing. And from the blood-red strange sedan chair, there was a cold laughter. Oh. So there are human cultivators here. Hee hee little girl, where are your elders? It's dangerous for a little girl like you to walk in the wilderness. The cold laughter was like fingernails rubbing against the wood, listening made the scalps of the caravan people numb. Although Huafeng insisted on standing next to Xiao Ai, the gloomy and terrifying chill spread, but he had already lost all his cultivation and could not hold on. Seeing this, the little girl stretched out her hand and pulled the pale Huafeng behind her. Then she looked coldly at the Dahanghua bridge in front of her and said. We don't know you at all. Do you want to harm us? The little girl's voice was indifferent, but the content of her words was very naive. Hearing, the evil thing in the sedan chair kept laughing. Haha little girl, you are so naive and interesting. Don't your elders tell you that people outside are dangerous? How dare you wander around alone? Today, Grandma will teach you a lesson. Some people don't need a reason to kill others. 
the evil thing laughed wantonly, and the gloomy aura came face to face. Even with Xiao Ai's obstruction, the caravan crowd turned pale and stiff. In the sedan chair, the evil thing said with a smile. But your face is quite delicate. Unlike these ordinary people, I like it. Well, after I kill you, you can stay with me and be a flower girl in the future ha 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 ha. In the sad laughter of evil things, the gloomy and terrifying aura came overwhelmingly. This evil thing was going to attack. Xiao Ai was surprised, subconsciously stepped back, and said in a hurry, you killed the fierce beast Shi Tzu in the daytime and enslaved its soul. This scene was seen by us, so you let this Shi Tzu bring you to hunt down us. It's all because you're afraid that today's matter will be spread out. Afraid that the outside world will know that the Red Lady has the spell of killing and seizing souls. The little girl's speaking speed was fast to the limit, but in the big red car, a dark chain had flown towards her. Facing the little girl's series of urgent questions, the evil thing in the sedan chair laughed and said, These questions, when you become my thing, I will tell you. Ha ha ha. The wild laughter of evil things spread far away in the mountains. Even the caravan people who didn't understand cultivation could see that this gloomy and strange evil thing was far stronger than the little girl. Everyone subconsciously turned around and looked at the huge white wolf beside the fire. However, in the dim light of the fire, the white wolf was still sleeping with his eyes closed and nothing happened. This time, everyone panicked. Wolf Xian Sheng was about to shout for help. But at this time, the golden light outside the post house flashed, and a figure in white appeared in front of everyone out of thin air. Lu Heng's voice resounded in the wind and rain. Sorry, this girl can't go with you. The blazing lightning lit up the world at that moment, reflecting the man's smile in an inexplicably terrifying way. If you are interested, I can go with you. Ha! Huh. In the sedan chair, the startled voice of evil things sounded. The dark chain that originally flew towards Xiao Ai instantly retracted into the blood-red sedan chair. Looking at the man in white who suddenly appeared in front of the post, the evil thing said in a cold voice, Are you the elder of this little girl? Lu Heng smiled and arched his hand. Your Excellency is from the Green Hell Cave right? I have a lot of connections with the Green Hell Cave now it's also a kind of fate for you and me to meet in the wilderness. Why don't you sit down and chat? I believe there is no hatred in this world that can't be dissolved. In the dark light, Lu Heng has a sincere attitude and a kind smile. Such an elegant person can make people feel good at a glance. But the evil thing in the sedan chair looked at him in disbelief and snorted coldly, pretending since you know the green hell cave, you must be not a good person. Do you want to eat these mortals too? The evil words startled everyone in the caravan. Lu Heng said with a smile, I think there should be many common topics between us. Lu Heng's gentle and calm smile made the evil thing frown slightly. The man in white in front of him smiled kindly, and there was no evil spirit chi around him. At first glance, he was a kind person. But a real good person can never be so kind to it. And this man can also say the name of the green hell cave is he really a special evil cultivator who can hide his evil spirit chi? Thinking like this, the evil things in the sedan chair opened her magic eyes. Then. Poof. In the flower sedan, a dull sound of spitting blood suddenly sounded. The evil thing screamed bitterly and ran away without saying a word. Under the dark night sky, the originally gloomy and terrifying wedding procession was in vain. The bloody sedan chair suddenly rose and fled towards the depths of the wilderness. And the strange figure standing numbly on the galloping road and dressed in red clothes all rushed at Lu Heng at this time, trying to buy time for the escape of the sedan chair. In the sedan chair, the evil thing's heart was extremely frightened, and she wanted to fly away from here immediately. What kind of monster is this smiling man in white? Just a glance. Just a glance. It vomited blood at the mouth, and its evil spirit chi was out of its control, rushing around in its body. It didn't even see what the man in white was. The moment the magic eyes looked, it only saw a surging pale thunder. The terrifying scene like the surge of thousands of thunder, the fierce and peerless power of heaven's punishment, directly ran over its body and mind. It was almost scared to death alive. 
This is definitely not an evil cultivator. Will this kind of existence be related to the Green Hell Cave? Bullshit. In the sedan chair, the evil thing was frightened and ran frantically, completely afraid to reserve. However, although the speed of the red sedan is fast, the thunder in the night sky is faster. At the moment when the evil thing in the sedan car vomited blood and flew away, Lu Hang in front of the post office sighed helplessly, knowing that his plan to seduce the evil thing had failed. Even so, he no longer hides his strength. With a thought, the clouds that had surged in the night sky gathered in an instant, and the dark heavenly thunder clouds appeared under the dark clouds in an instant. The terrifying thunder light flashes in the heavenly thunder clouds. Lu Hang was actually preparing at the moment when the evil thing appeared. He summoned heavenly thunder clouds in the night sky in silence. But in order not to scare the evil thing, Lu Hang has been suppressing the gathering of heavenly thunder clouds for fear of leaking the aura of thunder. Unfortunately, although he suppressed the accumulation and dispersion of heavenly thunder clouds, he could not suppress the heavenly thunder in his body. The evil thing just glanced at him and ran away directly. Hey! Looking at the blood-red sedan chair that fled rapidly in the night sky ahead, Lu Hang sighed wordlessly. A blazing thunder cut through the night sky and fell viciously on the sedan chair. In an instant, the evil spirit Chi flew violently, and the evil thing howled in pain. But without waiting for the evil thing to breathe, the second thunder followed and hit the sedan chair again. The evil spirit Chi in this evil thing's body was hooked up with the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky, directly attracting the most ferocious and brutal thunder. Three thunders directly hit the bloody sedan chair in a row, sending it into the sky where it burst into countless streams of spirit chi, which flowed out into the wind and rain. And the evil thing that guards the ghost has completely disappeared in the thunder. In the end, it didn't even have a chance to beg for mercy. Lu Heng felt helpless in his heart. He had almost deceived the evil thing and then could ask at the location of the Green Hell Cave. The result is still a failure. Hey! It seems that his karma with the Green Hell Cave has not yet arrived. Chapter, 83 In the rainstorm, the strange bridal sedan chair of red burst all over the sky, turning into countless spirit chi surging in all directions. The red lady, who spread terror among the merchants, unexpectedly disappeared. Come quickly, but die faster, so fast that everyone in the business didn't even react, and everything was over. Huafeng stared at everything in front of him. This time, he finally clearly felt the power of heavenly thunder that day. The cultivator's extremely odd and rare thunder unexpectedly appeared in the wilderness, and fell three times in a row, directly killing the strange red lady. It looks like the red lady has done many evil deeds and attracted heaven's wrath. But Huafeng knew that this wasn't a coincidence. This thunder was called by the wolf god. At this moment, Huafeng finally understood why he saw the terrifying scene of ten thousand thunder when peeping at the wolf god the wolf god could control the thunder. He inexplicably looked at Lu Heng with awe, and felt a great shock. On the road, those strange figures that originally rushed towards Lu Heng stopped silently after the sedan car burst into pieces. At this time, a blazing lightning cut through the night sky and turned the shadowy and strange figures outside the post house pale. The scarves on their heads and the red clothes on their bodies gradually fell off and disappeared into the air. Then appeared the original appearances of these ghosts. There are men and women, old and young, most of whom are pale and extremely miserable. All ghosts wear a black chain on their backs like the soul of the Shitsu. But as the evil things that enslaved them disappeared, the black chain gradually became transparent and finally disappeared. Looking at these miserable souls, Lu Heng sighed. The evil thing is dead, and your hatred has disappeared you can dispel now. In the rain, those shadowy ghosts were stunned, and they all woke up. At the moment when all the ghosts regained consciousness, they all issued a miserable howl and cried bitterly. The cry was so sad that even the businessmen couldn't help but tear up. They knew that these ghosts were innocent people who were brutally killed by the Red Lady who then enslaved their souls. In the wind and rain, the ghosts' shrill cries lasted for a long time. Finally, all ghosts cowed out in the direction of Lu Heng, and finally dissipated in low sobs. Even the ferocious beast soul of the Shih Tzu, 
after roaring and breaking away from the black chain on its back, lay on the ground with two hooves and bowed deeply to Luhang, and finally disappeared completely. Outside the post house, dozens of souls dispersed at the same time, raising a cold wind. The businessmen stared at all this, which was the first time they had seen real ghosts. Lu Heng sighed and said, This red lady is so vicious and cruel that all innocent passers-by who ran into it will be killed by her. There are so many victims who are enslaved by her soul alone. I'm afraid there are more people who died tragically who were not enslaved but directly killed. The Green Hell Cave is really an evil organization. Lu Heng sighed and turned to look at the people behind him. I'm afraid I'll bother you to keep tonight a secret. The Green Hell Cave is so evil. If they learn what happened tonight, I'm afraid everyone here will be killed. Lu Hang's words are not alarmist. The businessmen present actually thought of the possibility he said. Even if Lu Hang didn't remind them, these businessmen naturally knew to keep secrets. So everyone saluted seriously, saying, we must keep it a secret and never divulge anything about tonight. Xian Xing hesitated and asked, Lord Wolf God, should we leave here immediately in case the demons of the Green Hell Cave come after us? Xian Sheng was worried that there were other demons of the Green Hell Cave nearby, who came to avenge the Red Lady after her death. However, Lu Heng smiled and said, It doesn't matter. If there are demons chasing us, it's a good thing. Next, if there are demons coming again, you can tentatively say the opposite words before I appear to see if you can get the specific location of the Green Hell Cave. Lu Heng's words stunned everyone in the caravan. Get the specific location of the Green Hell Cave? Xian Sheng looked at Lu Heng in astonishment and asked incredulously, Do you want to destroy the Green Hell Cave? Lu Heng shook his head with a smile and said, I don't know much about the Green Hell Cave how can I destroy such a demon cave alone? But if I can know its specific location, I can take precautions in the future. Lu Heng's words are very modest. It seems that he really doesn't want to get into trouble with the Green Hell Cave. But the caravan people naturally didn't believe it. They all remembered the conversation between the Wolf God and the Red Lady just now. No wonder the Wolf God was so friendly to the demon. He originally wanted to figure out the specific location of the Green Hell Cave unfortunately, the Red Lady was too vigilant and didn't say anything. Xian Sheng and others all saluted with fists, saying, We understand. If there are demons, we will try our best to figure out the location of the Green Hell Cave. Okay, please, Lu Heng smiled and arched his hands at the people. After saying that, his soul disappeared directly under the night sky. When the wolf god left, Xiao Ai also returned to the fire with the dark blue heavenly thunder sword on her back, crossed her knees again and continued her cultivation. The appearance of the red lady didn't affect the little girl's mood. However, the businessmen on one side were not so relaxed. When they returned to the house, they all gathered by the campfire and muttered in a low voice about how to get the position of the Green Hell Cave if they met other demons of the Green Hell Cave. In the end, when everyone reluctantly discussed a result, the light was already shining. The wind and rain in the mountain finally stopped, and the businessmen who had not slept for half a night got up with dark circles under their eyes and were ready to start. And the white wolf, who had been lying beside the fire all night, finally opened his eyes and stood up. The heavenly thunder, which was taken into the body last night, has finally been absorbed by now. Seeing that the wolf god woke up, Xian Sheng came over and asked the wolf god for his opinions. After Lu Heng nodded, the caravan people started on the road again. This time, everyone was a little nervous. They always felt that there might be demons catching up behind them at any time, and looked back from time to time. But they walked all the way for three days, and finally came to the boundary of Baishir city, but they didn't meet any demons of the Green Hell Cave again. That red lady, she really doesn't have any companions. Lu Han couldn't help sighing and felt sorry about this. Although he had guessed the result, he couldn't help being discouraged that no demons came knocking. It seems that the next time he encounters the demon of the Green Hell Cave, he has to seize the opportunity and let Xiao Ai talk first. He really can't pretend to be a bad person as long as others look at him with their magic eyes. Chapter 84 A group of businessmen were rushing up the road in the hot afternoon light. At this time, it is past the beginning of summer, 
and the mountains are getting hotter and hotter. The ground trembled slightly with each step of the huge beasts. Under the scorching sun, the businessmen who followed the beasts were sweating all over and some could not bear the scorching sun. But when they saw the Baishar city boundary monument in front of them, they still made a cheering sound. Ha 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 we're almost to Baishar. When I enter the city, I need to take a cold bath first. Then I can have a good sleep. I'm afraid you're not going to sleep alone ha ha ha. In the caravan, a burst of cheerful laughter broke out. However, although Lu Heng didn't follow them, the men didn't dare to talk about some topics that were too erotic. But when they squeezed their eyebrows and winked at each other, they couldn't help but snicker. Not far in front of them, by the side of the road, stood a huge stone tablet engraved with the big word Baishur City. Under the Baishur City, there are also dense small characters. However, behind the boundary monument, there are still desolate roads and uninhabited mountains and forests, and no traces of the city can be seen. Seeing that Lu Hang was curious about the boundary monument, Hua Fong opened his mouth and explained. This is the boundary monument of Baishur City. Stepping into the scope of this boundary monument is the protection of Master Wuzhu of Baishur City. Although we are about a day away from Baishur, we will not meet demons in the next section of the road. Hua Fong said, within the boundary monument, there are masters of the fire god temple around to prevent evil spirits from invading. Of course, beasts are not within the scope of deportation. So there will still be fierce beasts. However, within the boundary, the villages are inhabited by hundreds or even thousands of people. So as long as there are no rampant demons, ordinary fierce beasts rarely hurt people. Lu Hang nodded to show understanding. After passing the boundary monument, the next road will become much easier to traverse. It can be seen that the roads within the boundary are renovated frequently, and there are fewer potholes. And the more you go forward, the more people and farmland gradually appear on both sides of the road. There are more people on the galloping road, which is no longer the same as before. On the night of this day, the post house where the caravan people stayed was no longer a desolate and empty post house. Instead, someone manages the money collection post, which is similar to the inn known to Luhang. But according to Huafong, there is no private post house in, in this world. All the post houses are under the jurisdiction of the fire temple, and there will be witches and masters of the fire temple in the post house to prevent evil people from sneaking into the business. The post office in the city is facing the fire god temple, which is only a street away from the fire god temple. At such a close distance, the demons with low cultivation cannot hide at all. As for the demons with a high cultivation base, there is no need to hide in the crowd, and this management method naturally cannot prevent them. Lu Heng couldn't get into the post house where the caravan stayed tonight because there were cultivators, so he said goodbye to them on the gallop road. Although demon cultivators are also good and bad, those demon cultivators who don't eat humans can also live in the post. But Lu Hang is in a special state. If he goes to the post office, the wizard in the post office must open his magic eyes to observe him. And once the wizard opened his magic eyes, Lu Hang couldn't help sighing when he thought of it. It's really important for him to develop a method to hide his spirit chi, but now he still has no clue. Even if Lu Hang has a headache, he can't help it. After saying goodbye to the caravans, Lu Hang took Xiao Ai and Huafong straight south. The more you go along this road, the more people there will be that you see. Lu Hang was worried about meeting curious cultivators and causing more trouble on the road, so he planned to walk through the wilderness and stay away from the crowd until he left the range of the boundary monument and then drove back. The rugged mountains and forests can't stop Lu Hang and Xiao Ai. And Hua Feng's bow horse travels thousands of miles a day, so it's not difficult to carry Hua Feng through the wilderness. Therefore, the three people walked through the wilderness and hid in the mountains. At nightfall, they directly found a downwind place to camp and set up a bonfire in the mountain. This familiar scene seems to return to the days when Lu Hang and Xiao Ai just went down the mountain. There was only one girl and one wolf walking silently through the wilderness. But now there is Hua Fong around. After stopping to rest, Hua Fong will try to gather spirit qi in his body. It's just that his Tao heart is broken, and he can't do it even if he tries hard. But Hua Fong was not discouraged. 
After feeding the fat bird that kept calling in the cage, the young man laughed and chatted with the wolf god. During the conversation these days, Hua Feng found that Lord Wolf God was very interested in worldly affairs, so he took the initiative to share some of his experiences and experiences in recent years with Wolf God. The people of the Yun sect travel around and have a wide experience. After chatting with Hua Feng these days, although there is no clue about the spell of hiding his spirit qi, Lu Heng did hear a lot of interesting things. Now if he talks with people again, he probably won't have the embarrassment of making a mistake of common sense. Lu Hang and others camped in the wilderness. On the road, the caravan that separated from them rested in the post house outside the city for a night, and then set out early in the morning the next morning, arriving at the post house in Baishir city before dark. Compared to the post offices outside the city, the post offices in Baishir city are much larger. Many merchants lived in this post house and didn't leave until the goods they carried were sold out and new goods were purchased. Such a process often lasts for a long time, sometimes even stopping in a city for a month or two. Therefore, the people in the post office were boisterous, lively and noisy. After arriving, Xian Sheng and others found the steward of the post office. After registering and paying the fees, they drove the pack animals into the corral under the leadership of the steward. Then they unloaded the goods on the beasts back into the house, agreed on a time to meet tomorrow morning, and then separated briefly. This city is bustling, and there is a body house not far from the post. Now they didn't even eat dinner and they went in the direction of the body house with a smile. But Xian Sheng was old and had no interest in such things, so he didn't go. He took two old brothers who were also not interested downstairs and went to the lobby for dinner. At this time, it happened to be the meal point. The hall was full of people, and there was even no vacancy on the second floor. The only thing that seems empty is a position by the window on the second floor. In the evening, the cold night wind blew in, but there was only a red-haired woman sitting by the window on the second floor. In the noisy hall, the woman was alone, but there were five or six dishes on the table in front of her, which made people doubt whether she could finish so many dishes alone. Xian Sheng and others watched for a while and found that the woman was more interested in wine than food. She drank the wine cup by cup, but she didn't eat the dishes. It seemed that she was a heavy drinker. Xian Sheng and others hesitated for a while, and finally didn't dare to go up to the table. This woman is so strange and her temperament is also different from that of ordinary people. They are just common businessmen and dare not to bother her. So Xian Sheng sighed and said, let's go back to the house and ask the kitchen to send the food directly to the house. Xian Sheng's words naturally got the agreement of the two old brothers. But just as they were going downstairs, a familiar voice suddenly sounded behind them. Eh? Isn't this brother Xian Sheng? I didn't expect to meet you in this Baishir city. It really is fate. The familiar laughter made Xian Sheng stop and look back. In the hall, a bearded businessman had stood up and waved to them with a smile, Man, if you don't mind, why don't you sit down and eat with me? Xian Sheng looked at the bearded man in surprise, thought for a while, and finally remembered the identity of the other party. A smile also appeared on his face, Who is it? It's brother Lu, haha it's a coincidence that you have also come to Baishir city. With the two old brothers beside him, Xian Sheng walked towards the bearded man with a smile and said, I've not seen you for three years since I left 10,000 Needle City. When Xian Sheng and his three men came, the companions around the bearded man also stood up one after another, and everyone saluted each other. Although the table was full, they still found a waiter to add three stools and barely squeezed into the table. For businessmen, they traveled far and wide, but they can also meet many interesting people, so they are naturally happy to meet old friends in another country. The atmosphere on the dinner table became more heated and noisy after Xian Sheng and his old brothers joined. Laughter sounded from time to time, and everyone talked about some things they had encountered after their separation, as well as their plans of travel to Baishir City this trip. In between the drinks and preparations, the sky gradually darkened. But everyone didn't mean to break up. Even though the dishes on the table had been finished, the laughter still kept going, and everyone drank till they were red and happy. With the passage of time, the people eating on the second floor also increased to several groups. In addition to Xian Sheng, 
they never left the table which also includes the woman in red beside the window. She monopolized a table by herself, drank wine leisurely, and served a dish or two from time to time. But because of her special temperament, no one dares to disturb her and all avoid meeting her eyes. During this period, the back kitchen took the initiative to cook for the woman. The posthouse steward's respectful attitude towards the woman made Xi and Sheng and others reconfirm that the red-haired woman's identity was indeed distinguished. Fortunately, they didn't rush up to disturb her. In the sound of talking and laughing, someone asked Xi and Sheng about their current situation. Later, they talked about the fact that the cultivator invited by Xincheng is now leaving and they will next find another cultivator to protect them in Baishu City. And the wolf god they met in the wilderness. When talking about this, Xi and Sheng and his old brothers were all smiling and worshipping the wolf god. And the rest of the people heard that Xi and Sheng was lucky to have the wine given by the wolf god and the wonders of the peach blossom wine, and they were even more envious. Among the laughter of the crowd, only the red-haired woman by the window turned her head in surprise and looked this way. Oh! The red-haired woman murmured a little surprised, wolf god. She smiled, but didn't speak. As she sat by the window, leisurely drinking the wine, she listened to the businessmen nearby talking about the extraordinary of the wolf god in high spirits. The word fate is really interesting. The woman smiled and drank another glass of wine. Chapter, 85 In the post house, the dinner atmosphere of Xi and Sheng and others became more and more enthusiastic. The various miracles of the white wolf god make the other merchants feel envious. After hearing that the wolf god had gone south, they sighed even more. Although Xi and Sheng didn't tell them their experience of how the wolf god killed the red lady, the wolf god's wine alone was already worth their hype. The other businessmen were itching and envious in their hearts as they heard. However, although the atmosphere was lively, the red-haired woman by the window shook her head. After sitting beside and listening for a while, the woman stood up and walked straight out after confirming that she could not hear much more useful information. The steward standing in the distance hurriedly gathered up and obeyed the orders. Standing at the entrance of the stairs, the red-haired woman looked back at the chatting people, thought for a while, and said, these people's stories are interesting, so they don't have to pay for their meals tonight. She smiled and said, it's hard to hear such interesting stories, ha ha ha. With that, the red-haired woman laughed and left. The steward was a little confused. Although he didn't know what happened, he waived the cost of the meals for Xi and Sheng and others obediently. The red-haired woman didn't go far after leaving the post, but walked directly into the fire god temple opposite the post. She walked in the fire god temple like wandering in her own garden, and no one dares to stop her at all. A quarter of an hour later, dozens of white figures soared from the fire god temple, turned into dozens of ethereal white smoke and disappeared into the night in the south of the city. All the guards of the whole city are out of the city at this moment. In the wilderness, Lu Heng found a cave with good luck. Although the space in the cave was not large, it was enough to avoid the wind. After the campfire was lit, Xiao Ai caught a pheasant in the mountains and prepared dinner for Lord Wolf God. As for Hua Feng, he is not interested in this kind of cooking that takes a lot of time. He took out the dry food carried in his luggage and chewed it for a while. After filling his stomach, he sat cross-legged and continued to try to gather spirit qi in his body. Although there is almost no effect, it is already the homework that Hua Feng has to do every day, and he has never skipped a day due to slacking off. Lu Heng closed his eyes and continued to study the art of hiding spirit and qi. But so far, there was still no result. He didn't know if it was because the heavenly thunder was too special. But the research and development of the technique of hiding his spirit qi proved much more difficult than Lu Heng thought. He tried almost all the methods he could think of, but he never made any breakthrough. At night, the cave was quiet, only the burning fire crackled from time to time. Occasionally, the shrill howling of beasts will ring out from the distant forest. It is probably another battle of the jungle. Wild beasts ravaging the barren forest, will not be quiet even at night. Nocturnal beasts lurked in the dark mountains and forests, trying to hunt fresh prey. The night is a bloody arena for them. Occasionally, predators will encounter a more powerful beast and turn into another's prey, swallowing its last breath in a shrill howl. 
the wilderness after night is such a wild and fierce primitive world. The law of the jungle is the only one in this dark mountain forest. And the flickering light of the bonfire in the cave will occasionally attract a couple of wandering beasts. However, if these wild animals rampant in the mountains and forests want to get close, the little girl beside the campfire just needs a cold look. And the fierce and bloodthirsty beasts will be startled, and hurriedly flee here, never daring to get close again. In this way, the little girl waited silently for the tranquility in the mountain, and didn't let these beasts disturb the Lord Wolf God's cultivation. But after midnight, there was a change. Silently, a wisp of cold air drifted outside the cave the little girl who closed her eyes and began to cultivate suddenly opened her eyes, but she saw a pale translucent figure standing outside the cave for some time. When the they saw each other, the translucent pale figure had no intention to hide, but arched hands at the girl and wolf by the campfire, and silently dissipated. This strange scene made the girl a little confused. She subconsciously stood up and wanted to go out to see what was going on. The pale translucent figure reminded her of the ghosts she had seen before. But there are differences between the two. The ghosts enslaved by the Red Lady are gloomy and strange, full of unpleasant cold air. But this translucent pale figure is different. Although it was also wrapped in cold air, the overall feeling is magnificent and righteous. But even if the other party was not evil, Xiao Ai didn't dare to ignore it. But as soon as the little girl stood up, Hua Feng, who was near the fire, opened his mouth. The pale figure didn't hide its breath, and Hua Feng also felt it. Hua Feng said, Xiao Ai, don't be nervous. That pale figure is just a wandering wizard of Baishir City. This wandering wizard's true body sits in the fire god temple, but he can use the wandering soul condensed by wish power in the temple to wander inside and outside the city to search for hidden evils. Although it's not a powerful magic, it's pretty useful. This wandering incarnation is condensed by wish power and has a strong induction ability towards demons. If there are demons in the places it passes, it would be able to detect them. And even if this wandering incarnation is killed by the demons, it will not cause any damage to the true body of the wizard. Their duty is to patrol the four directions within the boundary monument of Baishir City. They may pass by here and see a fire in the cave, so come in and have a look. Don't be surprised. Hua Feng said with a smile, Lord Wolf God has the keepsake from Master Gong Shu Jie. This wizard must have been aware of it, so he withdrew directly. It knows that we are not demons, otherwise it won't be so polite. Xiao Ai was stunned by Hua Feng's words. It turns out that in the land under the protection of Wuzhu, there are wizards patrolling day and night, protecting the safety of people's livelihood. Such a thing has never been heard of in the remote Hanyu mountain. However, Xiao Ai also understands that such service is not without a cost. Living under the protection of Wuzhu, people need to provide a fixed amount of taxes to the Fire God Temple every year. And there is unavoidable corvée to be served every year. Therefore, there are pretty much remote villages like Shuaxing village, which are far away from the cities and are not under the protection of Wuzhu. Most of them were built near the road not far from the boundary monument. While avoiding corvée taxes, they could also get some protection from Wuzhu. After all, in a place not too far away from the city, even in the wild where monsters are rampant, evil spirits and demons are rarely encountered. The existence of evil things is always rare. Chapter, 86 After hearing Hua Feng's explanation, Xiao Ai also understood the existence of the wizard, so she put down her worry and returned to the campfire and sat down. After the wizard left, the mountain became quiet and nothing strange happened again. The little girl closed her eyes with her knees crossed and didn't open her eyes again until after dawn. The bonfire in the cave has been extinguished at this time, and even the charcoal has cooled. In the cold breeze in the morning, Hua Feng was standing next to the bow horse. He reached out and took two pieces of bread from the bag on the bow horse's back. He ate it with cold water and this was his breakfast. As for Xiao Ai and Lu Hang, they don't have the habit of eating breakfast, so Hua Feng didn't bother them. Lu Hang looked at the blue sky outside and said with a smile, Today's weather is good, sunny, suitable for traveling. Hua Feng, who was eating bread, gave a wry smile and shook his head. If it had been before, he would have said something. 
but now he has lost all his cultivation base, and the blazing sunshine under the bright sky has made him unbearable. But even so, he had to get on the road. After Huifeng took a short rest, they set foot on the journey south again. Not long after walking away from the mountain, Lu Hang and others saw the crowd in rice fields again. Although it has not yet gone out of the boundary monument, it is actually far away from Baishir city. The village beside the road is not large, with only twenty families. However, this small-scale village is the mainstream within the boundary monument of Baishir city. For example, a large village with hundreds of people in a village like Shueisheng village will not appear here. After all, there is only so much suitable land. Many barren mountains cannot grow crops, and there are too many people to feed. For example, this small village in front of them is like this. There are few fields suitable for planting crops outside the village. Although the rice fields are green, it's limited to feeding these twenty families. If Shueisheng village is not backed by the river outside Hanyu mountain and the vast plain outside the village which is very suitable for planting rice, it can't feed so many villagers. When they came out of the mountain, the villagers who were working in the rice fields were startled. However, they stepped on the ridges between the rice fields and went straight towards the road without attacking the villagers. Seeing that the two people and wolf were just passing by, the villagers breathed a sigh of relief. Then there was a deep curiosity. The villagers working in the fields are secretly looking at Xiao Ai's strange appearance of silver hair and ears, and guess what the origin of the little girl is. As for Lu Heng, although he seems to be larger than ordinary wolves, a larger wolf doesn't attract attention in this world full of beasts. Until Lu Heng left the rice fields in the mountains and set foot on the southward road again, no one among the villagers paid attention to the white wolf. However, this is exactly what Lu Heng wants. Otherwise, if he wants to attract attention, he can directly show his real body shape. A white wolf bigger than a country house can definitely scare all the villagers along the road. The journey to the south was a little boring. As they walked out of the boundary monument of Baishir city, the beasts on both sides of the road became more and more. At noon, Lu Heng met a group of businessmen who also went south. A total of more than forty people, all fully armed, are surrounding a white tiger under the slope of the roadside. Several people in the team were injured. Must be this tiger lay prone in the field and ambushed the caravan, but it didn't work. After hurting people, it was surrounded by the caravan. When Lu Hang, Xiao Ai, and Huafeng passed by, the fierce and terrifying tiger was roaring angrily, and the tiger's roar made people's scalp numb. But compared with the fierce and terrifying roar, the tiger has been covered with wounds and has already fallen to a dead end. Now people surround and don't kill, but they are afraid of the tiger's death struggle, so they plan to consume the tiger's physical strength first. Once this big tiger is exhausted and no longer vicious, it will be rushed up by everyone and hacked to death. Lu Hen glanced at it roughly and left without stopping to watch the play. Although there were a large number of precious materials and books, there were no cultivators. However, the forty people are all armed. As such caravans walk in the wilderness, even if there are no cultivators following them, most of demons dare not provoke them. The caravan was shocked by Lu Heng's appearance. People who dare walk alone in the wilderness are by no means existences that can be provoked. However, seeing as Lu Heng and his companions were leaving and didn't seem to have any intention to stay, they let out a sigh of relief. After passing the caravan that surrounded and killed the tiger, Lu Heng didn't see a second caravan on their southward drive. The road was desolate and empty. Only some beasts lying in the roadside trees wanted to jump out, and they were directly scared away by the little girl's cold glance. But in the evening, faint footsteps rang out behind them. Lu Heng looked back and found that it was a red-haired woman. In the afterglow of the sunset, the woman hummed a strange song in her mouth, carrying a wine gourd in one hand, walking up the road at a loose pace, and didn't have any companions around. Her long red hair, tied behind her head, was uninhibited and loose. She followed them and poured a sip of wine into her mouth from time to time. It was estimated that she had drunk a jar of wine along the way. Lu Heng wondered how that little gourd holds so much wine. Huafeng whispered, Lord Wolf God, this woman seems to be tracking us. Lu Heng shook his head and said, Tracking? 
This is obviously an aboveboard follow have you ever seen such arrogant tracking? Hua Feng couldn't help laughing bitterly. The woman has been tailing behind them, always keeping a far enough distance. Lu Heng moves faster, this woman moves faster, Lu Heng moves slower and she moves slower, it is clear that she is coming for them. Xiao Ai glanced coldly at the rear and said, Lord Wolf God, is she the demon of the Green Hell Cave? Her words contained awe-inspiring killing intent. Lu Heng shook his head and said, she's not a demon and by no means an ordinary person. Don't worry about her, she likes to follow so let her follow, she's harmless. If she really comes to us for something she will definitely take the initiative, so don't worry about it and let it go. Lu Heng's words made Hua Feng nod with approval, and he also agreed with the wolf god. The red-haired woman behaved strangely, but she didn't look like a demon. For this kind of cultivators, it is the most appropriate way to put them aside temporarily. Xiao Ai didn't say a word, but tightened the strap of the heavenly thunder sword. Grandpa Li Ju of the Wind Raiders Department said that no one in the world can compete with the power of the god slaying heavenly thunder. So as long as she keeps this heavenly thunder sword, no one in the world can harm Lord Wolf God. Chapter 87 As the sun gradually sank into the sky, stars appeared in the gray sky. Lu Heng and his group were still walking on the road. The red-haired woman was still leisurely following behind them maintaining a short distance. In the quiet mountains and forests, the sound of insects on both sides of the road could be heard. The red-haired woman who followed behind them, although very far away, the sound of her footsteps were clear. It was clear that she was telling Lu Heng and others in front of her that I'm still following. At this time, even Lu Heng couldn't help being curious about what the red-haired woman wanted to do. But seeing that the other party didn't speak for a long time, Lu Heng couldn't help feeling a little funny in his heart. Since you don't speak, I won't speak either. Let's see who can't hold it first. Thinking like this, Lu Heng stopped thinking about talking to the woman. After arriving at the roadside post station in front of them, Lu Heng and others went directly in and planned to stay here tonight. And the red-haired woman followed in without accident. As soon as Hua Feng cut down a tree and dragged it in, the red-haired woman pushed the door open and walked into the house. At this time, Xiao Ai just cut the trunk into neat firewood with both hands, and Hua Feng was responsible for igniting the fire. After the red-haired woman came in, she didn't say anything. She walked to the other corner of the post house and sat down. Then in the wary eyes of Hua Feng and Xiao Ai's indifference, the woman stretched out her hand, and a tree outside the post office suddenly broke silently, and the tree's body flew directly towards the post office. When the leafy tree flew under the night sky, the branches on it crackled and fell off voluntarily. In the end, only the bare trunk flew into the post house. In the stunned gaze of Hua Feng, the red-haired woman laughed and snapped her fingers. The trunk of the tree that flew to her side broke into sticks and firewood out of thin air, crashing behind her and stacked neatly. And some of the wooden strips fell in front of her. The moment this part of the wood fell, it was ignited, and the warm and yellowish fire instantly lit up the figure of the red-haired woman. And she looked at Lu Hang with a smile and raised her eyebrows. At this time, Hua Feng was still trying to ignite with flint. Being so provoked, Xiao Ai stared at the red-haired woman coldly, and pointed out her right hand. The firewood that hadn't been ignited for a long time flashed, and it also burned. Although Hua Feng hurriedly withdrew, he was still burned by the flame to his eyebrows and hair, and immediately looked miserable. But he looked at the cold-faced little girl beside him and the smiling red-haired woman not far away, and found that he could provoke no one. So Hua Feng was speechless for a few seconds, and stepped aside to sit down. Xiao Ai went outside the door and peeled the civet she caught on the roadside in the afternoon, preparing to cook dinner for Lord Wolf God tonight. The red-haired woman leaned leisurely against the wall, humming strange songs with her mouth, shaking the gourd in her hand, and pouring a mouthful from time to time. In this way, seeing that the atmosphere in the room seemed to ease a little, Hua Feng breathed a sigh of relief. He carefully took out the dough cake in his bag and ate in small bites with water. Lu Heng, who was lying on the side of the fire, closed his eyes, and seemed to be indifferent to all the movements of the outside world. Although the red woman's skill of controlling fire and objects she revealed was superb, 
Liu Hang didn't pay attention to her at all. The more provocative the woman was, the more he wanted to laugh. The other party's behavior is like a naughty girl who deliberately makes trouble and wants to attract the attention of adults. It's too interesting. After Xiao Ai treated the blood and internal organs of the civet, she walked in and sat by the fire to bake it. In the post house, there was a temporary calm. Until around midnight, the night was deep, and the meat in Xiao Ai's hand had given off an attractive aroma, while the nearby road was full of noise and footsteps. Brother, there is a post office ahead. Good. Let's all rest here tonight, everyone make a fire and cook so we can all have a taste of this big tiger. Ha 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 ha. In a burst of laughter, the caravan that Lu Hang had seen in the daytime came to the gate of the post office. Looking at their excited appearance and the tiger skin hanging on the back of the pack beast, the fierce tiger in the daytime must have been killed. However, when the merchants came to the gate of the post office, they were all stunned. In the post house with the door open, two campfires stand on the left and right. Figures beside the campfire were sitting in both corners of the room. Although there was little verbal communication, there was a certain atmosphere of tit for tat in the room. The first three brothers hurriedly bowed and sweated heavily. We didn't deliberately disturb you. Please forgive us. While the three arched their hands and saluted, all the businessmen behind them also bowed their heads and apologized. As they spoke, they secretly observed the performance of these two groups of people in the room. Seeing that neither side responded, they stepped back cautiously. They had walked back for a long distance, and they were relieved to see that the two groups of people in the house didn't catch up. Damn scared me to death. The atmosphere in this post house is too weird, isn't it? I almost thought we couldn't get out. The red-haired woman smiled, but she was more terrifying than the big tiger we met in the daytime. Stop talking, the little girl with silver hair and ears is also frightening. Looked at her cold eyes, I almost thought she was going to kill us. How can we bump into such a scene go, go, and get away from here quickly? Don't be affected. It's so fucking scary. The businessmen retreated far away before they dared to whisper. They felt too much pressure in the post just now. Even though this place was far away from that post, they still dared not stay. They all walked in the wilderness with torches and against the dark night, for fear of being chased out by the group of strange people in the post house. Not long after the group of merchants left, Xiao Ai finally finished roasting the civet meat in the post house. Looking at the white wolf sleeping with his eyes closed beside her, she respectfully called, Lord Wolf God, it's all done. The white wolf beside the campfire opened his eyes and nodded, okay, Xiao Ai, thank you. As he spoke, he sat up a little straighter. Xiao Ai held the stick in her hand and handed the roasted civet to the mouth of the white wolf. Lu Heng opened his mouth and took a bite, then began to chew and enjoy the carefully roasted meat. Unlike in the past, his current self has cultivation, so he doesn't have to worry about viral infections. However, Lu Heng just took a bite. The red-haired woman in the corner took the initiative to speak. She smiled and said, isn't it half the fun to have meat without wine? I have a pot of good wine here. Brother Wolf, why don't you have a drink? With that, the woman untied another gourd around her waist and said, I have drunk a pot by myself, and most of the wine is inferior. While the other pot is given to my friend, and the wine is good wine brother wolf, are you interested? Lu Heng looked up at her, saw the other party take the initiative to talk, he also smiled and said, thank you for your kindness, but I'm not good at drinking, sorry. Lu Heng's words were from the bottom of his heart. He neither likes drinking nor is very good at it. Nevertheless, upon hearing this, the red-haired woman shook her head and said, Brother Wolf's words are flimsy, which makes my heart bleed. With that, she tied the wine gourd that was going to be thrown to Lu Heng back to her waist, sighed and shook her head as if she was very hurt. Lu Heng said, My words are true, not false. However, the red woman seemed to have been discouraged. She sat there rather decadent, humming strange songs, and ignored Lu Heng. Seeing that the other party ignored Lu Heng so much, Xiao Ai frowned slightly, and her expression was quite unhappy. Lu Heng was much calmer. Seeing that the red-haired woman didn't speak, 
he ignored her and turned his head to continue eating the barbecue handed to his mouth by Xiao Ai. The post house fell into silence again. Except for the occasional rustle from the fire, the only sounds were the strange ballads softly hummed by the woman in the corner. Although the tune was strange, somehow it was a little melodious after listening to it for a long time. Chapter, 88 The next day after dawn, Hua Feng was the first to wake up and sweep out the ashes of the cold fire. Then they went on the road again. Not surprisingly, the red-haired woman followed. The barren forest in the morning was covered with a faint white fog. Lu Heng glanced back and saw the figure of the red-haired woman looming in the fog. But the red-haired woman still didn't come to talk. Seeing this, Lu Heng couldn't help shaking his head. He thought that after the simple conversation last night, the woman didn't want to follow them anymore. For such alcoholics, refusing each other's wine may be a provocative meaning. That's why the red-haired woman was angry last night. However, when Lu Heng was just an ordinary person in his previous life, he never drank alcohol and would not accept anyone's persuasion. Now he has cultivation and is carefree, and he won't force himself to do things he doesn't want to do. Even if the woman is angry, it has nothing to do with him. It's impossible for this woman to turn against him just because he doesn't drink her wine, right? Thinking like this in his heart, Lu Heng couldn't help shaking his head and laughing. Although Lu Heng didn't care, Xiao Ai was very unhappy with the red-haired woman following behind them. From time to time, she looked back with cold eyes. Finally, she asked. Lord Wolf God, this woman is rude and sneaky. She has been following us, I'm afraid she's not a kind person. If we beat her away. Lu Heng hasn't spoken yet, and the red-haired woman's laughter had come. Yo this little girl is not old, but her tone is too arrogant, right? Lu Heng stopped, looked back and saw the red-haired woman laughing and walking forward. The road is so wide. Why do you say I follow you? Walking behind you is tracking you. It's obvious that you have been blocked in front of me, blocking my way south to Yutian Valley. The red-haired woman smiled and said. Although her smile was bright, her words were cold. Lu Heng smiled and said, since you don't want us to be in your way, let's get out of the way Xiao Ai, Brother Hua, let's step aside and let her go first. With that, Lu Heng took the lead to the roadside and said with a smile, please take a step first. Seeing Lu Heng's response, Hua Feng and Xiao Ai had to follow him to the roadside. However, after everyone stepped aside, the red-haired woman sat by the roadside and didn't go away. She leisurely poured a mouthful of wine into her mouth and said, although there is no one in front of me, my legs are suddenly tired and I don't want to go. I'm going to sit here and rest or you can stand by the roadside and wait for me for a while. When I have a good rest, I'll walk to the front. Hearing this, Lu Heng didn't respond, but Xiao Ai couldn't contain her anger. Her eyes coldly looked at the red-haired woman, and she said in a cold voice, Lord Wolf God has been tolerant of you so much, but you are ignorant and have repeatedly offended us what is the purpose of your tracking us. If you are really a demon who comes to the door to seek revenge, just say it. The little girl's words were fierce and merciless, but the red-haired woman laughed and shook her head after listening, and was not irritated. She smiled and raised her eyebrows at Xiao Ai, saying, You little wolf girl is really good-looking. Even if you're staring at me, your angry appearance is also cute. Yes, that's the look. I like it very much. Go on. The woman's provocative words made Xiao Ai's face become dim with anger. Lu Heng shook his head helplessly and said, Since you're tired, let's sit here and wait for you to rest. Xiao Ai, Brother Hua, let's sit down and rest. With that, Lu Heng took the lead in sitting on the roadside and really rested with his eyes closed. Hua Feng and Xiao Ai looked at each other, but Lu Heng said so, so they had to sit down obediently. In the morning sun, beside the desolate road, the two groups of people just looked at each other and sat down at a distance of several feet away. After sitting for a while, the woman laid down directly and fell asleep in the grass beside the road. Hua Feng silently looked at the red-haired woman's behavior, and then looked at the wolf god who closed his eyes and rested beside him. He had to sigh, sit down cross-legged, and began to try to sort out the disordered spirit qi in his body. They sat down until the sunset and the starry night fell. 
The woman who had slept in the grass for a whole day stretched herself and sat up, yawning. Yo are you still there? The red-haired woman smiled and said, I'm sorry you've spent a whole day here with me. I'm really sorry. Lu Huang, who had been lying on the side of the road for a day also opened his eyes and said with a smile, it's nothing worth mentioning. Anyway, I'm also idly waiting. It's only one day, and even waiting another ten days is no harm as long as you're happy. The red-haired woman listened to the words and laughed, ha 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 brother wolf is really interesting. It's rare in this world to see such an interesting person as you. But I'm also quite uneasy after you waited for me for a day. Now it's dark, and I'm just a weak woman who dares not to walk through the wilderness. I'm afraid I can only camp here tonight, and I have to bother you three to wait for me another night. But after tomorrow morning, I will take the lead and never hinder your trip. The woman smiled and promised. So Lu Han also smiled and replied, Good. Good night. With that, he closes his eyes and stopped talking. Xiao Ai and Hua Feng lit a campfire and silently stood by the wolf god. This woman is so weird that neither of them dares to stay too far away from Lu Hang for fear of being secretly harmed. So in the dark wilderness, the two groups of people confronted each other, and both lit bonfires on the roadside. During this period, one or two beasts saw the light of the campfire from a distance and approached. But before they got close, they felt something and ran away scared. Fraught with silent confrontation, another night passed, and the sky shone again. But when the first ray of sunshine in the morning fell on them, the red-haired woman on the roadside finally opened her eyes and said with a smile, the sky is bright, so I will take a step ahead. The mountain is high and the road is far away, everyone, see you in the future, ha ha ha. With that, the red-haired woman walked leisurely and laughed away. Beside the road, Xiao Ai watched the woman's figure disappear completely, and then whispered, Lord Wolf God, the woman has gone. Lu Heng opened his eyes and thought for a while, saying, that woman is willing to walk in front because she is only going to return what you said yesterday when we follow up, do you want to follow me? Speaking of this, Lu Heng couldn't help laughing and said, in that case, we'll just bypass the road and walk through the wilderness. The bow horse can travel thousands of miles every day. We walk through the wilderness and run all the way directly to Yutian Valley. If she can still follow up, I wish to see what else she has to say. Chapter, 89 The red-haired woman behaved strangely, but Lu Hang's wickedness was not inferior to her. The other party was so naive to fight with Lu Hang, so Lu Hang wanted to see how the woman would deal with it. He directly took Hua Fong and Xiao Ai away from the road and ran through the wilderness. Rugged mountain paths, steep mountains, and primitive forests all quickly disappeared behind them. Although Lu Hang and Xiao Ai seemed to be walking slowly, they moved a few feet with every step and walked in the mountains with ease and freehand brushwork. All the beasts in the mountains encountered along the way were scared and fled in panic. Hua Feng, lying on the back of the bow horse, tightly hugged the neck of the bow horse for fear of being thrown out. This bow horse is worthy of being a horse that can travel thousands of miles a day. Even in such rugged and difficult wilderness forests, it can maintain a very fast speed. In Lu Hang's previous life, the means of transportation that traveled thousands of miles a day was not uncommon, but it needed a smooth and open good road surface. But this bow horse can run quickly in the wooded wilderness, completely ignoring gravity, and all obstacles are easily crossed by it. Even in the face of the surging river water, this bow horse can also directly tread the waves and wade. Such a picture that breaks common sense makes Lu Hang exclaim. It is indeed a beast, and it can't be judged by common sense. By the time the sunset fell and the stars and moon hung high, the people had been far away from the boundary of Baishir city and went down thousands of miles to the south. Hua Feng was lying on the horse's back, his eyes were dizzy, and his ears kept ringing. This one day experience of lying on the back of the bow horse, if converted to Lu Hang's previous life, may be regarded as lying on the roof of a high speed car all day. The strong wind whistling when the horse was racing violently shook Hua Feng's eardrums. Although Lu Hang gave him some protection, the young man still looked like he was dying. I I found for the first time that it's not good to be too fast, said Hua Feng, who slid down from the bow horse with a bitter face and sat on the ground sighing. 
Lu Heng smiled and said, Don't sigh, sit down and have a rest. Xiao Ai, pour a glass of wine for Brother Hua to relieve his fatigue. Lu Heng's words made Hua Feng's eyes light up in an instant. He hurriedly got up from the ground, dragged his body slowly shaking and turning blue, and said with a smile, You're too polite, Lord Wolf God. Lu Heng laughed, but didn't speak. After watching Xiao Ai take out peach blossom wine and pour a cup to Hua Feng, he said, Have a rest and have a good sleep. Tomorrow we will continue on our way. Hua Feng happily held the peach blossom wine poured by the little girl for him and nodded repeatedly. Although he hasn't drunk it yet, the peach blossom wine given by the wolf god is completely worth the suffering of the whole day. After taking the cup of peach blossom wine, Hua Feng immediately crossed his knees and closed his eyes, trying to comb spirit qi in his body with the help of the wine. Although there is no effect in the end, the fatigue of the body has been completely eliminated. After this night, the red-haired woman didn't come back. At dawn the next day, Lu Heng's small team set off again. This time, it was still a gallop all the way south. However, in order to take care of Hua Feng, Lu Heng took the initiative to slow down. When night fell, they had only traveled a thousand miles or so. In this way, Lu Heng traveled during the day and rested at night. They crossed barren mountains and rivers. Finally, he arrived at the Yutian Valley on the fifth day after he separated from the red-haired woman. By this time, the road under Lu Heng's feet began to be dominated by plains, steep and rugged mountain roads like Baishir City were rare. Even if there are mountains in view they are mostly low hills. The plain with flat roads forms a vast land. The complicated water system flowing on the plain has fragmented the whole southern plain. And the Yutian Valley is located on the edge of such a vast plain, in a mountain range that is not steep. The mountains are shrouded in white fog all year round. Strangers are not allowed to enter. While walking in the mountains, Hua Feng explained, it is said that there is a spring hole in the valley. The spring water is freezing to the bone. If a living person touches it, his bones and flesh will disappear. Though this spring is extraordinary, few rarely visit. It's because the valley is shrouded in white fog all year round. Ghosts and souls are entrenched in the fog. If ordinary living people rush in, they will be separated and die. Therefore, although this Yutian Valley is only 40 miles away from the Yoji city, the residents in the city never dare to get close to this mountain, so this place is rarely visited. While Hua Feng explained, they had stepped into the misty mountains. At the moment of entering the fog, Lu Heng frowned slightly and felt a little cold. This white fog is really not ordinary mountain fog. While Hua Feng led the bow horse to walk in the fog and dared not leave Lu Heng too far. As he walked, he said, I met a senior brother of the Yun sect not long ago. I heard the news from him that Wu Gu, one of the ten witches of the Spirit Mountain, had recently come to this Yutian Valley to refine medicine. According to legend, which Wu Gu is the most temperamental and kind-hearted of the ten witches of the Spirit Mountain. Now I bring this fat bird to the door, and maybe I can get her treatment. Hua Feng said, looking at the bird cage hanging on the back of the bow horse. In the cage, the fat bird has lost its vitality when it was first caught after several days of travel torture. Now it lies sick in the cage, shaking with the cage up and down, completely giving up the struggle. Seeing the sickly appearance of this strange bird, Hua Feng couldn't help laughing, this fat bird is extraordinary. If I use it, I'll just sell it for money or as an antidote to expel insects. But which Wu Gu's medical skills are outstanding. Only when this fat bird falls into her hands can it be regarded as the best thing huh? Just halfway through what Hua Feng said, he suddenly noticed something, stopped his figure, frowned and looked at the fog ahead. The pale fog swirled in the valley. Unconsciously, they have come to the mouth of the Yutian Valley. Although they couldn't see the shape of the valley clearly in the fog, the stone tablet engraved with the words Yutian Valley at the mouth of the valley was clearly visible. But what attracted the attention of Hua Feng was not the stone tablet, but the strange sound in the Yutian Valley. In a trance just now, he seemed to see a human figure walking through the Yutian Valley. Lu Heng looked at the valley in front of him and said, the cold air in the valley is a little stronger than the wind outside. 
It's not surprising that ghosts and demons occupy such a place full of dark chi and evil it's all right, just move forward, and I'll protect you. Lu Heng's words let Hua Feng breathe a sigh of relief. He quickly bowed his hands and said, Thank you, Wolf God. With that, Hua Feng took a deep breath, gritted his teeth and walked directly into the fog in front of him. Behind him, the huge white wolf and the little girl with silver hair and ears also followed silently. The moment the two people and a wolf stepped into the valley, the fog surged. In the depths of the white fog, something seemed to be disturbed. Chapter, 90 The fog-shrouded Yutian Valley has a terrible legend. Strangers are not allowed to enter. But for the cultivators of the Yun sect, the ghost shadow in the fog is not terrible. Because, although this secluded valley is rarely visited, there are many cultivators who pass by and have long explored the existence of ghosts in the valley. Although it is extremely terrible for ordinary people, if you have cultivation, you don't have to be too afraid. Huofeng has lost all his cultivation base, but with the wolf god around, he also has the courage to set foot here. However, although he was prepared in his heart, the moment he really stepped into the Yutian Valley. He felt the cold and evil in the air that suddenly intensified several times, but Huofeng couldn't help shivering and his face turned slightly white. Now it is early summer and the weather is hot. However, the white fog shrouded in the Yutian Valley is bitterly cold, just like in the middle of winter, Huofeng has goosebumps all over his body, which is extremely uncomfortable. Subconsciously, he leaned quietly in the direction of the wolf god, for fear of something terrible rushing out of the fog. Lu Heng followed Huofeng and frowned at the Yutian Valley in front of him. In the valley shrouded in white fog, lush grass is everywhere, and white flowers bloom in the grass. It looks quiet and peaceful. If it weren't for the strange scene in the fog, the scenery of this valley could be called a paradise. But the more you go inside, the more the dark and cold chi in the air becomes stronger and stronger, and the temperature becomes lower and lower. Huofeng had loosened the reins of the horse, rubbed his arms as he walked, and said, It's so cold. In the fog in front of them, vaguely, there were horrible figures wandering one after another. They were all figures in terrible death, like fierce ghosts, with ferocious faces, floating in the fog. But wherever Lu Heng went, these ghosts all withdrew in panic, as if they felt the aura of thunder around Lu Heng. Hua Feng saw this scene, but he was not surprised. If it were ordinary cultivators who entered this Yutian Valley, although they don't have to be afraid of these ghosts, they usually rely on their cultivation to quickly walk through the valley to avoid the entanglement with the ghosts. But this was the first time he saw that ghosts would avoid someone. But the wolf god can even control the power of heavenly thunder, this is naturally not a surprising thing. Seeing all the ghosts in the fog hurried away, Huofeng finally put down his worry and began to think about how to speak after seeing which Wu Gu next. Lu Heng observed the ghosts in the fog and frowned slightly. There is no netherworld in this world, and the souls will dissipate directly after people die. Only one kind of soul can survive. That is the evil thing that harbors resentment and turns into a fierce ghost. After entering the Yutian Valley, Lu Heng saw at a glance that these ghosts wandering in the fog were not evil spirits. And judging from their clothing style, they may be the dead residents of the city not far away. These resident souls don't disperse after death, wandering and entrenching in the mountains, but they don't have the evil chi of fierce ghosts is it related to the fog in the Yutian Valley. In this fog, there is a cold evil chi that the outside world doesn't have is this evil chi maintaining the existence of these souls. So that they don't dissipate. So what is the source of this evil chi? Lu Heng followed behind Huofeng, feeling the intense evil chi, and finally saw the source of all this. A cold lake. At the end of the Yutian Valley, there is a cold and yellowish lake. Above the lake is the only area in Yutian Valley without fog. Lu Heng could clearly see the small island in the lake and the cottages on the island. Anyone could see that the cottage had just been recently built, even the straw on the roof was still a little green. In the open space in front of the thatched cottage, there was a medicine furnace emitting faint red light, and hot air. The furnace seemed to be refining some secret medicine. Huofeng finally breathed a sigh of relief when he saw this scene. He hurriedly walked to the lake, bowed to the cottage in the lake, and shouted, 
I'm Huafeng of the Yun sect, and I'll bring a fat bird to visit Wich Wu Gu. Please be merciful to me, Wich Wu Gu. The voice of Huafeng spread far in the fog. However, there was no response before the empty cottage. Huafeng was a little confused and worried. Is it because my gift can't move Wu Gu? But he heard the wolf god nearby, there is no one in this cottage. The witch is not there. Ah. Huafeng raised his head in consternation and looked at the cottage in the lake. He saw a huge strange bird flying out of the cottage, and yelled with a smile, Yes, Wu Gu is not here. That old witch went out to play, and there is only me here the boy of the Yun sect, you bring the fatty bird to the door, do you want to ask Wu Gu to help you heal? It's a pity that the old woman has a strange temper. Even if you see her, she will certainly not cure you. Fortunately, I'm kind. Let me have a look at the fat bird. Maybe I can cure you. The strange bird's laughter was sharp and hoarse, which made people uncomfortable. And its body shape is even stranger. It's not big, but it's also the size of an ordinary ape. A pair of gray-black wings spread, revealing the ape-like body full of fuzz, but the feet are sharp claws, above which is a human-like head. But the face was gloomy and terrifying, and it made people feel chilly at a glance, knowing that this was by no means a good kind. This strange bird is. Human-faced owl. Huafeng was shocked and subconsciously stepped back. On the thatched cottage roof in the lake, the strange and terrifying bird laughed hoarsely, are the Yun sect full of cowards like you? Don't worry, I didn't eat humans for many years, you can take your companions here. You won't be killed. But first of all, I want to remind you that the water can erode the bones and enchant the soul. Don't touch it when you wade over. The sharp laughter of the strange bird makes the white wolf by the lake shook his head and said with a smile, it's just not touching the water. Why is it difficult? With that, he took a direct step and stepped into the dark yellow muddy lake. The invisible energy of thunder spread at Lu Hang's feet, separating the cold and bone-eroding spring water from his body. He smiled and said, Brother Hua, Xiao Ai, come with me. The little girl with silver hair and ears followed and walked with Lu Hang. Although Hua Feng was frightened in his heart, he saw nothing wrong with the wolf god stepping into the lake, so he also led the bow horse to follow up. Two people, a wolf and a bow horse walked directly from the dark yellow and muddy lake, and the cold lake water could not hurt them. Seeing this scene, the human-faced owl on the cottage was so scared that it screamed and flipped up and down. The heavenly lightning. The heavenly lightning. You monster. You can control the heavenly thunder don't come here. Don't come here. The human-faced owl issued a sad cry, if you take another step forward, I'm going to kill myself in front of you. Chapter, 91 on the island in the middle of the lake, a strange bird called the human-faced owl tossed up and down, screaming in fear. However, Lu Hen didn't care at all. He smiled and said, Dear friend, if you have the intention to heal my friend, why worry about my thunder? Although my thunder is extremely fierce, it never hurts my friends. Please don't worry. At the same time, Lu Hen stepped on the dim and muddy lake water to the island in the lake. The human-faced owl shrank in the cottage and only dared to poke out its head and scream sharply at Lu Hang. Threat. You are threatening me. I won't heal him. Get out of here with your friends. I won't heal him. Seeing the strange bird like this, Lu Hang couldn't help sighing. If so, don't you want that fat bird? While Lu Hang was talking, Hua Feng hurriedly raised the cage of the fat bird in his hand and shook it at the human-faced owl in the cottage. In the cage, the fat bird lay sick without moving a little. Seeing this strange bird, the human-faced owl in the cottage couldn't help swallowing its saliva. After being silent for a while, it made a sharp sound again. You have to swear. If I can really save your friend, you must give me this fat bird. Lu Heng smiled and said, Don't worry, I'm not a sneaky person. As long as you can heal Brother Hua, we'll give you this fat bird and never cheat you. Hum you don't dare to cheat me, said the human-faced owl in the cottage said like self-hypnosis. I'm the sole pet of Wu Gu, who is one of the ten witches in the spirit mountain. If you dare to cheat me and harm me, Wu Gu won't let you go. With this, the human-faced owl seemed to have some confidence, 
and then cautiously came out of the cottage and said, that boy of the Yun sect, is it you? Are you injured? Do you need my treatment? Come first and let me see what happened to you. Hua Feng glanced at Lu Heng and saw the wolf god nodding, so he put down the bird cage in his hand and walked towards the cottage. While walking, he explained his own situation, my Tao heart is broken and my spirit qi is disordered in my body, so. However, as soon as Hua Feng was halfway there, the man-faced owl shouted and interrupted him. Shut up, shut up. Don't talk nonsense. The strange bird cursed, are you a doctor or am I a doctor? You know nothing about treatment. Shut up and don't interfere with my judgment. Come over, sit in front of me, and let me check it myself. If I don't ask you, just shut up, do you understand? The human-faced owl scolded angrily, how dare you to talk about the injury in front of me? Do you know medical skills? Ah. Uh. The strange bird was very angry, while Huafeng was scolded a little confused. But seeing the fierce and irritable appearance of the strange bird, he didn't dare to say anything. He obediently walked to the other party and sat down in front of the other party, kneeling cross-legged according to the other party's requirements. Then the human-faced owl came to Huafeng and stretched out a sharp claw on Huafeng's shoulder. After feeling for a while, it said, Boy, is this what you call, broken Tao heart? How can any, broken Tao heart be this miserable? It's a miracle that you can survive with all your muscles and veins broken, and you can still walk hmm? What's this? The human-faced owl was suddenly surprised, and seemed to notice something. After feeling for a while, it said in dismay, isn't this spring jade wine from the Wind Raiders department? Do you have some relationship with that tribe? If it weren't for this spring jade wine that maintained your vitality, you would be out of breath now. Oh no. Although the spring jade wine is rare, from the purity of spirit qi, the wine may be more than 300 years older can you also absorb it? I'm afraid that a cup of such spirit wine will directly dissipate your soul. The strange bird suddenly opened its eyes, stared at Huafeng fiercely, and said, what's the matter with the spring jade wine you drank? Where did you drink this excellent wine? The strange bird had sharp eyes, but Huafeng didn't say anything. Seeing this, Lu Heng smiled and said, I invited brother Hua to drink what? Is that wine great? The strange bird suddenly turned its head and looked at Lu Heng by the lake. A trace of fear flashed in its eyes, but it still stubbornly shouted, Your spirit wine is really powerful. If it weren't for the spirit wine hanging this boy's breath, he would have died but he was so badly injured that he could even be said to be a dead man. I can heal the living, but I can't heal the dead. I can't cure you, friend. If you want to save him, you have to go to Wugu. Only then can you save your friend with the help of that old woman. The strange bird's words made Lu Heng nod and ask, Excuse me, where is Wugu? In the South Sea, the strange bird cursed with disgust on its face, that old woman took me here to refine medicine, but she ran to the South Sea to attend the treasure conference of the Mermaid Kingdom, and left me here Ba. Old and ugly smelly woman. Why doesn't she die? The human-faced owl scolded and said, If you want to find her, you have to go to the South Mermaid Kingdom. You have this spirit wine and this fat bird. Maybe that old woman is willing to save him in short, Get out of here, I won't save this boy, and I don't have a way to save him. The strange bird was greedy at the fat bird, but it stared at Lu Heng in fear. Finally, it could only scold, in short, get out of here and don't appear in my field of vision. There are even monsters who can control lightning. Can this world be so fucking stupid? It's really bad luck. The strange bird cursed and flew into the cottage, making it clear that it didn't want to see Lu Heng again. Hua Feng stood up a little confused. Seeing that the owl had left, he had to come to Lu Heng and said, Lord Wolf God. It doesn't matter, Lu Heng said with a smile of relief, since I said I would help you, I won't give up halfway. When I finish the karma in Fushan City, I will personally send you to the South Mermaid Kingdom to find Wugu for help. Hua Feng was extremely grateful, thank you, Lord Wolf God. Lu Heng smiled and looked at the lake behind him. This dark yellow and muddy lake enchants and erodes the bones. If the body is touched, it will melt the bones and flesh, which is a first-class cold thing of Yin Qi. 
But somehow, when he saw the dark yellow and muddy lake water, he vaguely felt a strange feeling in his heart, as if something was calling him at the bottom of the lake. After thinking about it, Lu Heng said to the cottage, Hello, the water of this secluded spring is extraordinary. Can I have a look? In the cottage, the strange bird subconsciously scolded, still haven't disappeared. Motherf cough. Halfway through the scolding, the strange bird stopped abruptly and realized that the white wolf outside was an existence it couldn't provoke. Depressed for a while, it screamed sharply, you can explore it if you want. The deep spring water needed for refining medicine is available, and even if you drink the whole pool of deep spring water, it's none of my business. After scolding, the strange bird covered its head with its wings and shrank in the shadow of the cottage. It didn't want to talk to the wolf outside anymore. Lu Heng by the lake smiled when he heard the other party's words, if so, I won't be too polite now. Chapter 92 In Yu Tin Valley which was shrouded in fog, there was a strong cold evil spirit Qi. In this cold and evil spirit Qi, there were ghostly shadows wandering faintly, looming and appearing in the fog, just like the legendary netherworld and wandering souls everywhere. But there is no netherworld in this world. Therefore, the strange situation in the Yu Tian Valley aroused Lu Heng's curiosity. After arriving at the edge of the lake, he also determined that the origin of the cold evil chi in the valley was from the dark yellow muddy water. In this calm, frozen mirror-like lake, the cold evil chi diffused, affecting the weather in the whole Yu Tian Valley and even the whole mountain. But what Lu Heng was curious about was not only the evil spirit chi of the deep spring, but also the color of the water of the deep spring. Dark yellow and muddy. Such a strange color seems to be exactly the same as the legendary yellow spring. But there is no netherworld in this world, and naturally, there are no such familiar terms as yellow spring road, ghost door, and ten lords of Yama. Is it a coincidence that the water in the secluded spring is dark yellow and muddy? Or does it really bode something? Lu Heng's heart moved, and his soul appeared by the lake. When he approached the lake, he could vaguely feel a faint signal in the lake, as if something at the bottom of the lake was calling him. And he clearly felt that it was not calling his physical body, but instead his soul. Therefore, with the permission of the human-faced owl, Lu Heng directly called out his soul, and then, not surprisingly, his soul felt a stronger sense of calling. That sense of calling was hundreds of times stronger after his soul appeared. It seems that the things in the lake can't wait to fly out. His white soul looked at the dark yellow and muddy water in front of him, thought for a while, and said, Xiao Ai, Brother Hua, please take a step back. Hua Fong was a little worried, Lord Wolf God, this secluded spring. The horror of this secluded spring is well known. As long as it touches the body, it will devour the soul and destroy the bone. He was really afraid that Lu Heng would want to try and get hurt. Xiao Ai walked aside with a calm face and fully believed in Lord Wolf God. Seeing Hua Feng's worried appearance, Lu Heng couldn't help laughing, don't worry, I have my own discretion. Brother Hua just stepped back. This well, Hua Feng saw Lu Heng's calm appearance, so he had to choose to believe in the Wolf God and silently retreated to the little girl with silver hair and ears. After both of them retreated, Lu Heng, dressed in white, and the huge body of the white wolf were left by the lake. Lu Heng didn't delay and directly responded to the call in the lake. Then, Lu Heng felt an unspeakable ecstasy in his soul. The calm lake, which was originally quiet and would only sink silently even if stones were thrown, suddenly rioted. The dark yellow and muddy water of the secluded spring surged madly, as if it had been greatly stimulated. The cold and violent spirit Qi roared out on the lake. The island in the lake bore the brunt of the storm. The cold and violent wind rushed in front of him. Xiao Ai immediately stopped in front of Hua Feng and helped the young man who had lost all his cultivation to block the cold and evil spirit Qi. In the cottage, the human-faced owl, who originally covered its head and shrank in the shadow, felt the riot outside, stunned for a moment, and hurriedly flew out of the cottage. After seeing the man, girl and wolf by the lake and the water of the secluded spring beating the island crazily, the human-faced owl looked frightened. What did you do? What the fuck did you do? The human-faced owl screamed in horror, 
if this secluded spring rushes ashore and overturns the medicine furnace, then the old woman will blame us, and you and I will die. The shrill cry of the human-faced owl could be clearly heard even in the surging wind. But the man in white beside the lake seemed to have not heard. He quietly looked at the crazy surging spring water in front of him and didn't move. The dark yellow and muddy lake water slapped the island madly, but the flying spray automatically slid away when it approached the girl and the wolf and didn't fall on Lu Heng at all. And in the turbulent lake, a huge wave gradually appeared. With the emergence of the wave, a more biting cold spirit chi rushed out and raged in all directions. The human-faced owl flying in midair was rushed by the cold evil spirit, and directly flew backward, screaming bitterly. Shit! Something big! Something big! It's not my fault. It's really not my fault. Wu Gu, you smelly woman, if you want to blame, blame the wolf, don't blame me, don't blame me. The human-faced owl screamed in panic, because in front of it, the turbulent tide actually set off a huge wave several feet high, straight towards the island. The medicine furnace on the island has reached a critical moment and cannot be moved at all. But now the water of the secluded spring rushed forward. What if it damaged the medicine furnace? Damn white wolf! The human-faced owl howled angrily, I'll not die with you. It howled angrily, but it didn't dare to really rush up to find trouble with the white wolf. It could only scream and scream sadly and hoarsely, watching the huge waves of the secluded spring several feet high drown. The dark yellow and muddy water of the secluded spring was full of rich cold spirit chi. However, when the wave rushed in front of Lu Heng, it didn't rush to the island, but broke out of thin air. Then, from the broken wave, a light yellow thing flew out and flew straight to Lu Heng, dancing rapidly around Lu Heng, as if full of joy. The human-faced owl with a desperate face looked at this scene, stunned for a moment, and then it saw the yellow things flying out after the wave broke. Is that a seal? A dark yellow seal flew around Lu Heng up and down. The square shape is similar to the size of the seal in the secular world. On the seal, there are five huge characters carved. Suppress souls in the hell. Seeing this mysterious yellow seal, the human-faced owl was stunned. What is this? It was extremely surprised, there is such a thing in this secluded spring lake. Who threw it in? No one answers the question of the human-faced owl. Lu Heng looked at the requiem seal flying up and down beside him, and vaguely felt the chill in the seal. Perhaps it is the existence of the Requiem Seal that leads to the existence of the water of the secluded spring in the Yutian Valley. Thinking of this, Lu Heng's soul stretched out his right hand and gently touched the Requiem Seal. Hiss. With a light sound, a strong suction suddenly appeared in the Requiem Seal. The muddy and yellowish spring lake around the island, at this time, all soared away and turned into streams of water, all flying towards the pale yellow seal. The small requiem seal actually absorbed all the water from the spring. Visible to the naked eye, the surface of the lake around the island fell rapidly. The water of the secluded spring, which contained the chill of cold spirit chi and caused the fog in the mountain of Yutian Valley, was completely submerged in the small seal. Until a quarter of an hour later, the dark yellow requiem seal has sucked up all the water from the secluded spring. The dry bottom of the lake was exposed to the public. And the requiem seal, suspended in midair, shook, seemed to belch, and then flew towards Lu Heng. Chapter 93 Lu Heng watched the requiem seal fly in, verified his guess, and felt more at the same time. This requiem seal flipped up and down and seemed to have some connection with his soul. His heart moved, and he flew forward following that feeling. In an instant, everything in Yutian Valley quickly retreated around Lu Heng. The startled cry of the human-faced owl quickly disappeared from Lu Heng's ear. The cold darkness filled his vision. After a few breaths, Lu Heng landed lightly on an empty road of yellow soil. This road is extremely spacious, so spacious that it can even be said to be a square. But it spread to the darkness ahead, and Lu Heng didn't know where it led. Lu Heng looked and found that the road behind him had also sank into the darkness, and he didn't know where it came from. In addition to the yellow road under his feet, all he could see above his head and in all directions were deep and strange darkness, and there was no scenery except darkness. 
And on this yellow road, which leads to nowhere, there was a dark yellow and muddy spring water surging. Lu Heng's soul now was soaking his feet in the muddy water of the yellow spring, and he felt the wisps of cold air spreading into his soul. Although the cold chi was much weaker than the spring water in the Yutian Valley, which is of little use to Lu Heng, it is enough to maintain the existence of ordinary people's souls. Enough to maintain the existence of mortal souls. A guess suddenly appeared in his heart, which made Lu Heng's heart pound suddenly. He thought of some possible and looked at the yellow spring road in front of him again. In the dark and strange world, there was no longer the scenery on earth. In the cold and gloomy darkness, all you can see in your eyes is desolation and loneliness. At the end of the yellow road, Lu Heng's heart was pounding and he hurried forward. The dark yellow requiem seal followed him, but Lu Heng temporarily ignored the miraculous seal. The strange road in front of him made him think of a possibility. He was eager to test his guess, so he walked quickly in this dark world. Lu Heng's figure walked quickly on the dark yellow spring road. It didn't take too long before Lu Heng walked out of the yellow spring road with surging water and came to the end of the yellow spring road. Ahead, there was a huge pass. On both sides of the pass were black mountains. The mountains were integrated with the darkness around them. It seems that the mountains couldn't be climbed or crossed. The only path is the huge pass between the two mountains and the desolate ancient road at the end of the Yellow Spring Road. However, here, everything in Lu Heng's vision was still cold and desolate. There was no grand pass between the magnificent passes, and there were no so-called ghost soldiers and ghost generals to guard it. Lu Heng left the Yellow Road with surging springs and stepped into this magnificent pass. The cold wind came head-on, and he felt the chill similar to that of the Yutian Valley. But after crossing this majestic pass, the vast plain Lu Heng saw was dark and desolate, wild and primitive. Not to mention pavilions and halls, not even a single blade of grass or a leaf could be seen. Lu Heng couldn't feel anything except the cold chi in the air. There is nothing in this dark and cold world. Like an empty white paper, only Lu Heng, a stranger who accidentally broke in, made a slight touch on the blank. Is this the netherworld? Lu Heng murmured, looking at the dark yellow seal floating around him. He finally understood, it wasn't that this world didn't have a netherworld, but that it simply hasn't been built yet. This dark yellow seal has been silent at the bottom of the Yutian Valley for many years, but it has never met a suitable candidate. Now, seeing Lu Heng's soul, the Requiem Seal finally couldn't bear it and flew out, trying to recognize Lu Heng as the Lord of the Netherworld. Unfortunately, I'm already the god of Hanyu Mountain. Limited by the power of the Mountain God, I can't be sealed by you. In the dark wilderness, Lu Heng said with a smile, and I'm not interested in the power of the Lord of the Netherworld. I can't be limited to this ghost world. Sorry for disappointing you. Lu Heng's words shocked the dark yellow seal that followed, which seemed to be quite hit. Even the height of flight has been reduced a lot, and there is no longer excitement and joy. Lu Heng couldn't help laughing at its lost appearance and said, but you don't have to be so lost. All you want is a soul who is tough and can control the netherworld. Although this kind of existence is rare, it is not impossible to find someone. I will take you with me and try to find a suitable master for you in the future. Isn't it the same with him to receive you in the future? And although I can't accept you, I can help you build this ghost hell in the future. As for how to build this netherworld, although you have no blueprint and don't know how to start, I have a clear idea in my heart. When the time comes, I will help you transform this desolate ghost world into a real netherworld. Lu Heng's words were full of confidence and sincerity, which made people have no doubt that he really knew how to build this desolate ghost world into a real netherworld. Requiem Seal felt Lu Heng's sincerity, and immediately showed great joy, flying up and down around Lu Heng again. Lu Heng laughed and walked into the dark and desolate ghost world with this Requiem Seal. After crossing the wild world, he came to the end of the ghost world. Ahead, there was a surging river, which was so wide that you could hardly see the opposite bank. And in this desolate and strange dark world, the river side of this river was full of blood-red flowers on the other side. Those scarlet flowers were the only color in this desolate ghost world. Lu Heng stood among the flowers on the other bank. 
Although he didn't fly to the river to see it, he could clearly feel that in the middle of this gloomy river, there was a huge whirlpool silently rotating. The dark bottom of the vortex seems to lead to a world full of life and vitality. The so-called reincarnation channel. Lu Heng looked at the desolate river in front of him and shook his head. Unfortunately, there is not even a Naiha bridge now. Even if ghosts enter here by mistake, they can't reincarnate. Because the cold and gloomy river is full of shivering evil spirit Qi. Even Lu Heng dared not touch the dead river. Holding the requiem seal, Lu Heng looked at the mortal world looming across the dead river from a distance. It seems that the construction of the netherworld will fall on me in the future well, since I ran into it, I can't just treat it as if nothing happened. After patting the requiem seal beside him, Lu Heng said, I promise you, I will help you turn this desolate ghost world into a real ghost hell in the future. Chapter, 94 Lu Heng's commitment made the requiem seal extremely happy. Lu Heng said with a smile, well, it's time for us to return to the world. My relatives and friends are all waiting for me. After that, Lu Heng directly took the requiem seal back into his soul. And the seal, which has the power to suppress souls, didn't resist, and obediently let Lu Heng accept it into his soul. Lu Heng was the only one left in the dark ghost world. He took a deep look at the desolate and dead world and left directly. Although it is difficult to build a netherworld, it is a good thing for the people. Moreover, with this requiem seal, he also has a little more self-defense means. If he encounters an enemy, he can directly throw the seal out and pull the other party into the dark and desolate ghost world, which is enough to make all the enemies feel desperate. Today's netherworld has no access to the world. Unless Lu Heng is willing to let his enemies leave, they will be trapped after entering. The Yellow Spring Road can only enter but not exit. Although there is a whirlpool of reincarnation on the dead river that reaches the human world, no one can leap through the dark and weird weak water. Now the Naiha Bridge has not been built, except Lu Heng, who is in charge of the nether world, can fly over the weak water. If others step into the nether world, no matter how high their cultivation base are, they cannot fly above the weak water. As for crossing the weak water, it is even more absurd. The weak water is cold and anyone who falls into it will sink straight. Until the moment when the soul is melted by the cold and weak water, he cannot touch the bottom of the river. Unless Lu Heng uses his power to save people, there will be no life if they fall into this river. It is a first-class dangerous place. In this way, if Lu Heng encounters some enemies that are inconvenient to kill with heavenly thunder, he can use Requiem Seal to pull them into the nether world and take care of them slowly. Thinking of this, Lu Heng's mind turned. The desolate ghost world, the blooming flowers on the other bank, and the silent surging dead river all these quickly faded in Lu Heng's vision. The dark world sped by rapidly in front of him, and his soul seemed to travel quickly in the dark. After several breaths, Lu Heng felt down to earth again. He opened his eyes and found himself standing on the island in the Yutian Valley. Surrounded by the body of the White Wolf, and Xiao Ai and Huafeng guarding the side of the White Wolf. Lord Wolf God. The moment Lu Heng appeared, the little girl breathed a sigh of relief, you are finally back. Lu Heng's sudden disappearance scared Huafeng to death, thinking that Lu Heng was secretly murdered by the strange black yellow seal. But Xiao Ai was much calmer. After she was rescued by Lu Heng, her existing state was actually similar to the so-called enslaved ghost. Her soul was vaguely connected with Lu Heng, and she could feel that the wolf god had not been injured but had just left here. So although she was worried, she could calmly stay by the body of the white wolf and wait for the return of the wolf god. Now, seeing Lu Heng return to the world, although the little girl was forced to make a calm expression, her mood was not as calm as her face suggested. Lu Heng clearly felt the emotions in the little girl's heart. He couldn't help smiling and pat the little girl's head, saying, I'm back, don't worry. With that, Lu Heng looked at the strange human-faced owl not far away. At this time, the strange bird was squatting on the thatched cottage, was secretly staring at Lu Heng with a strange look. When Lu Heng saw it, the human-faced owl screamed sharply, What's the origin of you, white wolf? You can control the thunder, and now you make all the water in the secluded spring disappear you. Where on earth did you come from? 
How come I've never heard your name before? What the human-faced owl saw today has completely scared it silly. For evil creatures with evil spirit chi, thunder was the most terrible thing in the world. But now someone can control the thunder of heaven. Even the water of the secluded spring that has existed in the secluded valley since ancient times has been lost by the other party by unknown means it is the water of the secluded spring. No matter the level of cultivation, when the flesh touched the water it will melt. Even Wu Gu could only use special methods to collect some, and also treated them carefully for fear of touching it. But now the whole pool of dark spring water has been completely removed by the white wolf how did it do it? And this guy can also control the heavenly thunder such an existence has never been heard of in the past. Even among those famous ancient gods and beasts, the white wolf is probably the most ferocious. But this is also what human-faced owls cannot understand. If such a ferocious and terrifying ancient divine animal really existed, it would have heard Gu Wu mention it. But now it's weird that such a terrible existence does exist, and it has never heard of his reputation it's impossible. The spirit mountain recorded many vicious animals in the world. If there really is a divine beast that can control the sky thunder, it is impossible that the ten witches of the spirit mountain don't know about it. It can't be that he just appeared recently. The human-faced owl stared at Lu Heng and said, Where on earth did you come from? What is your reason for coming to this world? What is the origin of the dark yellow seal in the deep spring? Why did it fly out as soon as you appeared? Was the seal one you left here before? But this secluded spring existed here long ago, and this valley has existed since the beginning of the human era in the world. But you threw the seal in here before the human era started you old monster, what era are you from? The human-faced owl was afraid and frightened, and its feathers trembled all over. Birth, old age, illness, and death are the order of heaven and earth. No one has ever been able to disobey it. But you can live so long without dying you old monster. You are going to be punished by heaven. Do you know that? If you disobey the order of life and death, you will be punished by heaven. The human-faced owl was scared silly, and screamed in horror. The exaggerated cry made Lu Heng quite speechless. Because he found that after the human-faced owl's nonsense was finished, even Hu Feng looked at him with strange eyes. Lu Heng had a headache and said, You strange bird have a strong imagination ability unfortunately, although you are logical, you guessed it all wrong. I'm not the old monster you think I am, so don't worry about me being punished by heaven. I'm still young. Lu Heng's words are of course true. Even if you add the age of the wolf demon, he is only more than 200 years old. He is really young compared to other monsters in this world. And you don't have to pretend to talk to me, Lu Heng said. I'm not as terrible as you think, I won't do anything to you, and I don't have any conspiracy. So you can stop a little bit and stop barking. Lu Heng said helplessly, your cry is too unpleasant to hear. It is simply mental pollution. Chapter, 95 The human-faced owl's cry was shrill and unpleasant, but Lu Heng could see at a glance that this guy was acting and was not really frightened. This strange bird's deliberate howling is nothing more than pretending to be crazy and trying to trap Lu Heng's words. Why is Lu Heng so clear about it? In fact, it's very simple, because the state of being really scared is not like this. Among the many people Lu Heng has met, not a few are frightened by the heavenly thunder. However, it's really the first time that a person's acting is so pompous that it can be seen through at a glance. Looking at the strange bird on the thatched cottage with some laughter and some helplessness, Lu Heng said, in a word, it's over, and we'll leave. Before I touched the spring, I asked your opinion. If Miss Wu Gu comes back and sees that the spring is completely dry, she won't blame me. Of course, this secluded spring is originally an ownerless thing, and it is not owned by Miss Wu Gu alone. I believe she will not trouble me. Lu Heng arched his hands with a smile and said, The mountain is high and the road is long. Let's say goodbye. Brother Bird, if we have a chance, we will see each other again. On the thatched cottage, Lu Heng said that the human-faced owl pretended to be crazy and foolishly, and then it stopped acting. Instead, it squatted there angrily and stared at Lu Heng. You old monster, don't think you can fool me with a few words hum. I can see at a glance that you are not an ordinary person. 
If something important happens in the future, you must protect me. After all, I told you where to look for the witch. Without my guidance, you are headless flies and can only bump around so you owe me a favor. The human-faced owl shouted sharply, if I go to beg for your help in the future, you can't turn me out. The human-faced owl spoke eloquently, but Lu Heng was stunned by its brazen words. Isn't this guy too good at milking a small fortune? He looked at the strange bird in front of him with great surprise and had a further understanding of the shamelessness of the strange bird. If this guy really goes to Hanyu Mountain to join him in the future, can Hanyu Mountain be a clean place anymore? There was a silent silence. Lu Heng sighed and patted Hua Feng on the shoulder. He said, this is the truth, but brother bird, you must understand that you saved brother Hua, not me. If you want to ask someone for a return in the future, go to brother Hua. Lu Heng said with a smile, brother Hua is a hero of the insect. He can be called a dragon among people. Now, although he is in a dilemma, sooner or later, he will soar to the sky. He is the real potential stock. If you want to ask for help in the future, go and ask him. I believe Brother Huo will not turn you away right, Brother Huo. Lu Heng smiled. What can Hua Feng say about this? He could only smile bitterly, arched his hand at the strange bird on the thatched cottage, and said, what the wolf god said is very true. The kindness of your guidance today will be repaid by Hua Feng in the future. Hua Feng took the initiative to take care of the matter, and the strange bird couldn't say anything else for a moment. It can only stare at the young man in front of it and scold, you have a lot of bullshit. Does this have anything to do with you? Why do children get in when adults talk? I would have let you die if I knew. What can a little trash do for me in the future? I don't need you to save me even if I'm skinned. The human-faced owl had a bad attitude, but Hua Feng just smiled bitterly and didn't refute, but silently kept the matter in mind. If there is a chance in the future, he must repay the kindness of this strange bird. Lu Heng smiled and said goodbye to the human-faced owl on the cottage, so, we'll leave goodbye, brother bird. After that, Lu Heng didn't stop but turned to walk outside the Yutian Valley. He really didn't want to waste time with this strange bird. While Lu Heng turned and left, Xiao Ai naturally followed, and Hua Feng hurriedly followed up with the bow horse, afraid to stay alone with the human-faced owl. Although the strange bird had the kindness of instructing him, it was full of evil spirit, had a bad temper, and behaved weirdly. Who knows if this strange bird will vent its anger at him. And above the thatched cottage, the human-faced owl no longer makes strange noises. It stared at the figure of Lu Hang and others who left, and stood on the cottage all the time, afraid to move. After the breath of Lu Hang completely disappeared from the secluded valley, the human-faced owl was relieved. With a slight flap of wings, the human-faced owl flew down from the roof of the cottage and landed on the edge of the furnace, muttering. Controlling the heavenly thunder and being able to live for a long time why does this world allow such an old monster to live? You still say that you are young. Ba do you really think I am stupid? The Requiem Seal in the Netherworld has great power. If it is not yours, how can it come directly to you as soon as you appear? Staring in the direction of Lu Hang's departure, the strange bird muttered endlessly, This old monster, it's false to send that man to seek medical treatment, but it's true to come to Yutian Valley to get back this Requiem Seal. If it hadn't been for my alertness, I'm afraid I would have been killed by this old monster. Wu Gu, this old woman, is really too much. You left me here to look at the medicine furnace, which caused me to run into such a horrible old monster damn it. This time, it's definitely not going to be solved by one or two medicine meals. In front of the steaming medicine furnace, the human-faced owl cursed angrily for a long time. After half a sound, the human-faced owl was relieved to see that the white wolf didn't turn back to kill him. Damn scary, really fucking scary. Looking at the direction of the valley mouth with fear, the human-faced owl murmured, if I didn't need to watch the medicine furnace, I would never have stayed in this damn place. This old monster has been living since ancient times, how did he do it? Even the heavenly thunder is under his command. Of course, he is not afraid of heaven's wrath. This old monster is himself heaven's curse. But this old monster has been hiding for so many years, and even the ten witches in the spirit mountain have no records of him. 
he has hidden so deep, but now he doesn't hide there must be a conspiracy. Walking anxiously around in front of the medicine furnace, the human-faced owl murmured, but now this old monster is heading towards the South Sea, and it is likely to bump into the old woman Wugu no. I must inform the old woman in advance to be careful. The human-faced owl cursed with an ugly face, if that old woman bumps into this old monster unprepared, something will definitely happen. Chapter, 96 Outside the Yutian Valley, Lu Hang and three others slowly emerged from the fog and went straight to the outside of the mountain. Lu Hang didn't know the worry of the human-faced owl. Even if he knew it, he could only sigh in silence. Why did no one believe the truth these days? People can only believe what they are willing to believe. As for the white fog that enveloped the Yutian Valley, it has begun to dissipate gradually. The source of the white mist that covers the whole valley is the water of the spring in the valley. However, now all the water in the spring is collected in the Requiem Seal. Without the source of the cold air, the fog in the valley will gradually become unsustainable. Although the process of dispersal may not be so fast, it will last about a year and a half. And when all the mists are completely dissipated, the Utian Valley, which once had horrible rumors, will become an ordinary valley. Of course, this is not a bad thing. The cold evil chi in the Yutian Valley gathered many souls who died tragically nearby and bound them here. However, this valley is not a real netherworld after all. Those souls may have some consciousness in the beginning. But with the passage of time, these souls will quickly forget the memories and feelings they were born with, leaving only the deepest resentment and instinct, jealousy, and resentment against those who live. Until the moment they soul dissipated, the souls in these mists were tortured in resentment and pain. It is precisely because of the hatred and jealousy towards the living that the ghosts in the Utian Valley attack living people. Now, the disappearance of the Utian Valley is a relief for these tortured souls. Lu Heng knows this in his heart, so he has no sense of guilt for his unintentional destruction of a historic site. After he left Yutian Valley with Huafeng and Xiao Ai, he went directly to the Yoji city outside the mountain. Lu Heng said, Now let's go to the Fushan city in the south. After I have finished the karma in the past, we can go to the South Sea. When walking out of the mountain, Lu Heng looked around nervously and confirmed that there was no red haired woman waiting in the wilderness. He was relieved. It seems that the red woman has stopped pestering. Although he didn't know the reason for the other party's entanglement, Lu Hang could feel that the red haired woman's cultivation was extremely high, which gave him an indescribable sense of oppression. You know, even the two priests of the Li tribe have never given Lu Hang this feeling. Therefore, Lu Hang is very cautious. Since he doesn't want to offend this mysterious woman, he doesn't want to entangle with her. Huafeng asked, Lord Wolf God, do we have to go in a hurry? When asked this, Huafeng became worried. Now that he has lost all his cultivation, it's really hard for him to lie on the back of the bow horse and cross the mountains. The Wolf God gave him some peach blossom wine on the first night. Later, he deliberately took care of him and slowed down his speed when he can't keep up. As a result, every time Huafeng's experience bumps and tiredness a little wine are just enough for him to bear he doesn't need to take peach blossom wine at all. Huafeng is bitter in his heart, and he really doesn't want to drive fast anymore. Lu Heng glanced at him and said with a smile, now that we've got rid of the red-haired woman, let's travel all the way south. It's just right to see the scenery of the southern plain. The water system is well developed and the vehicles and boats are crisscross. This water town in the south has quite a different style, which is worth a good visit. Lu Heng's words relieved Huafeng, who hurriedly introduced them. The wolf god is right. The water town in the south of the Fire Pass country is indeed quite unique. And so, we walk all the way down south. After we arrive at Yuji City, we can take a boat from Yuji City. Only through traveling in a different way, can we fully experience the softness of this southern water town. Sitting in a boat, going down the river, Watching the green mountains on both sides retreat, and eating a few fish in the river is also quite a leisurely journey. In order to help the wolf god master strengthen his determination to play, Huafeng gave a good introduction to the advantages and interests of taking a boat. Lu Heng shook his head and thought of the tour guide in the past. Okay, 
Okay, let's go to Yuji City to transfer to a boat and go down to the mountain in the south, Lu Heng said with a smile. There's no need to introduce it. I already know that traveling by boat can be quite the pleasurable experience. Huafeng smiled and scratched his head. In this way, the two people, a wolf and a bow horse went straight to the wharf of Yuji City. However, although the wharf is located outside the city, there are not many ships and merchants. In order not to meet some unlucky cultivators, Lu Hang and Xiao Ai didn't go to the dock, but went down the river and waited for Huafeng to find a boat to pick them up. Anyways, among them, only Huafeng had fire pass country coins which can be used to charter the boat south. Under the sunshine in the afternoon, the wind is strong along the river. In this sweltering summer, only the wind along the river can make people feel a little cool. Unconsciously, Lu Heng have realized they had left Hanyu Mountain for more than a month. Lu Heng said with a smile, I wonder how that white ape, Sun Yen is doing in the mountains. If the peaches in the peach garden are ripe, I'm afraid we will only see empty branches when we go back. Xiao Ai shook her head and said, Sun Yen dared not. Although he is naughty, he recognized his dignity. He could not touch the peach without the permission of the wolf god and the peach could not mature in a short time. Lu Heng sighed and said, I understand too, but alas. In this strange world, no one can pick up a joke or understand it. It's really boring. After all, Sun Yen is not the real monkey king in the famous novel The Journey to the West. Looking at Xiao Ai's serious face, Lu Heng shook his head with a wry smile, somewhat disappointed. To tell the truth, Lu Heng's asking Sun Yen to guard the peach garden is actually a bit bad taste. Unfortunately, these stories cannot be shared with Xiao Ai. After all, there is no heaven, no netherworld, and no difference between cultivators and mortals. Cultivators wander in the world of mortals, sleep and eat with ordinary people, and even the method of cultivation can be seen everywhere. As long as there is a fate, anyone can learn it. Even if Lu Heng's stories were told, no one would understand or believe them. And Lu Heng is afraid that if he randomly tells a few myths and stories, then the content of these stories will be twisted into strange things by the people of this world. Therefore, many jokes and amusements can only be entertained by Lu Heng himself. Alas helpless, helpless, Lu Heng shook his head and sighed. I hope the journey to Fushan City can have a good result. With this, Lu Heng looked at the direction of Fushan City behind the mountains and could not help but smile bitterly. That's what he said, but Lu Heng has no confidence in his heart. After all, under the entanglement of karma, he actually has some feelings. It's not so easy to repay the kindness after arriving in Fushan City. The road ahead is hard. Fortunately, he picked up the Requiem Seal, so he had a new self-defensive means. Even if he meets a powerful enemy, he is not afraid for the time being. Chapter, 97 Although the god-slaying heavenly thunder is strong and the heavenly thunder sword is sharp, its attack can only be used a couple of times. After a few hit, it would be turned into an ordinary magic weapon. Moreover, the incubation period of the god-slaying heavenly thunder is too long. In contrast, the Requiem Seal, a magic weapon that can be used regularly, makes Lu Heng feel more secure. Walking along the river with Xiao Ai, looking at the waves and the boats on the river bank, Lu Heng didn't have to wait long. Lord Wolf God, the ship is coming. Hua Feng voice sounded from behind him. Lu Heng and Xiao Ai stopped to look back and saw a small boat approaching the shore. Hua Feng was standing at the bow of the boat, waving to them on the shore. Soon, the boat drew near the river. But because there is no dock on the river the boat can't come closer. However, Lu Heng and Xiao Ai didn't need the small boat to dock to get on board. They walked directly onto the water and stepped on the surging river to get on the boat. However, after Lu Heng and Xiao Ai boarded the ship, they found that the bow horse was missing from the cabin. The bow horse, who is always inseparable from Huafeng, is nowhere to be seen and the luggage originally carried on the bow horse was stacked in the cabin. Lu Heng asked curiously, Brother Hua, where is your horse? Hua Feng sighed and said, that guy hated to take the boat so he left, he went south along the wilderness and he will meet me in Fushan City. Lu Heng was amused and said, your horse is really good at self-management. 
Hua Feng smiled bitterly and thought that the wolf god was making fun of him. Standing at the bow, Lu Han glanced at the boat in front of him. The small hull is about thirty feet long, and it looked like the two sides of the middle hull are built with wooden boards, which can be used to shield from the wind and rain. In addition, there are tables, chairs, windows and curtains in the cabin. Lu Hang nodded and was satisfied. Yes, the boat is light and convenient. It's really good. But the boatman. Lu Hang looked helplessly towards the stern of the boat and said to the boatman wearing a bamboo hat, Girl, aren't you tired of playing? Lu Hang's words startled Hua Feng. Xiao Ai even stopped in front of Lu Hang without saying a word and looked coldly at the direction of the stern. In the eyes of the crowd, the boatman who was standing at the stern of the boat rowing shrugged her shoulders. She took off her bamboo hat and showed her long red hair, smiling at Lu Hang and others. I didn't expect to meet you again here just a few days apart ha 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 the timing, fate is really wonderful. The red-haired woman wore a bright smile, a coir raincoat, and a bamboo hat. If she didn't have such a good temperament, she would really look like a fisherman who lives on the river. Lu Heng felt a little helpless. You have profound cultivation and noble status. Why bother to be a boatman here to tease us? If you have something important, you can say it straight. Why do you have to do this? Lu Heng was really defeated by this woman. The childishness of this woman far exceeded his expectation. When he was in Hanyu Mountain, all the masters he met were traditional masters such as Gong Shu Jie, Li Pe, and Li Ju, who were unsmiling, mature, prudent, and straightforward. He had never seen such a scene now. Is this woman a three-year-old? Do you have to compete? Not only did she chase us all the way from Baishir City, but now she even plays the boatman. Lu Hang had no choice but to have a headache, but the redhead woman was smiling. She said with a smile, My guest, what you said is wrong. It's a way for me to make a living on this water. It's just a coincidence to meet you again. Besides, Brother Hua came to hire me on his own initiative. Why do you say that I'm pestering you? I haven't married yet, please don't make any more jokes. If I can't get married in the future, will you be responsible? The red-haired woman laughed briskly, but Lu Heng smiled bitterly. Yes, yes, it's my fault. Since I have hired you, I'll trouble you to continue to steer, Lu Heng said helplessly. After that, he ignored the childish red-haired woman and sat down in the bow of the boat. Seeing Lu Heng's attitude, Hua Feng and Xiao Ai also temporarily put down their guard and didn't speak much. However, both of them stayed close to Lu Heng and dared not stay too far away. In this way, the boat went down the river, and the two people and a wolf sat in the bow of the boat, while the red-haired woman stood at the stern of the boat and steered the boat, singing from time to time. That song is a song of the sea. She sounds like an ordinary fisherman's girl. Hua Feng whispered, Lord Wolf God, why don't we just leave? Lu Heng opened his eyes and looked at him. He sighed, no matter whether it's a blessing or a curse, we can't avoid it. Take it easy. It's okay. If something really happens, he can just invite this red-haired woman to visit the netherworld. It has no impact on Lu Heng. Now holding the heavenly thunder sword and holding the requiem seal, Lu Heng has enough confidence to deal with this red-haired woman. And the other party is so entangled, he also wants to see how naive this woman can be. Thinking of this, Lu Heng gradually relaxed. Looking at the torrential Pengjiang River and the ships that come and go on the river bank, Lu Heng said with a smile, the traffic on the Pengjiang River can be regarded as prosperous. It's just that most of the people on the boat are ordinary people. Are there not so many demons in the wilderness of the south? Otherwise, how dare they travel like this? Lu Heng was full of surprise, while Hua Feng explained. The wolf god, there is a river god named Gu Zhou in the Pengjiang River. It is said that Gu Zhou is noble and benevolent. Since she gained the Tao 300 years ago, she has made an agreement with the previous Fire Pass Country Emperor to voluntarily take care of the people on both sides of the Pengjiang River. She restrained the demons in the river, drove away the demons on both sides, and built the Pengjiang River into a water hub connecting many large cities in the south of the Fire Pass Country. On the Pengjiang River, there is no need to be afraid of demons and cannibals. 
Although there are strange animals in the wilderness on the shore, the boats are hardly attacked. So even ordinary people dare to travel on the Pengjiang River. Huo Feng explained with a smile, it is also for the protection of the goddess of the river that there are river temples on both sides of the Pengjiang River, and the incense is very prosperous. Huo Feng's explanation surprised Lu Heng. How can there be such a great river god in the torrent of water? It is indeed admirable that she has worked so hard to protect the peace of this area. Hui Feng's admiration came from his heart. After all, it is not easy to protect such a long river for a long time. Just as Lu Heng finished sighing, the red-haired woman at the stern of the boat sneered and said. Guzhou. Merciful. That's just a tall tale. What is Guzhou in the Pengjiang River? Do you really think that she is a water god with noble nature and a merciful heart? Her nature is vicious, her mind is narrow, her temperament is jealous, and her personality is low. Even among demons, she is a rare bitch. Before it became a cultivator, it was an evil beast that liked to eat living people. It lived in the river and attacked ships on the river all the year round and occasionally killed the living people on the river. The heads of the living people it ate were enough to be piled up to be a temple. Three hundred years ago, it was the beginning of its Taoist cultivation. After that, it was even eviler in its mind and wanted to bring chaos to the Yoji city, leading the demons in the river to rush to the shore. If the previous emperor hadn't happened to meet friends in the Yuji city at that time, and repelled this vicious monster in time, the Yuji city would have become a dead city. The red-haired woman, while swinging the boat leisurely, spoke with disdain about the old secret. What is most ridiculous is that after Gu Zhou was seriously injured by the previous emperor, it not only didn't have resentment, but also fell in love, and kept pestering the previous emperor. Such despicable behavior is really eye-opening. In order to pester the previous emperor, it threatened the emperor of the lives of the people on both sides of the Pengjiang River, forcing the previous emperor to build a temple, set up incense for it, and help it to become a river god. After that, she was even more aggressive and wanted to marry the emperor. She even made trouble in the capital of the country, causing the previous emperor's wife to lose face. Her brazenness is unparalleled in the world. On the Pengjiang River, the woman at the helm scoffed at the water god in the river. The unbridled appearance made Hua Feng's face turn pale. He was afraid that the river would burst and capsize the boat in the river in the next second. Chapter 98 on the river protected by the river god, the red-haired woman ridiculed and criticized the river god with disdain. Even Lu Heng thinks this kind of thing is a bit outrageous. He looked at the red-haired woman at the stern of the boat and said, Girl, aren't you afraid the boat will capsize when you ridiculed and slandered the name of the river god? If the boat capsized and caused us to fall into the river, you will lose money. The red-haired woman smiled and said, My dear guest, let me tell you something. There are many taboos about living on the water. For example, you can never say, capsize. Even if you want to say it, you should replace it with another word you have made a taboo. If anything really happens to this ship, it's definitely not my problem, but your fault. It's you who will lose money. As for sarcasm and slander how can it be sarcasm and slander? I just told the truth of the year, without any exaggeration. The red-haired woman said righteously, even if the river demon comes to confront me, I'm not afraid at all. This okay, it is your choice to say whatever you want, Lu Heng said, shaking his head wordlessly. But if the river god really comes, I will declare in advance that this has nothing to do with us. Please don't involve us in this mess. The red-haired woman smiled and said, The wolf god, you must be joking. Even if the river demon really dares to come and see the wolf god sitting on the bow of the ship, I'm afraid it will be too scared such that it will flee on the spot. How dare it be so bold? The compliments of the red-haired woman seem sincere. Unfortunately, Lu Heng only rolled up his eyes and Xiao Ai stared at her coldly. The boat continued to go south. Lu Heng lay on the bow deck and closed his eyes. Xiao Ai, carrying the heavenly thunder sword on her back, stood in front of Lu Heng. Her icy eyes remained on the women at the stern of the ship to monitor her every move. Hui Feng hid behind Lu Heng, crossed his knees and closed his eyes, and continued to do useless efforts to comb the qi in his body. Lu Heng was thinking about whether to hit the red-haired woman with a bolt of lightning, 
but after thinking about it, he felt that she didn't really have bad intentions. As a punishment, the heavenly thunder would be too much. Moreover, this woman's cultivation is profound. He's afraid that six bolts of lightning are not enough. Why not throw her into the netherworld? I haven't tried the requiem seal since I got it. Why don't I test it with the red-haired girl in front of me? Once the idea came out, it could not be stopped and quickly filled Lu Heng's heart. He opened his eyes and glanced at the red-haired woman at the stern. There was silence for several minutes. In the cool evening wind, the red-haired woman was swinging the boat leisurely and singing loudly. The light and pleasant songs echoed on both sides of the Pangjiang River, with a free and easy temperament. Seeing the other party's appearance, Lu Heng sighed and closed his eyes again. Forget it. She didn't do much. It seems a bit too much to throw her into the netherworld. Look again. Lu Heng reluctantly suppressed the urge to test the seal, and once again entered the meditation and continued to study the art of hiding the spirit and storing qi. The red-haired woman at the stern of the ship suddenly felt an icy chill run down her spine. She subconsciously looked at the white wolf at the bow of the ship, but saw that he had closed his eyes and was cultivating. But the feeling just now was definitely not an illusion. When she reached her present state of cultivation, she will have a certain feeling about her own body. And this sudden feeling of panic does it mean that I can't drink the peach blossom wine? Hiss. Thinking of this possibility, the red-haired woman could not help taking a cold breath and feeling nervous. If that's the case, it's too bad. With a heavy heart, the woman's singing was no longer free and easy. She sat at the stern of the boat with a melancholy face, shaking the oars, and worried. Even the wine in the gourd was no longer delicious. In this way, the red-haired woman sat at the stern of the boat and sighed. The boat sailed down the river, passing through the mountains. The green hills on both sides of the river were gradually covered by the night. By the time the stars and the moon hung high, there was no light on the Pengjiang River. The dark and gloomy surface of the river had a certain frightening gloom. The red-haired woman docked her boat at a small bend of the river, wanting to spend the night there. After she stopped the boat, she took out the fishing line from the cabin and threw it into the river. But after three times in a row, no fish was caught. The red-haired woman was quite dissatisfied with this. Not even a fish. How can that be? Throwing aside the fishing net, the woman took out the fishing rod directly and said, I don't believe there isn't even a fish in the river. Then she guided the hook to the mouth of the snake wrapped around her shoulder and said, Little fire, come and take a bite. The lazy fire snake glanced at her, then reluctantly opened its snout and squeezed out a drop of venom. After the translucent venom dripped, it was directly solidified on the hook, vaguely emitting an attractive fragrance. The red-headed woman then hummed, waved the fishing rod, and threw the hook into the river, saying, now it depends on which fish is lucky enough to taste the snake's saliva. Lu Heng looked at the scene silently and couldn't help but say, are you going to poison the fish that got hooked? Even if the fish got hooked and ate the snake venom, I'm afraid you can't eat it. The red-haired woman looked at Lu Heng in surprise and said, doesn't the wolf god know about fire snake saliva? It's a rare magical medicine. Although it's a little toxic, it's rare in the world. If a fish eats this fire snake saliva, it will certainly make its meat more delicious and the cooking tastes better. The woman boasted about her fire snake, but time went by. Unconsciously, an hour has passed, but the bait floating in the river has never moved. While Huafong had already taken out the dry food from his luggage and filled his stomach. The red-haired woman looked at the dark river and said with disbelief, it's impossible. With the fire snake saliva as bait, not even one fish can be attracted. How can that be? She pulled up the fish hook from time to time to check, but she saw that the drop of fire snake saliva was always frozen on the fish hook and didn't disappear. Lu Heng on the side couldn't help laughing, maybe you offended the god of the river, so you couldn't catch any fish. The red haired woman sniffed at this saying. How can it be? There must be no fish in the river here if you don't believe it, you can try it. Even if you come, you can't catch any fish. Lu Heng couldn't help laughing, but didn't refuse. Then I'll try. The voice fell, and a figure in white appeared from the boat. The cold moonlight fell on Lu Heng silently. 
His soul, which was completely composed of sky thunder, seems to be shining in the bright moonlight, with a certain strange ethereal temperament. The red-headed woman looked at this scene in surprise and couldn't help but open her eyes. Soul. The wolf god's soul is actually in a human shape. Chapter, 99. The consternation of the red-haired woman was not hypocrisy. She was really shocked by Lu Heng's soul. While she was in Baishir city, she heard the traders talk about the extraordinary nature of the wolf god, but they didn't mention that the soul of the wolf god was human. However, this is also normal. After all, those businessmen didn't know how to cultivate and don't know the meaning of this matter. With a non-human body, his soul even condensed into a human form. The red-haired woman's eyes became solemn. This unheard of thing completely breaks common sense. She could not help thinking of the conjecture that Gong Shu Jia had mentioned at the beginning. The wolf god may be an old monster that survived in ancient times. Now he rashly enters the world, perhaps he wants to walk an unusual path. That's why he became a mountain god in the world to protect the living creatures. This should be an attempt he made. However, Gong Shu Jie didn't see the wolf god's soul at that time, so he only guessed this possibility. But today, she witnessed the wolf god's soul. This human-shaped soul represents the power to break common sense, and also represents that the road that the wolf god is going to take is not just imagination, but has already been achieved. Moreover, from what her magic eyes saw, the terrible scene of thousands of thunders surging in the sky indicates the extraordinary nature of this soul. Ordinary people's soul is an extension of the spirit, and it is fragile and thin compared to the body. However, the wolf god's soul is an exception. The soul which is completely constructed by the heavenly thunder, is even more awe-inspiring than the body on the side. Such a strange and unreasonable situation makes the red-haired woman have to think more. She took a deep look at Lu Hang and stopped talking. Lu Hang took the fishing rod handed by the red-haired woman with a smile and sat on the bow of the boat, waiting for the fish to bite. Lu Hang guessed that she must have had a quarrel with the god of the Pengjiang River. As for the god of the river, she didn't even need to take the initiative to pay attention to it. As long as she used her powers a little, the red-haired woman would not be able to catch a single fish in the Pangjiang River for the rest of her life. Otherwise, it can't explain why the so-called fire snake saliva can't attract any fish. Not long after Lu Heng sat down, the floating on the river really moved. Lu Heng smiled and said, It seems that I am lucky. The red-haired woman stared at this scene suspiciously, and obviously guessed something. She can't catch fish in the river with all kinds of means, but Lu Heng just sat down and caught a fish the significance of this is self-evident. In the cold moonlight, Lu Heng had finished with a smile. He doesn't have much fishing experience, and naturally he doesn't have any finishing skills. Only a little heavenly thunder spread out along the fishing line, paralyzing the fish in the river. Clatter. Under the moonlight, a dark shadow was pulled out of the water by the fishing line and flew into the hands of Lu Heng. That's a bird. Lu Heng looked at the bird in his hand in surprise. He didn't expect such a result. Why can I catch a bird in the water? This is totally out of line with common sense. By moonlight, Lu Heng could see the bird in his hand. It's not very big. It's about the size of an ordinary eagle. In this world full of strange animals, it can be considered a little guy. With its sharp beak and sharp claws, except for a strange horn on the top of its head, this is an ordinary eagle. Xiao Ai glanced at one side and said, this is a Gu eagle. Although it is the shape of an eagle, it is a pure aquatic animal. It is an aquatic creature. Its cry is like the cry of a baby and it likes eating people. It is an extremely rare animal. However, the Gu Eagle is too small, said Xiao Ai. It seems to be in its infancy and not very old. Xiao Ai's explanation solved Lu Hang's confusion. He looked at the Gu Eagle in his hand and said, This is the Gu Eagle, but the water god in the river is actually a Gu Eagle. Maybe this Gu Eagle has something to do with the goddess of the river. With this, Lu Hang looked at the red haired woman beside him. However, under the moonlight, the red-haired woman stared at the Gu Eagle in Lu Hang's hands and seemed more surprised than Lu Hang. Lu Hang was surprised by this strange reaction and asked, 
you seem to be more surprised than me. Is there anything wrong with this little goo eagle? The red-haired woman was awakened by Lu Hang's voice. She took a deep look at this young goo eagle and said. There is only one goo eagle left in the river long ago, that is, the river god. And the one in your hand can only be her offspring ha. The red-haired woman sneered and said, unexpectedly, she gave birth to a child silently. The so-called forever love was finally defeated by a hundred years of loneliness I don't know who she was born with, huh? She walked into the cabin with a sneer and said, if you catch the son of the river god, I'm afraid there will be trouble. As soon as the red-haired woman's words fell, the river in front of Lu Heng exploded. In the dark water of the river, two small human figures unexpectedly rose. They were two little girls who looked the same age as Xiao Ai. However, their faces were fierce and their skin was covered with fine scales. It is clear that they are the monsters in the river. After the two little girls emerged from the river, they glared at Lu Heng angrily. Let go of our young master. The little girl on the left angrily said, You. How dare you rob the son of the river god on the Pangjiang River how dare you. The little girl on the right had a calm expression, but her eyes were extremely fierce. Let go of our young master. Otherwise, I will sink your boat and throw you into the river to feed the fish. As soon as the two little girls appeared, they were very aggressive. If it wasn't for Lu Heng holding the comatose goo eagle in his hand, they would have rushed to kill. Looking at these two little girls, Lu Heng had a headache. This is a misunderstanding, he said. Two girls, I will. Poo slash poo. Lu Heng's speech was interrupted by two consecutive vomits of blood. Obviously, the people on the boat didn't move, but the two little girls in the river suddenly threw up blood and flew out as if they had been hit hard. Finally, in Lu Heng's astonished eyes, the two little girls fell heavily into the river and exploded two crisp water on the dark river. Lu Heng's expression turned helpless. He knew what happened. All the way, they must have observed him with their magic eyes do you have to use your magic eyes to see me? Standing at the bow of the boat with a comatose goo eagle, Lu Heng was helpless to see the bloody water gradually rippling in the river. Can't you wait for me to finish my words? Chapter 100. On the Pangjiang River, the water was surging. The sound of two girls falling into the river was clear and harsh, even if they were far apart. Looking at the blood water rippling in the river, Hua Feng behind Lu Hang shuddered violently, as if he had stirred up a certain shadow in his heart. He looked at the blood water rippling in the river with sympathy and pity, and seemed to feel the pain of the two girls. Miserable. Too miserable. They used their magic eyes to see the wolf god it's too miserable. Although Huafeng could see that they have a high cultivation base, so even if they looked directly at the wolf god, their Tao heart wouldn't break. But even if they can hold on, they are probably dying. Moreover, the souls were so badly injured that it would be almost impossible to recover without eight or ten years of recuperation. At the thought of this, Huafeng shivered again, and his fear deepened. Lu Hang on the bow could feel more. In the river, two girls directly vomited blood and fled after falling into the river. Although they looked miserable, they wouldn't die directly. At least it's much better than the situation of Huafeng. Moreover, the two little girls were lovely, but their bodies were actually two black and ferocious fat catfish. No wonder they were so fierce. Hey is this revenge? Lu Hang stood at the bow of the boat with the comatose Goo Eagle. He was helpless. Who could he explain to? This is really just a misunderstanding, but it turned out like this it's really unlucky. Needless to say, Lu Hang knew that the two little girls who fled had gone to seek help. What their magic eyes saw must have scared them to death. The next person to appear is probably the water god in the river. Lu Heng just doesn't know if the Pengjiang water god is really as fierce and terrifying as the red-haired woman said. Lu Heng looked at the cabin and said, Girl, why are you silent? Since Gu Eagle was caught by Lu Heng, the red-haired woman's mood has become more gloomy. Now she is hiding directly in the cabin, and didn't come out at all. When Lu Heng asked, the red-haired woman curled her lips and said, I don't want to meet the Gu Eagle. Wolf God, you can take care of her at will. No one will care if you kill her anyway. 
the biggest backer of the Goo Eagle has passed away a hundred years ago. Now, there is no one for them to rely on and there is no need to worry about anything. When the red-haired woman said this, she was full of malicious intent. Why should I kill her? Even though the river god once did evil and eat people, she has indeed maintained the peace of the Pengjiang River for three hundred years. I think she can be reasonable even if she is fierce. Lu Heng said this and took a look at Xiao Ai. The heavenly thunder soared on Xiao Ai's back was silent under the moonlight. There was no evil spirit qi and it seemed to be just an ordinary iron. However, it is definitely not necessary to use the heavenly thunder sword. The river god has protected the land for three hundred years, and Lu Heng cannot kill her. However, if she is really unreasonable and wants to kill him, he can only invite her to visit the underworld for the time being. When she calms down, Lu Heng will talk again. There must be room for maneuver. Having made up his mind, Lu Heng looked at the Gu Eagle in his hand. This little Gu Eagle was still in a coma. Although the fire snake saliva is a miraculous medicine, it also has some poison. After eating the saliva, affected by the poison, the Gu Eagle was stunned by a ray of thunder emitted by Lu Heng. It won't wake up in a short time. Lu Heng curiously sensed the inside of the Gu Eagle, but found that the situation was somewhat different than he predicted. The Gu Eagle is tens of years old. Lu Heng said in surprise, judging from the bone age, I'm afraid he's over sixty years old. Why is it still so young? Lu Heng looked at Xiao Ai and asked, Xiao Ai, is the growth cycle of Gu Eagles very slow? Xiao Ai shook her head and said, it's not slow. It's similar to ordinary animals. If it was really a sixty-year-old Gu Eagle, it would have been a ferocious monster with a length of tens of thousands of feet. Therefore, Lu Heng felt deeply and found that he was not wrong. The bone age of this Gu Eagle is really more than sixty years, but its shape has always maintained the appearance of its childhood. However, Lu Heng found out the reason after deeply sensing that there were two opposing forces entangled in the Gu Eagle's body. One of them is a kind of evil qi, which is extremely fierce. On the other hand, the other qi is magnificent, warm and peaceful. Two diametrically opposed forces were entangled in the body of the little Gu Eagle, constantly destroying the body of the Gu Eagle, but constantly repairing the damaged part. This situation is somewhat similar to that of Xiao Ai. It's just that there is a heavenly thunder in Xiao Ai's body. The heavenly thunder gathers two distinct forces, and instead forms a good positive cycle, which makes Xiao Ai's cultivation far beyond ordinary people. But the Gu Eagle is much more miserable. The two different forces are fighting each other, and the evil Qi is far better than the wolf demon's two hundred years of evil Qi. The purity of its wish power is also far better than the incense accumulated by Lu Heng. These two powerful and pure forces fight each other, and neither of them will obey the other. As a result, the body of the Gu Eagle was always in a state of destruction and reorganization, and it couldn't grow up. This may be the reason why the Gu Eagle can't grow up in his sixties. Moreover, if demons and monsters don't cultivate, their intelligence cannot be increased. The two kinds of qi in the Gu Eagle's body were so chaotic that there was no room for the Gu Eagle to cultivate. It has a lifespan of more than sixty years. But its wisdom is no more than a human child. Lu Heng looked at the red-haired woman beside him and said, Are you really not coming to have a look? There are two different forces fighting in the body of this Gu Eagle. I think its father is also a divine cultivator and his cultivation is extremely high. Lu Heng's words moved the red-haired woman. She immediately stepped out of the cabin and came to Lu Heng. Under Lu Heng's oversight, she put her hand on the feather of the Gu Eagle and contemplated for several seconds. The red-haired woman's expression was even worse. The fire gods will power. The red-haired woman cried out in disbelief, staring at the Gu Eagle in front of her. At that moment, Lu Heng seemed to see a trace of killing intent in her eyes. Without hesitation, Lu Heng took away the Gu Eagle and protected it behind him. He smiled and said to the woman in front of him, Why are you so surprised? What is the fire god's will? Why are you so shocked? The red-haired woman was gloomy and silent. On the other hand, Huafeng explained, Wolf God, 
only the Emperor of the Fire Pass Country can have the Fire God's will power. If there is really Fire God's will power in the Goo Eagle's body, I think it's obvious about who is its father. Chapter, 101 Hua Feng's words let Lu Heng immediately think of a possibility. Oh. The father of this Gu Eagle is actually the Emperor of the Fire Pass Country. When talking with Gong Shu Jia in Hanyu Mountain, Lu Heng remembered him mention that the Emperor of the Fire Pass Country was a righteous cultivator who was broad-minded, forthright, generous, fond of fine wine, and open-minded. The Emperor has been in power for 100 years, and has managed the whole Fire Pass Country in an orderly manner, and has defeated many evils from causing disasters to people. Although Gong Shu Jia only mentioned a few words, Lu Hang could imagine what a righteous man the emperor was. Therefore, referring to the father of the Gu Eagle, Lu Hang subconsciously thought of the emperor of the Fire Pass country. However, Lu Hang suddenly reacted when he saw the twitching corners of Hua Feng's mouth and the dark eyes of the red-haired woman in front of him. He smiled awkwardly and said, I said something wrong I wanted to say something about the late emperor. If the emperor of the Fire Pass country is as forthright a man as Gong Shu Jia said, he will definitely not have any relationship with his father's old acquaintance. Therefore, the father of this Gu Eagle could only be the late emperor. It seems that the late emperor of the Fire Pass country was quite romantic. Although it is known from the mouth of the red-haired woman that the emperor didn't marry the Pengjiang water god. But the water god got a baby. Then, the story between the late emperor and the water god was probably not a one-sided love story as the red-haired woman said. However, in front of the red-haired woman, Lu Heng could not say anything. After all, he also saw that the red-haired woman should have a deep relationship with the royal family of the Fire Pass country, so she would stand in the position of the late emperor's wife and despise the Pengjiang water god. Lu Heng and Huafeng looked at each other, but they stopped talking and didn't mention this matter. Lu Hang took the comatose Gu Eagle to the bow of the boat and sat down, far away from the red-haired woman. The boat was still moored at the small bend of the river. Feeling the cold night breeze, the night was calm and peaceful. The two little girls who fled here hadn't found help yet. However, Lu Hang waited for a while. The shrimps and crabs in the Pengjiang River didn't jump out, but the red-haired woman on the side came toward him. She solemnly saluted Lu Hang and said, Please allow me to check the condition of this Gu Eagle again the late emperor died a hundred years ago, and the Gu Eagle has only a lifespan of sixty years. It can't be the offspring of the late emperor. However, there is the willpower of the fire god in his body there must be something strange about this. I hope the wolf god can let me check it. The red-haired woman's expression was serious, but Lu Hang shook his head and said, I also thought of this matter. It's just that the Gu Eagle doesn't understand anything. Even if it is awakened, I'm afraid it can't answer you anything. If you want to know the truth, you might as well ask the water god directly. I think she should come. As soon as Lu Heng finished speaking, he looked at the direction of the river in surprise and said, Oh. So fast. She's almost here. Lu Heng stood up with a smile and said, It seems that the water god is coming. If you have any questions in mind, you can ask her directly in person. In Lu Heng's senses, there was a strong breath in the torrent river at this time, which was rapidly approaching from behind the mountains and following the river. The other party didn't hide her breath, but openly announced her existence, telling everyone she was coming. After about ten seconds, the water surged, and a tall figure slowly rose from the river. Wearing a magnificent and righteous god's robe, the water god announced her identity. Her body was tall and slender. The eyes under the willow eyebrows were sharp, and the tight lips showed her uneasiness. Although her face didn't look like that of gentle character, the Pangjiang River God didn't rush up and immediately attack them as Lu Heng worried she would. She even came alone, and there were no shrimp soldiers and crab generals following her. Under the cold moonlight, the River God in the water saluted Lu Heng on the boat and said. I'm Gu Zhou, the god of Pangjiang River. Nice to meet you. Lu Heng took a look at the cabin. The red-haired woman was now hidden in the cabin and no longer appeared. It seems that she really didn't want to meet the water god. Lu Heng was not reluctant to do this. After all, this was a misunderstanding. They just needed to talk about it. Facing such a courteous water god, 
Lu Hang also smiled back and said, I'm Lu Hang, and I just passed through this place and inadvertently offended your young master. It was a misunderstanding. The young master is only unconscious now and is not injured. You can take him back now. Lu Hang looked at Xiao Ai and nodded at her. So the little girl held the comatose Gu Eagle in her arms, stepped into the river, and walked towards the water god in front of her. In the midst of the river waves, the water god was relieved to see that Lu Hang was so easygoing. When the two maidens who escaped with serious injuries found her, she was cultivating in the water mansion. When she heard that her son was captured, she got nervous. In particular, the robber mentioned by the two little girls was very powerful. They just peeped at him with their magic eyes and their bodies and souls were seriously hurt. Such horrible existence she has never heard of such a person in the Fire Pass country. It is very likely that it was a strong cultivator that had coincidentally passed by, or perhaps even an old acquaintance of the late emperor of the Fire Pass country. Therefore, on the way here, Gu Zhou was worried for the fear that she would really meet the old friend of the late emperor who came to seek revenge. Now that the late emperor has passed away, if his enemies of the past really come to the door, even if the current emperor was willing to help, it was too late to look for help now. Therefore, she didn't take anyone with her. Such a strong existence is not someone that her subordinates could provoke. She came alone to show weakness and seek a peaceful solution. Even though she had a strong character, in order to save her son's life, she was willing to compromise. However, when she came to the bend of the river and saw the kind man in white, she found that she had worried too much. In her eyes, the man in white smiled kindly, but his whole body was heaving with thunder. The surging mighty thunder made even her feel a little palpitation. If the man in white was really the late emperor's enemy, she had no chance to survive. And compared with the surging thunder, what was more frightening was that the man in white was only a soul without a body. The body of the man in white was the white wolf on the bow, resting with its eyes closed. The man in white didn't hide this, so Gu Zhou could see through it at a glance. The body was an animal, but the soul was human when Gu Zhou saw this scene, she almost fainted and her heart pounded. The shock she felt at this moment was even stronger than when she was beaten down from the clouds by the third palm of the late emperor. The cultivation of animals is different from that of human cultivators. The more powerful the beast is, the more difficult it is to break through after reaching the peak of cultivation. The most notable example is the legendary ancient mythical animals. Every ancient animal is born with supernatural powers and ferocity, but its power will always be fixed at a certain level, and it will never be able to make progress. Although such a realm is beyond the reach of all living beings, there are still some human cultivators who can reach it. In addition, occasionally there are one or two amazing people who can go further, surpassing many cultivators, and even the ancient gods and beasts would tremble at their feet. However, such a realm was too difficult for human cultivators, who had the weakest start, the least longevity, and the most difficulty cultivating, to reach. As for demons, no matter if it was just an ordinary animal or an ancient holy beast, it would never be able to cross the threshold and break through to the legendary realm. This is a truth known to all. But in front of her, the man in white. Gu Zhou swallowed her saliva. She looked at the soul and felt panic and fear in her heart. Is it is he an elder who can break through the restriction of demon cultivation? Has he transcended the realm of demon cultivation and reached the realm that no demon could reach? So that his soul could be so horrible and extraordinary? Chapter 102 Gu Zhou was shocked. She looked at the man in white with respect in her eyes. If the man in white really stepped into the legendary realm does that mean that the common sense handed down from ancient times is wrong? The demon cultivation is able to reach that realm. Is it just that the demons in the past were too weak that they were unable to break through to that realm? Were there demons that had reached that realm? At the thought of this, Gu Zhou was completely unable to calm down. She even wanted to directly ask Lu Hang in front of her to verify whether her conjecture was true. But after seeing the surging thunder, she immediately cooled down. This man in white was just a stranger to her. To ask him would be seeking death. He didn't blame her for the offense of her subordinates. If she asked more, no matter how kind the man in white was, he would definitely feel unhappy. 
Therefore, although Gu Zhou was excited, she didn't dare to verify her conjecture. She managed to calm herself and concentrate on her unconscious son. At this time, Xiao Ai came to her with the surging river and calmly handed over Gu Eagle, who was unconscious in her arms. Gu Zhou hurriedly showed a smile, held out her hand respectfully and thanked Xiao Ai seriously. Thank you, little girl. Gu Zhou had a smile on her face and her arms surrounded her unconscious son. However, at this moment, she touched the little girl's hands. When the two sides touched each other, Gu Zhou clearly felt the cultivation base in the little girl in front of her. In terms of demon cultivation, she had only about 200 years of Taoist cultivation base, which was not strong. But the smile on Gu Zhou's face was frozen. She had almost seized the little girl's wrist in a manner of gaff and disbelief. This is impossible. Feeling the two forces in the little girl's body that were completely different, but completely integrated, Gu Zhou almost hysterically shouted, This is impossible. This sudden change immediately attracted the attention of the people on board. In the cabin, the red haired woman glanced at Xiao Ai in the river and frowned slightly, but didn't speak. Hua Feng was confused. He didn't know what had happened. He thought that the god of the Pangjiang River would take Xiao Ai as a hostage. He was nervous. Lu Heng guessed the reason why the god of the Pangshui River lost her temper, so his expression was calm. He still stood at the bow of the boat, standing with his hands down, quietly looking at the water god in the river. At this time, Xiao Ai, with a slight frown, withdrew her hand and retreated silently. The Pangjiang River God dared not stop her. She saw the cold eyes of the little girl in front of her. She was shocked but immediately recovered. She held her son in her arms and stared at the little girl slowly retreating, seemingly seeing the departure of hope. After a few seconds, Gu Zhou reacted. This time, without any hesitation, she knelt down to the man in white. When her knees fell into the river, the water made a crisp sound. At the same time, Gu Zhou's humble prayer rang out. I'm Gu Zhou, the god of the river, and I beg you to help me. Gu Zhou pleaded with sadness, this child has been tortured since his birth. It took me forty years to stabilize his life and give birth to him, but I still can't save him. The fire god's willpower in his body and the evil spirit chi of the demon fight with each other endlessly, constantly tearing at his body, making him unable to cultivate and even more unable to have any wisdom. Now, sixty years have passed, but this child is still as ignorant as he was just born. If there is no chance, the child will end up still being dull even when his life is exhausted. The water god cried out in a hoarse voice, I know I shouldn't disturb you, but the child's malady can't be cured even by the ten witches of the spirit mountain. You are my only hope please help me. I'm willing to be a slave, and do whatever you ask, and I only want to save my child. In the river, the sad and desolate cry of the river god made people's hair sour. Although Huofeng didn't know what had happened, he couldn't help but feel sorry for the water god. Lu Heng looked at the kneeling river god silently and said, Get up first. Lu Heng said, The situation of your child is indeed similar to that of Xiao Ai. However, there are great differences between the two states, and I may not be able to cure him. And although the combination between a demon and a human is rare, it shouldn't cause such a situation as your child who is your child's father. Lu Heng said and stopped. However, Gu Zhou had already replied in a hurry, the father of this child is the late emperor of the Fire Pass country, Emperor Yen, whose real name is Lian Shan Kuei. Three hundred years ago, I had a marriage with Lian Shan Kuei. Although few people knew about this, before I was indeed pregnant with his child. As you said, the combination of the demon and the human will not cause any bad consequences. But I can only blame fate for his suffering. Speaking of this, Gu Zhou's voice was bitter and astringent. Some children of cultivators could inherit their parents' talents. These children are all peerless geniuses. My son, if he only inherited his father's talent, that would be great. But he was too lucky that he inherited both of our talents. His father's fire god willpower and my demon cultivation base. Two completely different forces fought day and night, never giving in to each other, and constantly tore his body. My miserable child. 
Under the moonlight, the river god cried with tears on her face, without any dignity. She kowtowed to Lu Heng again sadly and hopelessly. Please help him. I'd like to serve you like an ox or a horse, and I only want to get the child's safety and health. Chapter 103 On the Pangjiang River, the river god wailed sadly, asking for help for her suffering child. Lu Heng looked at this scene with mixed emotions. He knew that the grief of the river god was not an act. Her despair and sorrow were indeed heartfelt. However, it's really difficult to cure the Gu Eagle. The demon power in Xiao Ai comes from the 200 years of Taoist cultivation of the wolf demon, which is not strong. And the wish power was accumulated by Lu Heng, and the amount was small. Although these two forces are different in nature, they come from the same source as Lu Heng's heavenly thunder. Therefore, Lu Heng could easily restrict the integration of the two different forces. However, the two forces in the little Gu Eagle's body had nothing to do with Lu Heng, and even their sources came from different people. If Lu Heng wanted to cure him, he needed to use his own power to suppress the river god's cultivation base and the late Emperor Lian Shan Kuei's fire god's willpower at the same time. Lu Heng couldn't do such a difficult thing at present. But if he just left, Lu Heng looked at the crying woman in the river. Because of the heavenly thunder, Lu Heng is very sensitive to the evil spirit qi of demons. However, Lu Heng could not see the slightest evil spirit qi in the river god. All he could see was the majestic and righteous spirit qi of god. Even though the river god was really a man-eating beast, she had kept this area peaceful for the past 300 years, so she could get rid of the evil spirit qi. What's more, the father of the little Gu Eagle was also the late emperor of the Fire Pass country. Both of his parents were good people. Lu Heng did want to help him. In this wild and treacherous world, evil people run rampant, such as all kinds of evil animals in the wilderness and the Green Hell Cave, who brought disaster to people but didn't get any punishment. In such a world, it is not easy for righteous cultivators to survive. Lu Heng had seen many good people suffer and bad people prosper in his previous life, but at that time, he was only the silent majority. Even though he was angry, he could not change anything. But now he is different from the weak man in his previous life. Will he continue to be the silent majority now? He'd leave it alone if he didn't meet this. Now that he had seen the Gu Eagle, he couldn't just turn a blind eye to it. Lu Heng solemnly saluted the river god and said, it's not necessary to be so polite. I also have great respect for the merits of you and the late emperor. If I can cure your child, I will never refuse. Therefore, you don't have to do this. Please get up and talk. Lu Heng's solemn words stunned Gu Zhou. She looked up at the man in white saluting her at the bow of the ship, and could hardly believe that all this was true. In the cold moonlight, the man in white, who was far stronger than her, was really saluting her. She hurriedly stood up with the child in her arms she dared not be rude and quickly returned the salute. Thank you. I can't accept such a big gift. In the cabin, the red-haired woman silently looked at this scene with a complicated expression. At this moment, she finally understood why Gong Shu Jie had the confidence to say such words as the wolf god will not become the source of trouble. No matter what the origin of the unknown wolf god is, his temperament really deserves the name of sage, praised by Gong Shu Jie. He is totally different from other holy animals and demons she had ever seen. Perhaps this is the reason why the wolf god is so special. It's not surprising that such a noble person can control the thunder of heaven. Because he has this qualification. The red-haired woman had a complicated complexion, while Lu Heng stood at the bow of the boat, facing the water god in the river. I do have a way to help your son. However, it can't totally cure him. Lu Heng said, before you came, I had actually investigated his body and tried to balance the two forces in his body. Unfortunately, I'm not strong enough to restrain the two forces in his body and cure him. But if you are willing, I can take him with me to look after him. Even though I can't restrain the two forces in your son's body, I can curb the damage of those two forces to his body, so that he can start to cultivate. One day in the future, when I have made a breakthrough, or your son becomes stronger, maybe I can cure your son. When Lu Heng spoke, the little Gu Eagle woke up. 
Now he was lying in his mother's arms, looking at the man in white at the bow with surprise and curiosity. When Lu Hang saw that little Gu Eagle wake up, he smiled at him and continued. Even if I still can't cure your son in the future, I can guide him to start to cultivate. At least he will not still be a beast before his lifespan is exhausted. However, I'm afraid that he has to leave you for the time being. After Lu Hang said that, the water god in the river saluted quickly and said with surprise and joy, It's okay, it's okay. It's a blessing for him that he can cultivate with you. On behalf of my son, I thank you for your kindness. With this, the water god quickly let go of the little goo eagle in her arms and said to him, Yenner, why don't you thank the master? The little goo eagle obviously didn't understand what happened, but since his mother asked him to thank Lu Hang, he kowtowed to Lu Hang. However, the appearance of the Gu Eagle's kowtowing ceremony was somewhat funny, like a chicken pecking rice. But everyone who saw this scene didn't mean to make fun of it. Lu Heng said with a smile, In that case, I will take care of your son for a period of time. What's his name? Gu Yen, Gu Zhou replied hurriedly, It's Yen'er honor to serve you, but I have nothing to repay your kindness. From today on, I'm willing to be driven by you. As long as you have ordered, even if it is thousands of miles away, I will certainly come to serve and never dare to disobey you. Lu Heng shook his head and said, You don't have to be like this. I'm just trying my best. If even a righteous god like you couldn't save your son, then the world would be too cold and cruel. Chapter 104 Lu Heng's words were modest, but the water god in the river dared not be rude. She hung a small sign on the neck of the little goo eagle carefully told a lot of things to it, and then watched the little goo eagle fly to the boat where Lu Heng was. Then there was a respectful thank you salute, and the river god reluctantly left. Although she wanted to stay with her child, she, as a river god, could not leave the river at will. What's more, it's hard to imagine that such a master was willing to take care of her child. How dare she stay and bother him more? If the master needed her to do something, he would call her at that time. With such a thought, along with reluctance and worry for the child and hope for the future, the river god disappeared from the sight of the people. The little goo eagle flew around the boat for a while, and finally landed in front of Lu Heng carefully. He kowtowed to Lu Heng again like a chicken pecking rice. Lu Heng laughed and said, You don't have to kneel before me. As long as you don't do evil things, if you can cultivate and do more good deeds in the future, you will live up to my acceptance today. The little goo eagle was puzzled by Lu Hang's words, but he knew that he could not offend the man in white, so he nodded repeatedly to show that he had remembered. At the bend of the river, it calmed down temporarily. The little goo eagle was lively and soon lost his sense of restraint, flying around happily. However, Lu Hang was aloof and Xiao Ai's temperament was cold. In the end, the goo eagle only played with Huafeng. Although Huafeng had lost all his cultivation base and had a broken Tao heart, he had always been optimistic. Soon he played happily with the little goo eagle. In the cabin, the red-haired woman had been silently watching the development of everything but said nothing. After the river god had left and Huafeng had played with the little goo eagle for a long time, she took a deep breath and walked out of the cabin. Lu Heng had been paying attention to her reaction, so he smiled when he saw the woman coming out. Do you finally feel stuffy in the cabin and want to come out for a change? The red-haired woman sighed and looked at the little goo eagle. The little goo eagle, named Gu Yen, was squatting in front of Huafeng and constantly stretching his neck to pick up the crumbs thrown by Huafeng. This stupid scene looked very interesting. The red-haired woman sighed again and saluted Lu Heng. The wolf god, you should have guessed my identity, said the red-haired woman with a wry smile. Well, Lu Heng nodded and said, you didn't deliberately hide it. I naturally guessed. The red-haired woman sighed and said, yes, I am the current emperor of the Fire Pass country, Lianshan Jing. Lu Heng's eyes widened slightly. He suspected that he had misheard. The current emperor of the Fire Pass country Lianshan Jing. Isn't the emperor of the Fire Pass country a man? Lu Heng was slightly shocked and looked at the red-haired woman in front of him again. Lu Heng's astonished reaction also surprised Lianshan Jing. She looked at the wolf god in front of her, hesitated for several seconds, and suddenly realized something. Did Gong Shu Jie say anything to you? 
Lianshan Jing's eyes narrowed in vain. I remember that Gong Shu Jie said that he had mentioned my affairs to the wolf god. Lu Heng gave a dry cough and said, Yes, yes, he told me that the current emperor is a wise king and the person he admires the most. Lianshan Jing raised her eyebrows slightly, but she didn't continue to struggle with this matter. Instead, she silently remembered it in her heart and planned to go back to the Ten Thousand Needle City again in the future. But now, there are more important things to deal with. She looked at Lu Heng and the little Gu Eagle behind Lu Heng and said, As you know, I am the daughter of the late emperor. If Gu Yan is really the son of the late emperor, he is my brother. Speaking of this, Lian Shan Jing looked complicated, but she still saluted Lu Heng deeply and said, In any case, it is my father's child, Lian Shan Jing thanks you for your help to him. This little Gu Yan was lucky enough to follow you and listen to your teachings. I'll remember your kindness. If you have orders in the future, Lian Shan Jing can do anything for you as long as I can. Lian Shan Jing's expression was quite solemn. It was a heavy promise considering her identity. Although she didn't think that the wolf god would really give her any orders in the future, after he helped her brother. She could not pretend to be deaf and dumb, and the due etiquette must be done. When Lu Heng saw the woman's solemn appearance, he couldn't help but smile bitterly and said, You are willing to do anything for me, and the river god is also willing to do anything for me I earned a lot. Lu Heng's self-mockery made Lian Shan Jing shake her head. Don't make fun of me. She arched her hand to Lu Heng again and said, Sorry for bothering you these days. Now I have something to do, I think it's time to leave now. When you arrive at Fushan City, you can go directly into the city. I will manage everything in advance for you. After that, Lian Shan Jing stood on the bow of the boat, saluted Lu Heng deeply again, and then jumped directly into the river. The movement was so fast that Lu Heng just raised his hand, and the woman had already disappeared from his vision. Above the bow, Lu Heng was quite speechless. He looked at the empty cabin in front of him, and then at the slowly rippling water waves in the river. With a wry smile, he said. The emperor clearly collected the boat fare, but she left halfway, leaving us in the river alas brother Hua, is there a complaint channel for the ferry business? Ah! Complaint channel! Hua Feng was stupefied for a moment and was puzzled. What does the complaint channel mean? Cough nothing, Lu Heng waved his hand and said, I'm joking. Don't mind me. However, the emperor has left halfway now, but there is no one to ferry the boat alas it seems that we are going to have to walk south. Hua Feng smiled and said, In fact, I can also ferry. Leave it to me. Lu Heng was somewhat surprised. Oh, Brother Hua, can you ferry? Hua Feng nodded and said, The Yun sect disciples travel all over the world, contact all kinds of people and things, and often learn many interesting skills. For example, I know a little about ferrying. Lu Heng laughed and said, If that is the case, Brother Hua, I can only accept your kindness. Chapter 105 At the bend of the river at night, with the departure of the red haired girl and the river god, it was quiet again. As for where the emperor of the country had gone, Lu Heng could figure it out without thinking. She must have gone under the water mansion to find the river god, Gu Zhou. And when she left, she threw herself directly into the water and didn't hide her intention. Naturally, it is not difficult to guess. However, it was their own family affairs, so Lu Heng would not join in the fun. With the character shown by the red-haired woman, Lu Heng believed that she would not do too much to the Pangjiang water god. The moment she lowered her head, it meant that she had recognized the identity of this little goo eagle. On the boat, the little goo eagle was curious about the fat bird in the cage and kept walking around the cage. While the fat bird in the cage was lying on its stomach, ignoring the goo eagle outside, even if the little goo eagle was staring at it with eager and curious eyes. Hua Feng was a little nervous and hurriedly told little goo eagle several times, Don't eat this bird. Don't eat this bird. Hua Feng said solemnly, until the little goo eagle nodded forcefully, he was relieved. But even so, when he went to bed at night, Hua Feng decided to go to sleep with the cage of the fat bird. To be on the safe side, he even asked Xiao Ai to keep an eye on the fat bird for fear that the little goo eagle would eat it after he fell asleep. 
However, his worry was somewhat groundless, because although the little goo eagle was interested in the fat bird, he was only interested in it. When it was hungry, it directly ran into the water. A few seconds later, it flew up with a fish in its beak and landed on the deck. It scraped the scales with its sharp claws and then pecked at the fish with its beak. At dawn, Huafong was awakened by the sharp beak of the little goo eagle pecking at the fish. Rubbing his sleepy eyes and sitting up, Huafong looked at the gray sky outside and yawned. In the cold wind in the morning, Lu Hang lay on the bow of the boat, closed his eyes, and rested. He seemed to be asleep. Xiao Ai sat beside him with her knees crossed. She also closed her eyes and concentrated on refining her spirit qi to protect the wolf god. Seeing that they were cultivating, Huafong didn't bother them. He quietly went to the stern of the boat to wash himself, and then fished out the anchor that had sunk in the river. Then he sat at the stern of the boat and began to steer and paddle, controlling the boat to slowly leave the river. While the little goo eagle squatted at the stern of the boat, looking at the basket of stones that Huafong fished out from the bottom of the river with curiosity, and pecked them with his beak from time to time. After all, it is an ordinary boat. The so-called anchor was just a bamboo basket filled with stones. After leaving the river bay, the boat quickly sailed out of this small tributary and joined the Pengjiang River which was open and wide. In the misty morning light, the view above the Pengjiang River was wide. In addition to their small boats, they could also see boats of different sizes moving down the river from afar. The Pengjiang River here was about a thousand feet wide. The boat only needed to go down the river, and its speed was not much slower than that of the horses on the bank. When Lu Heng opened his eyes, the boat had already driven far out of the boundary of Yiji City. The first ray of sunshine in the morning was falling on the river at this time, and the song of the boatmen in the river could be heard from afar. There was a certain desolate ancient flavor in the long songs that were slightly hoarse. On the river not far away, a large ship with a three-story structure was moving down the river. When the sails were blowing, the speed was much faster than that of their small boat. In the distance, Lu Hang could see a middle-aged man in thin clothes yawning and holding a young woman in thin clothes walking out of the cabin on the third deck. When Lu Hang saw the middle-aged man, the other side also saw the white wolf on the boat in the river. The eyes of both sides were interlaced, and the middle-aged man was stunned for a moment. It seemed that he saw a smile in the eyes of the white wolf. So he hesitated for a moment, and finally released the woman in his arms he arched his hand to the wolf demon on the boat from a distance, which was regarded as a greeting. Lu Heng smiled, but he didn't expect this guy to be so polite. He also nodded to the middle-aged man, which was a response. After a few minutes, the ship left Lu Heng's boat far behind, and soon disappeared from Lu Heng's field of vision. The last thing Lu Heng saw was the life-like Gu Eagle totem on the sail. At the same time that the fire god was worshipped, the river god Guzhou was also worshipped by the people nearby the river. Therefore, many ships on the river were printed with Gu Eagle's totem. Lu Heng was not surprised at this. He looked at the little Gu Eagle flying around the boat and said with a smile, Gu Yen, come to me. The figure of the man in white appeared. Lu Heng's soul waved, let me see your situation. The little goo eagle dared not ignore Lu Hang's call. It quickly fluttered its wings and landed on Lu Hang's hand, waiting for Lu Hang's inspection. And in the morning light, if your sight leaves the torrential water river and moves south to the end of the land, you can see the vast sea with blue waves. The golden sunshine reflected the vast water surface. The fishy and salty sea wind, whistling across the end of the earth and the vast sea, had been blowing to the depths of the ocean far beyond the reach of ordinary people. A lonely island stood silently among the blue waves. The sound of seagulls was loud and sharp, breaking the silence of the morning. However, the black fog flying rapidly in the distance scared those seagulls circling in the sky to flee, and all fled into the woods on the island. In the blue sky, the black mist flew around the island and finally landed on a sea surface in the south of the island. The clear and transparent sea water surged and beat the sand on the beach one after another. In the cold waves, there was a faint figure floating, like a floating corpse suffering from a shipwreck, undulating endlessly in the waves. The shadow fell on the sea and turned into a fierce strange bird with a human face. 
Then it directly stretched out its sharp claws and caught the floating corpse in the river, dragging the floating corpse onto the beach. Only at this time could we see that the floating corpse in the river was actually a woman. The strange bird landed beside the woman and made a shrill and hoarse call into her ear. Hey! Wake up! Smelly woman! I have something important for you. Chapter 106 The strange bird was squawking and pulling at the messy hair of the floating corpse with its claws. Unknowingly, she had been floating in the sea for such a long time that there were even algae growing in her black hair. What the fuck have you eaten? Why are you half dead again? The strange bird was extremely dissatisfied and shouted, If I don't come to find you, are you going to stay in the sea and pretend to die? The strange bird cried discontentedly, while helping the woman with its claws to pull and comb her tangled hair covered with algae, and even pulled out several attached barnacles from the inside, emitting a faint sea smell. Amid the cries and curses of the human-faced owl, the woman gradually opened her eyes and felt a little confused. HMM little owl, are you ready for breakfast? The woman rubbed her eyes and sat up and said, why am I wet? Did I forget to take off my clothes when I took a bath last night? At the woman's side, the ferocious human-faced owl kicked her fiercely while on the ground, and then cursed, eat, eat you fucking only know how to eat. Don't you know where you are now? The human-faced owl seemed to have kicked the woman awake. Lying on the beach, she was stunned for a while, and then suddenly sat up covering her head. Hiss my head the woman covered her head with pain. I remembered that I was going to attend the conference of the mermaid kingdom, but I found a strange fish by accident at sea. I chased after it all the way, and finally caught the fish to cook it into a soup. Then hiss then, it seems I ended up floating on the sea. I don't know how long I have been floating. I feel that my entire body was light and floating. It was very interesting. The woman rubbed her head and said with a look of nostalgia, the fish soup was really delicious. Next time, if we have a chance, let's try it together. The woman smiled and said with nostalgia, but the human-faced owl directly yelled. You should drink it yourself. I won't drink it. That fucking thing is highly poisonous. You can even make soup to drink it. Have you lost your mind again? If I don't wake you up, are you going to float all the way to the mermaid kingdom? The woman was stupefied for a moment and suddenly realized something. Yes, the mermaid kingdom hissed the mermaid kingdom the woman rubbed her eyebrows, looked at the human-faced owl in distress, and said, Ah, little owl, what day is it today? Is the rare treasure conference not over yet? The human-faced owl sneered and said, Of course, it's over you've been unconscious for about ten years. In another two years, you'll be able to participate in the next Rare Treasures conference. The woman's eyes widened. You're kidding. How could it have been so long? I've been floating on the sea for at most one month well two months. Anyway, it won't be more than half a year. The woman finally made a firm judgment. The human-faced owl silently looked at the woman in front of it. It didn't even have the mood to swear. It said with a tired face, after waking up for so long, don't you want to ask me why I'm looking for you? When you see me, you should know something important has happened in the Utian Valley. It's the medicine that the feather people entrusted you to refine. I don't think you're interested at all. The woman smiled awkwardly and said, how could it be I certainly care. But I care for you more. You've come all the way from the Utian Valley to find me. It must be because you know that I'm in trouble, so you have come to wake me up before the rare treasure conference is officially held, right? The woman looked forward to it. The human-faced owl, on the other hand, sneered, wrong. I wish you would die in the South Sea. I came to you this time to tell you to watch out for an old monster named Lu Hang. The old monster could control heavenly thunder, sucked up the water of the deep spring and took away the requiem seal from it. Although I don't know where he comes from, he must be an old monster who has existed since ancient times. It can live for so long and has the power to control heaven's thunder. I'm afraid it's not much weaker than the most powerful monsters in the records of the Spirit Mountain. Of course, the most important thing is that this old monster is now heading towards the South Sea and is coming to find you. The human-faced owl exclaimed excitedly, If something happens, don't say that I didn't remind you okay? The words of the human-faced owl startled the woman for a moment, 
and she was puzzled. Ah! Old monster! Lu Hung! The heavens thunder! What's the matter? Why would such a ridiculous guy come to me? I didn't offend him, did I? The human-faced owl glared at the woman in front of it and cursed, look for yourself. With that, it exhaled a black mist and sprayed it directly on the woman's face. The expression on the woman's face suddenly changed. She was shocked it was like her eyes saw everything that happened in the Utian Valley that day. The white wolf, who came from the unknown its horrible figure surrounded by lightning a dark, yellow seal that was summoned from the secluded spring the water in the secluded spring was taken away. The expression on the woman's face changed rapidly. After half a beat, she slowly came back to her mind and knew the development of everything. So that's it. The woman nodded suddenly and said, this demon master named Lu Heng came to see me for treatment. The one who told him where I was was you, little owl. The woman smiled, looked at the human-faced owl on the side and picked her eyebrows. Little owl, if you didn't say that I was in the South Sea and that I could save the disciple of the Yun sect, demon elder Lu Heng would definitely not come to see me correct? The human-faced owl was stunned for a moment. Immediately after all the feathers on its body stood upright and it flew backward. Unfortunately, while its movements were fast, the woman's movements were faster. The woman sitting on the beach, who was originally half dead, made a light gesture, and the human-faced owl was grabbed by its neck and dragged back to her body. The noses of the two collided, and their eyes looked at each other. The woman smiled happily and brightly. The human-faced owl cried out in horror, when I told him where you were, I didn't know that Lu Heng was an old monster. I thought you would like that fat bird and the peach blossom wine how did I know that the white wolf was so horrible? The human-faced owl anxiously apologizes, but the woman still smiled brightly. But even so little owl, you've been with me for so long. Don't you know your master's rules? Your master will never treat men. But you introduced a smelly man to me little owl, little owl, you really let your master feel disappointed. Bang! With a muffled sound, the human-faced owl in the woman's hand turned into a mass of black air and disappeared from the beach. At the same time, in the Utian Valley, the human-faced owl suddenly jumped up from the thatched cottage, half scared to death. Damn it! Something has happened. It looked in the direction of the South Sea in horror, and its feathers exploded. That old woman is angry. Worried and anxious, the human-faced owl paced in front of the thatched cottage for a long time. He looked sad. How can I get through this when she comes back? Chapter 107 Lu Heng was not clear about the worries of the human-faced owl. Today, he was trying to combine the two disordered forces in the little goo eagle's body. After he personally tried and failed once, he confirmed that he could not suppress the integration of the two forces at the same time, and could only barely separate them. The little goo eagle probably couldn't enjoy the benefits like Xiao Ai. However, the separation of the two disordered forces could stop them from constantly destroying the little goo eagle's body, so that he could begin to cultivate. After injecting a wisp of heavenly thunder into the body of the little goo eagle, Lu Heng began to teach it to cultivate after using the power of heavenly thunder to separate the two forces. The cultivation methods of the demons were basically all the same. Human cultivation was different. The human race's cultivation methods were greatly distinct from each other, and their cultivation speed was different as well, but they were all faster than demon cultivation. Of course, there were shortcomings in human cultivation. The greatest of these was that human longevity was extremely short. Only by constantly breaking through to a higher level could lifespan be continuously increased. If one was stuck in a state where he or she couldn't break through, they'd have to simply fade away after running out of lifespan. The cultivation speed of demonic cultivation is very slow, but the advantage is that their longevity is extremely long. Normally, as long as you step into cultivation, the minimum longevity of a demonic cultivator is 1,000 years. With a thousand years of life, as long as there was no disaster or chaos, and so long as one cultivated carefully, one could almost be regarded as a big demon. Although it also depended on talent, understanding, and chance to reach a higher level, it was still a blessing that most humans couldn't hope to have, a thousand years of life. According to Lu Heng's understanding, 
human cultivators were like those salesmen in his previous life. The higher the performance, the higher the salary, which greatly tested personal ability. Talented people could soar to the sky in a short time. While the demon cultivators have ordinary salaries, their cultivation is more stable. After cultivating for a certain number of years, you will achieve something. Lu Heng can't judge the advantages between the two, nor is it necessary to judge which is better or worse. After all, his method of cultivation is different from that of human cultivation and demon cultivation. The common sense of the cultivation world doesn't work here. After taking back his right hand and seeing that little Gu Eagle had started to cultivate, Lu Heng finally breathed a sigh of relief and said, In this way, I can be regarded as having kept the river god's trust. In front of him, the little Gu Eagle huddled and slowly breathed the spirit qi in the air. Although the speed of its cultivation was much slower than that of Lu Heng or even Xiao Ai, it was an excellent start. In the future, Lu Heng may be able to completely cure the disease in the little Gu Eagle's body after he takes a further step in his cultivation. So that the disordered energies in the little Gu Eagle's body could be integrated into a ball, like Xiao Ai's. However, at present, Lu Heng could only use some heavenly thunder to stabilize the little Gu Eagle's internal condition, and he needed to inject new heavenly thunder every once in a while to replenish it. Because Lu Heng's treatment of the little Gu Eagle was different from that of Xiao Ai's. When Lu Heng treated Xiao Ai, what he injected into Xiao Ai's body was the foundation of his own Tao cultivation, which could be preserved forever, similar to the experience level of in the games he played in his previous life. Now what Little Gu Eagle had in his body was just a ray of sky thunder separated by Lu Heng. It was similar to mana value and needed to be replenished from time to time. This was also the reason why Lu Heng wanted to take the Little Gu Eagle with him. On the other hand, seeing that Lu Heng had finished, Hua Feng smiled and said, Lord Wolf God, look at the back of our boat. A group of fish has followed us since just now. It seems that they can't wait to fly into the pot and be boiled. Oh. Really? Lu Heng walked to the stern of the boat curiously. As expected, he saw a group of fish floating in the water behind the boat, always following the boat down the river. Moreover, the species of the fish were not the same, and there were many kinds. Catfish, carp, grass carp, perch there were all kinds of fish of different sizes, enough to complete a fish market. In Lu Heng's view, all the fish in the water were swimming in the water, trying to squeeze into the boat out of fear of being left behind by the boat, which amused Lu Heng. Obviously, these fish were driven by the river god with her divine power. Now, sitting at the stern of the boat, Hua Feng could even reach into the water to catch a fresh and fat live fish. Looking at this scene, Lu Heng smiled and said, It seems that we can have fish soup tonight. He wanted to fish for dinner last night, but he caught a goo eagle instead. He could finally have a taste of the river fish tonight. At this time, on the river, large ships passed by their vicinity from time to time. Although the ships on the Pangjung River were not as prosperous as those upon the rivers in Lu Hang's previous life, in this world where monsters ran rampant, this amount of water transportation could be named lively. All the ships passing by, no matter how big or small, were surprised to find the strangeness of Lu Hang's boat. This small boat was not big, and its shape was very rough, but it was followed by a dense school of fish at the stern. The appearance of the flock of fish surging and following was astonishing to passers-by. But apart from that, no one came to find fault. When you go out, it's better to do less than do more. After seeing the strangeness of the boat, except for a few words of surprise, all the ship captains would tell the boatmen to steer away from the small boat. Business travelers always try to avoid trouble, as a general rule. At night, Hua Feng steered the boat away from the turbulent Pengjiang River and into a tributary of the Pengjiang River system. The water flowing into the tributary was slightly calm, and the water depth was only more than three meters. Hua Feng took out the bamboo basket used as the anchor of the boat, filled it with stones, and then sank the bamboo basket to the bottom of the river so the boat doesn't float away. Then he took out the charcoal and iron pot from the cabin and began to cook the fish. After the boat sailed into the tributary, all the fish followed. Hua Feng went to the stern of the boat, squatted on the deck, and carefully selected for a while. Finally, he selected a fat and fresh cushion carp. 
he took it to the deck to open its belly, take out its internal organs and remove the blood. Then he threw the fresh river fish into the pot. Soon, the fish soup became thick and white, and the fragrance was wafting. Lu Huang, Xiao Ai and Hua Feng were all sitting on the deck, looking forward to the fresh fish soup. This was the first bite of cooked food that Lu Huang had eaten since he woke up in this world. Therefore, he was looking forward to it. The little goo eagle was not interested in this. He flew directly to the stern of the ship, then landed on the deck with a perch in his mouth, and continued to peck at the perch with his beak, making a dull sound. The dark sky shrouded the earth. And the fire of the boat in the river was dimly lit in the dark. From time to time, there was a sound of laughter, and the atmosphere was harmonious and happy. Chapter 108 After daybreak the next day, Hua Feng was again awakened by the dull voice. He held the cage of the fat bird, yawned, and sat up. He saw the little goo eagle with a horn on his forehead standing on the deck at the stern of the ship. His sharp claws pressed against a fish trying to struggle, and from time to time he lowered his head and pecked at it. The blood water with a slightly fishy smell flowed on the deck at the stern of the ship, and Hua Feng was somewhat helpless. You don't sleep in the morning, and you get up so early to eat fish. The little goo eagle turned his head and looked at him. He shouted twice, which was a greeting. Then he lowered his head and continued to peck at the fish on the deck. As a ferocious beast, the goo eagle has the characteristics that most monsters in the world have, its cry is like a baby crying. Perhaps in ancient times, these strange animals once lured the ignorant ancestors of the human race to approach them and then prey on them. But now, the cry of this kind of baby in the wild is already a horrible evil. Because people all know that the cries of babies coming from the wild are usually ferocious and terrifying beasts, and they should flee quickly. However, the little goo eagle follows the wolf god, and Hua Feng is not worried about its carnivorous nature. Moreover, this little guy was too small. Even Hui Feng, who had lost all his cultivation base, could beat him up. There was basically no threat. Squatting at the stern of the boat, Hua Feng began to wash in front of the little goo eagle. While the little goo eagle gave him a look of disgust. Seeing that Hua Feng didn't pay attention to himself, he grabbed the half-eaten fish and flew to the bank, away from this disgusting guy. However, it was not quiet for long. After washing, Hua Feng left the boat and went ashore. He came to the area where the little goo eagle was, squatted behind the stone and began to poop. An indescribable stench came, and the little goo eagle, who was pecking at the fish, was stunned and almost spit out. It angrily shouted at the stone not far away, and then flew away, leaving the half-eaten fish on the ground. Seeing the embarrassed appearance of the little goo eagle, Hua Feng behind the stone gave a happy laugh. Soon after, the first ray of sunshine in the morning pierced the sky and sprinkled on this small river bend. Hua Feng, who had already packed everything, returned to the boat, cleaned up the blood and water on the deck, fished out the bamboo basket that had sunk into the river bottom, and the boat set out again. While the little goo eagle squatted on the top of the cabin, staring at Hua Feng with a sad look. However, Hua Feng didn't pay any attention, still smiling and not taking any notice. He even threw some crumbs to amuse the little goo eagle. When Lu Heng opened his eyes and urged the little goo eagle to cultivate, the little guy flew to Lu Heng angrily and complained. The little goo eagle stood in front of the white wolf at the bow of the boat, flapping his wings angrily and screaming incessantly. Lu Heng sighed and didn't speak. Xiao Ai came over, grabbed the little goo eagle by the neck and took him aside, saying, cultivate quickly. Xiao Ai said coldly, don't be lazy. The little goo eagle suddenly shrunk his neck and nodded his head like a chicken pecking at rice. Xiao Ai then released him. Therefore, the boat continued to go south. Under the supervision of Xiao Ai, the little goo eagle obediently shrank in the cabin to cultivate and learn to control spirit qi. Lu Heng was lying on the deck of the bow, feeling the blow of the cool wind in the morning, and watching the green mountains on both sides of the river rapidly moving backward, calm and tranquil. Even if someone saw this scene from afar, they would not think that the white wolf lying on the bow of the ship was strange. What could attract the attention of the passing ships was the school of fish that had been following the boat. As they set sail, 
the group of fish continued to swim and crowd, and continued to follow the stern, without any intention of leaving. In this way, the boat went down the river. Although it was constantly overtaken by those big ships with windy sails, it also kept approaching Lu Hang's destination, Fushan City. Lu Hang and Xiao Ai have little need for food, while the little Gu Eagle can catch fish in the river. But for Huafeng, things are a little more troublesome. However, on the third day after leaving Yuji City, they arrived at another big city, Hele City. Huafeng went to the city to buy some vegetables, fruits, cereals, and oils, which let Lu Hang taste the hot food of mankind again. Huafeng claimed that he has traveled all over the world for many years and knows a little about cooking. In fact, his cooking level is as proficient as his skill for sailing. Even Xiao Ai had to admit that the food cooked by Huafeng was better than hers. She had no choice but to hand over the mission of making dinner for the wolf god to Huafeng. Later, even the little Gu Eagle, who only ate live fish, liked the dishes made by Huafeng. Every night, Huafeng would serve a small bowl for the little Gu Eagle to taste. As they went farther and farther south, Lianshan Jing didn't catch up with them. However, the Pengjiang River was quiet as usual, and there was no disturbance. It seems that the dialogue between the Pengjiang water god and Lianshan Jing should be harmonious, right? Lu Heng lay on the bow of the ship, his eyes slightly narrowed, enjoying the tranquility and leisure of the world. Occasionally, he would concentrate on studying the method of hiding his spirit qi, but it was a pity that he never obtained results. In this leisurely calm, the boat passed through the mountains and plains, passed through six big cities, and finally arrived at the destination of Lu Hang's trip on the seventeenth day after leaving Yuji City. Fushan City After reaching Fushan City, the terrain on both sides of the Pengjiang River gradually fluctuated. The green hills on the bank of the river had also become steep. Lu Hang was somewhat surprised by such a steep mountain range in the south, a land of hills and plains. Huafeng explained, this is the Falling Dragon Mountain Range, which is the largest and widest mountain range in the southern plain. The mountains are undulating and steep, and the terrain is so bad that ordinary people can hardly climb over. It is said that in ancient times, a real dragon fell here and died. After the death of the dragon, its body became a huge mountain on the plain. Therefore, it is called the Falling Dragon Mountain Range. Huafeng pointed to the front and said, the water of the Pengjiang River went all the way south. When we reached the Falling Dragon Mountain Range, we were stopped by the undulating mountains. So the river formed a huge bay here, and then changed its course eastward and finally merged into the East Sea. The Fushan City is located at this huge river bend, which is a vast plain at the outermost edge of the Falling Dragon Mountain Range. The road to the south is also built from this Fushan City, which directly passes through the mountains. Therefore, this Fushan city is also a traffic artery connecting the north and south of the Falling Dragon Mountain Range. There are many businessmen traveling through it. Huafeng said with a smile, The wolf god, the Wu family you are looking for has a small reputation here. It is a small clan with good business. Chapter 109 The clan is a completely different group from the family. The so-called family is almost composed of people with the same surname and is maintained by family ties and interests. But the clan is above the family. Within the same clan, there are many different surnames, but most of its members come from the same ancestor. They not only rely on blood ties as a link, but their interests are more tightly bound. Within the clan, there are different offices. If there is a person who violates the clan rules, the clan leader can decide his life or death. If it can be called a clan, even if it is only a small clan, it still means that the Wu clan has a good standing in Fushan City. However, it is not surprising to know it. The young man whom the wolf demon met 89 years ago was suffering from a terminal illness but was still able to wander around, and was accompanied by guards. It could be seen that his family was pretty strong. Although the guards sacrificed their lives in order to save Wu Chongu's life when they ran into a monster, Wu Chongu ran into Hanyu Mountain alone and was almost devoured by tigers in the mountain. But guards that could block a monster are not weak. Lu Heng had some conjectures about Wu Chongu's family background, so he was not surprised by what Huafeng said. What he was thinking about now was how to contact Wu Chongu's descendants. 
and how to solve the karma 89 years ago. There was a premonition in Lu Heng's heart that the karma left over from 89 years ago may not be so easy to solve. Therefore, he must think twice before he went into the city. The small boat was still downstream. At this water area, the water speed of the Pengjiang River had slowed down a lot, and the river surface had become more and more open, which was far longer than its width. On the river, hundreds of boats carrying different commodities kept going and coming. It had a certain sense of prosperity. However, the further ahead, the more precipitous the mountains on both sides of the river. And the sky was getting dark. However, this time, Lu Hang on his boat didn't stop to rest, but continued to go south in the dark, trying to enter the city at night. On the river, the number of boats still sailing at night was much less. Lu Hang and his small boat were sailing along the shore, simple and ordinary, just like an ordinary small fishing boat, which was not noticeable. However, after passing through a huge river bend, Lu Hang could see the prosperous lights of Fushan City from a distance. Lu Hang at the bow of the boat opened his eyes. Because in front of the river there were three people standing silently. The leader was a woman in a black robe, with a dignified and upright manner of a divine cultivator, and two small snakes, one blue and one white, hanging from the earlobe. According to her dress, she must be a wuju. Lu Heng's mind moved, and the boat drifting along the river stopped on the river. Dozens of feet apart, the three people walking on the river bow to Lu Heng at the same time. Wuju Hilan Zhen, the left wizard Hao Yuan and the right wizard Ningyu, are here to wait for the wolf god following the emperor's order. Welcome to Fushan City. The voice of the woman in black interrupted the little goo eagle's cultivation in the cabin. It looked out of the cabin curiously at the three people on the river. Above the bow of the boat, a figure in white appeared, smiled, and arched his hands at the three people on the river, saying, Thank you. I will first visit your place. You don't need to be so serious. Lu Heng's words were easygoing, but the three people on the river dared not really ignore him. Since the emperor came to Fushan City and explained the matter, they had been waiting day and night. Finally, tonight, the legendary wolf god came. As seen by the magic eyes of Heilin Zhen, the man in white on the bow of the ship smiled kindly, but there was endless heavenly thunder surging around him, and the horrible scene made her eyes ache. If people with low cultivation bases saw this scene, their Tao hearts would break and lose all of their cultivation bases. The god of Hanyu Mountain is really as extraordinary as the emperor said. Heilin Zhen calmed down and said with a slightly serious bow, we have prepared a quiet place. The wolf god can stay in the city with the three of us. We have also sorted out the information about Wu Chonggu and his descendants. You can read it at any time. Lu Heng smiled and said, Thank you, but the descendants of Wu Chonggu should not know of my arrival yet. Heilin Jin nodded and said, Well, we haven't informed the Wu clan yet. There are only three people in the whole Fushan city who know the true identity of the wolf god. However, if you have orders, we will bring anyone in the city to you. Lu Heng shook his head and said, It's not necessary to summon them. Now the situation is very good. Let me first understand the situation of the Wu clan and then decide on the follow up. By the way, is Emperor Lian Shan Jing also in the city now? Lu Heng couldn't help laughing when he thought of the red haired woman who followed him all the way. I don't know where the emperor has gone. I also plan to discuss with her the art of hiding spirit qi. Lu Hang was greedy for Lian Shan Jing's skill of hiding her spirit qi. When the other party disguised to be a boatman approached, Lu Hang could not find her true identity just from the breath. At that time, the reason why Lu Hang was able to find her identity was due to the induction of the Requiem Seal to souls. All things with souls near Lu Hang cannot avoid the induction of the Requiem Seal. However, at that time, he didn't know if Lian Shan Jing was an enemy or a friend, so Lu Heng didn't ask her. Later, when the identities of the two sides were broken and he no longer needed to be on guard, Lian Shan Jing directly threw herself into the river. It was a pity that Lu Heng didn't even have a chance to say anything to her. If he can meet her again in Fushan City, they can have a good talk. However, after listening to Lu Heng's words, Heilin Jin shook her head and said, Sorry, the emperor is no longer in Fushan City. Half a month ago, she left Fushan City after telling us to meet the wolf god. 
As for where she went I'm ashamed, but we don't know. However, if the wolf god is interested in the art of hiding spirit chi, we can also offer relevant methods for you to study. It's nothing new for demon cultivators to be curious about the cultivation of humans. What's more, Lu Heng's status is noble, and this is not an important thing to offer the relevant spells of hiding spirit qi. Naturally, Heilin Zhen would not refuse. When Lu Heng heard that Lian Shan Jing was not in the city, he was disappointed. However, he felt much better when he heard that Heilin Zhen was willing to offer the art of hiding spirit qi. He smiled and arched his hand and said, In that case, thank you, Wu Zhu Heilin. Heilin Zhen shook her head modestly and said, The wolf god, you're too polite. This is what Heilin Zhen should do. Chapter 110 On the river, after the people saluted each other, the boat continued to go south. Soon, they arrived at the port of Fushan City. However, when Lu Heng arrived, the bustling port of No Night, as Hua Feng called it, was now deserted. Although the lights were bright, no one could be seen inside or outside the port. The vacant streets and houses seem inexplicably empty. However, Lu Heng didn't take it seriously, directly got off the boat and went ashore along the empty street towards the open city gate. It because this empty street view was requested by Lu Heng. Originally, in this port, wizards of the Fire God Temple readily met. However, Lu Heng didn't want to be seen as a mascot and was not interested in the grand welcoming ceremony, so he asked Heilin Zhen to clear the venue. After all, there is no complete plan for how he will act after his visit to the city. Lu Heng didn't want to let the residents of Fushan City know his existence in advance. Otherwise, there may be obstacles in the next steps. After leaving the port, Lu Heng and others didn't enter the city directly from the north gate, but instead walked around the city and entered from the south gate. This is the itinerary temporarily changed by Heilin Zhen after she knew what Lu Heng thought. She saw that the wolf god didn't want the residents of the city to know his arrival, so she acted discreetly. Later, the group entered the city in a low-key manner. Without any attention, Lu Heng arrived at the temporary residence prepared for him by Heilin Zhen. A quiet courtyard behind the fire god temple. After a slightly simple ceremony, Heilin Zhen left the courtyard. The servants originally prepared for the wolf god in the courtyard were also dismissed in advance. Now Lu Heng is the only one in the small courtyard where they live. Hua Feng stretched in the yard and said with a smile, I can finally sleep on a bed tonight. After saying good night to Lu Heng, Hua Feng went to his room to rest. The little goo eagle fluttered his wings and followed. After a while, the voice of Hua Feng came from the room. It's okay to live with me, but you must promise that you will not touch this fat bird do you know? Wow! Wow! In the silhouette of the window, the little goo eagle kept nodding and reassuring Hua Feng, so Hua Feng agreed that this goo eagle would sleep with him. However, after Hua Feng and the little goo eagle slept, Lu Heng didn't enter the house, but sat in the courtyard and read the intelligence of the Wu clan prepared by Heilin Zhen and others in advance. Among these books are the genealogy of the Wu clan, the land lease under the control of the Fire God Temple, some large transaction vouchers of the Wu clan in recent years, and the newly written profile of the experience of the Wu clan. The thick books were densely covered with words. It could be seen that Heilin Zhen had prepared very carefully. Lu Heng only needed to read these pages, and then he could gradually understand the major and minor events encountered by the Wu clan in Fushan City in recent years. He also had a deep understanding of the descendants of Wu Chonggu. But the more Lu Heng looks down, the more complicated expression appeared on his face. The whole night passed, but the man in white still didn't leave. At dawn, Hua Feng yawned and came out of the house. When he was ready to wash, he saw the wolf god still sitting in the yard, holding a book in his hand, staring at the distance in a daze. He didn't know what he was thinking. Xiao Ai sat cross knee next to the body of the wolf god. While concentrating on cultivation, she was also waiting for the wolf god. Seeing this scene, Hua Feng immediately understood that the wolf god had not slept all night. And looking at the wolf god's expression, it seems that he has encountered some distressing things. Hua Feng was very surprised. Will the wolf god also suffer? But he dared not disturb the wolf god, let alone ask. Cautiously retracting into the room again, 
Hua Feng dared not even go to wash, for fear of disturbing the wolf god. In the quiet courtyard, Lu Heng sits quietly in the pavilion, pondering in a daze. Until the morning sun pierced the sky, the hushed Fushan city gradually became lively, and Lu Heng finally woke up from his meditation. Looking at the sunshine in the eastern sky, Lu Heng sighed and said, the situation of the Wu clan is really a headache. After thinking about it, Lu Heng said, Xiao Ai, go and buy some firewood later. In the afternoon, go to the Wu clan's mansion for me to attend the funeral of the Wu clan's old master. By the way, see how are the Wu brothers doing. Lu Heng's words opened the eyes of the little girl sitting beside the white wolf. She stood up, made a deep salute and said, understood. This scene was seen by Hua Feng in the house, but he was also confused and didn't know what had happened. The little goo eagle squat beside him and looked at the yard outside curiously. With the simple little brain of the little guy, it's even more difficult to understand what happened. At the same time, in Fushan City, white flags were hung all over the houses of the Wu clan. Mournful music rang out in the morning hall. All the guests who came carried the firewood they brought with them and handed it over to the Wu people at the gate before they go to the morning hall to worship. The Fire Pass country advocates cremation. Even the rich and noble families in this city have no great difference in funeral customs from those villagers in Hanyu Mountain. After the death of the deceased, a memorial hall was built to receive relatives and friends from all over the world to express their condolences. At night, the deceased was cremated and turned into ashes, and scattered into the river. Compared with the Shueishing village outside Hanyu Mountain, the rich and noble families in this city only have many more funeral guests, and the banquet dishes at the funeral are rich. Apart from this, there is nothing special. After all, there is no netherworld in this world, and no legends of reincarnation. After people die, they will directly dissipate between heaven and earth. The so-called Dharma that Lu Heng is familiar with doesn't exist in this world. The reason the building of the memorial hall is only to let the deceased's relatives and friends meet the deceased for the last time. In one of the courtyards of the Wu clan, there were several young people gathered today, all of whom were well-dressed. Their behavior could be seen in their conversation and laughter. These young people were not ordinary people. At this time, a smiling man came from the outside, interrupted the conversation of the people, and said with a smile, I have some news. I'm afraid you won't believe it. Oh. What news? The words of the visitor made everyone stop talking. They were all curious. The man didn't want to arouse the people's appetite, and smiled and said, there were outsiders in the small courtyard behind the fire god temple last night. The visitor didn't say which courtyard it was, but when he said, everyone present clearly understood it. Oh. That little yard. It seems that we have a big man in Fushan City. Is he from the capital? Everyone was curious. The man shook his head with a smile and said, I don't know. But this morning, an order from Wuzhu Hilan Zhen was spread to all the old clans in the city. It said that no one is allowed to spy on the courtyard, or there would be no amnesty you should be able to hear the warning from your elders after you go home. Such news made everyone look at each other in surprise. It's forbidden to spy. Otherwise, there will be no amnesty for killing. Even when the emperor came, there were no such things. What kind of great power lives in the small courtyard? It makes Wuzhu Hilan Jin so nervous. It seems that we have a big man in Fushan City who can't be offended. Chapter 111 Everyone looked at each other in surprise and talked to each other. They were all slightly shocked by the incident. The courtyard behind the fire god temple was a small forbidden area in the city. The people who have been staying in the small courtyard are all important people with extraordinary status and need to be treated with care. But even so, it has never been the case before. Even Wuzhu Hilan personally issued an injunction, saying that those who spy on the courtyard will be killed without mercy. Isn't this a big show? As everyone has said, even when the emperor came, there was not such a thing. Therefore, everyone was curious about what kind of big people came to Fushan City and what the other side was doing. The small courtyard of this Wu's residence was lively because of such discussions. The sad music came from afar, but it was like another world from a long time ago and didn't enter the ears of the people. 
The lively and relaxed atmosphere was the mainstream of this courtyard. It seemed that it was also the mainstream of this mansion. Meanwhile, in the early morning sunshine, a girl named Xiao Ai left the Fire God Temple with a dark blue sword on her back. In the crowded Fire God Temple, the little girl's departure didn't attract any attention. When Huafeng saw Xiao Ai go out, he also came out of the house. At this time Lu Heng was still sitting in the pavilion, but he no longer wandered and meditated, but turned to a roll of bamboo slips in his hand. Seeing that Huafeng finally came out of the room, Lu Heng smiled and took the initiative to speak, Brother Hua, you need not be constrained. You can do whatever you want. I will not be disturbed. It is obvious that although Lu Heng was distracted, he also noticed Hua Feng who went back into the room for fear to disturb him. In this regard, Hua Feng smiled awkwardly but it was hard to say anything. With a slight bow, he ran away with the little goo eagle squatting on his shoulder. After going to the backyard for a little washing and a little grooming Hua Feng returned to the front yard. At this time, Lu Heng still sat in his original position and looked through the bamboo slips. There are pages of paper in this world, but some important secrets are recorded in special bamboo slips. Such bamboo slips can be stored for a long time and are not easy to damage. The bamboo slips in Lu Heng's hands are of this kind. The above record is the method of hiding spirit qi sent by Wu Zhu Hilinzhen. Lu Heng wanted to try to cultivate the human cultivator's spirit qi hiding method, so as to avoid the recurrence of victims like Hua Feng. Lu Heng was surprised to see the dress of Hua Feng. Brother Hua, are you going out? At this time, Hua Feng was neatly dressed, carrying a small bamboo basket on his back, wearing a bamboo hat on his head to shade the sun, and squatting on his shoulder was a small goo eagle. If someone unrelated came across this scene, they might think that Hua Feng is a ranger. Hui Feng said with a smile, this is actually the first time I have come to Fushan City. Before today, most of my knowledge about Fushan City came from hearsay, so I'm curious about the style of this city. Now I have a chance, I want to go around and buy some food to prepare for dinner. If the wolf god allows me, I also want to take Gu Yen with me and let him see the city. The little Gu Eagle on the shoulder of Hua Feng couldn't help but stretch his neck and look forward to seeing Lu Heng. It seemed that it would cry once Lu Heng refused. Seeing this, Lu Heng couldn't help laughing and said, it's okay to take him to see the world. But you must restrain this little guy and don't mess around in the city. If there is any trouble, we will eat braised goo eagle tonight. Lu Heng's last words made the little goo eagle shrink his neck and dare not move. Hua Feng laughed and said, I will definitely restrain Gu Yan, and I will teach him not to do anything. In this way, Hua Feng left with the little goo eagle, who was curious about everything. Lu Heng sat in the courtyard and watched the two leave, but there was nothing to worry about. Since the collapse of his Tao heart, it seems that Hua Feng's mind has become more and more mature and stable. Today, he is no longer the same as the high-spirited young and rash cultivator Lu Heng saw in the post office. He became less frivolous and more stable. Although many precious things in Hua Feng's heart have not changed, Hua Feng is still the same, but it makes Lu Heng appreciate him more. Following Hua Feng's side is also a positive teaching for the little Gu Eagle. After all, this kind of monster is as ignorant as a young child. The people and things that it comes into contact with at this stage will have a great impact on its character. It is not a bad thing for the son of the former Emperor Yen to follow Hua Feng every day. As for personal safety, there is no need to worry. Although monsters are rampant in the wilderness, the big cities of humans are still very safe. Hua Feng is also a disciple of the Yun sect who has been wandering and training for many years, so he is unlikely to encounter any danger. What's more, the sign hanging around the little goo eagle's neck is a water god's amulet similar to the mountain god's amulet. And its power is much stronger than the one Lu Heng gave to Xiao Ai. In case of danger or emergency, the little goo eagle can send a distress signal at any time. The Fushan city is located on the side of the Pangjiang River. Under the power of the river god, his mom can come in an instant. The little goo eagle is a talisman of Hua Feng when he follows him. Therefore, after Hua Feng and the little goo eagle left, Lu Heng continued to check the bamboo slips in his hands and tried to use the technique of hiding qi in the bamboo slips. 
In the quiet courtyard, thunder flashed from time to time. On the bamboo slip sent by Heelan Zhen, the description and skills of the art of hiding spirit qi are mysterious. Even Lu Heng, who has not been in touch with any secret collection of human cultivation before, can see at a glance that this volume of bamboo slips is extraordinary. At the very least, it's much better than the Yun sect secret arts that Huafeng carries with him. In addition, the preservation carrier of the art of hiding spirit qi is not a book page, but a special bamboo slip, which has been kept for a long time it is obvious that this volume of bamboo slips in Lu Heng's hands is a treasure. If it is converted to the martial arts novels that Lu Heng read in his previous life, it is almost equivalent to the Shaolin Temple's tendon-changing classic. Lu Heng just looked at a few lines of words, and soon immersed himself in this mysterious secret collection, and his expression gradually became serious. Different from when he read the secret collection of the Yun sect, this time Lu Heng looked at it very carefully and was fascinated. The volume of bamboo slips with few records was opened again and again by him. Every word and paragraph above left huge waves in his heart. In the courtyard, the lightning light loomed. However, it was strange that there was not a shred of divine power to leak out when such penetrating thunder shone. Even Heilin Zhen, who was in the fire god temple, hadn't found the thunder shining from time to time in the small courtyard. Chapter, 112 The thunder is the most ferocious and peerless force in the world. Since ancient times, there has never been any cultivator who can control it. Lu Heng accidentally cast the heavenly thunder to be his cultivation base. Although he has set foot on a broad road that no one has ever walked, it also means that Lu Heng can only explore how far this road can go alone. For Lu Heng, the past cultivation experience is only that of the reference value, and it is impossible to give him detailed guidance. Now, after reading the secret collection of the Yun sect and the bamboo slips in his hand, Lu Heng suddenly woke up. In the past, he fell into the error of empiricism and tried to deduce his own cultivation by using the cultivation methods of ordinary demons. However, the heavenly thunder is particularly fierce, and Lu Heng's cultivation base is also unusual. If he wants to deduce his own cultivation by means of common demon cultivation methods, it is like cutting a mark on the side of one's boat to indicate the place where one's sword has dropped into the river. Perhaps this is the real reason why he has been unable to break through and open the door to heaven. In the courtyard, Lu Heng was stunned he unconsciously flipped through the bamboo slips in his hands. It seemed that he was still reading and deducing the method of hiding spirit qi recorded on the bamboo slips. Only in the past two hours, Lu Heng had already confirmed that it couldn't apply to his own situation. The heavenly thunder couldn't be hidden by using the spirit qi hiding methods of human cultivators. But Lu Heng was not depressed. Because of this volume of bamboo slips, he saw the most profound secret technique. Even though this secret technique could not be used by him, the exquisite method of concealing spirit qi broadened his vision and greatly inspired Lu Heng, making him suddenly wake up and understand what he lacked. His cultivation base is different from other people's, and he could only develop it by himself. Trying to rely on other people's secret skills is too fantastic. When he thinks about it carefully, since he woke up in this world, all the secret skills he holds now come from his own perception. Whether it's the heavenly thunder or the punishment clouds, these are all magic powers that Lu Heng realized alone. There has never been any record of such magic powers in the past. Perhaps, I should go to see the cultivation secrets of other cultivators. If I can read all the books and broaden my horizons, I can learn from the strengths of all sects, and perhaps I can walk out of my own thoroughfare. Of course, before that, I need to read this volume of bamboo slips thoroughly. Lu Heng was greatly inspired by the mysterious skills recorded on the bamboo slips. Now he was sitting quietly in the courtyard, holding a bamboo slip in his left hand, and pinching his right hand. There was a faint ray of thunder flowing between his fingers. Although it was not a killing move, it released a horrible breath. However, the power of thunder and lightning surging in Lu Heng's hands was not fierce. Even if the lightning flashed, it didn't have the slightest ferocity. Its power was even inferior to ordinary wind and thunder. If people who didn't know the situation saw it, they would never think that the flashing light was the fierce and powerful heavenly thunder. Lu Heng was in a good mood when his fingertips were shining. Although he could only hide a trace of it now, he had found a secret. 
if he continued to study in this direction, maybe one day he would not only be able to perfectly hide his spirit chi, but also hide the lightning blot that he threw out. Of course, that may be a long time later. In the secluded courtyard behind the fire god temple, Lu Heng devoted himself to cultivation. In the bustling Fushan city, Hua Feng, with a bamboo basket on his back and a small goo eagle squatting on his shoulder, had arrived near the wharf outside the city. The hustle and bustle of Fushan city are more prosperous than he imagined. So he was in a good mood after spending nearly a day in the city. Not to mention the little goo eagle named Gu Yen. Although this little guy has lived for more than sixty years, he had been as naive as a child. Even when the river god was busy and unable to accompany him, she would certainly arrange for two maids to follow him day and night. So Gu Yen was more like a pet than to be her son. Because this little Gu Eagle's mind was too simple that it was no different from a pet. Although Gu Zhou, the river god, is his mother, the little Gu Eagle was more close to the two maids who were responsible for feeding and protecting him. Now that Lu Hang led him to cultivate, the little Gu Eagle is gradually obtaining wisdom and would soon understand who is his most important family member. But for now, the little Gu Eagle is only a slightly clever beast, full of curiosity about everything in the world. Although Hua Feng was also amazed at the bustle of Fushan City, he had traveled far and wide for many years, so he wasn't too surprised to see new things here. The little Gu Eagle was different. It was his first time setting foot in a human city, and it was such a prosperous human city too. Gu Yen was so excited that he could not help fluttering his wings. If it hadn't been for Hua Feng who tied one of Gu Yan's claws with a rope before going out, the excited little Gu Eagle might have flown away. Wow! Wow! On the crowded dock, the excited cry of the little Gu Eagle, like a baby crying, attracted many people's attention. Most of the traveling merchants would look at him curiously, and some people with sharp eyes even recognize Gu Yan's identity. However, they are often strong people who can enslave strong animals. Compared with those ferocious beasts, the little Gu Eagle on Hua Feng's shoulder is not very special. Although it was eye-catching, it was only to the extent that people would take a glance. In the crowd, Hua Feng looked around and stopped in front of one of the vendors from time to time to ask about the price and select raw fish. This crowded dock is completely different from the deserted appearance that they saw last night. The traveling merchants, the porters who were busy loading and unloading, and the various vendors made the place very lively. Hua Feng was now located in a fish market on the edge of the wharf. He and Gu Yan had been walking around the city for almost a day. Now it's getting late. He should prepare dinner for the wolf god. Due to those limiting conditions, Hua Feng's cooking skills could not be fully displayed before. Now that he has finally moved into the human city, he has been eager to cook for a long time. He only needs to purchase ingredients and then show his skills tonight to let Xiao Ai and the wolf god taste his real cooking skills. Hua Feng was eager to try, while Gu Yan, squatting on his shoulder, poked his head and looked curiously at the fish displayed by the vendors. In the fish market, the fishy smell was very strong. Chapter 113 Ordinary people may not be able to bear the fishy smell, but for Gu Yan, it was very alluring. It fluttered its wings excitedly and shouted to ask Hua Feng to buy food for him. Hua Feng was a little helpless. He only said, wait a moment, wait a moment, let's go home and eat. He tried to appease the excited Gu Yan and tried to calm him down. There were a lot of people on the wharf. How dared he let Gu Yan down? While selecting raw fish, Gu Yan and Hua Feng are somewhat exhausted. Is this what taking care of children meant? Maybe next time I won't take this little guy out. In order to hurry up, Hua Feng didn't bargain anymore and chose two fresh raw fish. He took the little Gu Eagle out of the fish market. As he walked, he comforted and said, Okay, okay, we'll go home now. I'll give you something to eat when we get back. When Hua Feng said this, he found that the little Gu Eagle, who had been screaming all the time, suddenly stopped moving. He was a little curious. Eh. Gu Yen. Hua Feng tilted his head and looked at the little Gu Eagle on his shoulder. He found that the little Gu Eagle was staring at the river bank not far away curiously. On the bank of the river, there was a three-story ship that was now berthing. 
The white cloth was tied on the ship, and the morning flags were hanging high. It was clear that it was a morning ship. After the ship docked at the shore, just as it stopped steadily, there was the neighing of horses. On the big ship, there were six knights in white cloth riding horses. They directly rode white horses to leap ashore from the deck, and then galloped toward the gate of Fushan City. The knight who ran at the front kept shouting. The second young master of the Wu clan has come to mourn. Make way. Make way. On the crowded wharf, even walking was a bit crowded. However, the six horsemen in white ran directly into the crowd, and the speed was getting faster and faster. They had no intention to stop at all. The neighing of the white horses and the yelling of the knight in the front scared all the pedestrians on the road back to both sides for fear of being hit by the galloping horse. These six galloping horses were as fast as meteors. If ordinary people were hit, they would be killed directly. The originally bustling wharf road was suddenly disturbed by the appearance of these six knights. But where could people dodge? They could only move toward the vendors on both sides. Under the impact of the crowd, the stalls originally placed on both sides of the road were instantly submerged by the crowd, and many things were blown away. The peddler's boss kept complaining and shouting at the crowd. Ouch! Don't crowd! Don't crowd! However, galloping horses were coming here. Who dared to block them on the main road? People were all scared to flee everywhere, and the cries of these poor peddlers were directly drowned by the crowd. The booth was directly lifted off, and the goods on it were scattered on the ground and trampled by people. Even if the stall owner wanted to stop it, he couldn't stop it at all. The crowd surged in, and the stall owners shouted anxiously, but they could only grasp the goods they could grasp with their hands and retreat toward the rear, for fear that they would be crushed by the crowd. Among the crowd, Huafong was originally standing at the edge of the crowd, so when the crowd was thick, he immediately took the little goo eagle back to protect the food in the bamboo basket, and also saw the six horsemen galloping in the crowd. From his perspective, the six knights were all excellent cultivators. The strongest two of them were serious middle-aged men. One of them was a burly man, while the other was a thin man. The two men galloped through the crowd on horseback, their eyes cold, and they didn't even look at the frightened people. It seems that the ordinary people who desperately retreat on the road are not even ants to them, and they don't even bother to look at them. Huafong could clearly feel that even if he had not lost his cultivation base, he couldn't defeat these two people. However, although these two middle-aged men have high cultivation bases, the highest status in the riding team was the youngest one in the team. His long black hair was tied behind him, swinging up and down with the galloping steed. His face with a trace of a dissolute smile is very handsome. If he smiled, he could charm countless girls. Although he was dressed in white, it was not a morning dress, but the clothes of rangers. After hearing the fear and fear of people around him, Huafong realized that this young man in white was the second young master of the Wu clan, Wu Ziyuan. Now that the old man of the Wu clan had died of illness, the second master of the Wu clan had gone all the way back to catch up with the cremation ceremony tonight. When the riding team passed the road where Huafong was, Wu Ziyuan on the horse seemed to be aware and subconsciously looked at the roadside. He saw an ordinary young man standing silently outside the crowd. The other party was plainly dressed, wearing a bamboo hat, carrying a bamboo basket and squatting a strange little eagle on his shoulder. Now the young man was watching him quietly. But there was no fear in his eyes. The young man was completely different from the people around him. Wu Ziyuan was a little curious. He took another look and found that the other side sword was the Yunsek disciple. Wu Ziyuan smiled, but didn't care. With a whip, he rode his horse toward the gate and quickly left the young man who should be a disciple of the Yun sect behind. The Fushan city would be in chaos, and as the protagonist, this drama was waiting for him to come on stage. It was only a disciple of the Yun sect. He might have had some interest in meeting him in the past, but now he was in no mood to pay attention to such a person. Today, he only wanted to laugh. The old bastard finally died. This is the best news I have heard this year. Ha ha ha. Wu Ziyuan was in a happy mood, and the speed of the horse under him was also faster. The crowded market road was in front of him, but all the people were retreating and didn't dare to stop him. 
such a vast world awaits him. How can I care about a mere disciple of the Yun sect at such a time? Wu Ziyuan laughed and went away. In the market which gradually recovered its calm behind him, standing behind the gradually dispersed crowd, Hua Feng frowned. He had been quietly looking in the direction of the city gate, watching the six knights disappear in the field of vision, and then slowly withdrew his sight. If he remembers correctly, the wolf god wants to look for the later generation of the Wu clan, right? How could the Wu clan's young people be like this? Suddenly, Hua Feng suddenly remembered the sad sigh of the wolf god in the courtyard. Looking back now, it seemed that the sigh of wolf god at that time contained endless helplessness. The situation of the Wu clan is really a headache. Chapter 114 In the dock, with the departure of the six knights, the crowded and noisy fish market gradually restored order. People who fled in panic returned to the middle of the road one after another. Those stalls that were knocked down and knocked out were also set up by the people. As for the goods scattered on the ground, except for the ones that were trampled. The rest were basically picked up by the people and put back in the stalls one after another, while the stall owners were asked to clean up the mud and water on them. Fortunately, this place is a dock after all. There are many fish vendor stalls. Most of the goods are raw fish. Even if people trample on them, they will not be affected. After being cleaned with water, they can still be sold. Among the crowd, Hua Feng frowned. Because the second young master of the Wu clan was mentioned in the conversation among the traders walking around. According to the information revealed by the conversation among the people, although the Wu clan was well known in Fushan city, there were also some bad rumors about them. Especially the second young master of the Wu clan. Hui Feng frowned and said nothing. Gu Yan, squatting on his shoulder, didn't know what had happened. Seeing that Hua Feng had been in a trance, he cried twice and pecked Hua Feng's face with his sharp beak. Although he didn't hurt him, he woke Hui Feng up. Oh. Oh Gu Yan, after waking up, Hua Feng looked at the little Gu Eagle with a puffy shoulder and said with a smile, Sorry, I'm distracted. Let's go now. He tightened the basket on his back and walked toward the city, saying, We'll go home and prepare dinner for you. The little Gu Eagle grunted contentedly and stopped making trouble. After leaving the dock, he returned to the city. Through the heavy gate, he came to the streets of the city. The streets in the city are not as crowded as the docks, but the city gate is bustling here, and there are many vendors on both sides of the road. When Hua Feng entered the city, although the scene he saw was not as chaotic as that in the fish market at the wharf, it was obvious that there was a riot not long ago. After the six horses came into the city, they didn't slow down. Instead, they continued to gallop and crash in the street. Such an act is really. Hua Feng shook his head and his expression became worse. He walked through the crowd, listening to the low curses of the traders and the voices of the discussion, and he could not help feeling worried. The wolf god ordered Xiao Ai to attend the funeral of the Wu Kaun's old master. However, because of Xiao Ai's temperament, she wouldn't ignore them, especially the second young master of the Wu clan. However, the Wu clan is the wolf god's friend's clan. If Miss Xiao Ai beat them. Hua Feng hesitated for several seconds, but finally didn't go directly to the fire god temple. Instead, he silently changed his direction and went to the house of the Wu clan. On his shoulder, the little Gu eagle looked left and right curiously, busy observing the scenery in the city, but he didn't find that Hua Feng quietly changed his route. At the same time, the mournful music was still playing in the Wu clan's mansion. In the properly arranged morning hall, guests come and go endlessly, and most of them are rich and noble people in Fushan city. Wu Zhiqian, the eldest son of the Wu clan, 36 years old this year, was now the host of the funeral. Compared with his young and frivolous second brother, he was much more mature and prudent. Before the old man died, he was already in charge of many things of the Wu clan and was in charge of many stores. Among the young generation in Fushan city, Wu Zhiqian also has his own contacts. He's not much of a brilliant genius, but he is very stable. When the old clans in the city talk about it, they all have a good impression of the young man. Today, Wu Zhiqian, dressed in white cloth, was standing in front of the gate of the Wu clan's mansion, smiling to welcome every family member and friend who came in. 
Among them, there were relatives and friends of the Wu clan, some old friends of the old master, and spies from other clans in the city. Although the Wu clan is not the top in Fushan city, the death of the old master didn't influence other clan leaders of other old clans. However, in the same city, some courtesy greetings still need to be done. Anyway, it was just to let a servant send a bundle of firewood here. It doesn't need to bother those clan leaders to come in person. But even so, Wu Jiqian dared not neglect. Although those sent by the old clans were not clan leaders, they also had a certain identity. He smiled at everyone and didn't dare to neglect them. At this time, a small figure came from the front of the street and appeared in Wu Jiqian's vision, which made him slightly surprised. The location of the Wu Kaun's mansion is one of the fancy quarters of the city. This fancy quarter is full of rich and powerful families, and the streets are surrounded by tall walls. Compared to other places in the city, this place is quiet and remote. In addition to the servants in different residence uniforms, the only people who appeared on the street were the Wu clan's acquaintances who came to the funeral with firewood. However, the little girl who appeared, with long silver hair and sharp animal ears, was so strange. The dark blue ancient sword on her back, although looked ordinary, since it was carried by such a strange little girl, it must be special too. Wu Jiqian couldn't help but open his eyes and think about it in his heart. However, he couldn't remember when the Wu clan knew such a demon cultivator. Without waiting for Wu Jiqian to think about it, the little girl with silver hair and animal ears came to the front door of the Wu's clan. The firewood in her arms shows her intention. Wu Jiqian hurriedly out and said with his hands arched, I'm Wu Jiqian, the eldest son of the Wu clan. Little fairy, where are you from? Are you coming here to attend my father's funeral ceremony? Well, the little girl with silver hair and animal ears nodded, handed the firewood in her arms to the servant on the side, and said, My name is Lu Ai. At the order of my master, I came to attend the old master's funeral ceremony. Wu Jiqian quickly asked, Little fairy, may you tell me your master's name? I'd better write it down, and I'll come to the door to thank your master later. The little girl shook her head and said, I can't tell you my master's name for the time being. If there is an opportunity in the future, my master may visit in person. At that time, Uncle Wu, you can directly ask the master. There is no need to ask me. The little girl refused lightly, and Wu Jiqian dared not ask any questions. He said with a smile, I understand. I won't ask any more questions. Please come in and take a rest. Sorry, I'm too busy now so I can't accompany you Uncle Song, please invite the little fairy to take a rest. Wu Jiqian beckoned to his entourage. Xiao Ai nodded and was about to follow the old man who was called Uncle Song into the door, but at this moment, there was a sharp sound of horses' hoofs on the road behind her. Then came the neighing of the horses. And the laughter of the second young master of the Wu clan. Elder brother, I wonder if you are happy to see your little brother coming home. Ha ha. In the complacent laughter, the sound of horses' hooves came quickly, and all the people in front of the Wu clan's mansion looked in that direction. A total of six riders came with smoke and dust, and the second young master of the Wu clan was sitting high on one horse's back with a bright smile. All the pedestrians along the way fled in fear and retreated to both sides. That menacing appearance immediately made Wu Jiqian's face gloomy. At the same time, Xiao Ai, who had just entered the door, turned back slightly and gave a cold glance. Chapter 115 The sudden appearance of the second master of the Wu clan made the atmosphere of the funeral become suddenly delicate. Xiao Ai stood at the door, quietly watching the handsome second master of the Wu clan riding his horse, without saying a word. Uncle Song, an old man beside her, hurriedly said, Little fairy, please go this way. The old man wants to take Xiao Ai out of this place. But Xiao Ai shook her head and said, It's all right. After that, regardless of the old man's reaction, the little girl stopped directly in front of the gate and quietly watched the reunion of brothers outside. The old man had no choice but to stand aside. When the second master of the Wu clan, named Wu Ziyuan, arrived at the gate of the Wu clan, he jumped down from the horse with a laugh and opened his arms to his brother Wu Jiqian at the gate. Big brother. I haven't seen you for a long time. I'm bloody wanting to see you. 
Wu Zhiqian held his younger brother reluctantly and said, Why did you rush back without notice? I could not even arrange for some people to pick you up. If you return to Fushan City next time, you must not do so. Wu Ziyuan laughed and patted his brother on the back. Then he released Wu Zhiqian and said with a smile, It's not necessary. There won't be another time. My brother, I don't plan to leave this time. Ha ha. Wu Ziyuan laughed heartily, and then, regardless of the expression of his brother when he heard such words, he walked directly to the door with a smile. Let's go. I'll meet the old man first. Elder brother, I'll trouble you to entertain guests outside. You've always been courteous and polite. I'll leave it to you to welcome and send the guests away. It was a completely bossy attitude that made Wu Zhiqian's face more gloomy. Wu Ziyuan saw the silver-haired girl standing by the gate as he stepped through it, and his eyes lit up. Wu Ziyuan smiled and arched his hands. I'm Wu Ziyuan. Little fairy are you an old friend of my father? The little girl in front of him has silver hair and animal ears. She is by no means an ordinary person. Wu Ziyuan guessed that she should be a strong demon cultivator. Therefore, although the other party looked young, Wu Ziyuan didn't dare to be frivolous. The little girl gave him a cold look and turned to the morning hall without answering. Such a cold attitude surprised Wu Ziyuan is she not an old acquaintance of my dead father but a friend of my big brother? But how can he know such a strong demon cultivator? As a cultivator, Wu Ziyuan could see at a glance that this little girl with silver hair and animal ears was extraordinary. He estimated that even the two strong cultivators he specially brought here were no match for the little girl. Standing outside the door, he watched the little girl with silver hair and animal ears enter the morning hall. Wu Ziyuan frowned slightly. The original happy mood was cast in shadow because of this unknown demon cultivator. But what should be done should also be done, and at the very least, be careful. With six subordinates, Wu Ziyuan walked directly into the funeral hall, holding his father's coffin and crying, crying loudly that he should come back earlier. The sad cry spread along with the morning music, but it had a kind of funeral atmosphere. The little girl with silver hair and animal ears sat quietly in the corner of the yard, watching everything about the Wu clan with cold eyes, without talking to anyone, just like an indifferent outsider. After dark, night fell, and the Wu clan's memorial hall became more and more lively. Because after midnight, the old man's body must be transported to the outside of the city, and burned with firewood completely into ashes. Most of the guests, relatives and friends had gathered at this time. At the same time, in the small courtyard behind the fire god temple, Hua Feng was flipping the dishes in the kitchen, thinking about something. The little goo eagle squatted on the threshold and stared at him with profound resentment. Before, Hua Feng took the little goo eagle to the Wu clan. The little goo eagle didn't notice that the route had changed. However, when they were about to come to the Wu clan, the little goo eagle responded and began to make noise. Hua Feng had no choice but to change the route temporarily, instead of going to the Wu clan, he returned directly to the fire god temple. But even so, it was already dark when they returned to the yard. The little Gu eagle, who had been hungry for a long time, was so angry that he flew to complain to Lu Heng. Lu Heng calmed the little guy and told Hua Feng that Xiao Ai would not come back for dinner tonight, so he didn't have to prepare Xiao Ai's share. Afterwards, Hua Feng went into the kitchen and began to prepare dinner. In the courtyard, Lu Heng still sat in the morning position, as if he had not moved all day. The scroll of bamboo slips in his hand had now been put down by him. However, the content of the bamboo slips have been recorded by Lu Heng forever. Today, Lu Heng was still slowly digesting and deducing the content on the bamboo slips, trying to learn more things. In the kitchen, Hua Feng said nothing. He was still thinking of the scene that he saw at the dock today, and the arrogant appearance of the second master of the Wu clan. But. He glanced at the wolf god outside the door and sighed, but it was not easy to tell the story. After all, although the second master of the Wu clan's behavior was somewhat domineering, it was still not counted as evil yet. He didn't want to do such a thing before the second master of the Wu clan really did something bad. He decided to investigate it clearly before he said something. After thinking for a long time, 
Hua Feng finally made up his mind to go to the city to inquire about it in the next few days. If the second master of the Wu clan really has done bad deeds, it must be reported to the wolf god. Because he had something in mind, Hua Feng had a quiet dinner. At the dinner table, Lu Hun was not a talkative person. He's occasionally asked about Hua Feng's experience in the city today, so he didn't answer more than necessary. After dinner, Hua Feng took the little Gu Eagle into the house. Lu Hun was left alone in the courtyard outside the house again. However, today, Lu Hun was not cultivating, but quietly looked at the direction of the Wu clan mansion. There, under the night sky, the bright fireworks rose up, illuminating the night sky of the city. That's a sign that the old master of the Wu clan's body was about to be moved out of the city. Every half hour, the Wu clan's mansion will have fireworks play until after midnight. And in this small courtyard, there was a shadow. The dark black robe and tall figure showed that it was Wu Zhu Hilanzhen of Fushan City. The wolf god, Hilanzhen bowed. The man in white in the courtyard also saluted and said, Please, Wu Zhu Hilan. Hilanzhen shook her head and said, It's a very easy thing. I didn't do too much. Lu Heng smiled and said, The time has come. Let's go out of the city. Okay, Hilanzhen replied succinctly. Later, the two figures disappeared from the courtyard and went toward the Pangjiang River outside the city. The purpose of their visit is the place where the Wu clan holds the cremation ceremony for the old man tonight. Lu Hun, while holding the requiem seal, wanted to try to retain the old master's soul. Chapter 116 After leaving the courtyard, the two figures flew straight into night sky and fade away from the city. As for the body of Lu Hun, the huge white wolf still lay in the room to rest. Lu Heng's soul came out of the city. Lu Heng didn't tell Hilanzhen about his plan for this trip. He just invited Hilanzhen to accompany him to watch the funeral of the old master of the Wu clan outside the city tonight. After all, Lu Heng didn't know whether he could really lead the soul of the old master of the Wu clan into the underworld. Wouldn't it be very embarrassing if he boasted in advance and couldn't do it? In the night sky of the city, the departure of two shadows, one white and one black, didn't attract any passerby's attention. Although the wizard on duty in the city noticed the passing of these two shadows, accompanied by Heelan Zhen, the wizard dared not come inquire. Otherwise, according to the convention, if there is a cultivator flying over the city, the wizard on duty will interrogate and stop any unauthorized attempts of crossing. This is also an important reason why Lu Heng invited Heelan Zhen to travel with him. His soul is difficult to walk in the city. If he wants to travel, he can only fly. With Heelan Zhen accompanying him, a lot of trouble was solved. Soon, the two people flew out of Fushan City, which was surrounded by tall and magnificent walls, and came to the river outside the city. On the wharf in the distance, lights were shining brightly. Even when it was close to midnight, there were porters and boatmen coming and going. Lu Heng and Heelan Zhen stand in the night sky, above the magical scenery beneath them. At their feet, huge firewood piles have been piled up. The mournful white flag was waving throughout the night. The river is not far away, the sound of water is choppy and the wind is fierce. Lu Heng spoke with a confident smile, Please wait for me a moment, Wu Zhu Heelan. Heelan Zhen nodded, and they sat down under the night sky, waiting for the Wu clan team that was leaving the city to arrive. The people of the Wu clan didn't let them wait. Soon, amongst the midst of a noisy swona sound, the Wu clan in mourning came here surrounding the coffin of the old man of the Wu clan. The little girl with silver hair and animal ears carried a bronze ancient sword and silently followed the team. Next to the coffin, the second master of the Wu clan, Wu Ziyuan held his father's coffin and wailed as he walked. Wow! Father, you just left why didn't you wait for your son to come back and look at you again? The grandiose wailing sound made Wu Zhiqian, who was also holding the spirit tablet not too far away, looked gloomy. Previously, he also wanted to cry, but Wu Ziyuan's crying was so lackluster and disgusting that he could not cry anymore. So he felt gloomy. While Wu Ziyuan was crying and walking. When they came to the river with the coffin, all of Wu clan people knelt down and kowtowed to the old man's coffin. Then, a servant carried the old man's coffin onto the firewood stack. Below, white streamers fluttered, 
and the children of the family knelt in rows after rows. Both Wu Ziyuan and Wu Zhiqian knelt in the first row, but they were on one side, far away from each other. Wu Ziyuan still held the spirit tablet and wailed. At this time, a thin middle-aged man came to him, who was Wu Ziyuan's confidant. Named Zhang Er, he worked for Wu Ziyuan with his brother Zhang De. Zhang Er said in a low voice, Young master, I've found out. The demon cultivator with silver hair and beast ears is named Lu Ai. She is attending the old man's funeral on behalf of her master. She suddenly appeared today and is not your brother's friend. You don't need to worry about her helping him. Wu Ziyuan nodded and whispered, so it is. Then he raised his head and cried bitterly for two more times. Only then did he mutter in a low voice, but to be on the safe side, I'd better invite grandma to come. Only when grandma sits down can we be safe. Zhang Er said with a smile, my brother has already invited her. It won't be long before grandma arrives. You can rest assured. Wu Ziyuan smiled in a low voice and howled loudly. Father. I don't want to leave you. Open your eyes and see. Zhang Er could not help, but twitch at the corner of his mouth when he listened to the grandiose wailing and could not help but whisper a warning. Young master, your crying sounds too fake. Wu Ziyuan grinned and howled loudly. Dad. Open your eyes and look at your son. After howling, he lowered his head, almost couldn't hold back his smile, and his whole body was shaking. Pu ha ha Wu Ziyuan smiled slightly and said with a chuckle, I can't help but want to laugh loudly. How can I cry? With that, he began to howl at the top of his voice. Dad. You left so suddenly, I'm so sad. At this time, the wizard who was invited to the funeral from the fire god temple had completed all the ceremonies and directly lit the fire. Not long after, the firewood piled on the riverside suddenly burst into flames, and began to burn the corpses lying quietly in the coffin. The smell of scorch wafted along the river wind. Lu Hang stood up in the night sky and summoned the requiem seal. He was ready to take the soul of the old master of the Wu clan away from his body. However, when Lu Hang and Heilin Zhen stood up, there was a flash of human shadow in the river on the other side, which also appeared in the night sky. Lu Hang was surprised to see the other party. Hum. The Pangjiang River God. This one appeared in the river, dressed in a divine robe, with a solemn face. She was Gu Zhou, the river god of Pengjiang. While Lu Heng called her, Gu Zhou saw two figures in the night sky and was surprised. She quickly leaned over and deeply saluted Lu Heng, Gu Zhou is waiting for your order. Then she stood up straight and nodded at Heilin Zhen. Wu Zhu Heilin, nice to meet you. Heilin Zhen also nodded, which was a return. She was as silent as ever. However, Gu Zhou didn't care and she seemed used to it. She smiled and said to Lu Hang, I didn't expect to meet you here did you come to watch the Wu clan's funeral? Well, I have a relationship with the dead old master's father, so I came and took a look, Lu Hang said lightly. But why are you here? Gu Zhou looked at the burning flame below and said, I'm here to take the soul of the old master of the Wu clan into the water mansion. Seeing Lu Hang's surprise, Gu Zhou explained with a smile. After human souls leave their bodies, they will gradually dissipate from heaven and earth. But before they dissipate, these souls are often chaotic and helpless. They are exposed to the wind and sun like lonely spirits and wild ghosts. Finally, their pain dissipates in an extremely miserable way. Therefore, when my husband was alive, he taught me the art of guiding the souls. As long as the deceased on both sides of the Pangjiang River worship me, I will let the river demons lead their souls to my water mansion after their death, so their souls won't feel too painful before dissipating. It is also a good deed. As for real good people, like the old master of the Wu clan who once offered a lot of incense and also did good deeds, I would come to take them to my water mansion in person to show my respect. Gu Zhou smiled and said, I didn't expect to meet you tonight. It's my pleasure. Chapter 117 Lu Heng was struck by Gu Zhou's explanation. So it is, Lu Heng said. This move is indeed a good act for the benefit of the villagers. But I'm afraid that the soul of the old master of the Wu clan can't go with you this time. 
Lu Heng said with a smile, I have an old relationship with the Wu clan. I'm here tonight to guide the spirit of the old master to a secret place oh. It seems that the spirit of the old master has left his body. While Lu Heng was talking, the tall fire was burning under his feet, and wisps of white smoke rose into the sky with the smoke of the firewood burning fire. The white smoke is so ethereal that ordinary people cannot see it. Even a cultivator, if his cultivation base was not enough, the cultivator couldn't feel them. For example, cultivators such as Lu Heng, who have not even opened the door to heaven, can't sense the soul in theory. But with his requiem seal in hand, he was the first of the three present to perceive the soul. In the dark night, the burning fire was raging, and the sound of firewood exploding sounded from time to time. The people of the Wu clan all knelt outside the fire, and kowtowed to the fire from time to time under the command of the ritual wizard. On the periphery are the accompanying guests, relatives and friends, as well as some city residents who came to join in the excitement. The river was full of people. The sound of swona and mournful music continued to ring out, sending off the old master's soul. In the night sky, Lu Heng beckoned directly and slowly drew that wisp of ethereal white smoke to him. Then, under the gaze of Gu Zhou and Heilin Zhen, the wisps of white smoke gradually showed the human shape around Lu Heng, vaguely forming the appearance of an old man. This scene surprised Gu Zhou and Heilin Zhen. Heilin Zhen was silent, while Gu Zhou was surprised and spoke directly. Can you summon the souls? Gu Zhou looked surprised. Although she has also taken the souls of many good people to her water mansion. But she has to wait for the souls gradually separate from the bodies, and completely appeared in the outside world. But the wolf god skipped the waiting process and directly called out the soul of the old master of the Wu clan. Gu Zhou and Heilin both looked surprised, while on the riverside at their feet, among the crowd watching the bustle, a red-haired woman also spied on this scene and directly sprayed out a mouthful of wine with a stunned expression. In this world, there are indeed arts of summoning souls. Some vicious spells can even pull the souls of living people out of their bodies and torture them. If people with low cultivation and vision see this, they will not feel anything strange at all. However, the three people who watched this scene were all outstanding cultivators. At a glance, they could see that Lu Heng's skill of summoning souls was completely different from that of ordinary people. First of all, he didn't make any preparations for the operation. All three people present could feel that the wolf god didn't use any magic power to summon the soul. Secondly, when he summoned the soul of old master Wu, the gradually solidified spirit didn't suffer from being dragged by violence. To be able to do these two things at the same time it looks like Lu Heng has the power to control the soul. The ability to control the soul. This kind of power, like the heavenly thunder, has never been heard of. Is it true that Lu Heng, the wolf god, not only has the power to control the heavenly thunder, but can also control souls? Among the crowd, Lian Shan Jing was stunned. Gong Shu Jie never mentioned this matter. Didn't Gong Shu Jie also see this scene? Or did she misunderstand it? Think about it carefully. The power to control the soul is too outrageous, right? Although the heavenly thunder is terrifying, the heavenly thunder is also a tangible thing and has a specific reference, so it is not difficult to accept that the wolf god can control the heavenly thunder, although it is terrifying. But the power to control the soul isn't it too vague? There are more than 10 million living things in the world. If the wolf god really has the power to control the souls can he control the souls of all living beings in the world? If he can do this, who dares to be reckless in front of the wolf god? He doesn't even need to use heaven thunder. He can directly use his power to pull the soul of the other party out of his body and impose sanctions. Such an outrageous power cannot exist in the world. Lian Shan Jing told herself so and she also knew that this was the most realistic guess. Maybe it's just that the wolf god has some kind of magic power to call the soul of the dead. But somehow, looking at the figure in white in the night sky, Lian Shan Jing heard a voice telling her in her heart. Yes, everything you guessed is actually right. The wolf god does have the power to control souls. Damn. Among the crowd, Lian Shan Jing bowed her head and swallowed the wine. She could not help cursing in a low voice, isn't this old monster too terrible? In the night sky, 
Liu Heng didn't realize that there was an alcoholic emperor in the crowd at his feet criticizing him. Because there were too many people at his feet. At this time, his attention was focused on the soul of the old master of the Wu clan in front of him. As the wisps of white smoke gathered and solidified, what finally appeared in front of them was an old man with a silver beard and a hale and hearty face. If you have an acquaintance of the Wu clan here, you can see at a glance that this is the old man of the Wu clan, Wu Yuan. As the old man's body solidified, his eyes gradually recovered from their original dullness. When the old man woke up, he was shocked to find that he was standing at a height of 10,000 meters, and the city's Wuzhu and two other strangers were standing beside him. The old master saluted quickly and said, I'm Wu Yuan. Wuzhu Heelin, and the other two masters, what can I do for you? Such sober behavior made the expressions of Gu Zhou and Heelin Zhen more subtle. After an ordinary soul appeared, it must be in a state of confusion. It would just wander around in a muddle, suffering from the wind and the sun, but wouldn't evade until his soul completely dissipated. This is the soul state of normal mortals after death. But the old man in front of them was conscious and even able to speak. He was no different from a living human. If a soul can do this after death, it must at least achieve something in the way of cultivation. But the old master Wu Yuan is obviously not a cultivator. But his soul can be so clear. Gu Zhou and He Lanzhen both silently looked at Lu Hang and stopped speaking. They had an intuition. Tonight, they might be able to see something unforgettable in their lives. Chapter 118 Staring into the night sky, the old master Wu looked very worried. These two cultivators besides Wu Zhu Heelin, who he didn't know at all, made him worried. Fortunately, Wu Zhu Heelin of Fushan City was also here, which made him feel a little relieved. At least her presence was proof that the two cultivators were not evil people. When Lu Heng saw that the old man had regained consciousness, he smiled and said, Mr. Wu, do you remember what happened before you woke up? Ha! Huh. Before I woke up. Wu Yuan was stunned and subconsciously recalled. Then he looked frightened. I am dead. Old Master Wu was shocked to see his translucent hands and the strange situation of floating in the night sky. He immediately remembered everything he had experienced in his lifetime. I I was poisoned by my son, and died. Recalling the pain before his death, and the proud laughter of his son, Wu Yuan could not help shivering, hating and hurting. Lu Heng sighed when he saw the old man's appearance. The information provided to him by He Zhen, it was mentioned that the cause of death of Mr. Wu was doubtful. Before the sudden death of the old man, he was healthy, without any hidden diseases, and was not supposed to die. But he died suddenly a few days ago. The cause of death was strange. Now, according to what the old man said, there really was another reason for his death. Lu Heng asked, Mr. Wu, what's the name of the person who murdered you? I may be able to get justice for you. The old man looked at Lu Heng and hesitated. Master how can I call you? Lu Heng smiled and said, I'm Lu Heng from Hanyu Mountain, your father and I were friends 89 years ago. Now I'm going down to the world to take care of his children don't worry, Mr. Wu. I'm not an evil spirit. Wu Zhu Heelin can guarantee for me. After Lu Heng's words, Heelin Zhen, who was beside him, said solemnly. The wolf god is the god of Hanyu Mountain. He is noble and upright. Since he has spoken, you can speak directly to the wolf god without any concealment. Heelin Zhen's promise gave Wu Yuan a sigh of relief. However, after he was relieved, he began to be confused about what Lu Heng said. My father's old friend 89 years ago. The old man frowned and thought for a while, then he suddenly realized, Master, are you brother wolf that my father always remembered before he died? Is the story my father told that year really true? The old man's startled reaction made He Lin Zhen and Gu Zhou somewhat curious. Lu Heng said that he came to Fushan City to meet his old friends, they all thought that the Wu clan should know something about this. But now it seems even the old man of the Wu clan doesn't know the existence of the wolf god. Lu Heng was also curious and asked with a smile, I wonder how brother Wu Chonggu mentioned me in those days. Lu Heng could see that the Wu clan's people were not aware of his existence. Maybe Wu Chonggu didn't mention their agreement in those days. 
or the people of the Wu clan didn't think a wolf demon could help them. Mr. Wu thought about it for a while and then he said. When my father died, I was only six or seven years old. I was the youngest of all the brothers. My father didn't mention the story of you in detail with us. I just know that after he was seriously ill, he wanted to go around and visit his sister who had been married for many years in Flint City in the north. More than ninety years ago, an aunt of mine married far away to Flint City, the northernmost city in Fire Pass country. Because of the distance, my aunt seldom went back to her mother's home to visit her relatives after she married. Later, Flint City was placed under the ownership of the Yoshiong State. Separated by state borders, it was now even more inconvenient to enter and exit. My father missed his sister and wanted to see her again in Flint City before he died. Under the protection of the guards, he went to Flint City. But on the way back, he was attacked by monsters. All the guards died. Only my father managed to escape. Although he met a southbound caravan in Luoya City and went home with a group of merchants, his illness was getting worse by that time. He was already suffering from a serious disease, his body reached its limit from the back and forth turbulence and fear of monster attacks. When my father got home the next day, he was in a coma. He was out cold and would not wake no matter how much I stirred him. It was as if a lamp had run out of oil. Although I asked the witch doctor of Fire God Temple to take care of him, they couldn't reverse his illness. In my father's last days, he was sometimes lucid and sometimes confused, and his words were always mixed up. When I waited in front of my father's bed, I occasionally heard my father calling you. But I could hardly hear what he called. The old man said this with a melancholy look. Recalling the past, he saw the scene of watching his father die when he was a child. At that time, he was young and ignorant, and was not sad. However, he was now an old man, who had experienced the pain of illness and death, and was no longer an innocent child. Thinking of his father's ill and miserable appearance before he died, the old man's heart was sour. After a long silence, the old man regained his consciousness and quickly braced himself and apologized to the people in front of him. Sorry, I was distracted. Lu Hang sighed and said, Nothing. Mr. Wu can continue, I'll listen. The old man was slightly frightened and hurried to perform the younger generation ceremony. Master, you're an old acquaintance of my father. Just call me Wu Yuan. After seeing that Lu Heng really didn't blame him, the old man continued, on the last day before my father died, he also recovered his sobriety for a short time. On that day, my father called our brothers and two aunts to the bedside to explain the future to us. At the end of the day, my father told me about his encounter with the white wolf in the mountain. He said that you came forward and saved his life when he encountered the evil tiger in Hanyu Mountain. In order to repay you for saving his life, he took it upon himself to build a temple and ancestral hall for you so that you could enjoy the incense. But when he told this story, he was already a little confused and sluggish, and he could not even hear us call him. He just looked at the north side dully calling you and said something about the horror of monsters. His words made people unable to understand what he meant. Speaking of this, the old man looked sad and couldn't help sighing, saying, all the old people and elders in the family said that my father was already confused at that time. And what he said was hysterical nonsense, so we didn't take what my father said before he died seriously. But I didn't expect you to actually visit our clan today if my father was still here, he would be happy to see you come to Fushan City. Chapter, 119 The old man's narration was soft and gentle, and didn't carry much personal emotion. He only told the story of his father's death in those years with a slight sadness. But on the contrary, such a calm narration is even more impressive. After Lu Heng listened, even if he was not the wolf demon that Wu Chonggu was concerned about, he could not help feeling sour and sad, and he felt a kind of regret for missing. He sighed and said, Brother Wu was sick when we parted, but I didn't expect his body to get worse so quickly alas. With a long sigh, Lu Heng said, Now that I'm here. According to the agreement with Brother Wu, I should take care of the Wu clan and give his clan wealth. Speaking of this, Lu Heng smiled a little helplessly and said, But the Wu clan is now already rich and famous. Under your management, the Wu clan has become famous in Fushan City. 
It seems superfluous for me to come only now. Lu Heng sighed and thought about it, and then said, Well, if you have any unfinished wishes, please tell me. As long as it's within my ability, I will do it for you to repay your father's favor of that year, how about it? After Lu Heng opened his mouth with a smile, Heilin Zhen and Gu Zhou both looked at old man Wu Yuan with sighing eyes. The look in their eyes clearly said that you gained a lot. Although Wu Yuan didn't know the details of Lu Heng, when he saw Wu Zhu Heilin's eyes, he understood the value this promise was. Although the old man was a little caught off guard. But the three people in front of him are all people of noble status. If it is not necessary, why waste time amusing him? He immediately saluted and thanked him. Thank you, but I just woke up and I still have a little confused consciousness. If I want to say a wish I'm afraid I can't remember it for a while. The old man looked pale. Since such a superior elder is willing to take care of him, he will naturally think deeply before deciding what to ask Lu Heng to do. But if he thinks too long and leaves the three noble people aside, it will be too offending the old man was worried. Lu Heng said with a smile, it doesn't matter, don't worry, and think carefully. With me, you won't disappear as quickly as an ordinary soul. With Requiem Seal, Lu Heng can even keep the soul of old man Wu Yuan for decades. But in that case, he needed to give the old man a bit of his power, to put it simply, he needed the old man to stay in the netherworld as a ghost messenger. But now the netherworld was still empty. It would be too hard to live there at this time. The souls of ordinary people are not strong enough. Even if they are living in the netherworld, they will only have a lifespan of a few decades. When the time comes, they will dissipate. Even Lu Heng can't hold their souls at that time. Only those with excellent qualifications or cultivators can cultivate their souls after death and live for more than a hundred years or more. For a soul with ordinary qualifications like Wu Yuan, even if he stays in the netherworld, he will disappear after a few decades. What's more, the netherworld was empty now, and he couldn't enjoy anything there. Therefore, Lu Hang intended to send the old man in front of him into the reincarnation channel, so that he could be reincarnated and live another life. As for the construction of the netherworld, Lu Hang plans to find another candidate. This time, Heilin Zhen was invited here, which was related to this matter. One Wuzus can control the order of one city and the life and death of its citizens. If Lu Hang wants to run the netherworld in the future, he will have to ask Wuzus from all over the world for help. In fact, if Lianshan Jing had not gone, the person Lu Hang wanted to invite to the netherworld would be her. However, it's okay to invite Heilin Zhen to go with us now. Anyway, Heilin Zhen will definitely find a way to report it to the emperor after she returns. Therefore, Lu Heng said with a smile, Come with me, old master. I will take you to a quiet place, so that your soul can stay for a long time. After that, Lu Heng looked at Gu Zhou and Heilin Zhen beside him and invited them to go with him. Of course, Heilin Zhen and Gu Zhou agreed. Actually, they were waiting for this, they all realized that the place the wolf god wanted to take them was unusual. So, above the night sky, Lu Heng in white smiled and waved his sleeve, saying, Follow me to the netherworld. There is no need to resist. Although it was useless to resist, Lu Heng politely informed them so as not to scare them. After that, Lu Heng launched the power of Requiem Seal, and the four shadows in the night sky disappeared. In the crowd by the river, Lianshan Jing, who had been paying attention to the situation above her head, almost stared out when she saw this scene. Although they were at a high altitude, they didn't deliberately hide their voices, so Lianshan Jing in the crowd clearly heard the conversation in the air that night. She knew that Lu Heng was going to take the old master of the Wu clan to a mysterious place, and she also knew that the place must be unusual. But but he just left. Just disappear. Not even giving her a chance to track. Lianshan Jing regretted it a lot. She regretted that she should have just appeared directly just now. Her plan was to follow Lu Heng when he left with the old master Wu Yuan. Although she has a strong ability to hide spirit qi, she knew that she could not hide her tracks in front of the wolf god. When the time comes, she will catch up with the wolf god, and then be found by the wolf god. So that she could say, ah, what a coincidence. I didn't expect to meet the wolf god again so that she could naturally walk with the wolf god. 
but now because of her hesitation, the wolf god had disappeared directly. Moreover, not only the wolf god, but also Heilin Zhen, Gu Zhou, and Wu Yuan in the sky disappeared at the same time. That kind of disappearance is not a high-strength evasion skill, nor is it concealment of the body shape, but it really disappears directly from the world. The smell sensed by Lianshan Jing was directly interrupted in the night sky. It was impossible to tell where Lu Hang and they had gone. It seems that from that moment on, the four people in the sky no longer existed in this world, and even the breath of existence was erased. This extraordinary phenomenon made Lianshan Jing complain and regret it. Did the wolf god want to take old master Wu Yuan to another world? Ah, I care. I really want to go. Lianshan Jing was both regretful and angry, angry with herself. At this time, the Wu clan's second young master was kneeling beside the fire and crying loudly. The cry was so fake that it made people sick. Father. Lianshan Jing, who was already depressed, was even angrier when she heard this hypocritical cry. Her eyes stared and her right hand pulled slightly in the void. Click. With a muffled sound, Wu Ziyuan's jaw in the crowd suddenly dislocated and his tongue was strangely tied into a knot. The intense pain immediately scared Wu Ziyuan into shouting. But this time, he could not even cry and howl, and he could only cry in agony. The Wu clan people around Wu Ziyuan were startled and hurried to check Wu Ziyuan's situation. They didn't know what had happened. While the crowd was surging, more people could not see the situation besides the fire. The cry of the second master of the Wu clan suddenly changed from hypocrisy to grief and pain. The shrill howl made everyone along the river talk about it. Wow why did the second young master suddenly change? The crying is too sad. He cried so falsely just now. Was he brewing emotions? I think young master Wu Ziyuan was too frivolous. He didn't know the pain of bereavement before. Now he suddenly reacts, so he cries in tears. Tut, tut he cries so sadly. He is really a filial son. That's it. You see, he now can only howl it's too sad. There was much talk among the crowd. Everyone was deeply moved. Although the truth about tonight may not be long before it was completely spread. But at least at this time, many people could not help sighing at the sad and painful howls. Chapter, 120 Lu Hung, who had already left, naturally didn't know about the riots along the river. After using the power of Requiem Seal, Lu Hung directly left the world with three people including the old Master Wu. In the perception of Gu Zhou and Heilin Zhen, they only felt that everything in their field of vision disappeared in vain. Subsequently, their bodies and souls seemed to fall into the abyss of darkness, shuttling rapidly through the absolute dark world. Involuntarily. Because Lu Heng informed them in advance, neither of them panicked nor tried to resist. Although they know in their hearts that even if they want to resist, it will be useless. Gu Zhou has personally experienced Lu Heng's thunder power and knows that the wolf god is a strong demon cultivator. However, Heilin Zhen was a little nervous. Because she realized that if even she could not control the wolf god, who in the fire pass country could control the wolf god's power? Although there are great differences in strength among wuzus in different cities, they are almost in the same realm. She can't resist. It's the same for other wuzus from other cities. And the most important thing is, can the emperor of the country control the divine power of the wolf god? If even the emperor can't resist this, isn't it that as long as the wolf god waves his sleeve, no one in the fire pass country can resist him and will be dragged directly into this dark and weird space? This. Heilinjin felt awestruck and stressed. Even though she had known that the wolf god was powerful and extraordinary, Lu Heng's magic power still made Heilinjin uneasy. A powerful being and an invincible being have two completely different meanings. However, before Heilin Zhen had time to think about it, the people's feet once again stepped on the ground, breaking away from the general feeling of twists and turns. Then, everyone's vision was restored again. However, Gu Zhou and Heilin Zhen were shocked by what they saw. What appeared in front of them was a broad avenue surging with dark, yellow and turbid spring water. The incomparably spacious yellow road leads nowhere. Even if you peep with your magic eyes, you can't see the end, let alone the way. 
it seems that this yellow road extends indefinitely in the dark. And the dark yellow spring water surging on the yellow road. When they touched it, both felt the cold, and their souls were slightly affected. But the old man beside them was different. Standing on the yellow road, the old man, who had only his soul, was immersed in the dark yellow and turbid spring water. Faintly, there were even wisps of sinister cold chi spreading into his body. Visible to the naked eye, the old man's spirit was more clear and tough. It is obvious that the dark, yellow, spring water surging on the yellow road is of great benefit to wandering souls like the old man. Seeing this scene, Hilanjan felt a little shocked and suddenly remembered a place. The water of the deep spring in Yutian Valley. Hilanjan looked at Lu Heng. But Lu Heng smiled lightly and in a light tone assured, the spring here is indeed the same source as the spring water in Yutian Valley, but it is much milder than the spring water. Even if the body of a living person touches it, the flesh will not disappear and the bones will not corrode. If the soul of a mortal touches it, the soul can absorb the cold and evil chi in it, so as to condense the soul and not dissipate quickly. This place is called Yellow Spring Road. This water is called Yellow Spring Water please, this is just the starting point. Our destination is still ahead. With these words, Lu Hung in white headed for the front of Yellow Spring Road and led the way. The old man Wu followed him, feeling his soul become more and more solid, knowing that he would not disappear quickly. The yellow spring water, which is full of cold and evil qi is a great tonic for souls like him. Heilin Zhen and Gu Zhou looked at each other and quickly followed. They were cultivators, so although their feet were in the yellow spring water, they were not afraid of the cold qi in the spring water. But if an ordinary living person comes here and steps into the yellow water, his soul will be swept away by the cold and evil chi and die on the spot. This netherworld called by the wolf god is indeed a dead place and a forbidden place for living people. Even for cultivators, unless there have great powers, ordinary cultivators can't bear to stay here for a long time. They followed behind Lu Heng, stepping on the cold yellow spring water, walking on the endless yellow spring road. Heilin Zhen was worried and couldn't help asking, the wolf god, where does this yellow spring road start and end? Lu Heng didn't hide anything and said bluntly, the yellow spring road is the only way to the netherworld, and also the only way to enter the netherworld from the human world. If you step on the yellow spring road, you can only advance, not retreat. Lu Heng said with a smile, but don't worry, I can bring you back to the human world at any time, and you won't be trapped in this netherworld. Lu Heng's candid account, however, made Heilin feel more and more worried. She asked again, then without the help of the wolf god, we can't return to the human world after entering the netherworld. This problem is what Heilin Zhen is most worried about. She has experienced it personally and realized that the supernatural power of the wolf god to pull people into the netherworld seems irresistible. Even the emperor probably can't resist it. And if you are dragged into the netherworld where life is forbidden, Lu Heng smiled and didn't hide it. Without my help, you can't return from the netherworld. This sentence made Heilin Zhen's worry come true sure enough. Just as she guessed, once you stepped into this eerie dead space, there was no way back to the human world. But if so, doesn't it mean that no one in the world can disobey the wolf god? Not to mention the power of the heavenly thunder, this dark and weird netherworld is not a place for living creatures. Even those cultivators who have great powers can survive in this netherworld for a long time, but there is no spirit chi here. After hundreds of years without any spirit chi. After the spirit chi in their bodies is completely exhausted, no matter how powerful they are, we will die in the end. This netherworld is simply a terrible inferno. Once you fall here, life and death are no longer under your control. If there is no mercy from the wolf god, you will not be able to see the sun again until you die. Such a miserable ending. Heilin Zhen was awestruck and felt the pressure more and more. The heavenly thunder, the netherworld to control one at will is enough to be invincible in the world. But the wolf god actually controls both. Heilin Zhen looked at Lu Heng's back with some awe, and felt hesitant. The supernatural powers the wolf god has shown are so terrible. Are there any more terrible abilities he hasn't shown? Chapter 121 Lu Heng clearly felt the shocked emotions of Heilin Zhen and Gu Zhou. However, 
He didn't open his mouth or interrupt their thoughts, but allowed their shocked emotions to ferment. Because he did it on purpose. To start creating the netherworld in the future, he needs the help of wuzus from every city. Although it is not the Emperor Lianshan Jing who came here, the more shocked He Lanzhen is, the better the effect will be when she reports her experience here to Lianshan Jing. In this way, when inviting the Fire Pass country to open a convenient door in the future, the Emperor would consider Lu Heng's words seriously. This netherworld has no access to the human world. Unless it is a high-level ghost king, ordinary ghost guards can only enter and cannot leave. In the future, to build a large-scale netherworld and receive souls from all over the world, he must set up hell institutions like the town god's temple on earth. Otherwise, if the ghost guards take the souls of the dead into the netherworld, then they can't go back, and can only go to the reincarnation tunnel to be reincarnated where can he find so many ghost guards for such a one-time use method? But if he wants to set up a netherworld town god's temple on earth, he must get the permission of human cultivators and emperors. The Emperor Lianshan Jing is not only distinguished but also has the strongest cultivation in the Fire Pass country. And Wuzus are the strongest people in the cities. Although they are good people. However, it doesn't mean that good people are willing to cooperate with you unconditionally. Therefore, if you want to build a netherworld, you should properly show the benefits of building a netherworld and show some muscles in this way, you can get attention. Therefore, Lu Heng didn't hide anything. He directly took He Zhen and others into Yellow Spring Road. He then came to the end of Yellow Spring Road, the huge pass between the two mountains. At this pass, He Zhen and Gu Zhou both saw that the dark mountain could not be crossed. Because it is not an ordinary mountain, but a kind of existence formed by rules and order. The road will be completely blocked if it lies there. Lu Heng said with a smile, this place is called the Ghost Gate although there is no ghost or gate at present. But if we build the netherworld in the future, a majestic pass will be built here to separate the human world and the netherworld. Only by stepping into this pass can you really step into the netherworld everyone, please keep moving forward. After that, Lu Heng used his power. With one step, they disappeared into the distance. This empty Ghost Gate is magnificent and vast. If you walk, you may have to walk for half a day to get out of this valley. After Lu Heng used his power, the people just walked forward for a while, then left the empty ghost gate behind and saw a vast and desolate plain. On the plain, there was silence and gloom. At this point, the cold and dead air is richer than that on the yellow spring road. The gusts of overcast wind and negativity made old master Wu happy. For the dead, such a gloomy and horrible place is heaven. The dead air in the air made him feel like a spring breeze. Standing in the middle of this desolate world, Lu Heng said, This place is desolate and empty. Follow me to the end of this ghost world. After the voice fell, Lu Heng's power was activated, and the scene around the people quickly regressed. After a few seconds, they passed through the vast netherworld and came to the bank of the weak water river that flows silently. The scarlet flowers on the other side of the river were in full bloom. They were the only color in the dark ghost world. Gu Zhou looked at the confluence in front of her with surprise. As a river god, she could more clearly perceive the danger of the river. She looked at Lu Heng and asked curiously, the river seems untouchable. Gu Zhou's inquiry moved He Lanzhen's mind. Lu Heng still didn't hide it and said with a smile, this river is called Weak Water River. Of course, it can also be called the Forgotten River. As you said, the river can't be touched. Cultivators can't fly on the river, and the river is heavy and has no buoyancy. Even goose feathers won't float on the water surface. And once you sink into the river, you will sink constantly in the weak water, but you will never touch the bottom of the river. In this weak water, there is hidden the whirlpool of reincarnation. That is the purpose of our trip. With this, Lu Heng waved his sleeves and flew with the crowd. Although it is impossible to fly over weak water, Lu Heng, who has the Requiem Seal, is not included. He took the people flying quickly over the dark and silent weak water, and soon flew to the center of the river. Here, the cold and silent weak water without the slightest wave and spray showed a vortex. The center of the vortex was dark and had no light, leading nowhere. But even with this whirlpool rotating rapidly, there was no sound at all. 
it seems that the weak water was a silent field. Lu Heng said with a smile, this is the whirlpool of reincarnation. If the spirits of the dead enter this whirlpool of reincarnation, they can reshape soul, reincarnate and live another life. Mr. Wu, Lu Heng said, looking at the old man beside him, if you like, I can escort you to this reincarnation tunnel and live in the world again. After a pause, Lu Heng said, of course, after reincarnation, the memory of this life will disappear. It is a new beginning. Lu Heng's words made the old master Wu's eyes wide open. Reincarnation. Another life. In the stories he had heard, even those who had advanced cultivation bases would disappear after they died. But can I live for another life? Won't I dissipate? Over the weak water, the old man was overjoyed. He knelt down toward Lu Heng and kowtowed vigorously. Thank you, thank you for your kindness. Wu Yuan was delighted, but Heilin Zhen had a complicated look. She looked down at the whirlpool of reincarnation under her feet and thought a lot. In this world, there is the so-called soul dissociation. When many babies are born, for various reasons, they can't conceive a soul. After leaving the womb, they don't cry or make noise. They don't have any mental spirits, but are living bodies. In such a situation, even if parents are heartbroken and desperate, they can't think of anything but to cremate and burn the soulless baby, so as not to attract evil spirits. But the wolf god can lead the souls of the dead through this reincarnation tunnel to be reincarnated in the world. If every baby suffering from soul dissociation can get a complete soul and no longer be sluggish, how many families will be happy because of this? Chapter 122 On the weak water, Heilin Zhen looked complicated. As the leader of Wuzhu, she also has to take charge of many affairs of Fushan city in addition to cultivating. In the world, soul diffusion is the disease that most parents fear. Every year, countless parents come to the Fire God Temple monthly to pray for the safe growth of their unborn babies. But the gestation of souls can't be interfered with by external forces. Normally, a child born from the womb has a 70% probability of giving birth to a soul and can grow up healthily after birth. However, about 30% of newborns are unable to form souls. After such a fetus is born, it has no soul, no intelligence, and is dull and ignorant. It has only the body of a living person, but no soul of a living thing. As a wuzhu, whenever she sees those parents who gave birth to soulless fetuses crying, her heart often turns sour. However, even if her cultivation base is strong, she still cannot create souls out of nothing. Even though she saw the grief of those parents, she couldn't do anything. But what she saw and heard tonight made her see the dawn of changing all this. If the wolf god can guide the souls of the dead to reincarnate and let the reconstructed souls occupy the babies who can't conceive souls, wouldn't there be no sorrow in the world? Heilin Zhen was excited at the thought of this. If she can find a way to persuade the wolf god to open this reincarnation tunnel so that all the dead in the world can have a place to go and be reincarnated, wouldn't it be a good thing? This way, we can avoid the pain of soul dissipation after the death of those good people and also save the lives of those soulless babies. It is simply a good deed. Although she was excited, Heilinjin didn't dare to speak recklessly. Because she realized how difficult it was. This netherworld is a secret place controlled by the wolf god. Maybe it is a magic power that the wolf god has cultivated hard for many years. How could the wolf god open this place to all people so easily? Heilinjin doesn't think that as long as she asked, the wolf god would agree. Even though the netherworld is beneficial to ordinary people she can't ask him to open it, because that would become moral blackmail. Such an act, even if it is intended to be good, can never be called goodwill. What's more, even if the wolf god is willing to open the netherworld to all living beings for free, there are countless people in the world, and countless people are born and die every year. In order for every soul to enter the netherworld and go to the reincarnation tunnel in an orderly way, it takes a lot of manpower to maintain this process. Unfortunately, the netherworld world is so deathly that living people can hardly survive and can only rely on the souls of the dead to maintain it. Such a matter is no ordinary trivial matter. The spirits selected for the job must be upright and good people, and put an end to those devious and evil people. Only in this way can the normal operation of the order be maintained. 
Otherwise, once someone gets in the way, the consequences will be bad. There are not many good people. In a hurry, where can we find so many good people's souls to maintain the reincarnation order? Moreover, the operating rules of this reincarnation tunnel are not clear. If you want to achieve this, you need to find the wolf god to discuss it in detail. However, such an important event has a bearing on all people in the world. Helenjan thinks she is not qualified to talk about it. Therefore, although she was excited, she could only hide the matter in her heart silently and plan to send someone to find the emperor immediately after she returned. In the whole Fire Pass country, there is only one person who is qualified to negotiate such a big event with the wolf god. After making up her mind, Helenjan stopped thinking about it. Lu Haing has been observing the reaction of Helen Zhen since he led them to watch the existence of this reincarnation channel. Although Helen Zhen is silent, she is also willing to fight for the interests of the people. This is not only her nature, but also her instinct as a good cultivator. The more they cultivate, the more wuzus attach importance to people's livelihood. Those wuzus who can make achievements must be upright and good people. So Lu Heng guessed that Heelin Zhen was attracted to this reincarnation tunnel when he saw Heelin Zhen's reaction. Because Lu Heng has long known the existence of soul diffusion and the world doesn't have a netherworld reincarnation system. The existence of soul diffusion is the pain of all living beings. After all, not only humans, but also ordinary beasts, as well as demons. Any sentient beings in the world may give birth to soulless babies. Now Lu Heng is relieved to see Heelin Zhen's reaction. He knows that he doesn't need to do anything next. He just needs to go back and wait for the Emperor of the Fire Pass Country to come and talk about cooperation. This is much better than taking the initiative to ask them to do things for him. If he takes the initiative, it will make people wary and uneasy, and doubt whether there is any conspiracy. But if the other party takes the initiative to find him, there is no need to worry about being suspected and guarded by the other party. Therefore, Lu Heng was in a happy mood and said with a smile, In that case, please leave with me. There is nothing I want to show you now. After that, Lu Heng waved his sleeve lightly, and the power of the Requiem Seal was activated again. People on the surface of the weak water only feel their bodies sink, and it would seem to them that they have fallen into an endless abyss. Their bodies and souls shuttling rapidly. After a few breaths, they felt the breath of the human world again. Heelin Zhen and Gu Zhou looked around and found that they had reappeared above the Pengjiang River and returned to their previous positions. At this time, in the human world, it was already late midnight. The moonlight was cold in the dark night. The originally bustling riverside was now deserted. The Wu clan people completed the main ceremony of cremation. The ashes of old man Wu have been poured into the river and flowed down the river. The originally burning fire had been extinguished long ago, and only several wizards with several people in sackcloth cried at the riverside to see the old man's soul off. This ceremony will last all night, the ritual wizards will read different scriptures, and the people of the Wu clan will rotate until dawn. Although there were still many white banners hanging on the riverside, many of the Wu clan's people stayed. However, Compared with the bustle of the crowds at the beginning, it was now much more deserted. Standing in the void, Lu Hang said goodbye to Gu Zhou with an arch of his hand, I will take away the soul of the old Master Wu. Sorry for making you go all the way in vain, and I feel uneasy. Gu Zhou said with a smile, I'm satisfied that can see the netherworld. It's just. Gu Zhou hesitated slightly. When Lu Hang saw this, he said, Please, you can speak frankly. Gu Zhou hesitated for a long time before saying, this matter is very relevant. Let me go back and think about it. If you agree, I will visit you again in a few days. Lu Hang was a little surprised, judging from the situation, it seems that the river god also wants to contribute to the construction of the netherworld. He couldn't help laughing and said, in that case, I'll be waiting for you in Fushan City. Free coolies, of course, the more the better. Since the river god is willing to help, naturally, Lu Heng will agree. Chapter, 123 After seeing off Gu Zhou, Lu Heng returned to the city with the soul of the old master Wu. Wu Zhu Heilin seemed absent-minded when saying goodbye, but Lu Heng didn't say much, and left directly with the soul of the old man Wu. 
sometimes being too enthusiastic makes people suspicious. Anyway, the seeds have been planted. All Lu Hang has to wait for is for the seeds to germinate and bear fruit. In the courtyard behind the fire god temple, Lu Hang returned with the soul of the old man Wu, while Xiao Ai was guarding the door of the room where Lu Hang's body was located. Seeing Lu Hang back, the little girl was relieved and finally relaxed. Wolf God, Xiao Ai called. Lu Hang nodded. He pointed to the soul of the old man beside him and said with a smile, This is the old master of the Wu clan. Xiao Ai, the funeral you attended before is the old man Wu's funeral. Seeing the soul of the old man, Xiao Ai was slightly surprised, but said nothing and saluted the old man. Facing the little girl with silver hair and animal ears in front of her, Wu Yuan quickly saluted back. Lu Heng said, This is Xiao Ai, and that is Hua Feng, the disciple of the Yun sect. Now he is with me the name of the little eagle on his shoulder is Gu Yen. After introducing the people in the yard one by one, Lu Heng led the old man to sit down in the courtyard with a smile and said. Your soul should have been waiting for reincarnation in the netherworld, away from the sun and the wind. But I think before that, there is still something you want to do you said that you were poisoned by your son. I don't know how you intend to deal with it. Lu Heng's inquiry made Wu Yuan silent for a while. Under the moonlight, the old man sighed and said, If I have to blame someone, I can only blame myself for having spoiled my children. My eldest son has a soft temper. He seems to be gentle, but in fact he is careful, too selfish, and only cares about himself when things happen. My youngest son's character is out of step. When he was young, I didn't teach him well, which led to his becoming more and more stubborn. In my early years, I sent him to cultivate in the mountains in the hope that he could learn something, but he was finally expelled from the mountain by his master. When he came back, I had no choice but to let him take the caravan out, so as to save him from staying in the city and making trouble. The more the old man said, the sadder his face became. I expected the eldest son to be in charge gradually. After all, although he is narrow-minded, he also has the ability to do things. But I didn't expect that he poisoned me and tried to seize power alas. When the old man said this, his tangled old face made Lu Heng quite speechless. The old man was hit hard. After half a while, the old man said bitterly, I was wrong. The future of the Wu clan should not count on them. It's only now that I realize who I can trust my second daughter, though she's a daughter, is smart and capable, and has done a lot for our Wu clan over the years. It seems that the future of the Wu clan can only be entrusted to her. Lu Heng nodded at the old man's sigh. He doesn't make much comment on the old man's decision. At least the old man in front of him have a thorough understanding of the situation at home. Lu Heng said, since you have made a decision, I will help you put things right. But before you act, you need to think more. This matter involves a lot. If you act according to your will, I'm afraid it will lead to disaster. Lu Heng's consolation made the old man immediately agree. You are right. I will remember it in my heart. Lu Heng didn't say much and asked Xiao Ai to take the old man to rest in the empty room. Then he sat in the courtyard and continued to study the bamboo slip sent by Heilin Zhen. The Wu clan's story is now clear. To help the old master Wu is only a small matter for Lu Heng, and he doesn't need to pay too much attention to it. Therefore, what he was thinking about was whether to ask Heilin Zhen for some cultivation method books to study. If he can learn more about the secret of cultivations of other cultivators and broaden his vision, it will be a great help for him to explore his own way of cultivation. On the other hand, after Heilin Zhen said goodbye to Lu Heng, she returned to the fire god temple with some thoughts. She stepped into her room. Although she is the leader of this city's wuzus, Heilinjin's room is not luxurious. There are too many worries in her heart. Heilinjin lit the candle in the room with a wave of her hand, but suddenly, she saw a figure sitting in the room. The other party was sitting in the middle of the room, smiling at her. With Heilinjin's cultivation, she didn't even feel the slightest breath. Heilin Zhen was surprised at first, then saw the face of the visitor and saluted quickly. Your Majesty. Heilin Zhen has long been accustomed to the mysterious behavior of the Emperor. While Lian Shan Jing looked at her with a smile and said, Don't be polite. Come and sit down. 
After greeting He Lin Jin to sit down beside her, Lian Shan Jing said with a smile, I heard you went out with the wolf god tonight. How about it? Is it fun? He Lin Jin was stunned for a moment and a little surprised. Lord, were you there? Why didn't you show up? Well cough Lian Shan Jing gave a dry cough and almost choked. She wanted to make a joke, but she didn't expect that Henlon Zhen would ask this. Looking at Heilin Zhen, who didn't know what the joke was, Lian Shan Jing felt a little tired. Hey nothing, nothing, just ignore it, Lian Shan Jing waved her hand and said. Let's talk about the place where the wolf god took you. Why can't I feel a breath after you disappear? Where have you gone? When Lian Shan Jing mentioned business, Heilin Zhen's expression became serious. She thought of all kinds of strange places in that dark place, and immediately grabbed the hand of the emperor and told her everything she saw and heard during her trip. In the candlelight, Lian Shan Jing's expression gradually became dignified from her initial smile. Irresistible supernatural powers, the dark and gloomy netherworld of death, the water of the yellow spring, the weak water, and the so-called reincarnation channel on the weak water. After listening to He Lin Jin's story, Lian Shan Jing, who originally came with a joking attitude, couldn't laugh at all. Because of He Lin Zhen's experience and description of the supernatural powers of the wolf god, she thought only one thing. When she followed the wolf god in the beginning, she felt a sense of inexplicable horror on the Pengjiang River. It seems that she was being targeted by something at that time. But at that time, she didn't notice the wolf god's mighty thunder, so she didn't think much. Did the wolf god want to lock her in that dark and gloomy dark space at that time? Did she go around in front of hell? Is that why she was suddenly jumpy? After realizing what happened, the expression on Lian Shan Jing's face was incomparably wonderful. Chapter, 124 The strange expression of Lian Shan Jing surprised He Lin Zhen. Even if the netherworld is indeed extraordinary, the emperor will not react like this, will she? She could not help but shout, Your Majesty. Two calls in a row brought Lian Shan Jing back to her mind. Oh. Oh where were we just now? Lian Shan Jing sorted out her expression and recovered her composure. Go on. He Lin Zhen was a little speechless, but the character of the emperor was special, and it was not surprising that she occasionally did amazing things. She could only sigh and continue, the netherworld created by the wolf god is by no means an unusual small world. Its vast territory and special internal rules can't be built overnight. Moreover, the existence of the reincarnation path has unpredictable powers. If we can exploit and use it, maybe. He Lin Zhen didn't continue because it was difficult to say. Lian Shan Jing didn't avoid it and directly answered. You just wanted to say that if this reincarnation path can be open to all people in the world, there will be no soul disease in the future. What are you worried about? The wolf god is not a mean person. What's the harm even if you say it? Lian Shan Jing said, and why does the wolf god suddenly want to take you to see the netherworld? It really just happens to happen. Oh. Lian Shan Jing smiled and said, I've been with the wolf god for some time, and I know him a little. Although this guy is noble and upright, he is sometimes as childish as an urchin. His netherworld is so strange. If it is only used to deal with enemies, why should it be so complicated? In addition, all the special features of the netherworld are of great benefit to the soul of the dead why does he bother to make so many fancy things? Lian Shan Jing raised a finger, shook it, and said, You are not the only one who wants to cure the soul diffusion. Someone had wanted to change all these many years ago, so this strange ghost world came into being. The reason why he took you to play in the netherworld was just to show me that he has a way to solve soul diffusion through your mouth. Lian Shan Jing said with a smile, this guy even if he wants to change the world in his heart, he still wants us to please him. Isn't he childish? He Lin Jin was speechless, but she murmured in her heart that you are naive too that you can understand his way of thinking. Of course, she only dared to complain in her heart. She thought for a moment and said, let's go directly to the wolf god. Maybe the wolf god will agree to our request. Lian Shan Jing thought for a moment, but shook her head inside. It's not that easy the wolf god didn't speak out, and he must have his concerns. 
since he said that the netherworld can only enter and cannot exit, it means that to build this reincarnation system, someone must maintain order in the human world and guide souls into the netherworld. But there are many dead people in the world. To maintain this order, we need a lot of manpower and material resources where can we find the manpower? Whether this responsibility is entrusted to the fire god temple in each city, or open another institution of power, the fire pass country needs to make great changes. If this matter is handled carelessly, it may even shake the nation and the people's livelihood. I can't make a decision easily. Well, you can continue to stay in Fushan city to entertain the wolf god. I will go back to have a good chat with those old men. This matter must be discussed internally and a result must be set before we can go to the wolf god for negotiation. Lianshan Jing said, standing up directly, said, convincing the wolf god is up to you. You must not let him get away. Heilin Zhen hesitated, if the wolf god really wants to leave, can I stop him? Lianshan Jing also realized that her request was a bit outrageous, so she smiled and said, okay, okay, just do your best. If the wolf god wants to leave, you should try your best to detain him. If you can't detain him, you should also find a way to ask where the wolf god is going next, so that I can come to find him in the future is that difficult. Heilin Zhen heaved a sigh of relief, saluted solemnly and said, Heilin Zhen understands. Okay, then I'll leave after opening the door, the red-haired woman walked directly to the shadow and disappeared in Heilin Zhen's vision. In the small courtyard, only the faint echo of the emperor sounded. I'll leave Fushan city to you. I can rest assured. Hearing this, Heilin Zhen at the door couldn't help rolling her eyes and feeling powerless in her heart. No matter how many times she faces the emperor, she still felt helpless to her character. In the early hours of the night, the red-haired woman marched toward the capital of the country at an extremely fast pace, leaving Fushan city behind. In the small courtyard behind the fire god temple, Lu Heng, who didn't know that Lianshan Jing had come, still sat in the courtyard, quietly flipping through the bamboo slips in his hands and deducing the cultivation skills recorded in them. On the bank of the torrential river, the people of the Wu clan, dressed in filial piety clothes, knelt down on the bank of the river in turn to cry and send the old man's soul off. However, the old man Wu whom they cried for was now lying in the small courtyard room behind the fire god temple, thinking about the Wu clan, with pain and regret in his eyes. At the Wu clan's mansion, the two brothers, who had just returned from the riverside, were angrily scolding each other. In the noisy room, a cold-faced middle-aged woman finally kicked the door and walked in, frightening the two people who were scolding each other. Second second sister. No, second sister I'm not. In the two brothers' pleas for mercy, the noise of the Wu clan's mansion was temporarily quiet. But when the servants and the people looked at each other in amazement, they didn't know how long this silence could last and which side they would stand on next. Outside Fushan City, two figures came in the night. Walking ahead to lead the way was a burly man named Zhang De who followed the second young master of the Wu clan. He was leading a horse, and on its back sat a graceful and slender figure. If Lu Heng were here, he would surely feel this figure familiar. He he is this Fushan city. The figure on the horse smiled softly and said, although I have passed by several times, I dare not enter at will if you don't guide me. Zhang De, who led the horse, said with a smile, Grandma, don't be joking. Even that Wuzhu Heilinjin dares not be presumptuous in front of you. It's your kindness that you didn't kill the wizards in the city in the past. They should thank you. He he the figure on the horse's back chuckled and nodded with satisfaction. Sweet little mouth. Good, your grandma likes to hear it. Chapter, 125 In the courtyard, Lu Heng sat in the moonlight and red bamboo slips in his hands. After he cultivated, he can see things with both eyes even in the dark night. The second half of the night passed quickly. When the first ray of dawn came on that day, a painful scream suddenly came from the room where the old man Wu was. Lu Heng looked at it in surprise and immediately understood what had happened. The old man, who had been lying in bed all night, was thinking hard. At the moment when the sun shone into the courtyard, a ray of sunlight fell on him through the crack in the window. The old man, who was already a ghost, immediately felt the burning pain. While screaming, he hurriedly shrank into the shadow of the room. 
In the next room, the little Gu Eagle, who was sleeping upside down on the window of Huofeng's room, was startled by the ghost's cry and woke up with a sudden flutter of his wings. Lu Heng shook his head wordlessly and said, The old master Wu, let me take you to the netherworld first. You are a ghost and can't stand the sun. In the room, the old master Wu huddled in the shadow nodded quickly. The tingling feeling when he was exposed to the sun just now made him palpitate. He finally understood why the river god wanted to take the souls of the dead into the water mansion. If the spirits of the dead roam around the world after being separated from the body and there is no one to protect them, they will not be able to dissipate naturally and will die directly from the scorching sun. This method of death can definitely be called torture. As Lu Heng sent away the old man's soul, the courtyard became quiet again. However, the shrill howling still woke Xiao Ai and Hua Feng up. Hua Feng came out rubbing his eyes. After greeting Lu Heng, he went to the backyard to wash. Lu Heng told Xiao Ai to go to the Fire God Temple and asked her to go to Wuzhu Heilin to ask for some cultivation secrets that could be shared. Although the bamboo slips in his hand record many esoteric secrets, which is enough for him to study for a long time, Lu Heng still wants to see more secret skills and broaden his horizons. He won't stay in Fushan City for too long. Maybe he should go south after the Wu clan's affairs are settled. He has to read more now. And Xiao Ai came back not long after she left, holding two rolls of bamboo slips in her hands. Xiao Ai said, Lord Wolf God, Wu Zhu Hilin said you should read these two volumes first and you can ask her for more at any time after reading them. The library of the Fire God Temple is fully open to you. Lu Heng shook his head and took the two rolls of bamboo slips. He thought that Xiao Ai would come with a large pile of bamboo slips, but he didn't expect that it would be only two volumes. However, Lu Heng's expression became serious after he opened it and looked at it for a while. He even called Hua Feng, don't prepare my portion for today's meal. After that, Lu Heng lowered his head and completely immersed himself in the two new rolls of bamboo slips. It seems that he won't mind anything else in a short time, so Hua Feng and Gu Eagle looked at each other in speechless amazement. However, Xiao Ai later said that she would not eat too. In the end, the only people who need to eat in the yard are Hua Feng and the Gu Eagle. Hua Feng sighed and stood in the kitchen thinking for a few moments. Finally, he decided not to cook and went out to eat. The little Gu Eagle had already filled his stomach and ate the fish brought by Hua Feng last night. He didn't even leave any fish bones on the table. So Hua Feng, who didn't need to cook, took the little Gu Eagle out again to find food for himself. Fushan City is bustling with numerous noodle shops and restaurants, among which there are many characteristic local foods. Hua Feng asked all the way and finally went to one of the most famous. It was a two-story restaurant located in a remote place, but there were many guests in the shop. Hua Feng went upstairs to find a place and ordered two signature dishes at random, intending to have a good taste of the delicacies of Fushan City. The little Gu Eagle squatted on his shoulder and stared at the guests at another table not far away. The guests at that table were three men and two women, all dressed as businessmen. One of the bearded men was holding a monster in his hand. It looks like a black dog, but it has two heads. Now it was lying on the ground eating bones. The little Gu Eagle stared at the monster and soon attracted the monster's attention. However, as soon as the monster looked up and wanted to stare, he saw the appearance of the little Gu Eagle. Although it is only a small eagle, it is after all a famous fierce beast. The little Gu Eagle has a fierce smell all over his body. Ordinary people may not feel it, but beasts are extremely sensitive to it. The monster immediately whimpered and cowered down and dared not be fierce. The bearded man who ate and laughed with his companions didn't notice all this, but in the compartment next to him, a young woman who had just walked out accompanied by her entourage saw it. She was slightly surprised. Oh! A little Gu Eagle! The young woman looked at Hua Feng by the window and the little Gu Eagle on Hua Feng's shoulder, and was quite surprised. There is a Gu Eagle in the Pangjiang water area. Wasn't the Gu Eagle in the Pangjiang River killed by the god of water more than 300 years ago? Did this young man bring it from outside? At one side, the attendant who served the woman asked quickly, Have you taken an interest in that small eagle? 
Should I go over and ask if the disciple of the Yun sect is willing to sell it? The woman looked over there and thought for a while, then shook her head and said, No, it's better to do less than more. Disciples of the Yun sect are free and unrestrained. I'm afraid he won't sell the Gu Eagle no matter how much I offer let's leave. With these words, the young woman took the lead in walking toward the stairs. When several of her attendants saw the woman leaving, they immediately followed her. Soon, the group disappeared into the restaurant. By the window of the restaurant, Hua Fong, who had been tensing up and pretending to eat, was relieved to see that the group had finally left. He found that his back was full of cold sweat. He doesn't know why. The moment that he was stared at by the woman just now, he unexpectedly gave birth to a feeling of panic. It seems to be targeted by something cruel. And vaguely, he even felt traces of evil chi. This made Huafeng both frightened and puzzled. Because he has lost all his cultivation base, theoretically, he can't feel the breath of others. But somehow, he was extremely sensitive to the young woman's breath and perceived a faint evil spirit chi. Among the young woman's entourage, one he knew was one of the entourage brought into the city by the second master of the Wu clan. This young woman walks with the subordinates of the second young master of the Wu clan is it related to the Wu clan? Huafeng frowned slightly and felt that he had to go back to the wolf god. As for the inexplicable evil Qi maybe the wolf god knows. He walked with the wolf god for so long. Maybe the wolf god helped him secretly. After all, this keen perception of evil things has never appeared before. Chapter, 126 Above the tavern, the little goo eagle still stared at the double-headed black dog not far away, even though the other side had shrunk into a ball and kept showing weakness. However, Huafeng watched the weird young woman leave with the people of the Wu clan. At that moment, if the woman had any evil intent, he would be dead on the spot. This feeling made Huafeng extremely uncomfortable. Looking at the little goo eagle who still didn't know anything on his shoulder, Huafeng couldn't help sighing and saying, Gu Yen, you look so heartless. It's a bit enviable unfortunately, I can't take you out in the future. He bumped into such an evil thing just when he went out, and it seems that the other person is still interested in Gu Yen. How dare Huafeng take Gu Yen out again? And after all, it is strange that there are evil demons in Fushan City. And what's strange is that this kind of evil demon can hide from the fire god temple wizard, but can't hide it in front of him. When did he become so powerful? Realizing that something was wrong, Huafeng didn't dare to delay. After paying, he left the restaurant in a hurry and headed for the fire god temple with an empty stomach. The dishes at the table were basically untouched. But the little goo eagle on his shoulder heard that Huafeng wouldn't take him out in the future, it was worried and shouted for a long time. Huafeng managed to pacify the noisy little guy, and then walked along the busiest streets to the fire god temple. Then he dived into the fire god temple. The moment he stepped into the door of the fire god temple, he felt a sense of security. In the morning sunshine, pilgrims come and go in a continuous stream in the fire god temple, and witches appear from time to time. The fire god temple, which covers a large area, is not only the administrative place that governs Fushan city, but also the place where the fire god is worshipped. There are many people who come to pray every day. Huafeng walked through the crowded square towards the back of the fire god temple. The further in you go, the fewer people you can see. In the end, he had come to an area where ordinary people are not allowed to come. Only wuzus and wizards can come here. Although the appearance of Huafeng was unexpected, no one came to stop him because Huafeng was carrying a token. Through the area behind the fire god temple, Huafeng came to the quietest courtyard in Fushan city. Opening the gate, he saw a man in white sitting quietly in the sun, looking at the bamboo slips in his hands. In the early morning sunshine, this scene has a slightly ethereal meaning. Even though Huafeng was anxious, he was also affected by this scene and could not help but calm down. He stood quietly by the door. Even the lively little goo eagle shut up. However, Lu Heng felt their appearance. He raised his head slightly in surprise, looked at Huafeng by the door, and asked, Brother Hua, did you see something? Why are you so impatient? The wolf god took the initiative to speak, and Huafeng finally breathed a sigh of relief. 
He smiled bitterly and said, The wolf god. It seems that I ran into evil demons in the city. Fortunately, the other party didn't kill me, otherwise, I can't come back alive. Oh, really? Lu Hung was a little surprised. Demons? They can also be mixed into Fushan City. In Lu Heng's understanding, the wizards of the Fire God Temple have the means to detect evil demons. Let alone sneak in, ordinary evil demons might be found just as they approach Fushan City. And the demons that can sneak into Fushan City they must be very strong. Lu Heng was full of surprise, and Hua Feng also explained his previous experience in detail. He emphasized his strange reaction to evil demons. After hearing this, Lu Heng frowned and realized some strange things. He waved and said, Brother Hua, come here and let me have a look. Well, Hua Feng came to Lu Heng and let Lu Heng hold his wrist. Lu Heng's mind sank and began to feel the situation in Hua Feng's body. But Lu Heng felt the same situation as before. Hua Feng's muscles and veins are broken, his soul is injured, and his cultivation base is lost. Hmm. Cultivation base. Lu Heng felt deeply here, but was dismayed to find that even the smallest bit of spirit qi had disappeared from Hua Feng's body. Although Hua Feng was seriously injured before, the spirit qi in his body was scattered all over his body in disorder, constantly impacting the damaged meridians. But now the spirit qi has completely disappeared, leaving no residue. The current Hua Feng is just like a mortal who has never cultivated, and has no cultivation base in his body. This strange situation made Lu Heng a little confused. Thinking of Hua Feng's strange reaction to evil demons Lu Heng thought and injected a little heavenly thunder into Hua Feng's body. Prick. In the air, there seemed to be a flash of lightning. Lu Heng withdrew his hand in amazement and looked at Hua Feng in front of him. He was speechless for a while and finally smiled at Hua Feng's worried eyes. He clapped and said, Congratulations, Brother Hua. Your injury is recovering. Ha! Huh. Hua Feng was a little stunned and didn't understand why the wolf god said so. Lu Heng smiled and said, Has Brother Hua found yourself unable to sense the spirit qi in your body in recent days? Hua Feng hurriedly nodded, Yes, yes. When I meditated over the past two days, I couldn't feel the spirit qi in my body. I thought it was because my spirit qi had overflowed. Lu Heng shook his head and said, that's not the case. Even if your Tao heart is broken, your broken cultivation base should still exist. Brother Hua, I can no longer feel the slightest broken cultivation base in your body. At first glance, you seem to be an ordinary person. But when I injected a trace of Heveli thunder into your body, I found that although your muscles and veins are still broken, they are no longer blocked. And vaguely, I can feel a breath of life with the power of thunder in your body. Lu Heng smiled and said, This is because Brother Hua, you have remodeled your Tao heart. Although you become an ordinary person without any cultivation base now, you're not the same as before. Brother Hua, you are no different from ordinary people except for the wounds on your muscles and nerves. As long as you can find a doctor to cure your body, you can start to cultivate again. What Lu Heng said with a smile made Hua Feng surprised and unbelievable. But I haven't done anything. Why has my Tao heart been remodeled? Hua Feng couldn't figure it out. Lu Heng shook his head and said, Brother Hua, after your Tao heart was broken, you were neither arrogant nor impetuous, and your mind always kept calm, facing the psychological shadow bravely. In the face of all these difficulties and sufferings, you didn't shrink back, nor did you complain, and always maintained a common mind. It's normal for an excellent person like you to be able to reshape the Tao heart. And now Brother Hua, even if you use your magic eyes to look at me again, you will not be frightened, Lu Heng said with a smile. Brother Hua, you are destined to have a bright future. Chapter, 127 Lu Heng's teasing made Hua Feng smile awkwardly and scratch his head. Although Hua Feng could feel that the wolf god was sincere. But in the face of the existence of the wolf god, a mortal like himself may not be able to match one thousandth of the wolf god's achievements. Therefore, he could only smile awkwardly and dared not be complacent. After checking the condition of Hua Feng, Lu Heng also temporarily put down his mind and began to wonder about the evil woman mentioned by Hua Feng. 
The evil demons who can sneak into Fushan City are mixed up with the Wu clan people it seems that the Wu clan matter is not as easy to solve as he thought. Lu Heng smiled and waved to Hua Feng, saying, about the evil woman, do you want me to see? Hua Feng was confused, well how can I let the wolf god see that evil? Lu Heng smiled and said, I have read the book for a long time, and I have learned some new skills. Brother Hua, if you don't mind, can I have a try? Hua Feng naturally won't refuse. He fully trusted Lu Heng and directly nodded, it was natural what did you need me to do? Lu Heng smiled and put his hand on Hua Feng's head, saying, Brother Hua, you just need to close your eyes and visualize what happened in the restaurant. After that, Lu Heng's heavily thundered body stirred slightly. Hua Feng closed his eyes and began to recall his experience in the restaurant before. The next moment, a private room door of the restaurant emerged from nowhere. The compartment door was slightly transparent and shaking like a wave from time to time. It seemed like a simple touch could break the illusion, but it could be seen that it was the exact same restaurant where Hua Feng was at. The translucent compartment door was pushed open, and several servants of the Wu clan surrounded a young girl and walked out of the compartment. These people were also translucent, but Lu Heng could clearly see each person's face and body. In the eyes of Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, the young woman walked out of the door of the private room and looked at Hua Feng in a slightly surprising way, as if she sensed something. Later, Lu Heng heard the voice of a young woman. A Gu Eagle. The woman seemed surprised to see the little Gu Eagle here. However, Lu Heng was even more surprised. At the moment when the woman opened her mouth, he gasped and almost couldn't maintain the magic. The translucent seeming rippled several times and almost collapsed. Fortunately, Lu Heng stabilized his mind in time, which made the illusion calm. And the follower of the woman spoke at this time. Grandmother, do you like that small goo eagle? Maybe I can go and ask if the Yun sect disciple is willing to sell it? The young lady shook her head and said, No, it's better to do less than more. As the young woman spoke, Lu Heng kept looking at the other's face and listening to the other's voice. The woman left with her entourage soon after, Hua Feng's visualization ended here, and Lu Heng withdrew his hand. However, Lu Heng's eyebrows turned into a tight frown, as if he was in trouble. This reaction made Hua Feng a little scared is that demon very powerful? Even the wolf god feels a headache. Xiao Ai came over with a serious face, waiting for the wolf god to send her at any time. After half a ring, Lu Heng came back to his senses, sighed slowly and smiled bitterly. Evil fate. Facing the confused sight of Hua Feng and Xiao Ai, Lu Heng smiled bitterly and shook his head. I have a bad relationship with the Green Hell Cave everywhere I go, I meet the evil demons of the Green Hell Cave what a bad relationship. Lu Heng sighed loudly, funny and helpless. He saw the demon seed of the Green Hell Cave in the remote Hanyu Mountain. Later, he went down the mountain and soon ran into the Red Lady who was wandering around in the wilderness. After killing the Red Lady, he thought he could have a rest. But it was not long ago that he ran into the evil spirits of the Green Hell Cave in Fushan City. And it's an old acquaintance this time. Lu Heng couldn't decide between laughing and crying. He really doesn't know what to say. Before today, he didn't really believe in the so-called fate. But now it seems that there is really a so-called fate between him and the evil spirits of the Green Hell Cave. The young woman in the illusion, though graceful and beautiful, eyes looked old and full of vicissitudes of life. She must be an old witch who had cultivated for many years. And her voice was clearly the evil spirit that had tricked the wolf demon into cultivating, which caused the wolf demon to be killed by lightning. It was also because of this woman that Lu Heng came to this world. But the world is so vast, Lu Heng thought that if he didn't go there deliberately, it would be very difficult to meet the female demon again, but he didn't expect that the other party would take the initiative to deliver herself to him. And fortunately, she happened to run into the Wu clan matter with Lu Heng. Lu Heng, unable to laugh or cry, shook his head and sighed, this woman is an old acquaintance of mine. Even if we meet now, she won't recognize me. But I can bump into her here. It seems that I really have a relationship with the Green Hell Cave. The last time I didn't catch the Red Lady and ask where the Green Hell Cave was well, this time, maybe it's time to try. Lu Heng pondered, 
I just don't know what the status of the female demon is in the green hell cave even if I put her in the netherworld and torture her with heavenly thunder. I don't know if I can find out the specific location of the green hell cave. Lu Heng frowned and pondered, but what he said inadvertently made Hua Feng sweat. Although he didn't know what the netherworld was, he said that he would torture her with heavenly thunder and no evil cultivators can bear it. However, considering that these methods prepared by the wolf god were used to deal with evil spirits, Hua Feng felt a little safe instead. He thought for a moment, smiled, and said, don't be discouraged even if you can't find its location this time. I think you will find those demons sooner or later even if you don't take the initiative to look for them. Maybe you go out for a cruise one day and enter a cave at random, which will be the gate of the Green Hell Cave. Hua Feng knew that the wolf god was strong, so he was relaxed. Lu Heng could not help but laugh after hearing what Hua Feng said, although Brother Hua said it was ridiculous, I have a similar feeling for some reason. Maybe one day I can run into the gate of the Green Hell Cave by drilling a cave at will alas. In the courtyard, Lu Heng smiled bitterly and shook his head. For a moment, he didn't know how to evaluate it. It can only be said that the relationship between him and the Green Hell Cave is really deep. Lu Heng sighed, and Xiao Ai frowned. Lord Wolf, the Wu Clan has been entangled with evil spirits. Do you need Xiao Ai to go to the Wu Clan to explore again? Maybe I can find out the evil spirits plot. Lu Heng shook his head and vetoed, saying, this time, the evil spirits are too strong. Even if they just hide in the dark and do sneaky things, they must have something to rely on. Your cultivation base is still low. If you bump into them, you may be in life-threatening danger. Just tell Wu Zhu Heelan about this matter, and she will take full charge of it. Lu Heng smiled and said, this time, let's prepare a surprise for the evil spirit. She came to Fushan City to play her tricks. We'll play her game and set up a trap for her. When she thinks she has a chance to win, we'll show up to let her find out that she was in the palm of our hand the whole time her expression will definitely be very amusing then. Lu Heng smiled and said, Xiao Ai, please go and ask Wu Zhu Heelan to come here. We still need to discuss with Wu Zhu Heelan in detail. After all, this Fushan city is managed by Wu Zhu Heelan. Lu Heng chuckled and decided on a plan to deal with evil spirits. Xiao Ai was ordered to invite Wu Zhu Heelan. In Wu Clan's mansion in the city, a young woman who just entered through the small door suddenly felt cold and couldn't help looking behind her. However, her back was empty, and there was no Wu Zhu from Fushan City to pursue her. Is it an illusion the woman called Grandmother frowned and whispered, Why do I feel like I am stared at by some monster? Chapter 128 When the woman stopped to look back, the attendants beside her were confused. The man named Zhang De also looked back and didn't see any suspicious people. He was a little curious and asked, Grandmother, what can I do for you? The young lady thought for a moment and said, Nothing. After saying that, she took the lead in entering the door, leaving the followers who looked at each other behind. There is no need to tell these mortals about some things. The sudden flash of terror in her heart may be a kind of omen. Did I get caught up in something just when I went out for a stroll? The woman thought. To be on the safe side, I'd better not go out these days. This Fushan city is a traffic artery. I might accidentally run into some old monster. Now I'd better not make it public. In case of attracting the attention of the fire god temple wizards, it will still be difficult. The young woman thought and decided not to go out for a while. Soon after, Wu Zhu Helen Zhen left the courtyard behind the fire god temple with a slightly gloomy expression. Under her jurisdiction, some evil spirits unexpectedly came in, which was undoubtedly a challenge to her. And if it wasn't for the wolf god's warning, she wouldn't even know she wouldn't let go of these evil demons. Helen Zhen went away in anger and immediately summoned other wuzus and wizards. In the next few days, the fire god temple seemed calm, but the wuzus and wizards at the top level were all ready. In the courtyard behind the fire god temple, Lu Heng was still looking at the bamboo slips sent by Helen Zhen and studying the secret techniques. It seemed that he didn't care about the external turmoil. In fact, Lu Heng doesn't need to care. Fushan City is a major traffic hub from the north to the south. There are many who visit, and occasionally evil people will enter the city. 
Therefore, the wizards protecting the city have learned a lot about how to surround and kill evil spirits. Lu Hang is an outsider, who can neither intervene nor need to intervene at this time. He just needs to sit in the courtyard and wait for the day when the net is closed. The only thing that surprised Lu Hang was that the Fire Pass country didn't know the existence of the Green Hell Cave. When Lu Hang mentioned that the evil demon came from the Green Hell Cave, Helen Zhen was at a loss and didn't know what the Green Hell Cave was. This evil place with evil demons is more hidden than Lu Hang imagined. This time, if they can seize the rare opportunity of the Green Hell Cave, he may be able to take this opportunity to find the location of the Green Hell Cave. So the original plan of Helen Zhen was to directly gather people and set up an endless network to rush into the Wu clan and capture the evil demons for interrogation. However, Lu Hang persuaded her to wait and see. The Green Hell Cave's evil demons always kept a low profile. The Red Lady knew that she was being seen, so she came to kill them at that time and didn't want to expose her deeds. Now, the evil spirit in Fushan City is abnormal, sneaking into Fushan City and disturbing the Wu clan under the supervision of Fire God Temple. Acting in such high profile must have profound implications. If he can see what the other party really wants to do, he may be able to see some of the rules of the Green Hell Cave. After all, according to Lu Heng's guess, they don't have to wait too long. On the seventh day after the old master Wu's cremation, according to custom, all the old people of the Wu clan will gather together to discuss the ownership of the position of the Wu clan's master after the old man's death. No matter what the evil spirit's idea is, she will help Wu Ziyuan, so she must do something this day. Lu Hang and others can see a big play as long as they wait for seven days. So, although Helen Zhen wanted to rush into the Wu clan immediately and catch the evil demons, she finally let go of her anger with Lu Hang's advice. However, although Helen Zhen didn't start immediately, the gloomy atmosphere still affected other people of the Fire God Temple. The wizards involved in this matter, while strictly keeping confidential, closely monitored the trend of the Wu clan. Without disturbing the Wu clan, some seemingly ordinary workers will report the current situation of the Wu clan to the outside world every day. The Wu clan, which is busy with power disputes, has been clearly seen through by Helen Zhen and others in the dark. Even the courtyard where the evil spirits might live was marked with two or three suspicious places. However, since that day, the evil spirit no longer appeared in front of others, and seemed to be aware of something, completely hidden. Helen Zhen sneered at this. She personally stayed near the Wu clan to monitor the situation in the Wu clan's mansion. Once a demon appears, it can't escape her magic eyes. Now the Wu clan is surrounded by a net. Even if the evil spirit detects something wrong, it has no time to escape. Time passed day by day while Helen Zhen was waiting. In the courtyard behind the Fire God Temple, Lu Hang has taken three secret collections from Helen Zhen. Only two volumes of bamboo slips are given each time, but the secret skills recorded inside are extremely rare. Having seen too many of these kinds of secret skills, Lu Heng also knows that what Helen Zhen has provided to him are the best secret skills of the Fire God Temple in Fushan City. Lu Heng felt embarrassed and asked whether it was in accordance with the rules. The answer given by Helen Zhen is that it is completely in line with the rules. The Wolf God can see as many books as he wants. Lu Heng had to lament that Wu Zhu Heilin was so hospitable. After seven days passed, Lu Heng, who had been reading in the courtyard, put down bamboo slips in the morning. He thought and came to the netherworld. In the dark and desolate world, the old master Wu was wandering through the vast land of the netherworld. Although the netherworld is empty today, the ubiquitous evil spirit Qi is extremely beneficial to the old man's soul. He floated on the earth and wanders along the evil spirit Qi, just like lying on the soft clouds for rest. Lu Heng's sudden appearance woke the half-asleep old man and he hurriedly saluted. The Wolf God. Lu Heng smiled and arched his hands, saying, Old Master Wu, the seven-day period has come. I should take you back to the human world to deal with the Wu clan. After dealing with this last mundane matter and fulfilling your wishes, you can go to the reincarnation tunnel to reincarnate. Wu Yuan hurriedly nodded, Thank you for your care, but I can't walk in the sun now. Lu Heng smiled and said, It's okay. Follow me, and I can protect you from the scorching sun and cold wind. 
The old man was relieved and quickly saluted, Thank you, the wolf god. Lu Heng smiled and said nothing. With a flick of his sleeve, he took the old man away from the netherworld. Lu Heng reappeared in the courtyard under the sun. At the same time, there was also the translucent soul of the old master Wu. When the bright morning light fell on the old man, he subconsciously wanted to find shelter. But this time, the old man didn't feel the sting of being almost burned by the sun. He was stunned for a moment, and then remembered that Lu Heng was nearby. Lu Heng looked at Huifeng and Xiao Ai who was carrying the heavenly thunder sword, and said with a smile, Come on, Xiao Ai, Brother Hua, let's go to the Wu clan today to have a look. As for the little Gu Eagle Gu Yen, Lu Heng left him to look after the house. The little guy had attracted the attention of the evil spirit before, and Lu Heng didn't plan to take him with him to avoid being noticed by the evil spirit. Moreover, the little guy was very lively. If he made a noise and attracted everyone's attention. He was afraid that he would frighten others. The little Gu Eagle was naturally very dissatisfied with this. But in the face of Lu Heng's smile and admonishment, he didn't dare to object, and could only nod obediently. Now he was hanging upside down under the eaves, sulking. When Lu Heng left, Hua Feng talked to Gu Yan, and the little Gu Eagle didn't answer. Hua Feng sighed and said, it seems that even if this is over, I can only wander around the city alone. At this statement, the little Gu Eagle's head suddenly turned. However, Lu Heng and others already left, and the little Gu Eagle could only watch their backs. In the morning light, Hua Feng didn't look back, as if he really intended to ignore the little Gu Eagle. Under the eaves, the little Gu Eagle was depressed for several seconds. Finally, he gave two loud cries as a farewell. Hua Feng, who had already left the courtyard, could not help laughing. Chapter, 129 The atmosphere, in the mansion of the Wu clan, was depressing now. The servants with the lowest status and the powerless people were scattered around the periphery of Wu clan's mansion, waiting for the outcome of today's events with a little anxiety. Even those ignorant children dare not play under the warning of their parents. Everyone knows that after the old master's death, the outcome of today's family elders' discussion will affect the future of the entire Wu clan. From the very beginning, the Wu clan has developed to its present status and has a place in Fushan City after decades of hard work by the old man. However, today's results may affect the future of the Wu clan and determine whether they can be prosperous or not. Every person in the Wu clan was worried about this. In some remote corners, there were whispers. It would be great if the elders chose the eldest child the second child is mischievous and can't let him harm us. The second lady is the most suitable person, unfortunately. The eldest child seems kind-hearted, but he is actually narrow-minded, which is inferior to the second child. I think the second child is better than the eldest child. To tell you the truth, neither of them. Ah the second lady. There are many similar whispers among the people in Wu clan, but no one dares to speak out loud for fear of offending the future master of Wu clan. But there is one thing that all Wu clan people agree on. The second lady, who is over fifty years old, is more suitable than anyone to be the leader of the Wu clan. At this time, in the most solemn ancestral hall in Wu's mansion, with the end of a series of ceremonies, Wu Ziyuan's memorial tablet was placed on the table, standing side by side with other memorial tablets of the Wu clan's ancestors. Wu Ling, the 51-year-old second lady of the Wu clan, closed her lips and went back to the ancestral hall after seeing off the wizard who presided over the ceremony. All the people sitting in the ancestral hall were the elders and shopkeepers of the Wu clan. All the powerful members of the Wu clan solemnly sat together in the same room. Seeing Wu Ling sitting down, Wu Lai, the brother of the old master Wu, who was now the oldest and most famous, coughed and opened his mouth. Now that everyone is here, we should have a good discussion about the future of the Wu clan. My sixth brother has passed away, but the Wu clan can't live without a master. If you have any opinion, please say it. The words of Wu Lai suddenly ignited the atmosphere in the ancestral hall. The elders of all ethnic groups took the lead. I recommend the eldest child The eldest child is always friendly and kind, making friends with the old clans in the city. He is the most suitable person. Ho ho you are wrong. 
Although the eldest child is friendly with the Nanlao family in the city and has a friendly personality, he is too kind and is not suitable to lead the clan I recommend the second child. His character is just the same like my sixth brother when he was young. Bah! When my sixth brother was young, he didn't do anything that made his parents angry and even vomited blood. I thought. I object. If my sixth brother is here, he must also support the eldest son. The ancestral hall was noisy. Wu Ziyuan and Wu Zhiqian, who were elected by the people, sat at the end and didn't talk much. Wu Ling sat down and stared at the quarrel in the room coldly without saying a word. Different from those outside the ancestral hall, people inside the ancestral hall quarreled endlessly, but no one dared to mention Wu Ling, the unmarried second lady, or even to ask her advice. Because everyone knows that this couldn't be mentioned at this time. Otherwise, neither the eldest child or the second child could compete with her. The second lady was the only daughter of the old master Wu Yuan who was not married, but found a husband-in-law. And since she was a young girl, the second lady has been involved in the family business and is the most trusted person of the old master Wu Yuan. In addition to the old master, Wu Ling has also made large contributions to the Wu clan. Even the second young master didn't dare to be presumptuous in front of his sister, who was twenty years older than him. Everyone knows that whoever the second lady supports today can become the new master of the Wu clan. Therefore, people argued, trying to win the support of the second lady. However, compared with the eldest child who is kind to others, there are only a few people who support the second child, and his various naughty deeds often make his supporters speechless. In the end, the voice of supporting the eldest child prevailed. Seeing that the situation was getting more and more settled, Wu Zhiqian took a slightly provocative glance at his second brother, but was surprised to find that his notorious second brother was still laughing under such a declining situation. Wu Zhiqian's heart sank why was this guy still laughing? In Wu Zhiqian's fear, the second young master of the Wu clan, who had never spoken, suddenly smiled. He stood up directly and said to the elders in the ancestral hall. I didn't mind your supporting my elder brother. After all, in terms of talent and life, I'm really a little inferior to my elder brother. Under normal circumstances, I, Wu Ziyuan, would not argue with my elder brother. But unfortunately, on my way home from the south, I heard some bad things, which made me decide to come back and fight for the position of the master. After all, the future of the Wu clan can't be entrusted to a villain who poisoned his father. Speaking the last sentence, Wu Ziyuan suddenly turned to look at his brother and said with fierce eyes, Wu Zhiqian. Do you dare tell everyone how you poisoned our father in front of us? Wu Ziyuan's fierce questioning made Wu Zhiqian's hand suddenly tremble. He subconsciously stood up and angrily scolded, What nonsense are you talking about? Who doesn't know that when our father died, I was not in the city at all even if you can't get the position of the master of the Wu clan, you don't have to frame me, do you? Wu Zhiqian responded sternly, but he was frightened. Wu Ziyuan laughed loudly, as if he was sure of winning. You'd better go and talk to our father personally. After saying that, Wu Ziyuan directly knelt and kowtowed to his father's memorial tablet and said loudly. Father. It's time for you to come out to uphold justice. Now, please tell me and the uncles of the Wu clan who killed you. Wu Ziyuan's sudden words and deeds made everyone in the ancestral hall look at each other. Wu Lai stood up and frowned, what are you doing? Your father's soul has gone to heaven. How can you invite him out? Wu Ziyuan knelt on the ground and said loudly, although my father has died, I have saved his soul with a spirit bead, so that his soul can live ten more days in the world now is the time for confrontation. Father, please show up. As he spoke, Wu Ziyuan took out a palm-sized green bead with his hands raised above his head. At the moment of the appearance of the spirit bead, everyone in the Wu clan was surprised the spirit bead? Then what he said could they be true? The people stared in amazement, and a wisp of smoke slowly floated out of the green bead. Then it fell into the ancestral hall and it slowly turned into an angry old man in front of everyone. It was the old master of the Wu clan, Wu Yuan. At the moment of his appearance, the old man angrily scolded Wu Zhiqian with a frightened expression, You unfilial son! Why aren't you kneeling when you see your father? You poisoned your father, and you want to take the helm of the Wu clan after you did such a wicked thing? You unfilial son, 
get down on your knees. The old master Wu Yuan shouted and scolded, which made Wu Zhichen retreat and scream in horror. Outside Wu's mansion, Lu Hang looked through a water mirror at the scene of the old master Wu scolded his son. He was slightly stunned, but at the same time, he was amused. He looked at Wu Yuan beside him and said with a smile, Old master, your second son is very interesting he can find out that you are poisoned, not as useless as you said. Lu Hang's teasing made the old master Wu Yuan laugh bitterly and said, This unfilial son colludes with the demons he is helpless. You can kill him directly. The two children I raised for many years are both so ambitious alas I feel ashamed to see my ancestors. Chapter 130 The atmosphere inside the ancestral hall was tense. Outside Wu's mansion, Lu Hang and others, who watched the situation in the ancestral hall through a water mirror, were surprised by the sudden appearance of old master Wu. Hua Feng said in surprise, the evil's magic is very powerful. It is not too strange to change into a living person, but the Wu Yuan in the water mirror was in a translucent soul state. It is much more difficult to disguise as a soul. But although the appearance can be imitated, what about the inner things? Hua Feng frowned and said, if only the appearance is similar, these old people of the Wu clan will find something wrong after they ask. Other people were also curious about it. In the water mirror, in the ancestral hall of the Wu clan, when the elders saw the appearance of the old man, they all got up one after another. But instead of welcoming him immediately, they showed their vigilance. Wu Lai frowned and said, Are you my sixth brother? Wu Yuan glanced at him coldly and said, Do I look like a fake? The angry look indeed looked like the old master Wu. Wu Lai thought for a moment and said, Sixth brother, let me ask you, when was the last time we met? The old man said without hesitation, It was the night before my son poisoned me. You came to me alone to talk with me about going south. Yuri was a little surprised, are you really my sixth brother? The old man sneered, then pointed to several clan elders and told them several harmless old secrets, which surprised many elders and shopkeepers. He is really the old master. The old master. Sixth brother. In the ancestral hall, there was a noise. Through the water mirror, Hua Feng was surprised to see this scene. Does the demon know how to read minds? Lu Heng didn't speak, but Wu Zhu Hilin Zhen looked gloomy. The evil demons who can read the mind and absorb the soul must have high cultivation bases. No wonder they dare to enter Fushan city so they have something to rely on. In the ancestral hall, after people confirmed the true identity of the old master Wu, they immediately led him to the main seat. The young master of the Wu clan, who was named Wu Zhiqian, had been taken down, tied up, and forced to kneel in front of the old man. The old man shouted angrily, You unfilial son! What can you say in front of your father? Wu Zhiqian knelt down on the ground in sweat and kowtowed desperately. Father, please forgive me. It's because I lost my mind, and I beg my father to forgive me this time. I promise I won't do it again. Wu Zhiqian desperately kowtowed and begged for mercy, knocking his head on the floor with a thud, looking pitiful. However, Wu Yuan looked coldly at him and said, No more. Of course you won't do it again. Your mother has already died, and your father is about to leave now. Of course, you won't do it again even if you want to do it, where can you find another father? The last sentence of the old man was shouted out in anger. The extremely angry roar made Wu Zhiqian tremble. Later, the old man said coldly, Go to take the Golden Sword Punishment Book out. Today I will kill him personally. Not only did Wu Zhiqian become paralyzed with fear, but all the elders of the clan were also shocked. The Golden Sword Punishment Book is the symbol of the rules of the Wu clan. Once the Golden Sword Punishment Book is taken out, it means to exercise the clan rules. According to the rules of the Wu clan, of course, it is a crime to kill your father. Wu Lai subconsciously stood up, a little worried, sixth brother. Don't do it. Some old men tried to persuade him, although Zhiqian made a big mistake, he is your son after all. He is just too young and ignorant. We can give him another chance, like send him to lead a business. However, before Wu Lai had finished speaking, he was frightened by the old man's fierce and angry face. He swallowed all the words. Seeing Wu Lai's silence, 
The old man coldly glanced at all the people in the ancestral hall and said, Is there anyone else who wants to intercede for this unfilial son? All the old people were silent. Seeing that the old man was so angry, who dared to provoke him? When the old man saw no one answer, he said coldly, Hum. Young and ignorant. Are you still young and ignorant when you are in your thirties? This villain is born to be evil. I should have seen this. The old man's anger made Wu Zhiqian tremble. At this time, the Golden Sword Punishment Book has been taken out. It's a book made of pure copper, with a small sword of pure gold inserted obliquely. The clan elders respectfully took out the punishment book hanging on the wooden shelf and handed it to the old master Wu. The old man took down the book and the sword in his hand. He looked down coldly at his elder son who was kneeling at his feet and said coldly, Wu Zhiqian, you murdered your father. You should be punished by beheading according to the rules of the Wu clan what do you want to say? The old man's words made Wu Zhiqian look up quickly. However, what he saw was his father looking angry at him, as well as many uncles in the room who frowned and said nothing. In such a situation, Wu Zhiqian immediately became desperate, knowing that he would not be spared this time. After standing for a while with a pale face, he suddenly broke out violently. Contrary to his previous weakness and atrophy, he shouted angrily to the old man in front of him. You old man! You are always right, and you will never make a mistake, aren't you? If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have come to this point. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have fallen into what I am today. You are responsible for this. You are responsible for this. Wu Zhiqian's angry scolding shocked all the elders. Wu Lai, who stood side by side with the old master Wu, scolded, What are you going to do? How dare you be presumptuous in front of the ancestral memorial tablets? However, Wu Yuan waved his hand and stopped Wu Lai. Then he looked coldly at Wu Zhiqian in front of him and said, My son, you said I hurt you tell me, how did your father hurt you? In the eyes of everyone, Wu Zhiqian was full of snot and tears, both despair and resentment. It seemed that his grievances these years had finally broken out. He stared at his father in despair and indignation and shouted. You damned old man! You told me since I was young that I am the future master of the Wu clan. That you would give the Wu clan to me sooner or later, so I learned how to be a master from my childhood. Good. I heard it. I believed it. I learned how to be the master of the Wu clan according to your requirements. But you. After you gave birth to the second son, you never mentioned it again. You want to help your second son become the master of the clan, don't you? If your second son isn't so bad as he is now, he is already the master of the Wu clan, right? Wu Zhiqian angrily scolded, but your second son was expelled by you, and I have grown up yet you never gave me the Wu clan. When you were seventy years old, you said that I would be the master of the Wu clan. When you were eighty years old, you said that the Wu clan would be given to me after you died. However, you are almost one hundred years old now. I am thirty-eight years old. You still can't give up your power. You think that everyone can live to be ninety years old like you? Wu Zhiqian angrily scolded, when I was three years old, an enemy of you came to the house and my mother died to save me, and I was also injured that could not be cured in my whole life. The witch doctor said that I would not live more than fifty years you old man, you want to wait until I am died and pave the way for your second son, right? Even the second elder sister's words are more effective than mine in the Wu clan, because everyone knows that the eldest son of the Wu clan will never live to the day to be in power. When you die, the master of the Wu clan may be my second sister, may be my second brother but it will never be me. Everyone knows it. Even the servants of the Wu clan know it. Wu Zhiqian's eyes were bloodshot, and the more he said, the more excited he became. Do you think that I want to do that kind of thing? I was forced by you. If you lived a few years less or if you didn't love power so much, things would never become like this. You caused all of these. You made me become like this. You forced me to do this. You forced me to do this. Chapter, 131 In the ancestral hall, Wu Zhiqian angrily denounced and the elders stared at each other. At this time they were afraid to speak. The old master Wu, who was holding the golden sword punishment book, looked at Wu Zhiqian at his feet with a sullen expression and spoke. 
You son of a bitch. You are just obsessed with power. You want to be the leader of the Wu clan. He looked outside and said, push this villain down. I have no more words with him. The old man gave an order and the old people hesitated. At this moment, another old master Wu's voice suddenly sounded outside the door. It's not your turn to tell the Wu clan people what to do. The sudden sound shocked everyone. Then the gate was blown open by a gust of wind, and two people came from outside. Those two people were the cold-eyed and angry old master Wu and Wu Zhu Hilinzhen of Fushan City. The sudden appearance of this ghost and human startled everyone in the ancestral hall. No one knew what happened. Wu Zhu Hilin and They looked at each other in amazement, looking at the old man at the door and the old man in the room. These two identical ghosts made everyone at a loss. However, the old man in the house stopped pretending when Helen Jin appeared. He smiled, with a clear and pleasant laugh in his throat. I didn't expect that Wu Zhu Hilin would come to involve an Amir Wu clan's matter. Did you save the old man's soul? Do you also have a spirit bead in your hand? But I'm curious. When did you notice me? It's not easy to see through my concealment, is it? After saying that, the old man changed into a young girl and smiled at Heelin Jen. Seeing this situation, the people of the Wu clan immediately understood that they were cheated. In an instant, all the clan elders fled to Wu Zhu Heelin and avoided the young girl who held the Golden Sword Punishment Book. Faced with the instigation of the evil demon, Helen Zhen gave a cold eye and a direct order. Catch it. She doesn't care to talk nonsense with the demon here, just arresting her. With the order of Helen Zhen, the roof of Wu clan's ancestral hall collapsed in vain, and countless red fire lines fell from the sky. In the falling bricks and tiles, those fine fire lines intertwined with each other and formed a huge net, covering the entire Wu clan's ancestral hall. The power of the rising flame boiled in the air, but it passed through those ordinary people and didn't cause any harm to the Wu clan people, but directly covered the young woman in the room. The fire made the woman's figure change and blur. She kept waving her sleeves to try to swing the fiery red net and smiled. Wu Zhu Hilin is so angry why are you, who cultivate the fire god cultivation method, so angry? She waved her sleeves and avoided the net that was covering her. Her smile was like a flower. Although this holy fire demon binding net is your specialty, it's really too belittling to use it against me. With that, the woman waved her sleeves to cover her face. The next second, a cold light suddenly flickered in the net. The net was directly torn. The blue figure rose to the sky and smiled at the people below. Now that I have been found, I won't play with you. Wu Zhu Hilin, we'll see you later. With that, the young woman turned into a blue light and fled toward the distance. But at this moment, the clouds above Fushan City suddenly turned violent, and deafening thunder sounded in the sky. The heavenly thunder clouds converged in the sky in a flash. The fierce power of heaven's punishment echoed in the whole Fushan City. At that moment, all the cultivators in Fushan City were shocked and subconsciously looked in the direction of the Wu clan. There was a green light shining there, trying to escape from the city. However, the evil demon's chi was connected with the heavenly thunderclouds, and the blue light was instantly locked by the heavenly thunderclouds in the sky. Boom! With a loud noise, the incandescent heavenly thunder fell from the sky and directly hit the green light trying to escape. Whoa! A shrill female shout sounded in the whole city. The blue light was directly chopped to the ground and fell heavily into a small pool in the Wu clan, causing numerous water splashes. While the woman fell, the figure above the Wu clan's mansion flashed, and more than twenty cultivators fell near the yard where the evil demon fell. The holy fire demon binding net, which twinkled with fire, was once again condensed into shape in the hands of everyone. And this time, it was Heelin Zhen who took the lead. She stood in the void, coldly looking at the embarrassed evil demon below, and said, Kill her. Evil, you can't escape from Fushan City. This demon can break away from the net, which is enough to prove her profound cultivation base. However, the sky was filled with heavenly thunderclouds, and the evil demon didn't dare to stir up the evil demon chi in her body anymore, or she would be targeted by the heavenly thunder again. The woman in blue was no longer as arrogant as before, 
but sitting in the pond in confusion, with fear and hatred. Thunder. Why is there thunder? The woman in blue cursed in disbelief, why is there thunder in Fushan city? Although the power of thunder was fierce and terrible, it would not kill her directly. But now she was under siege. If she didn't use her evil demon chi, she had no way to escape. If she used her evil demon chi, the heavenly thunder would lock on her. The woman in blue roared, it can't be such a coincidence. Who is harming me? Come out. After the cry of the woman in blue fell, Lu Heng's chuckle rang out in the vicinity. Later, a figure in white came against the wind and stood with Wu Zhu Heelan, looking down at the evil demon trapped in the net below. Lu Heng smiled and said, Are all the members of the Green Hell Cave as tough as you? The woman in blue looked at the man in front of her in disbelief and asked, Who are you? Why do you know the Green Hell Cave? At the same time, she opened her magic eyes and wanted to see the man's reality. However, what her magic eyes saw was endless bolts of lightning, which hurt her eyes. The fierce power caused a great shock to her. Her subconscious trembled and she cried in disbelief, What kind of a monster are you? In this world, is there truly a monster completely composed of thunder? Then, the heavily thunder clouds that suddenly appeared in the sky were they also called by the man in white. The other party knows the green hell cave is he a foe of the green hell cave? The woman in blue was shocked. Chapter, 132 The heavenly thunder is the most detrimental thing for evil cultivators. Any evil cultivator should learn to hide evil demon chi and dare not flaunt them wantonly, so as not to inadvertently lead to heavenly thunder. However, the evil cultivator named Lady Green Bamboo encountered something even more terrible than the heavenly thunder. A soul completely composed of heavenly thunder. Isn't the heavenly thunder beyond anyone's control? Isn't this the common sense of rules from ancient times to the present? But the man in front of her is actually composed of heavenly thunder. Mrs. Green Bamboo was so shocked that she almost suspected her eyes were wrong. And the most horrible thing is that this monster knows the existence of the Green Hell Cave. And it seems that there is a conflict between him and the Green Hell Cave. But Mrs. Green Bamboo couldn't figure out when the Green Hell Cave offend this person. Such a terrible existence, if he really has a grudge against the Green Hell Cave, she can't be unaware of it. Looking at the man in white in the sky with great fear, Mrs. Green Bamboo quickly said sadly. Predecessor, I am Green Bamboo. You may be mistaken. Although you have heard the name of the Green Hell Cave, I am not a member of the Green Hell Cave. If you have a grudge against the Green Hell Cave, you should get revenge on them. Don't wrong me, I'm just an innocent passerby. Mrs. Green Bamboo begged for mercy, while Lu Heng smiled and said, Since you are not a member of the Green Hell Cave, why do you know the Green Hell Cave? As far as I know, the Green Hell Cave always tries to hide. Generally, people who know their existence have either been killed or joined them if you are not a member of the Green Hell Cave, why haven't you been killed by them? Lu Heng's inquiry made Madam Green Bamboo smile and said, Don't you also know the existence of the Green Hell Cave? Although I am weak, I also have some tricks to protect my life. Those evil demons of the Green Hell Cave came to me at that time to invite me. After I refused, those evil demons really wanted to kill me. But I was clever and escaped in time, so I was not killed. In the pond, the embarrassed woman in blue said plaintively. Her words and eyes were full of sincerity. If Lu Hang had not known her whereabouts in advance, just watching this scene, he might have a surprise and wondered if he was wrong. But now he he. Lu Hang smiled and enjoyed the performance of the evil demon, saying, since you are not a member of the Green Hell Cave, in this case. You personally take us to the Green Hell Cave, and we will confront all the evil demons of the Green Hell Cave if you are not really a member of the Green Hell Cave, we will let you go how about it. When everyone looked around, Mrs. Green Bamboo laughed and said, You're joking I don't know where the Green Hell Cave is. Even if I wanted to lead the way, I am like a fly without a head and don't know where to go. The voice of the woman was sad and sincere. Lu Hang sighed and said, Since you don't want to cooperate, we can only do it Wu Zhu Heelan, I'll leave it to you. With these words, Lu Hang stepped back half a step. And Helen Zhen, who was already impatient, walked straight forward for a few steps, 
holding a corner of the holy fire binding demon net, and sneered at the woman below. These demons are truly evil. Stubborn and unwilling to live. After saying that, Helen Jen shook her net and shouted, Catch the demon. In an instant, the twenty wizards scattered around the courtyard made efforts at the same time, and the surging fire god's wish was immersed in the fiery red net. The net composed of fine red lines was suddenly ablaze, and once again it went to strangle the woman in blue in the pond below. This time, it was presided over by Helen Jen herself. The power of the net was even stronger than before. The woman in blue in the pond screamed and was in great pain. I really don't know the green hell cave. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. The shrill cry of the woman made many ordinary people of the Wu clan feel pity. However, Helen Jen's expression in the void became worse and worse, and she sensed the charm hidden in the evil demon's cries. Such a provocation made Helen Jen shout angrily, How dare you to be so bold in front of me die! She shouted angrily and poured her divine power into the net again. In the sky above Wu's mansion, the huge net of red light covering the sky fell. The fiery flame even faintly covered the sun in the sky, and the dark red flame lit up the whole city. Such a terrible fire, not to mention the evil demons, even those cultivators who stayed in Fushan city were shocked to see this scene and felt the terrible power of Wuzhu in awe. With such a raging fire, even if a big demon comes, it may not be able to escape, right? In the small courtyard of the Wu clan, the woman dressed in blue ran out of the way, waving her sleeves desperately to drive away the flaming net. However, she didn't dare to use her evil demon chi at all. Even though she struggled to escape, the scope of her struggle was still getting smaller and smaller, and she was about to be completely entangled by the net. At this moment, the woman in blue finally cried out bitterly, kowtowing desperately to Lu Hung in the middle of the air, Please help me. I am wrong. I am wrong. I am willing to tell the location of the Green Hell Cave, please spare my life. Madam Green Bamboo's shrill and wailing voice made the fiery net stop a few feet away from her. Lu Hang in the void smiled and said, If you tell us at the beginning, you wouldn't have to suffer tell me, where is the Green Hell Cave? Madam Green Bamboo hesitated for a few seconds, looked around a little uneasily, and said, But I can only tell you about it. Lu Hang shook his head and said, All the people present are noble and upright. You can speak frankly. Don't keep it. But but Mrs. Green Bamboo hesitated and said in fear, I'm afraid that the evil demons of the Green Hell Cave will also hear it. I only dare to tell you quietly you just need to disperse the clouds in the air so that I can use my spell to tell you the location of the Green Hell Cave. Madam Green Bamboo's request seems reasonable, but Lu Hang said with a smile, I have nothing to do with the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky. How can I dispel them? Madam thinks highly of me too much. Lu Heng said with a smile, which made the woman in blue in the yard silent for a while. She lowered her head as if she had fallen into silent thinking. Chapter 133 Mrs. Green Bamboo's silence lasted for ten seconds. Just when Helen Zhen was impatient and wanted to scold her, Mrs. Green Bamboo finally raised her head and faced Lu Heng's eyes for the first time. But this time, the woman changed her previous weakness and helplessness and sneered with disdain, we are all old monsters over a thousand years old. Are you kidding me? Your body is full of heavenly thunder, will you have nothing to do with the heavenly thunder clouds above Fushan City? In this case, your words can only cheat a three-year-old child. This time, I was caught off guard by you. But next time it won't be so easy. The woman smiled and looked directly at Lu Hang. Her red lips opened slightly and she smiled seductively. Sorry, but I'm going to leave now. Maybe we can meet again in the future, ha ha ha. In the laughter, the woman in blue suddenly vomited a cold light between her red lips, which broke through the net and shot Lu Hang in the air. Helen Zhen had been guarding against this. At the moment when the cold light suddenly appeared, Helen Zhen directly exerted her power, and the fiery flame net went towards the woman in the courtyard. However, the woman's evil demon chi directly attracted the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky. Boom! With a loud noise, a white sky thunder fell from the sky and struck the woman in blue in the courtyard before the net fell. In the shrill cry, 
the woman in blue was directly split into fragments, and then was covered by the net formed of raging flames. The cold and gloomy light towards Lu Hung was fierce, but the thunder in the sky was faster. At the moment when the cold light flew out, the demon Qi inside also triggered a heavenly thunder. Lu Hung, dressed in white, stood in the void. The cold and gloomy light flying towards him was drowned by the fiery thunder falling from the sky halfway. In the void, thunder surged and evil demon Qi was scattered. Mrs. Green Bamboo's most vicious killing move, under the bombardment of the sky thunder, directly disintegrated into original spirit Qi and scattered everywhere. For a moment, the refreshing spirit Qi breeze was swept in Wu's mansion, which made the people of Wu's clan show their intoxication. Lu Heng looked at the scene in surprise and said, This evil demon's killing move contains such a profound spirit qi. It's powerful. Heilin Jin on the other side was even more shocked and she saw the spirit qi tied of such a scale this move was so cunning and vicious, even she was difficult to parry it. If the wolf god was not here, even if she could defeat the evil demon, she would have to pay a price. However, when the people fell in the courtyard and saw the broken snake slew entangled in the net, they understood. That demon has escaped. Lu Heng said in surprise, it seems that what we just talked to is not the real body of the evil demon. He held out his hand and the broken snake slew fell into his hands. The snake slew has been blackened by the thunder, and only a few dark blue scales can be vaguely seen. Moreover, there is no aura left inside, and it has completely dissipated. Lu Heng understood the situation and said, this evil demon was forged into an avatar by its snake body. The last move exhausted all the evil spirit qi in her avatar, so it was so fierce. But, letting the snake slew in his hand, Lu Heng shook his head and said, her avatar has been destroyed, and her body and soul have been damaged. Even if the evil demon escapes, it will be hurt for a long time. Speaking of this, Lu Heng smiled and said helplessly, and I have a feeling. He looked into the distance and sighed, maybe we can see her again soon. Lu Heng sighed, which made Helen Zhen and all the wizards look at each other. After frowning for a while, Helen Zhen said, this demon calls herself Green Bamboo, and her body is also a green snake. If I'm not mistaken, this demon should be Madame Green Bamboo, who was once famous 300 years ago. She used to be a demon who was rampant in the past, but gradually disappeared. Unexpectedly, she joined the so-called Green Hell Cave and hid in the darkness it seems that the strength of the Green Hell Cave is even stronger than imagined. I don't know where Madame Green Bamboo is. Heelinjin thought anxiously, while Lu Heng smiled and arched his hands at the wizard's present, saying, the rest will be left to you. I'll deal with some things first. Of course, Wolf God. Goodbye, Wolf God. After all the wizards said goodbye to Lu Heng, Lu Heng left the place and went straight to Wu's ancestral hall. There, the soul of old master Wu was exposed to the skylight, but he was not suffering from the scorching sun. He stared at his two sons that were kneeling in front of him with great indignation. Wu Zhiqian, the eldest son, poisoned his father. The second son, Wu Ziyuan, colluded with evil demons and tried to seize the position of the clan leader. The old man would have vomited blood if he was not a ghost. Lu Heng didn't show up but hid in the dark. He also gave the old man's soul a ray of the evil demon Qi to help him stay longer in the hot sun, and then he stopped talking. In Wu's mansion, with the death of the evil demon, the chaos gradually ended. And in a wilderness and mountains thousands of miles away from Fushan city, the clouds and mist curled around. It is close to the East Sea, where there are rolling mountains. A few days ago, there was a shower of rain. Now, the mountains are shrouded in fog, which made it look like an ethereal paradise of immortals. But there was no one present to witness this scene. The mountain is far away from the human city, and there is no trace of human beings within 300 miles. It is remote and desolate. There are countless ferocious beasts and evil things in the mountain, which makes mortals dare not approach. But between the clouds and fog, on the steepest mountain, there were looming pavilions. Although there was only one cloister and several bamboo houses, it was quite a beautiful place. A white crane flew over the mountain, and the girl sitting on the edge of the corridor held her cheeks with her hands, and her legs dangled in the air. Even if underfoot is a cliff, the girl has no fear. 
She looked at the fog in the mountain uninterested and complained, White Crane, White Crane, my godmother went to the city to do business this time, but she didn't take me it's so boring in the mountain. When can I go to see the prosperity of the world? The girl was dressed in blue, but when she complained and sighed, the two little fox ears in her hair kept shaking, showing her dissatisfaction. After the girl complained, the white crane flew away without paying any attention to her, but suddenly a shrill scream sounded behind her. Ah ah ah! The cry of pain echoed in the mountains far away, scaring countless beasts to flee in panic. The girl named Su Xiao Xiao was even more shocked. She jumped up and ran hurriedly in the direction of the cry. Godmother, Godmother! The girl ran anxiously and shouted, What happened? Chapter 134 In the foggy courtyard, the girl ran quickly into the corridor built on the cliff, and soon came to the end of the corridor and anxiously opened the door. In the bamboo house with the windows open and the mountain wind howling, Mrs. Green Bamboo, dressed in blue, was lying on the ground with a tired look, and there was a mouthful of dark red blood on the bamboo floor in front of her. She seemed to have been hit hard. The girl ran to her and anxiously helped Mrs. Green Bamboo, saying, Godmother, what's wrong with you? Where is your avatar? Why isn't your avatar back? In the girl's memory, every time her godmother went down the mountain to do business, she used her avatar. The snake slew incarnation, which has been cultivated hard by her godmother for more than 200 years, almost has the same cultivation basis as her godmother, and is able to cope with most situations. Even if her godmother occasionally meets a strong enemy, she can make her avatar escape. But this time, her godmother's avatar didn't come back. With an anxious face, Su Xiao Xiao hurriedly helped tired-looking Mrs. Green Bamboo sit down, and then went to fetch a ginseng that her godmother had collected. The ginseng wrapped with a red rope is yellow and white. Its flesh is plump, white, and tender, almost as thick as a girl's arm. When the girl took the ginseng wrapped with a red rope out of the wooden box, it suddenly shook and tried to escape. But unfortunately, the red rope tied it one after another. Even though the ginseng's beard shook, it could not escape. The anxious girl quickly returned to the house with the ginseng in her hands and handed it to Mrs. Green Bamboo, who looked tired. Godmother! Come on! Ginseng! The little girl was already a little incoherent. When Madame Green Bamboo saw the ginseng, her eyes suddenly sharpened, showing a fierce look. She grabbed the rapidly shaking plump ginseng, opened her mouth and sucked on it. Who? The long and incomparable sound of inspiration sounded in the room. The giant ginseng held by Madame Green Bamboo was filled with white gas, which was then inhaled into Madame Green Bamboo's nostrils. And as time goes on, the white gas overflows more and more. In the end, it had become a white fog, which was quickly inhaled by Mrs. Green Bamboo. Finally, when Mrs. Green Bamboo left the ginseng, the originally plump ginseng has now dried up, and shriveled up into a ball. Not only is there no longer any spirit chi inside it, but even the original appearance is gone. Like a withered branch. By this time, Mrs. Green Bamboo, who was pale and tired, had relaxed a little. After drinking another cup of medicinal tea from the girl, Mrs. Green Bamboo took a deep breath and looked much better. Looking back on everything that happened in Fushan City, she was still shocked and frightened. Unexpectedly, I ran into such people during my trip to Fushan City. She trembled, and seemed to recall the sharp pain of being hit by the heavenly thunder. She could not help shivering. The smiling man in white seems to be kind, but his actions overflowed with fierce heavenly might. For a demon like her, the man in white is simply the most terrible existence in the world. Even if she just thought about the other person's appearance, she couldn't help shivering. The most terrible thing is that the man in white has a grudge against the Green Hell Cave. On this trip to Fushan City, the other party was totally aiming for her and the Green Hell Cave. Damn! When did those bastards of the Green Hell Cave offend this horrible existence? She wasn't looking to die like this. What about the secret action? The result was that she provoked such an existence and made her lose her avatar if she knew it, she would never join the plan of those bastards at the beginning. In the bamboo house, Mrs. Green Bamboo became more frustrated and angry as she thought about it more. She then walked around with a gloomy face. 
The snake slew incarnation had been cultivated by her for more than two hundred years, but now she lost it in Fushan City. And it was so inexplicable. In the end, she didn't even know the origin of the man in white. The only thing she knows is that the other party can control the thunder. Now, although she escaped from the other party, she may not be safe. If such a person continues to look for her. Once the other party really finds her, it will be a disaster for them. No. We can't stay here. Holding the hand of the girl beside her, Mrs. Green Bamboo said gloomily, Xiao Xiao, go pack your bags and prepare for a long journey. This time, we are going to flee. Mrs. Green Bamboo's sudden words startled Su Xiao Xiao. Ha! Huh. Godmother, why do we want to escape? The girl uttered, having no idea what had happened. Madam Green Bamboo took a deep breath when she saw the girl's ignorance. Your godmother encountered a tough problem in Fushan City this time. With that, Mrs. Green Bamboo quickly and briefly explained her experience in Fushan City, so that she could teach her daughter to know the situation. When referring to the man in white, she even tried to exaggerate his terror. Even Su Xiao Xiao, who didn't cultivate evil demon cultivation methods so her body didn't have any demon chi, could not help but be fearful when hearing her godmother's story. The soul composed of thunders this. She looked at her godmother in disbelief and said, Godmother is there really such a monster in this world? Madam Green Bamboo looked at her with a complicated face and nodded, waiting for her daughter to recover from the shock. And the girl who realized that the situation was critical was no longer happy. She grabbed her godmother's hand and said anxiously, But godmother, the elder you talked about is so terrible. If he really wants to kill us, where can we escape? Su Xiaoxiao's question directly pointed to the core of the problem. In the bamboo house, Mrs. Green Bamboo kept silent for a while and then said slowly. The man in white had a grudge against the Green Hell Cave, and stood with Wu Zhu of the Fire Pass Country, presumably to use the force of the Fire Pass Country to find the location of the Green Hell Cave and eliminate it. If I'm not wrong, in the next few years, all the major cities in the Fire Pass country will be busy for a while. Since the man in white is traveling with Wuzhu, he will definitely participate in it in that case, we should stay away from the Fire Pass country. With these words, Mrs. Green Bamboo looked towards the South Sea and said, I have an old friend named Fufun King. Three hundred years ago, he went out to sea and made a small name for himself in the South Sea. This time, You'll go to the South Sea with me to look for his protection, avoiding the fierce and inexplicable man in white. When the Green Hell Cave comes to an end no matter if it wins or is destroyed, we will come back. Chapter, 135 Lu Heng, who was far away in Fushan City, didn't know Mrs. Green Bamboo's plan. If he knew that Mrs. Green Bamboo had thought about it and finally chose the same destination as him, he would probably laugh bitterly and sigh again that it was really bad luck for her. However, at present, he didn't know all this. He just stood in the courtyard of the Wu clan and listened to the old man's admonition and scolding of the Wu clan people. Xiao Ai and Huafeng both came to him and stood with him, waiting for the old master Wu to leave. In the courtyard next to the wall, the Wu clan's ancestral hall had collapsed and was in a mess. However, the Wu clan elders didn't leave at this time, they all stood in the courtyard and surrounded the two Wu clan's young masters who were tied up. The irascible old man Wu spat and scolded angrily. Finally, he held the Golden Sword Punishment Book and gave an order exactly as the fake one had given. The Wu clan's son, Wu Jiqian, poisoned his father and was unfilial and heartless. He should be punished in accordance with the clan rules he should be beheaded in public. This order of the old master Wu didn't cause his eldest son's fierce resistance. Maybe he had already let out all the hatred he had held for decades before facing the fake old man played by Madame Green Bamboo. Now, when he was dragged down, Wu Jiqin didn't respond. He just looked at his old father coldly and let others drag him down. The second young master of the Wu clan, though he didn't poison his biological father, colluded with evil demons and violated the laws of the Fire Pass country. The Wu clan's rules could not judge him, so he needed to be transferred to the Fire God Temple for judgment by the wizards. However, in the law of the Fire Pass country, colluding with evil demons is a mortal sin, so Wu Ziyuan may not be spared. 
the only thing he could choose was whether to die a little better or a little worse. In the world where the cultivators are in charge, because of the existence of witchcraft doctors, there are many methods of execution crueler than those Lu Heng knew in his last life, enough for those vicious criminals to enjoy. If the second young master of the Wu clan doesn't want to die after being tortured, the only way is to confess that he colluded with the Green Hell Cave. In the end, the position of the future master of the Wu clan was entrusted to the second lady of the Wu clan, a middle-aged woman at the age of fifty. In this regard, the Wu clan elders don't have much opinion. In a world where men and women can cultivate, discrimination against women is not as strong as that in Lu Heng's previous life. The second lady has kept the Wu clan for decades. In terms of popularity and ability, she is indeed the right person. The reason why the old master Wu was poisoned by his eldest son is that he really wanted to pass on the position of the clan master to his daughter. And this matter was known by his eldest son. In the following days, almost all the Wu clan people who participated in the poisoning of the old man by his eldest son have been found. However, those who followed the second young master were even worse. They were directly taken away by the wizards of Fire God Temple and were locked up into the black prison of Fire God Temple. As for their sufferings, they were even worse than those of the eldest child's followers. Of course, those things would only happen in the future. After handling many matters of the Wu clan, it was already afternoon. The old master Wu, who was already a ghost, sighed and said to all his old brothers, old friends and his daughter in front of him. It's too late for me to stay. I have to go, and the Wu clan will be handed over to you in the future. After saying that, the old man's ghost body turned around and left without any nostalgia, quickly disappearing into the public's view, completely ignoring the relatives and friends behind. Farewell, the old master. While the Wu clan people shouted in unison, the old master Wu's soul came to the courtyard next to the wall and saw Lu Heng. Lu Heng stood up, smiled and bowed his hands, congratulations, old master. You have finally finished the common affairs in the world. Now, you can rest. According to the previous agreement, I can fulfill your wish before sending you to the netherworld for reincarnation again do you have any idea about this? Lu Heng made a sincere inquiry. The old master Wu smiled bitterly and said, Thank you, wolf god. This time, the Wu clan can survive, it all relies on the wolf god's care. How can I ask for more? Since my father was your friend, it was the fate between you two. As a younger generation, it was a great blessing for the Wu clan to be so cared for by the wolf god. I don't have any other wishes, just send me to the netherworld for reincarnation. The Wu clan has gained too much this time. The old master Wu's emotion was sincere. For him, what he couldn't put down was what happened to the Wu clan after he died. Now, the ability of his second daughter was absolutely enough to support the steady development of the Wu clan. As for the future, it would be too far away, and he needn't worry about it. The old man was gratified to get such a result. The old man's words surprised Lu Heng. Because he could feel that the old man's words were sincere. The body of a ghost cannot play tricks in front of him. Therefore, Lu Heng was both surprised and moved. He took a deep look at the old man in front of him and sighed, What you said alas makes me ashamed. The old master is open-minded. Compared with you, I just want to finish my promise I am really inferior to you haha. Lu Heng smiled bitterly and said, But since I do have an agreement with Brother Wu Well, you can go to inform the second lady. If something serious happens to the Wu clan in the future, the descendants of the Wu clan can go to Hanyu Mountain to find me. As long as I am still alive, I can guarantee the peace of the Wu clan. Lu Heng smiled, but said to the old man seriously, This time, it's my own promise to show my respect to you. Lu Heng was sincere and solemn. The old master Wu looked at Lu Heng a little blankly. Although he wanted to refuse, he couldn't refuse again because the wolf god was so serious. He hesitated for a few seconds and finally made a deep salute to Lu Heng, saying, Since so, I, Wu Yuan, thank the wolf god. Chapter 136 The matter of the Wu clan has come to an end. The eldest son's body was exposed to the public and the remaining party was also cleaned up. 
the second young master and his followers were taken away by the wizards of the fire god temple and imprisoned in the black prison. Lu Heng returned to the small courtyard behind the fire god temple and resumed his previous life. He read books and studied the cultivation methods of human beings. The former prosperity and liveliness in Fushan city have been restored. After that, the old master Wu went to see his daughter again, and informed her of Lu Heng's promise, seriously warning her that she should not go to Hanyu Mountain to disturb the wolf god unless absolutely necessary. The second daughter naturally listened to this. Since then, the old master Wu was sent to the netherworld by Lu Heng. Before leaving, on the weak river, the old master Wu stood side by side with Lu Heng, looking at the passage of reincarnation at his feet. The old man asked curiously, Dare I ask the wolf god, can I just jump into the reincarnation channel directly? Lu Heng smiled and nodded, saying, Naturally, after you enter the reincarnation channel, the memory will be washed and the soul will be reshaped as you pass through the reincarnation channel. When you return to the world again, you will turn into a healthy new soul and start a new life. Of course, this sounds like you have disappeared. But in the sense of existence, you can live another life. Lu Heng smiled and said, and if you become a cultivator in your next life, there is a chance that you can retrieve the memory of your previous life. But were you Wu Yuan, the old master of the Wu clan, or were you the identity after you reincarnated? Maybe you can only know this once through your own experience. Lu Heng's narration made the old man's eyes widen in surprise. I see. He thought for a while, and then said, the wolf god, after I enter the reincarnation channel, will I become animal, demon, or devil can this be controlled? Lu Heng smiled and said, I can roughly control it within a range haha whether it's a family of rich or a family of ordinary people, even if you want to become a wild animal I can send you to the future you want as long as you ask. Above the weak water, Lu Heng was confident. Because his words were not empty words. There are countless people in this world, and not only human beings can give birth to soulless babies. Birds, monsters and other creatures, as long as they have a baby, they may encounter that their offspring have no soul. The end of the reincarnation channel is to go to the bodies of these soulless babies and grow slowly in the womb, waiting for birth and rebirth. If the order of the netherworld is established so that all sentient beings can enter the netherworld, and then the netherworld will be full of souls. The number of reincarnations may be more precious, and only the souls of the dead with outstanding virtue and good deeds can choose what they will become the next life. But now the netherworld is still empty. The old man could choose any species and family he wanted. Lu Heng naturally had the confidence to say so. After hearing Lu Heng's words, the old man's soul frowned and pondered for a long time in the dark wind of hell, and finally bowed his hand solemnly. I dare to ask the wolf god, whether it is a man or a demon, who has extremely fast cultivation and extraordinary powers in the world I want to be this kind of existence in the next life. The old man's words surprised Lu Heng. He thought that the old man was going to live a leisurely life in his next life. However, he can understand the old man's idea. The world is full of monsters and dangers. Only by cultivating can a person truly grasp his own life. So he smiled and nodded, saying, of course, let me look for it. After that, Lu Heng directly summoned the Requiem Seal. The big black and yellow seal hovered around him, and a faint chill spread to the reincarnation channel. Lu Heng frowned and felt a few minutes. Finally, he opened his eyes and said, there is a strange beast whose baby is soulless. You can choose it. It's just that this strange beast has extraordinary powers. Even I can't guess its origin. I can only roughly sense the extraordinary and supernatural of its baby. As for what will happen to you after your reincarnation, I'm not sure, nor can I guarantee it. I don't know do you want to. Lu Heng said that and looked at the old man in front of him. But the old master Wu nodded directly and said, I see. The wolf god, please send me to it. When I have achieved my cultivation bases and retrieved my memory of the past life, I will surely go back to Hanyu Mountain to bow down and watch the door for you, in return for the care of the wolf god. Lu Heng was stunned by what the old man Wu said. So that's the idea of the old man. He shook his head and refused. Don't do that. I don't do this for your repayment. 
If you want to reincarnate with such thoughts I won't mention how unlikely it is to retrieve your memory, even if you are reincarnated, you may not be lucky. The more powerful the beast is, the easier it is to be envied by heaven. If you want to repay me, I could only refuse. Because it's too dangerous. I can't send you to such dangerous places. Lu Hang's expression was extremely solemn. But the old man made a deep salute and said, The wolf god, please because this is also for my own sake. The evil demons of the green hell cave lured my second son into evil ways, causing him to die under the punishment of the fire god. Even though I had been extremely disappointed with him, I still feel sad about this. I hope that in the next life, I can have the strength to avenge him so I beg the wolf god to give me this chance. Wu Yuan said earnestly, I know that the green hell cave will not be rampant for a long time because of the presence of wolf god and all wizards. So I hope to return with the power of revenge as soon as possible if I want to complete this wish, this strange beast is my only hope. Please allow me. The old man said, kneeling within the void. It was clear that he had made up his mind not to change it. Lu Hang looked at him in disbelief and said, If I don't promise you, I will break my promise now. But if I promise you hey well, well. Lu Hang shook his head helplessly and said, In this case, let me send you there. I only hope you can be lucky and won't suffer. Old Master Wu quickly thanked him, Thank you, Wolf God. Lu Hang waved his hand to inject a wisp of cold air into the old man's soul, so that he would not suffer from the remolding of the soul when he fell into the reincarnation channel. And then said, but you should remember that my Hanyu mountain temple is small, so we can no longer support redundant people. Even if you are reincarnated and have accomplished your cultivation basis, don't come to me. If you can make a note of this, I would be grateful. What Lu Hang said with a smile surprised the old man. But the old man saw the solemnity and seriousness in Lu Hang's smile and knew that the wolf god was serious. In response, the old man could only nod and reply, I understand. Well, then you can go, Lu Hang waved his sleeves and sent the old man's soul directly into the reincarnation channel. Above the weak water, the old man's soul fell into the huge whirlpool that continuously span, and soon disappeared from Lu Hang's view. As for where the old man went, even Lu Hang, who was holding the requiem seal, didn't know. However, watching the old man's soul fall into the reincarnation channel and disappear quickly, Lu Hang sighed. I thought the reincarnation channel could wash away the soul's memory, so I didn't need someone to manage it. But there will be severe pain when the soul is remodeled. I can help the soul to get rid of the pain, but I can't help everyone's soul, right? If so, I would be bored to death in the future. Lu Hang looked at the empty weak water and shook his head. It seems that if the netherworld is built, I must let someone manage it. I have to develop a way to protect the soul from the pain of remodeling. Chapter, 137 After seeing off the old master Wu's soul, Lu Hang didn't stay in the netherworld much but returned to Fushan City. The netherworld was deserted and lifeless, which made people like Lu Hang feel depressed. Since the Requiem Seal is around, he will not be attacked by Death Chi, but he will not like it like the real dead. So Lu Hang wouldn't stay much if he could. When Lu Hang returned to the world, Xiao Ai remained outside the house behind the Fire God Temple where Lu Hang's wolf body was in the courtyard. In the warm morning sunshine, the little girl sat cross-legged with a serious face, devoting herself to cultivation. Nowadays, Xiao Ai's progress in cultivation can be considered rapid. In terms of strength alone, she is much stronger than the wolf demon before Lu Hang's transmigration. Even outside, she can be regarded as a strong young cultivator. In terms of the cultivation realm, she is even higher than Lu Hang, who hasn't opened the door of heaven. Because Xiao Ai had already opened the door of heaven when she was in Hanyu Mountain. Therefore, Xiao Ai, the little girl who always keeps silent, actually has the highest cultivation realm amongst them. At this time, Xiao Ai saw Lu Hang's soul appear in the courtyard. Xiao Ai quickly got up, but didn't salute. Xiao Ai is already familiar with the style of the wolf god and is no longer so restrained and polite. Seeing that Lu Hang just nodded to her with a smile, but didn't give any other orders, Xiao Ai was relieved, and continued to sit back to her original position and cultivate. 
the wolf god came back alone. She knew that the old master Wu must have reincarnated safely. The matters in Fushan city have finally come to an end. For Lu Hain, he just needs to wait until the emperor knows the rumors of the netherworld, and then come to the door to discuss. Although Lu Hang still doesn't know who can be the future lord of the netherworld. However, the construction of the netherworld will not be completed in a day or two. Just the plan needed in the early stage and the response system established in the human world needs a lot of manpower, material resources, and time. Therefore, Lu Hang was not in a hurry. He lived in the quiet courtyard and studied various secret arts sent by Wu Zhu Heelan to broaden his horizon. He wanted to open up a new path of cultivation. In short, it is to write a secret collection himself. And it is better to be able to be learned by everyone. For Lu Hang, a cultivator who has not opened the door to heaven, it is almost a dream to achieve such a wish. But Lu Hang clearly has a low level of cultivation basis. When he learned and deduced those profound cultivation methods, he didn't encounter any obstacles. He could easily understand many profound cultivation secrets. Such a thing is equivalent to a child in third grade of primary school who can understand the knowledge of advanced mathematics such as calculus. This kind of thing can be called a miracle in the world. However, Lu Hung was the only one who was surprised. After all, in the eyes of outsiders, the mysterious wolf god's cultivation is profound, and it is easy to understand these secrets. Lu Hung, on the other hand, could not even find a person to talk to. After all, if he goes around saying that he hasn't even opened the door of heaven, everyone will think that he is just joking. And the world is dangerous. In a world where monsters are rampant, it's also a means of self-defense to make more people fear you. Lu Hang doesn't want to pretend to be weak and then teach those who look down on him a lesson. The world is so beautiful, the world is so vast, why waste life on such a frivolous display? Don't deliberately flaunt, but don't deliberately show weakness. Keep an ordinary mind, guard against arrogance and rashness, and you can go further. Lu Hang thought so. In such a leisurely life, he had another feeling. The cultivation of the right way can really affect people's mood and thinking and lead them to be good. In his previous life, he probably had no time to think about these life philosophies. But in contrast, the cultivation of evil ways can really make people become evil and cruel. Looking in the direction of the fire god temple, Lu Hang sighed. Without asking, he knew that in the dark prison, Wu Clan's second young master was recently probably having a bad time. However, the torture didn't last too long. Soon, the second young master spilled out all his secrets. He got to know the evil lady named Green Bamboo two years ago. At that time, she promised to help him seize the title of Wu Clan's master, but she had to wait for the opportunity. It was not until recently that the second young master Wu found the opportunity to inform Madam Green Bamboo to come. As for the relationship between Mrs. Green Bamboo and the Green Hell Cave, the second young master didn't know. He didn't even know the name of the Green Hell Cave. And the agreement between the second young master and Mrs. Green Bamboo was to ask the Wu clan to do something for her after everything was done. But Mrs. Green Bamboo didn't tell him what to do. The only thing he knew was that if he didn't accept this agreement, he would certainly be killed. If he accepts this agreement, Mrs. Green Bamboo will support him with all her strength, so that the Wu clan can develop faster in Fushan City. In order to supervise this agreement, Mrs. Green Bamboo planted a cursed bug into the body of the second young Master Wu. After the witch doctor of Fire God Temple examined it, he confirmed that it was a notorious heart bewitch. After taking this kind of cursed bug, the second young Master Wu can no longer oppose the orders of Mrs. Green Bamboo. For the Green Hell Cave and Mrs. Green Bamboo, if the second young master takes power, they can have a chess piece in Fushan City. The karma of this incident was reported to the capital, with the escort of the second young master Wu. Moreover, Wu Zhu Hilanjian personally escorted the prisoners to the capital to avoid accidents on the way. Before leaving, Helenjian said goodbye to Lu Heng. Although she didn't say anything about the netherworld, she would definitely report it to Yenshan Jing after she went to the capital. Then time passed, day by day. Lu Heng lived in Fushan City and studied the secret arts from the Fire God Temple Library every day. Hua Feng and the Little Gu Eagle got acquainted with Fushan City.
The bustling city made Gu Yan happy and reluctant to return home. Two months passed by quickly. Lu Heng came to Fushan City in the early summer. Now it was early autumn. However, Helen Zhen didn't come back. It was Gu Zhou, the mother of Gu Yan, who came to pay a visit to Lu Heng. She wanted to bring the souls of the good people in her water palace into the netherworld. It not only helps Lu Heng build the netherworld, but also allows those who die to live for decades more. But now Lu Heng couldn't let the souls out of his sight enter the netherworld. He couldn't stay in Pangjiang all the time. So Lu Heng thought for a long time, and finally went to the water palace and poured out a pool of yellow spring water there. Those good souls can sleep in the yellow spring water to avoid the pain of dissipation and wait for the day when the netherworld starts to be built. Of course, these are all voluntary. At that time, Gu Zhou will ask those good souls, who are willing to contribute to the construction of the netherworld, to sleep in the pool. If you don't want to, you can also be sheltered in the water palace and wait for the natural dissipation to avoid suffering from wind and sun. After the matter was settled, Lu Heng was free again. However, as time went by, Lian Shan Jing, who Lu Heng was waiting for, never appeared. Even Helen Zhen, who said go back soon, when saying goodbye, has disappeared. When he asked about the wizards in the city, he got the news that the Fire Pass country was having a purge. All major cities were conduct covert searches to try to find out the families controlled by the Green Hell Cave, such as the Wu clan. The atmosphere was tense. Lian Shan Jing and Helen Zhen are busy now, so they have no time to deal with the affairs of the netherworld. While Lu Heng waited in the city until the autumn equinox, Helen Zhen still didn't come back. At this time, Lu Heng has read all the cultivation books of the Fire God Temple Library in Fushan City. Although there are many other books, Lu Heng is not very interested in them. And as the end of the year approaches, the Mermaid Kingdom Special Treasure Conference will be held soon. Huo Feng was still waiting to go to the South Sea to ask Wu Gu for medicine. Finally, Lu Heng smiled bitterly in the bleak autumn wind, and left Fushan City with Xiao Ai, Huo Feng, the little Gu Eagle, and the plump bird who had already given up resistance. Once again embarked on a journey to the south. This time, their destination was the overseas countries beyond the South Sea. Chapter 138 When going downhill, Lu Heng thought that the opportunity to open the door of heaven was to finish the karma between the original wolf demon and the Wu clan. However, after arriving at Fushan City and seeing many cultivation secrets, he realized that his chance to open the door of heaven was not karma, but the road. If Lu Heng can't find a way of his own, he can't open the door of heaven. After understanding this, Lu Heng calmed down, no longer anxious. His thoughts and mindset changing. This southbound trip is based on the mentality of cruising and leisure, as well as cultivating his thunder cultivation method along the way. When Lu Heng and the others left Fushan City, because of Lu Heng's request, only two wizards of Fushan City came to see them off. The two wizards stayed with Lu Heng and the others until they went outside the boundary stone. The two figures saluted in front of the boundary stone, and then separated. The two wizards wanted to ask Lu Heng to wait for Wu Zhu Heilin to come back. It's just that since Lu Heng has decided to go, they couldn't say too much. After Lu Heng walked out of the boundary stone of Fushan City, they had left the vast plains and entered the rugged and precipitous dragon falling mountains. The small Gu Eagle hovered over the people's heads, chirping excitedly, just like the crying of a baby spreading in the mountains. His cry scared away many roadside beasts. For Gu Eagle, who has been staying in the Pengjiang River, it is an unprecedented experience to be able to enter a bustling human city. Now he has left the Pengjiang River and is going to the South Sea, where he has never been before. The little Gu Eagle's heart was very excited. Hua Feng walked on the mountain road, and shouted weakly, Don't fly too far or you will be ambushed by the fierce beasts in the mountain. At the side of Huafeng, his long separated bow horse was carrying luggage, and it was not happy with the call of Huafeng. During the past few months when Huafeng stayed in Fushan City, his bow horse has been wandering in the mountains outside the city, and it seems that it also ran into another female bow horse. The bow horse wants Huafeng to stay in Fushan City for a longer time because it wants to see if it can get close to the female bow horse. But the wolf god said he was going south. 
How dare Hua Fong delay? He directly rejected the request of the bow horse and steered it towards the south. Therefore, the discontented bow horse was now unwilling to let Hua Fong ride it. After walking along the rugged mountain path for half a day, Hua Feng's strength began to run out. The bow horse snorted at this, and constantly blew out its breath through its nostrils, sneering at its owner. The dragon falling mountains are steep and rugged, and the road is hard to travel, which is much more difficult to walk than Lu Hang imagined. If ordinary people walk along the dragon falling mountains, they will spend a lot of time and energy. Now Hua Feng has been walking for only half a day and couldn't bear it. But the deeper you go into the mountains, the more difficult the road will be. The next day, Lu Hang and others could not even see the gentle land. Between the steep and precipitous mountains, there was an abyss of precipitous cliffs. The road through the dragon falling mountains was cut out on such a steep mountain. In many places, there were only plank roads. Walking on the edge of the road, if one foot were to be empty, there would be no bones left. The trend of nearly vertical mountains is almost like that of a knife. Lu Heng shook his head when he saw such a strange mountain. No wonder there is a rumor about the ancient dragon falling in the vein of the dragon falling mountain. The mountains are so strange. If you look at them from a high altitude, they look like dense dragon scales, one after another. On the third day, Lu Heng and others officially entered the core scope of the dragon falling mountains. Here, the mountain trend and the road between the mountains are more precipitous than Lu Heng expected. Not only are there steep cliffs and a bottomless abyss, but the distance between mountains also becomes erratic. Sometimes it is so close that ordinary people can jump to the opposite mountain directly. But sometimes they are far away, and only vaguely see the face of the mountain in the clouds. As for the huge gap between the two mountains, there is a dense white fog, and it is impossible to peek at the bottom of the pit. Hua Feng said that the dragon falling mountains are shrouded in fog all year round. The deeper you go, the thicker the fog will be, and it will not disappear all year round. Among the mysterious mountains shrouded in mist, there is a strange animal named Kuan in the mountain range, which looks like a huge whale. But it flies in the mountains, swallows clouds and puffs fog, and sucks the spirit chi of heaven and earth. It is gentle in temperament, but it also has the terrible power of destroying mountains and rocks, which makes people not dare to provoke it. But Lu Heng didn't encounter it. After arriving here, due to the more precipitous mountains in the mountain range, not only did the trestle path become more frequent, but also cable bridges connecting the mountains appeared. One chain bridge after another shuttles among the mountains shrouded in white fog, connecting one mountain range after another, connecting the roads in the mountains. Some of these iron chain bridges were much longer than Lu Hang imagined, and the longest iron chain bridge even exceeded one kilometer. Such a long iron chain bridge is logically impossible to exist. In Lu Hang's previous life, those two kilometer long bridges were all made of rigid concrete, supported by piers, and fixed by fine steel cables to maintain stability. But the huge iron chain bridge in the mountain is really just a simple iron chain bridge. There is no pier and cable, but when it is connected between the two mountains, it is stable without shaking. Such a situation is contrary to common sense. Lu Heng was surprised to see it. When Hua Feng saw Lu Heng's curiosity, he explained. All the iron chain bridges in the mountain are made by the nine Li tribes. When the late emperor was alive, he made friends with Li Tan of the Li tribe. The iron chain bridges in the Dragon Mountain were forged by Li Tan. These iron chain bridges have been built for more than 400 years. For 400 years, even earthquakes and the winds couldn't damage these iron chain bridges. The narration of Hua Feng made Lu Heng suddenly aware. It was originally built by the Li tribe. No wonder the chains of the iron chain bridges are different from ordinary gold and iron. Having seen what the priests of the Wind Raiders Department and the Great Sea Department can do, Lu Heng knows that the metallurgy of the Li tribe is really different from ordinary people. Although the iron chain bridges in the mountain are contrary to common sense, it would not be surprising if it was built by the Li tribe. After all, they can even forge the heavenly thunder sword. By contrast, the iron chain bridges in the fog are not a big deal. Chapter, 139 The terrain of Dragon Falling Mountain is dangerous and rugged. 
On the fifth day, even though the bow horse had calmed down and offered to let Hofoam ride it, he refused. In this regard, naturally, there was a sneer from the bow horse. However, after Hofoam remodeled his Taoist heart, he became thick-skinned. The ridicule of the bow horse didn't affect him at all. The group continued to travel through the mountains. On the sixth day, when they were about to walk out of the core area of the Iron Chain Bridge, they unexpectedly saw the Kuan in the mountains mentioned by Huofeng. The morning fog shrouded the dragon falling mountains making the already fog shrouded mountains hazier. When crossing an iron chain bridge between two mountains, Lu Hang and others suddenly heard a loud and desolate cry echoing in the mountains. The desolate cry seems to be full of vicissitudes of life and sorrow, which makes people subconsciously want to stop and listen. Later, the mountain fog surged, and a huge black shadow spread across the world and flew over Lu Heng's head. From the huge and broad abdomen, as well as the fins that appear and disappear in the clouds, it is a frighteningly large whale. However, on closer inspection, this huge monster is somewhat different from the whale. Lu Heng was surprised to see that the huge animal named Kuan in the mountain was wandering in the clouds, but its huge body was flipping dexterously. It seems that it's not in the mountains, but in the deep sea. It moved and twisted, and then the clouds scattered, which was spectacular. In this spectacular and magical scene, even Xiao Ai, who had a cold temperament, couldn't help but open her eyes and mouth, shocked. Although she heard that Huofeng said that Kuan in the mountain was extraordinary, hearing about it was a totally different experience than seeing it with her own eyes. Behind Lu Hang and them, a long sigh sounded at this time. All living beings, the sea of suffering rises and falls alas alas, alas. Lu Hang was stunned by this sudden emotion. Everyone turned around and found a thin figure behind them. A piece of coarse cloth with yellow hair was wrapped around the person's body. The messy hair was like a bird's nest, and the area was covered with dust. From the emaciated body, you couldn't see a trace of fat, and the ribs could be clearly seen. A wooden staff in his hand was a dead branch picked up casually from the roadside. There was a rag package on the shoulder, which was the most common article of ascetic cultivators. In Lu Heng's understanding, there is no Buddha in this world, but there are ascetic cultivators. These ascetic cultivators have no specific deities to worship. They just seek inner peace or soul detachment. They were unkempt and ragged, carrying dead sticks randomly picked from the roadside, chanting ancient scriptures as they walked. They must endure what ordinary people felt was painful, such as long-term deprivation of food and water, extreme heat and cold, and exercise patience and alienation. Therefore, the existence of ascetic cultivators is not uncommon, there are many in this world. But this ascetic cultivator? Lu Heng looked surprised, because even though he was holding the requiem seal, he didn't notice the cultivator's arrival. There is no aura in the cultivator's body. Even if you look at it with the ghost requiem seal, you can only see a calm and simple soul without divine light. It seemed that what appeared behind them was just a common human. Lu Heng jumped off the white wolf's back and fell to the ground. Then he arched his hands at the ascetic cultivator and said, Master, I'm Lu Heng of Hanyu Mountain. Lu Heng's active greeting made the ascetic cultivator in the distance stunned. He turned his head and looked at Lu Hang and others on the iron chain bridge and saluted. My name is Jiu Mie, and I'm just an ordinary person. Please don't call me master. Amid the clouds, the ascetic cultivator was very modest. On the chain bridge, Lu Hang smiled, Master, you went to the mountain alone, do you also want to travel south? If you don't mind, you can travel with us. We can walk together, talk with each other what do you think of it? Lu Heng's words made the ascetic cultivator named Jiu Mie hesitate for a few seconds. Then he said, if you don't mind, it would be a pleasure to go with you. Lu Heng greeted him with a smile. Since then, the ascetic cultivator named Jiu Mie joined Lu Heng's team. Just as Jiu Mie said, he is slow and deserves to be called a burden. With him on the team, Lu Heng and his followers were much slower. In the reaction of Huofeng and others, Jiu Mei's body was really as weak as a mortal, stopping for breath on the rugged mountain path from time to time. In order to take care of Master Jiu Mie, Lu Heng slowed down their speed. Although Master Jiu Mie was thin and limp, just like an old man who could be blown away in a gust of wind, 
Wa Fong and Xiao Ai dared not disrespect him. Because when Lu Huang and Master Jiu Mie talked with a smile, the content they talked about together was profound and mysterious for Hua Fong and Xiao Ai. Hua Fong listened with rapt attention and even wished that Master Jiu Mie could walk more slowly, so that he could hear more about the wolf god and his conversation. Master Jiu Mie didn't deliberately hide it. Everyone knew that this seemingly weak and emaciated old ascetic cultivator was actually an expert with a high cultivation base. He just hit his cultivation base, and walked in the world with a thin and weak body. While camping at night, Lu Heng suddenly smiled at the roaring wind in the mountains and the cold moon in the night sky by the campfire. Master, do you know the magic of thunder? Jiu Mie took a deep look at Lu Heng's soul avatar and smiled, saying, Please teach me. Lu Heng laughed and thought, and suddenly there were wisps of dark clouds emerging out of nowhere in the falling dragon mountain. After those dark clouds appeared, they quickly gathered. Soon, a huge dark cloud was floating above their heads. The power of thunder loomed in the clouds. Hua Feng huddled in the corner, looking at the scene with complicated expression. Lu Heng said with a smile, the power of thunder is extremely fierce, which is hard to hide. But I have a little understanding in my cultivation recently. Although I can't hide the power of thunder, I have some ideas please have a look, master. After that, Lu Heng's soul suddenly flew out of a white sky thunder, straight into the sky, and exploded in the clouds. Rumble. The fierce power of thunder was raging in the mountains. But it seems to be weaker than what Jiu Mia imagined. When the old ascetic cultivator saw this scene, his eyes lit up and he became interested. He smiled and said, it can be like this. Although this technique is crude, it is contrary to ordinary magic. I think it was developed by yourself, right? Lu Heng nodded and said, it's still at the exploratory stage. Can you give me some advice? The old ascetic cultivator in front of him was good at hiding his spirit qi, so Lu Heng naturally asked for advice with a smile and didn't hide his motivation. And Jiu Mie was also curious, laughing and discussing with Lu Heng about the fierce power of the thunder. For the old ascetic cultivator, it is also a wonderful experience to get close to the heavenly thunder. What's more, now he not only can contact the heavenly thunder, but also listen to Lu Heng's detailed description of the uniqueness of the heavenly thunder. One was curious about the heavenly thunder, and the other was interested in the method of hiding spirit qi so they fell into a heated discussion. In the originally quiet dragon falling mountain, heavenly thunders appeared from time to time. The terrifying thunder scared the animals and birds in the mountain to flee everywhere, and dared not approach the area where the thunder clouds were surging. Because of the one man and one wolf who was intoxicated with the communication of Taoism and Dharma, others had to stay in the mountain and waited. The heavenly thunder flickered in Lu Heng's hands, dissipated from time to time and then reappeared, demonstrating its wonders to the old ascetic cultivator in front of him. Chapter 140 In the dragon falling mountains covered by clouds and mist, the dark thunder clouds were surging silently, and the mighty power had already scared away all the wild animals nearby. Now, they were the only living beings within a ten-mile radius, except for some mosquitoes and ants. Lu Heng and Master Jiu Mie sat on a huge cliff. Clouds and mists surged around them and then dispersed. The incandescent light of the bolts of lightning appeared from time to time between them. Three days had passed. Master Jiu Mie's ten fingers were slightly blackened. That's the mark left when he tried to touch the heavenly thunder. Fortunately, the power of the heavenly thunder had been greatly suppressed by Lu Heng, and the old ascetic cultivator is also strong. This little wound will not affect him. By this time, the old ascetic cultivator had already understood Lu Heng's idea. The heavenly thunder is too violent and shocking. It is inconvenient to walk in the ordinary world. Lu Heng wants to hide it so he can walk among mortals without hurting them. In this regard, the old ascetic cultivator expressed his appreciation and was willing to help him. But the heavenly thunder is too powerful. Even though the old ascetic cultivator is excellent in cultivation and is good at the cultivation method of hiding spirit qi. However, they never made much progress on how to hide Lu Heng's spirit qi. On the contrary, with their arguments and Lu Heng's constant display of the heavenly thunders, the surging heavenly thunder clouds in the mountains became more violent. 
Even the wizards in Fushan City felt the change in the depths of the Dragon Falling Mountain, and were shocked. Huofeng and Xiao Ai stayed in the distance, waiting for the end of Luhang and the old ascetic cultivator's talk. However, only Xiao Ai, whose cultivation base was special, could listen to their talks closely. Huofeng couldn't even get close. He could only look at them from afar with Gu Yan and the bow horse. On the fourth day, it was sunny in the mountains, which made this area more gloomy and terrible. Lu Heng's discussion with the old ascetic cultivator encountered an inextricable problem at this time. The two discussed for a long time but finally failed to find a solution. They looked at each other with a sigh. Lu Heng sighed, it seems that this discussion can only end here. The old ascetic cultivator put his hands together and sighed, Friend, you are trying something that nobody has ever tried before, which I really admire unfortunately, my strength is not strong enough to help you. Lu Heng smiled and shook his head, saying, Although I didn't achieve my wish, I have gained a lot hum. Halfway through, Lu Heng suddenly sensed something and frowned at the distance. At the same time, the old ascetic cultivator also turned his head. In the sunlit dragon falling mountains, a cold black light suddenly came from the sky, passed through the steep mountains, cut through the sky, and finally fell on the rock where Lu Heng and the old ascetic cultivator were. He turned into a cold-looking, slightly emaciated middle-aged man. The middle-aged man smiled and bowed his hands, saying, I'm going down here to pay homage to an old friend in the dragon falling mountain. But I didn't expect to meet you too ha 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 your talk is quite interesting, I wonder if I have the honor to listen. The middle-aged man who suddenly appeared didn't shake a little under the heavenly thunder clouds. It seems that he was not afraid of the fierce heavenly thunder. Lu Heng and the old ascetic cultivator looked at each other. Lu Heng smiled and said, It's a pity that you came late, and the debate just ended. Both of us fell into an unsolvable situation. It's also a waste of time to continue to discuss, so we can only end here. Lu Heng decided to leave, but the middle-aged man was more interested. He asked with great interest, can you tell me in detail? Lu Heng thought about it for a while, and told him the problem. It took him another half an hour. On the huge mountain rocks, the middle-aged man nodded from time to time, and then asked some points about the heavenly thunder. Unconsciously, the two people who planned to leave sat down again. And this time, there was one more person who joined the discussion. The gloomy middle-aged man sat opposite them, nodding from time to time to express his views. When the sun went down and the moon and stars hung high, the three of them actually found a method in their detailed discussion to solve the problem. Under the cold moonlight, Lu Heng released a bright thunder in his hand. This time, however, this highly dangerous thunder didn't show any ferocity. It seemed to be just ordinary thunder. Although this kind of ordinary only lasted for a quarter of an hour, it foreshadowed that Lu Heng had finally broken through the initial problem. Among the mountains, three people laughed happily. Lu Heng smiled and said, So, I finally see the dawn of hope. The old ascetic cultivator smiled and nodded, and the gloomy middle-aged man also showed a trace of joy. On that huge mountain rock, Lu Heng and the old ascetic cultivator talked about their own cultivation methods tips. Although the middle-aged man didn't know about heavenly thunder and his art of hiding spirit qi was ordinary, he was often able to put forward some wonderful suggestions, which inspired Lu Heng and the old ascetic cultivator a lot. The fifth day, the sixth day, the seventh day. The three people atop the mountain spoke to each other about the Tao. Though the air was charged with crackling electricity, none stood up to leave. Time flies. In a twinkling of an eye, ten days had passed. The three people were still talking on the mountain. Even the middle-aged man, who looked gloomy and terrible, now showed a rare eager smile. However, on the tenth day, Lu Heng took the initiative to stop talking and said, Please wait a moment. With that, he shouted to the little Gu Eagle in the distance, Gu Yan, come here. The heavenly thunder in Gu Yan's body was almost exhausted. Lu Heng needed to inject new heavenly thunders into Gu Yan to maintain the balance of the two forces in his body. In the face of Lu Heng's call, although Gu Yan was afraid of the heavenly thunder near the mountain rock, he flew over and landed in front of Lu Heng. Seeing Lu Heng taking the initiative to stop talking and inject heavenly thunder into the little Gu Eagle, 
both the middle-aged man and the old ascetic cultivator were surprised and asked about the situation. Lu Heng also casually mentioned Gu Yan's current predicament, but he didn't say who Gu Yan's parents were. The middle-aged man looked at the timid appearance of the little Gu Eagle, shook his head, and said, you need to inject a ray of thunder into his body every few days that's too troublesome. After thinking for a while, the middle-aged man smiled and said, in that case, why don't I inject a bit of my power into this the little Goo Eagle's body to help him? The old ascetic cultivator also smiled and said, I have the same idea with we three's powers together, it can help suppress the disease in his body. Lu Hung was a little surprised, but this matter is of great benefit to the little Goo Eagle, so he naturally agreed. So on the rock, the middle-aged man injected a wisp of his demon chi into the little Goo Eagle's body. In an instant, the little Goo Eagle's body suddenly trembled, and all the feathers seemed to be shining, showing the desolate and ancient atmosphere of the wilderness. In the next second, the atmosphere vanished. However, the disorder in Gu Yan's body had been completely suppressed. Later, the old ascetic cultivator smiled and stroked Gu Yan's head, and also injected a trace of Holy Spirit Qi into Gu Yan's body. With the help of the two, Lu Hang smiled and immediately injected a ray of thunder into Gu Yan's body, which turned into a barrier to completely separate the original two forces in Gu Yan's body. Since then, the two chaotic forces in Gu Yan's body have been completely separated. Lu Hang only needs to inject a trace of heavenly thunder into Gu Yan every few years to keep him safe now. Chapter 141 In the mountains, three people burst into laughter. At the moment when the little Goo Eagle's body condition had been stabilized by the three people, they all laughed loudly. Lu Heng smiled and said, Gu Yan, thank the two predecessors. The little Goo Eagle was ignorant and shivered among the three people. But since Lu Heng said, he immediately knelt down and kowtowed. The kowtow looked like a chicken pecking rice, as always. The middle-aged man smiled, shook his head, and said, don't thank me just fly to the side and don't affect our talk. Lu Hang nodded to let Gu Yan leave. Later, the three people returned to the previous topic. In the mountains, wind and thunder were stirring. The fierce power of thunder was surging among the mountains. Xiao Ai, carrying the heavenly thunder sword, sat quietly outside the rock, silent, just like a sculpture. However, Hua Feng and Gu Yan were still standing in the distance, waiting for the end of the discourse. On the fifteenth day, Hua Feng was about to run out of dry food, so he had to take Gu Yan back to Fushan City to purchase dry food and then came back again. When he returned to the mountain, the three people on the rock still didn't leave. From time to time, laughter came from the rock. And sometimes, there was silence for an hour or two as if all three were in deep thought. Hua Feng and Gu Yan had become accustomed to this. They were no longer frightened by the thunder. Instead, they slept and ate as if nothing was happening. The bow horse lay lazily in the corner, not even bothering to move. In any case, even if it doesn't eat anything for one year, it won't die. The seventeenth day, eighteenth day and nineteenth day. The aura of thunder became more solemn as time passed. In the end, not only Lu Hang's thunder, but also the holy light from the old ascetic cultivator, as well as the evil demon Qi of the middle-aged man surged there. On the rock, sometimes the wind was howling with evil chi, sometimes the wind was clear and holy, sometimes the wind was dark and violent. The wizards of Fushan City came to check the situation. They saw the situation from a distance and left after being explained by Hua Feng. They dared not disturb them again. This time, Hua Feng prepared for a long wait and bought a lot of dry food. Soon, a month passed. The scene on the rock had far exceeded Hua Feng's imagination. The gloomy and violent thunder clouds fell down from the sky and landed on the rock, surging around Lu Heng. The old ascetic cultivator and the middle-aged man were sitting in the thunder clouds, struggling to control the thunder. However, the outside world had long been unable to see the three people on the rock. The only thing they could see was a violently surging cloud. Even Xiao Ai, who was waiting on the outside, had disappeared into the thunder clouds. Hua Feng and Gu Yan were waiting hard outside, but they couldn't even speculate about the situation on the rock. Until the 57th day. 
Suddenly, the three people burst into laughter in the congealing thunder clouds. Lu Heng smiled and said, Thank you for your help. Then, thunder clouds surged wildly toward the middle and seemed to be sucked away. As the violent thunder clouds dissipate, the three figures appeared once again. Lu Heng, dressed in white, stood in the middle of the heavenly thunder clouds as it whirled around him crazily, constantly melting into his body. With the influx of the heavenly thunder clouds, the spirit qi in Lu Heng's body gradually calmed down. In the end, when all the heavenly thunder clouds disappeared into his body, Lu Heng's dazzling body returned to normal again. Even ordinary cultivators looked at him with their magic eyes now, they would only feed dizzy, but their Tao hearts wouldn't be broken again. The middle-aged man looked at this scene, smiled and said, We have gained a lot from the last two months' argumentation. Unexpectedly, this trip to the Dragon Falling Mountain is so worth it. The old ascetic cultivator sighed and said, Congratulations, your wish has been fulfilled. But this method can only barely restrain the power of thunder if you want to solve it perfectly, we need to study it more. The middle-aged man shook his head and said, I think it's good. You can release your restrained thunder when you face your enemy even if we face it, we will have to run away. It's really good as a way of fight. The old ascetic cultivator shook his head and said, This method is too fierce. It will cause severe pain and tear open any people's souls who touch it. I couldn't bear to imagine it. The middle-aged man stared and said, It said that this method can be used to attack your enemy isn't it better that your enemy dies more tragically? The old ascetic cultivator smiled, without arguing, but looked at Lu Heng. At this time, Lu Heng has restrained all the dangerous thunderclouds and evil demon Qi. He solemnly saluted the two people in front of him and said, Thank you, Taoist friends. The old ascetic cultivator and the middle-aged man also saluted at the same time, and their faces were serious. The arguments in the past two months have benefited all three of them a lot. Lu Heng smiled and said, I wanted to talk more about other cultivation tips with you, but now I have said everything I know, so I can only wait for the next time. The middle-aged man suddenly came up with a suggestion, why don't we leave this place and come back here ten years later? I really admire you too and want to make friends with you. What do you think? Lu Heng looked at the old ascetic cultivator. Seeing the old ascetic cultivator nodding, he could not help but laugh and say, Okay. Taoist friends, you have extraordinary powers, I naturally agree ha ha ha. After saying that, Lu Heng once again bowed his hand seriously and said, I am Lu Heng of Hanyu Mountain. The old ascetic cultivator smiled and put his hands together. I'm Jiu Mie, an ordinary cultivator. Then they both looked at the middle-aged men beside them. This middle-aged man looked very evil and fierce. Lu Heng and the old ascetic cultivator couldn't guess his background. The middle-aged man smiled and bowed his hands, saying, I am Zhu Jiuyo, the god of Zhongshan. This sentence resounded, spreading far across the mountains. The distant Huafeng was shocked. Lu Heng was also slightly shocked. The old ascetic cultivator's smile became a little stiff. At the moment when the name Zhu Jiuyo appeared, the old ascetic cultivator retreated half a step and reached for the small broken bag on his body silently. Lu Heng was still smiling, but the heavenly thunder sword on Xiao Ai's back gave a sudden shock and faintly sent out a sword sound. In an instant, the figure of Zhu Jiuyo retreated a few steps away, shaking his head at the two people on the rock. What are you doing? Zhu Jiuyo looked helpless, is my reputation so bad in this world? Lu Heng thought about it for a while and smiled, calming down the dark green ancient sword on Xiao Ai's back. Then he said, you are too famous. Even I know that a thousand years ago, you swallowed up a whole country in the East Sea. I dare not underestimate you. The old ascetic cultivator coughed, let go of the small broken bag, and said, My bad I don't see any evil demon chi on your body. I think the rumor must be not real. In the sky a few miles away, Zhu Jiuyo smiled bitterly. Friends, it seems that you two are stronger than I had imagined I wonder what is in that small broken bag. And friend Lu's sword ha I don't know what the scene will be after it is drawn out of the sheath. With these words, Zhu Jiuyo flew back to the rock again. Although the incident thousands of years ago was not as bad as that rumor, I did have a fault. I will tell you in detail the next time.
Lu Huang and the old ascetic cultivator nodded. Although the rumor about the god of Zhongshan, Zhu Jiuyou, is fierce and terrible. However, the three people talked freely for two months, and they already knew about each other's cultivation base. Even though Zhu Jiuyou looked fierce and violent, he was not evil. Therefore, both Lu Huang and the old ascetic cultivator were willing to put aside their prejudices and make friends with him. In the end, the three laughed. The three men made a ten-year pact. Later, the middle-aged man who claimed to be Zhu Jiuyou, the god of Zhongshan, disappeared suddenly and freely. The old ascetic cultivator, covered in dark yellow rags, sighed, put his hands together, and said, I should leave Lu Heng, my good friend, see you later. Lu Heng smiled and said, Don't you follow me? I have a little imagination about the way of ascetic cultivators, which may be helpful to you. Lu Heng referred to the way of Buddhism and Taoism. But the old ascetic cultivator waved his hand repeatedly and said, No, my friend, your idea is too shocking. If I listen too much, I'm afraid my Tao heart will be confused goodbye. After saying that, the old ascetic cultivator directly went away and disappeared from Lu Heng's sight. Lu Heng smiled helplessly and was also amused. He just said it casually is the knowledge of Buddhism and Taoism really so terrible for that old ascetic cultivator? Ha <laughs> ha! Chapter 142 With the separation of the three people, the rock finally regained the calm of the past. Lu Heng, dressed in white, walked down from the rock with a smile and walked towards Huifeng. Xiao Ai, carrying the heavenly thunder sword, followed silently without saying a word. Huifeng smiled and congratulated Lu Heng. At the same time, he admired the wolf god very much. Although he had already known that the wolf god was unusual, the wolf god could frighten the legendary Zhu Jiuyou away for several miles, which was still a complete shock to Huifeng. It also gave him a good insight. Those who are qualified to listen to these three's talk at the same time are rare in the world. Although Huifeng didn't understand their talk at all, it is enough for him to boast for a lifetime. Of course, Gu Yan got the most benefits. The little Gu Eagle not only suppressed the disease in his body, but also had a bright future. But the small Gu Eagle with a simple head has no feeling for all this. Watching the little Gu Eagle flying up and down, harassing the bow horse on the roadside, even Lu Heng could not help shaking his head. This little guy is an optimist okay, we should continue on the road. Lu Heng said, Brother Hua, thanks for waiting here. Lu Heng left Fushan City in early autumn, but by now it is late autumn. In Dragon Falling Mountain, the withered leaves and all things were bleak, and the original trees were no longer green. Hua Feng said with a smile, I've been listening here for two months. Although I didn't understand anything, it was also a rare opportunity for ordinary people. I'm also happy. Hua Feng's words made Lu Heng laugh. They continued on the road. When the bow horse, lying on the roadside and not moving for more than a month, got up, a lot of dust fell from its body. Hua Feng was ready to stay for a long time this time, so he bought a lot of dry food. Even after eating for more than a month, there were still many left now, all on the back of the bow horse, which was enough for him to eat until they went outside the mountain. The dragon falling mountain covers a vast area. Even though there are iron chains bridges, which save a lot of time, it still takes time. And because the wizards of Fushan City blocked the road to prevent the traveling merchants from disturbing the three people, there were no other people in the Dragon Falling Mountains. Only they were still walking in the Dragon Falling Mountains. However, with the disappearance of the heavenly thundered clouds in the mountain, after sending people there and finding that the three people had left, the roads at both ends of the Dragon Falling Mountain opened again. Those caravans who had been waiting outside the mountain for nearly two months now gushed in, which made the desolate and empty dragon falling mountains lively. They met many caravans entering the mountain from the south in the second half of their journey. At this time, however, Lu Heng no longer has to hide from ordinary people. His sole avatar sat on the back of the white wolf, walked leisurely in the mountains, and carefully studied the cultivation method. Lu Heng was also greatly inspired by the talk before. Now, he was slowly digesting the gains of this discourse. Hua Feng could not cultivate as he walked, but he could supervise Gu Yan's cultivation. This the little Gu Eagle is so lucky. 
Hua Feng would feel uncomfortable if he watched him waste this opportunity. Xiao Ai followed the team and remained silent as always. But when walking, there was a faint spirit chi around the little girl. After checking and confirming, Hua Feng was shocked to find that Xiao Ai was walking and cultivating. After discovering this, Hua Feng's eyes almost popped out. Ordinary cultivators need to meditate and close their eyes when cultivating. But the little girl in front of him can walk and cultivate at the same time. He's never heard of such a thing. If he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, Hua Feng didn't believe that any human in the world could do such a thing. And after observing carefully for several days, Hua Feng found a very terrible thing, day and night, almost all the time, Xiao Ai was cultivating. Um is there no bottleneck in Xiao Ai's cultivation? Humane cultivators' cultivating speeds are indeed much faster than demon cultivators, and the bottleneck period will not be long. But no matter how gifted a genius is, is it possible to cultivate all the time? By constantly guiding spirit qi into cultivating, not only will the body feel tired, but the efficiency of cultivation will become lower and lower. They must stop to meditate and relax before continuing to the next stage of cultivation. However, Hua Feng didn't feel such an obstacle happening to Xiao Ai. After leaving the rock, they walked in the mountain for twenty days, but the little girl always cultivated silently. Day and night. She cultivated when walking, when sleeping, when eating, and when talking to others it seemed that cultivation had become no different than breathing for her. Such a constitution and such a mind can no longer be described as abnormal. It's a monster. Even if this constitution is given by the wolf god. But this kind of mind can't be interfered by foreign things. This time, Hua Feng was completely convinced. He no longer calls her Miss Xiao Ai, but Sister Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai was surprised and wanted to refuse. However, Hua Feng insisted on saying Sister Xiao Ai every time. After several times, Xiao Ai was too lazy to correct him. Hua Feng was very happy about this. Then he despised Gu Yan with this from time to time. Look at you, you waste. You get tired of cultivating after only an hour. Look at Sister Xiao Ai, I'm ashamed of you. The little Gu Eagle felt wronged. The little Gu Eagle did want to cultivate, but it was too painful for him and he only wanted to play. Now it is great progress for him to be able to cultivate one hour every day. Even compared with other demons, its performance was already very good. Most demons don't have such patience. It's a pity that such progress was far inferior to that of Xiao Ai, who could cultivate for nearly 24 hours per day. Chapter 143 In the Dragon Falling Mountains, the mountains are steep and full of cliffs. Therefore, most of the animals and birds in the mountains live on the cliffs. Among them, apes are the most common. When the night comes and the campfire is lit in the campsite, the cries of the apes can be heard in the dark mountains. At this time, the girl named Xiao Ai would silently look to the north and think about something. The night before leaving Dragon Falling Mountain, the road was no longer steep. According to Hua Feng, the road will be more and more gentle after crossing the steep mountain in front of them. It was here that an unexpected episode occurred. After camping out at night and lighting a bonfire, Hua Feng cooked a pot of pheasant soup with his iron pot. The fragrant smell of pheasant soup attracted an ape out of the mountain. The screech sounded, and the ape was lying on the crown of the tree not far away. It was curious and greedy watching Hua Feng and others eating, but it didn't dare to approach. At first, they didn't take it seriously. Even the little goo eagle was too lazy to pay attention to the ordinary ape and was busy pecking at the meal served by Hua Feng. The little goo eagle, who used to eat raw meat, also fell in love with cooked food and stopped eating raw meat. The pheasant in this pot was caught by Gu Yan in the mountains before sunset. In the end, Gu Yan and Hua Feng were full. Lu Heng didn't eat too much because he didn't really need to eat. At last, there was some pheasant left in the bottom of the pot, which was put into a bowl by Xiao Ai alone. Beside the campfire, the little girl held the small bowl filled with pheasant and threw it. The hot bull flew to the mountain forest not far away and hovered on the crown of the tree just in front of the ape. The ape screamed with excitement at this scene and ran away with the steaming bowl of pheasant. 
it quickly disappeared into the forest. Hua Feng was surprised to see this scene. Sister Xiao Ai, who always has a cold personality, unexpectedly invited the ape to eat. He can't understand. Lu Heng looked at the scene quietly, shook his head and said nothing. After Xiao Ai watched the ape leave, she didn't say much, sat aside with the heavenly thunder sword on her back, crossed her knees, closed her eyes, and continued to cultivate. It seems that what she had just done had no impact on her. But Lu Heng sighed and said, Xiao Ai. The little girl opened her eyes and looked at the wolf god, who was smiling at her. Walk with me, said Lu Heng and walked outside first. Xiao Ai was confused, but she quickly followed. As for Hu Feng and Gu Yan, they stayed to clean up the leftovers near the campfire and clean the pot. The cold moonlight shone in the mountains. Far away from the light of the campfire, Lu Heng and Xiao Ai stepped on the tiny moonlight and looked at the steep mountains scattered with faint silver light. There were many scattered trees on the opposite cliff. In the caves on the cliffs, there were birds and animals. The dragon falling mountains are dangerous, but there are still many living beings living here. When they came to the cliff, the moon was high in the ask, and cries of apes were echoing in the mountains. Their sorrowful cries sounded in the dark mountains with an inexplicable feeling of distant emptiness. Lu Heng looked back with a smile at the little girl behind him and said, Are you homesick? Under the moonlight, the little girl was stunned, but she shook her head and said seriously, No. This reply surprised Lu Heng. Because he could feel that Xiao Ai was telling the truth. However, it seemed that this little girl was missing Hanyu Mountain recently. The little girl looked at Lu Heng and said seriously, Where is the wolf god, there is Xiao Ai's home so Xiao Ai is not homesick, because the wolf god's side is Xiao Ai's home. Lu Heng was stunned by the words of the little girl. Later, he was amused. This little girl is young. What she said is very interesting. It seems that her mother who taught her knowledge in the past was also an interesting person. Otherwise, she wouldn't have such an interesting daughter. Lu Heng smiled and said, Even if you don't miss home, don't you worry about Sun Yen. That white ape is alone in the mountains, and I don't know if he can take care of himself. In the end, Lu Heng could not help sighing. He was a little speechless. When he and Xiao Ai left Hanyu Mountain, spring just started. Now, looking back, it was already late autumn. Everything withers and winter was coming. They had been outside the mountain for half a year. Sun Yen had also lived alone in the mountain for more than half a year. Lu Heng Sai made Xiao Ai silent for a while. Then the little girl said, Xiao Ai is only worried about whether the white ape is lazy in his cultivation and whether he can harvest the corn in the field. If the temple is not cleaned regularly, dust will accumulate with time. Xiao Ai said, and as the guard of the peach garden, if he doesn't pay attention and lets the birds and beasts in the mountain eat the peach fruits. At last, Xiao Ai's eyes became cold, and she seemed to be thinking about how to punish that lazy white ape. Lu Heng had to shake his head and said, You are too strict to him ha. Huh? Lu Heng said, He has a lively personality, but he has changed. Maybe the loneliness in the mountain can also encourage him alas. Lu Heng wanted to comfort Xiao Ai, but when he said that, he himself even started to doubt if Sun Yen could do well in the mountain. They looked at each other in silence. Finally, they both let out a long sigh. And shook their heads at the same time. A while later, Lu Heng smiled bitterly and said, If he was really too lazy and didn't do anything, you could punish him as much as you like. This time, I won't stop you. Lu Heng's words brightened the little girl's eyes. Xiao Ai immediately nodded and said, Understood. Although the expression on her face was still cold, the little girl was in a happy mood. Lu Heng smiled, but he sighed and silently prayed for the white ape in the mountain. At the same time, in Hanyu Mountain. The white ape sitting cross-legged in front of the wolf god temple suddenly shivered and woke up. G. G. Under the moonlight, the white ape looked at the surrounding darkness with some fear. He didn't know why. At that moment, he suddenly felt a sense of impending disaster. Chapter, 144
After leaving the Dragon Falling Mountains, Lu Hang saw the vast plain and another big city standing on the plain. From time to time, they could see groups of businessmen driving on the road into the mountain. Although it had been some time since the blockade of the road was lifted, the thoroughfare of this traffic was still busy. Their appearance on the road didn't look abrupt. According to Huafeng, after leaving the Dragon Falling Mountains and all the way south, there were all flat roads and no steep mountains. Although there are some hills and mountains along the way, they are far from the scale of the Dragon Falling Mountains. Huafeng looked back at the huge mountains behind him and sighed. I've heard in the past that the Dragon Falling Mountains is the place where an ancient dragon was buried. I thought that it was just a rumor, but now, I believe it. Lu Huang was a little interested in the idea of Huafeng. Oh. Brother Hu refers to the friend mentioned by Zhu Jiuyo? Lu Huang asked. When Zhu Jiuyo appeared earlier, he mentioned that he came to the Dragon Falling Mountains to commemorate his old acquaintance. Both Huafeng and Lu Huang had guesses. Huafeng nodded and said, the old acquaintance mentioned by Elder Zhu Jiuyo must be a person from ancient times. Even if it is not a real dragon, it is probably related to the Dragon Falling Mountains. The most important thing is that the Dragon Falling Mountains are indeed too abrupt to appear here. On the endless southern plain, the steep mountains look too strange and unnatural. Huafeng said with emotion, if the legend is true, how powerful can the flying dragon in the Dragon Falling Mountains be? Such a huge body is really shocking. Lu Heng smiled and said, Brother Hua, your Tao heart has been recast this time, and your future is bound to be promising. Maybe Brother Hua can also have such power someday so you don't need to envy it. Lu Heng's half-joking and half-serious words made Hua Feng laugh bitterly, shake his head and wave his hands repeatedly. Don't make fun of me, Elder Wolf God. The Yun sex cultivation method is easy to learn but difficult to master. The longer you cultivate, the more difficult you can go further. If my cultivation base can be as strong as a Wuzhu, I will be satisfied. Since Hua Feng said so, Lu Heng didn't continue to talk about it. But in Lu Heng's mind, he really thought that Hua Feng could have a bright future. However, Hua Feng's cultivation base can't be even comparable to Xiao AI's. But in terms of the future, this seemingly ordinary young man will become stronger than Xiao Ai and Gu Yan. His Tao heart is already different from ordinary people's. Vaguely, Lu Heng could sense a trace of cold sword qi in Hua Feng's heart. Hua Feng's reformed Tao heart seemed to imply a hint of the power of the heavenly thunder, but it is different from the real heavenly thunder. In addition, although Hua Feng said that he didn't understand a word Lu Heng, Jiu Mia, and Zhu Jiuyo said before. But in fact, the cold sword qi in his heart had become more concise after that. It was just that Hua Feng couldn't feel it at present. Only when he recovered his body's wounds in the future could he be aware of his own uniqueness. However, he may have been separated from Lu Heng at that time. So Lu Heng didn't say anything. Smiling and shaking his head, Lu Heng sat on the white wolf's back, closed his eyes, and continued to cultivate. Because it was too early, they didn't need to rest in the city. They passed the city outside the mountain and continued to venture south. After arriving at the southern plain, not only the land became low, but also the wild animals were much less. However, the decrease in wild animals doesn't mean that the wild is safe. On the southern plain with a well-developed water system, fierce water-type animals may emerge from every river, every stream, and even the seemingly ordinary shallow ditches along the road. Seeing all kinds of strange animals and fish in the water truly widened Lu Heng's eyesight. And the waterways on the plain were fragmented. Although there were many small rivers and streams, there were no vast and deep rivers like the Pangjiang River, nor a river god like Guzhou. Because there was no water god, wild animals and strange fish were attacking living creatures with impunity. Even a cultivator like Xiao Ai, who had a good cultivation base, would be attacked if she was not careful. It was the sixth day after they left the Dragon Falling Mountains. When they camped at night, Xiao Ai saw a translucent luminous fish in the stream not far away, and she was curious to take a look. However, when the little girl walked to the stream and lowered her head, the shiny fish, which was originally only about the size of a palm, suddenly opened its mouth. 
Its mouth expanded to a diameter of one meter and swallowed Xiao Ai whole. After Xiao Ai was swallowed into the fish's belly, the palm-sized swimming fish returned to normal size. When Lu Hang and the others ran to check, they saw a little girl, whose body had shrunken many times over, in the translucent fish's belly. Facing the strange fish that swallowed her, the little girl didn't say anything, but directly raised her right hand, and the sharp fingertips popped out. Finally, Xiao Ai came out from the fish belly, half wet, looking slightly embarrassed, but her body size quickly returned to normal. Lu Heng kept laughing at that scene. Hua Feng wanted to laugh too, but he didn't dare to smile when he was stared at by the little girl's cold eyes. Since then, the water monsters on their way suffered a lot. Once these water monsters came any closer to Lu Heng, the little girl would brazenly kill them instead of driving them away. She killed many fierce beasts along the way. One of them was a strong monster who was wanted in Nanhai City for killing many business travelers. Hua Feng couldn't help scratching his neck. Fortunately, he didn't laugh out that day, otherwise. Finally, in such a tumultuous and noisy way, Lu Heng's small team finally crossed the long southern plain and arrived at the southernmost city of the Fire Pass country before the heavy snow fell. Nanhai City this is the busiest port going south to the sea, and also an important place for the Fire Pass country to open markets and trade with other countries in the South Sea. When Lu Heng's small team entered Nanhai City, they saw a completely different scene from in the north. People of different races walk in the market. Xiao Ai, a little girl with silver hair and beastly ears, doesn't seem to be out of place among them. Because in this hustling and bustling Nanhai City, there are many strange people who look far stranger than Xiao Ai. A man with fish fins. A beautiful woman with a weak and pale fish body. A feathered man with wings on his back. A man who is black and ape-like but can breathe fire. A man with wings on his back and a beak on his face. A man with three heads. Lu Heng was amazed by all kinds of strange people in Nanhai City. There are so many different kinds of people who can only be seen in some fantasy movies in his previous life. In this Nanhai city, there are strange people everywhere. In this place, Lu Hang has a real sense that he is in another world. Although there were many strange animals seen in the north before, the cities of human beings looked very ordinary. Now in Nanhai city, Lu Hang realized that there were so many different people in the world. He could not help but sigh. If Sun Yen came to Nanhai City, when he saw these strange people, he would go crazy with excitement. However, the white ape was still cultivating on Hanyi Mountain. It may be a long time before he has enough strength to go down the mountain. After all, Sun Yen, who is too lazy to cultivate and only wants to play every day, looks really ordinary in Lu Heng's eyes. Chapter 145 after entering Nanhai City, Lu Hang and Xiao Ai went to the post office in front of the Fire God Temple to register. Before leaving Fushan City, the wizard presented a pass token to allow Lu Hang to pass freely in the Fire Pass country. Hua Feng carried the head of the water beast killed by Xiao Ai and went to the Fire God Temple to collect the reward. After Lu Hang took out the pass token given by the wizard of Fushan City, he was led to a secluded courtyard. As for Wu Zhu in Nanhai City, Lu Heng didn't plan to pay a visit. After Hua Feng received the reward, he would go to the port to find a ship going to sea as soon as possible, and go to the South Mermaid Kingdom. Now that the beginning of winter has passed, the rare treasure conference of Mermaid Kingdom is about to be held. Lu Heng didn't want to delay any longer. As for the hustling and bustling of Nanhai City, he could enjoy it when they returned. After carrying the head of the beast into the fire god temple, Hua Feng soon got the reward. But when Hua Feng came back, he brought a bad news. Lord Wolf. As soon as he stepped into the yard arranged by the post house, Hua Feng said excitedly, I have contacted the ship to go to sea, and it will go to sea tomorrow morning. Just. Just. Lu Heng, who was teaching Xiao Ai water control method, looked up in surprise and asked, Just what? Hua Feng sighed and said, Recently, there has been trouble in the South Sea, and the sailors are unwilling to go to sea. Therefore, I can only find an empty ship half rented and half bought, and I will take charge of the steering. Lu Hang was a little surprised by Hua Feng's story, 
you can even drive a ship. Huofeng smiled, scratched his head and said, a little a little. Lu Heng shook his head and was too lazy to say more. He asked, what is the so-called unrest? Aren't there a lot of ships and caravans going to sea in Nanhai City? Why does no one dare to go to sea now? Huofeng explained, it's not that no one dares to go to sea. The big caravans and ships are basically unaffected, and their itinerary is still the same. It's just that those small businessmen are not willing to go to sea without the protection of cultivators, so they can't hire people. Huofeng said, as for the reason why small businessmen didn't want to go to sea, was related to the rumored Urba God Man in the South Sea. Oh. Urba God Man. Lu Heng was a little interested, Urba God Man what is it? Why can it frighten these businessmen? Huofeng had long been used to Lu Heng's ignorance. Now, Huofeng was relieved to see that Lu Heng didn't know the legendary Urba God Man. Since the wolf god didn't know it, it must not have been a powerful existence in ancient times. He smiled and said, it's a rumor outside the South Sea. I don't know when it started. It said that there is a supernatural being in the South Sea, named Urba God Man. His cultivation base is very high and his supernatural power is so powerful that no one dares to provoke him in the South Sea. But there are different versions of his specific image. It is said that the Urba God Man is a sea demon with sixteen arms and sixteen pairs of eyes. It is also said that the Urba God Man is actually sixteen brothers and sisters, each of whom masters a strong ability. Huofeng said several different rumors one at a time, but all of them have one thing in common. That is, the Urba God Man is super strong, and wherever he goes, there will be ghosts and evil things causing chaos. He doesn't know whether it is the appearance of the Urba God Man that will cause chaos or the appearance of evil things that will attract the Urba God Man. Many fishermen in Nanhai City don't want to go too far out to sea, because of the legend of the Urba God Man, and water demons are indeed rampant overseas at this time. Such chaos may not be serious for those big caravans escorted by cultivators. But for those ordinary people, any evil thing can bring ultimate disaster to them, so they don't want to go to sea. Lu Heng also understood the situation after hearing Hua Feng's explanation. So on the South Sea today, there are evil demons and water demons rampant? Lu Heng asked. Hua Feng nodded, and then smiled, but those water demons are not too strong, so don't worry too much. As long as we don't bump into the legendary Urba God Man, this trip is not dangerous. Of course, even if we encounter the legendary Urba God Man, he would have run away after seeing the wolf god. Huofeng said with a smile. In the heart of Huofeng today, the wolf god is one of the strongest existences in the world. Even the legendary Zhu Jioyo was scared away for several miles by the wolf god's sword. Who else can do it in this world? If someone told Huofeng at this time that the wolf god was invincible even in ancient times, he would not be surprised, but would repeatedly nod his head. Lu Heng felt amused, shook his head, and said, Brother Hua, you are really confident in me ha. Huh? Anyway, although there are many rumors about the Urba God Man, the rumors don't say that he likes killing. Although it seems strange, he may not be a real evil thing. We don't need to worry too much even if we bump into him. There is nothing in this world that can't be solved by communication, Lu Heng said with a smile. Hua Feng also nodded in agreement. Yes, there is nothing unreasonable in this world. Everything can be solved by communication. Who dares to be unreasonable in front of the wolf god? If the so-called Urba god man encounters the wolf god and it's really an evil demon, then the wolf god will definitely kill it. In this way, with strong confidence, Huofeng slept in the post house all night, and then set out the next morning, taking Lu Heng and Xiao Ai to the port. The bow horse who didn't want to take the ship fought hard and wanted to stay on the shore until Huofeng came back, but it was still dragged away by Huofeng. There was a lot of luggage that needed to be carried by it. After they arrive at the Mermaid Kingdom, they need to walk ashore. Without the bow horse, Huofeng would have to carry the luggage himself. How could he let this coolie go? Chapter 146 On the South Sea the surging waves beat the bottom of the boat from time to time, making the small boat sway from side to side. On the deck at the bow, where Lu Heng used to rest, a bow horse was resting there. 
The bow horse was now lying on the edge of the deck, with its soft and long tongue sticking out, as if it were dead. With the swaying of the boat, the bow horse twitched from time to time. Then in a painful retching sound, it vomited viscous acid water into the sea, but it had no strength to complain. Just along the sea breeze, from time to time, there came a strange sound of deep weakness. The strange low voice is dark and evil which makes people feel gloomy. Lu Heng was curious and asked, what is the bow horse talking about? Huo Feng, who was checking the state of the ship, looked up and said, oh, nothing. He is scolding me. Huo Feng said, don't pay attention to it. He will probably have no strength to scold me after vomiting a while longer. Looking at the unconcerned appearance of Huo Feng, Lu Heng didn't know how to evaluate the relationship between the two. It can only be said that if the bow horse could speak, the boat would be very busy at this time. Smiling and shaking his head, Lu Heng walked to the second deck and ignored them. It has been a day since they left Nanhai City. Drifting on the sea was more boring than Lu Heng had imagined. Although it was the first time that Lu Heng saw the real sea, he was not as excited as he imagined when he saw the blue sea and sky under the sun. Although the vast ocean is deep and beautiful, it becomes boring after a long look. Although the journey was boring, Lu Heng didn't start to cultivate. Now he was lying on the edge of the second floor deck, lazily basking in the sun, watching this tiny boat move forward in the vast sea. On the vast ocean, even under the calm and hot sun, the ups and downs of the sea waves are far from comparable to those on rivers. When a small ship is traveling, it always makes people feel that it will be overturned when encountering even a little strong wind and waves. However, with two cultivators Lu Heng and Xiao Ai here, they don't have to worry about capsizing. Lu Heng was lying on the deck, bored and daydreaming. He had long been out of his mind and never tried to cultivate his skills. His breakthrough got stuck and enlightenment was at impasse for several days. So Lu Heng just didn't want to cultivate. Anyway, as a demon cultivator, his life longevity is very long, and it doesn't matter if he rests for ten days or even a month. In such a leisurely trance, Lu Heng's boat gradually left the sea area of Nanhai City. In the afternoon, a lonely island appeared in the sea ahead. The island was not big, but there was a huge stone statue standing on it. Lu Heng roughly estimated that the stone statue was nearly 50 meters high. Such a huge stone statue stood silently on the island. Like a silent god, standing silently on the blue waves of the South Sea, looking down on the ships. Huo Feng explained, that is Fenjiezu Island. The stone statue on it is from ancient times. Before the establishment of the Fire Pass country, the stone statue stood on the island. I don't know what kind of statue it is. Even after thousands of years, it is still lifelike. To the south, this island is no longer the territory of the Fire Pass country, but the real South Sea. It is said that Fenjiezu Island has a demon restraining order left by the ancestors of the Fire Pass country, which can deter evil demons. Therefore, many evil water demons on the South Sea never dare to cross the Fijiezu Island. And many fishermen in the South Sea, even if they went out to fish, would not be too far away from this island. Huo Feng explained carefully, but Lu Heng didn't answer him this time. In the hot afternoon sun, Lu Heng, who appeared as a wolf, stood on the deck and looked at the huge stone statue on the island in the distance with amazement. He was so shocked that even Hua Feng could clearly feel it. Lord Wolf. Hua Feng gave a slightly confused call, but he still didn't get a response. The huge white wolf stared at the huge stone statue on the remote island and his eyes opened, trying to find something special. However, under his magic eyes, the stone statue on the isolated island was silent and ordinary. But the surface of the statue was full of traces left by wind, sun, and rain. As it was ancient and has gone through many years. Lu Heng's eyes remained silent for a long time. The huge stone statue on the island is that of a woman with a human body and a snake tail. The sculptor who created this stone statue has excellent craftsmanship. Even if it is just an ordinary stone sculpture, it still has a stunning beauty that can't be ignored. It seems that there is a woman with snake tail standing quietly on the blue wave, looking down at the sea coldly. Above the deck, 
Lu Heng's head tilted slightly and looked at the stone statue in the distance quietly. At that moment, he seemed to have crossed thousands of years and looked at someone in ancient times. Niuwa translator, Niuwa is a goddess who created humans in Chinese mythology. Since this is another world, there should be no story about her. So Lu Heng was surprised. This name appears in Lu Heng's mind. However, in the legendary stories that Lu Heng knew, there was no such story of Niuwa in this world. In the world, there is no god related to her. The world looks more like the primordial world recorded in the Book of Mountains and Seas. But the huge stone statue on the sea. Lu Heng looked at the huge stone statue on the island and said nothing. The small boat silently approached the island. The closer you get, the more you can feel the huge stone statue on the island. The sea boat is not small, but when it passes under the right arm of the statue, it was as small as a child's toy. Hua Feng walked up carefully and asked, Lord Wolf, do we need to stop temporarily? This time, Lu Heng finally responded to him. On the deck, the huge white wolf shook his head and said, No, it's just an ordinary stone statue. I can't see anything. His eyes had already searched everything around the stone statue. However, nothing was found. It is really just a simple stone statue. Perhaps in ancient times, there was an emotional story behind this stone statue. But now, she is just a stone statue that can't even leave a legend. The fishermen on the South Sea didn't know her story or even her name. Even Lu Heng is not sure that this snake-tailed woman is really the legendary god. Perhaps it's just a snake demon from ancient times. Chapter 147 Lu Heng's emotions were really complicated. He watched as the small island was gradually left behind, and finally disappeared in the blue waves. The huge stone statue on the island also went away silently. However, Lu Heng on the deck always looked at the direction behind him from time to time. Hua Feng and Xiao Ai looked at this scene, looked at each other, and guessed in their hearts. Is the stone statue on Fenjiezu Island the old acquaintance of Lord Wolf? Hua Feng hesitated again and again, but finally didn't dare to ask. Although the ancient secret is attractive, it's really rude to speculate and inquire. He could only press down his curiosity and dared not speak. On the other hand, the little girl with silver hair and animal ears stopped talking, but she was in no mood to cultivate. The little girl who could cultivate all the time, whether walking for dinner or sleeping for rest, was still unable to enter the state of cultivation. Finally, in the little girl's restless tangle, the sun set from the sky, and the stars gradually replaced it. At dinner that night, Lu Heng finally noticed the little girl's anxious state and asked curiously, Xiao Ai, what's wrong with you? Why do you look uncomfortable? The little girl who was silent and seemed to have no appetite for the fish soup was stunned for a moment. She quickly put down the bowl, shook her head and said, No, no, Xiao Ai is very good and not uncomfortable. Lu Heng sighed and said, Little girl, you can't even lie tell me, what's the matter? Do you still need to hide it in front of me? Is it difficult to cultivate? Lu Heng inquired with concern. The little girl hesitated when she saw the wolf god's concerned eyes, and finally said carefully. Lord Wolf, Xiao Ai didn't encounter any problems, just just. The little girl hesitated and said carefully, Xiao Ai is a little curious. Is the stone statue on Fenjiezu Island a friend of Lord Wolf? After stuttering, the little girl immediately lowered her head and prepared to accept the admonition of the wolf god. After all, her current behavior is too inconsequential. It's all about prying into the privacy of the wolf god. It is also right to be admonished and punished. Xiao Ai looked nervous, while Lu Heng was slightly stunned. He looked at the little girl in front of him, and then looked at Hua Feng, who was drinking soup with his head down, like he hadn't heard anything, and suddenly realized something. Do you think I stared at the stone statue because I knew the woman? He shook his head and explained, You have thought too much. How could I possibly know the woman with the snake tail? The reason why I care is just to think of some rumors well some rumors that don't exist in the world. Lu Heng smiled and said this, he didn't hide it anyway, they are just some unimportant legends. Just listen to them as stories. 
Lu Hang smiled and said, I once heard of some strange legends, but when I walked around the world, I found that they were really just fictitious stories. No one except me had ever heard of them. One of the legends had something in common with the stone statue on Fenjiezu Island, so I was surprised to see it. With these words, Lu Heng roughly told the story of how Niwa created humans to them. Lu Heng's narration was very concise, without too much words and expressions. It is straightforward and not exciting at all. But after this simple story was told, Hua Feng and Xiao Ai still opened their eyes wide. Hua Feng even pinched himself with his hands, as if to see if his flesh and blood were made of clay. Seeing this, Lu Heng was really helpless. As I said, it's just a fictitious legend. Have you heard of anyone saying it except me? And I can tell you very clearly that flesh and blood can never be squeezed out of clay. Lu Heng said, so this legend is really false. Even Wuzus of the Fire Pass country has never heard of it. The stone statue on Fenjiezu Island has been standing here for many years. Maybe it is just a status of a snake demon from ancient times. Since there are many monsters with human bodies and snake tails, it may not be the great god who created humans. The narration of Lu Heng made Hua Feng nod doubtfully. After thinking for a while, Hua Feng asked again, The Lord Wolf God, does the great god you said have a name? Hua Feng's query stunned Lu Heng, Hey! Didn't I say? Lu Heng thought for a while, and then found that he had never mentioned the word Niwa. When telling the story, the word the great god was used instead. Now that Hua Feng asked, Lu Heng could only smile and say, This is my fault ha. Huh? He shook his head and said, It is said that the great god who made people out of mud is called Niwa. Boom! With a loud noise incandescent lightning tore through the night sky. The deafening thunder deafened Lu Heng's words. He looked out in surprise, and he found that on the originally calm sea, there was strong wind and huge waves. The originally starry night sky was now covered with clouds. The terrible thunder and lightning from time to time flashed across the sky, bringing deafening explosions. The sea tide, with the sudden attack of the wind and rain, became turbulent, making the boat fluctuate violently, as if it could capsize at any time. Lu Heng's eyebrows were wrinkled by such a strange celestial phenomenon. This rainstorm is so strange is there really a great god Niwa in the world? Lu Heng stood up. However, Hua Feng was so frightened that his face turned white as he huddled in the corner. It is not that he is timid, but that the current situation is really frightening. Just after hearing the legend of the ancient secret, the weather on the sea changed. He couldn't help thinking about such a strange situation. Hua Feng looked frightened, while Lu Heng frowned slightly. He stood on the deck and frowned for a few seconds in the face of the sudden falling storm, then his mind moved. A terrible thunder crashed, and the sky flashed white, thunder rushed up from the surging sea, piercing the night sky and directly hitting the dark clouds in the night sky. In the night sky, thousands of thunder snakes danced wildly. After the thunder exploded in the clouds, it directly scattered the dark clouds. The fierce heavenly thunders was surging between the sea and the sky. The strong wind gradually stopped. The starry sky appeared again above their heads. The surging waves vanished from sight with the end of the rainstorm and winds, gradually restoring the previous calm, and no longer beating the ship fiercely. Lu Heng, dressed in white, stood in the sky over the now tranquil sea, looked into the distance and gave a tentative call. Goddess Nuwa. Lu Heng's voice wasn't too loud nor low and it wasn't disrespectful. This time, there was no abrupt thunder to interrupt him. In the clear night sky, there was neither overcast clouds nor thunder and lightning. The sea surface under the moonlight was sparkling, which had a kind of cool beauty, and had not become violent because of Lu Heng's call. Everything maintained peace. Under the moonlight, Lu Heng gave three consecutive tentative calls. Goddess Nuwa. Under the cool moonlight, Lu Heng's call was scattered in the sea breeze. After three calls, there was still no change in the vision, and the sea and sky was still calm. Seeing this, Lu Heng was relieved and turned around with a smile. It seems it was just a coincidence. Lu Heng smiled and said to Hua Feng, Brother Hua, don't be afraid. And think carefully, if there is such a human ancestor as Niwa in the world, 
it is impossible that wuzus of the fire pass country don't know it. And I have studied the human body structure for a long time. I can be sure that people in this world are normal creatures evolved step by step, not created by anyone out of thin air. So Brother Hua should listen to this legend as a story. Don't worry about it. Under the moonlight, the wolf god who suppressed the storm and billows smiled and said so. What else can Huafong say about this? He could only nod in agreement. Yes, yes, the wolf god, you are right. Chapter 148 The night sky on the sea was full of stars. The small ship was between the sea and the sky, moving forward silently. In the cabin, Huafong was holding his pillow and snoring loudly. In the midst of the undulating snoring, the little goo eagle hanging on the wall was half asleep, and his head rotated from time to time with the snoring of Huafong. On the deck, a huge white wolf was lying lazily in the bow, silently watching the bright moon and stars on the sea, thinking something. At the stern of the boat, the little girl with silver hair and beastly ears held the plank of the boat with one hand and drove the boat forward with her spirit chi. Although Xiao Ai doesn't know how to drive a sea boat, she doesn't need to learn. She just used her spirit chi to drive the boat. Driven by spirit chi, this small boat not only got a lot faster, but also had less turbulence. After vomiting for two days and nights, the bow horse could finally breathe a sigh of relief, and now it was sleeping in the cabin. Between the sea and the sky, there was silence. In the night without violent wind and waves, the sea was even quieter than Hanyu Mountain. Under the cold moonlight, Lu Han quietly looked at the stars in the sky and the huge moon in the night sky. Before, Lu Hang inadvertently called out the name of Nuwa, but by coincidence, it caused a storm, which made Lu Hang's mind confused. Even though he comforted Huafong that it was just a coincidence, Lu Hang was not sure whether it was a coincidence. The storm was too sudden and strange. And even now, Lu Hang still felt uneasy even though his vision was calm. It seemed that something terrible was happening somewhere on this sea right now. A cultivator's whim often has omens. So what does his current restlessness indicate? Nuwa, is the name taboo in this world? Is that why nobody knows? However, Lu Heng mentioned the name Nuwa when he talked with Gong Shu Jia about the world's affairs in Hanyu Mountain, but nothing happened at that time. Is this name, just at sea can't be mentioned? If you mention it on land, it is fine. Lu Heng thought about it, but he couldn't think of any result. After Huafong went to bed, he was alone on the deck and called Nuwa several times, but it was always calm. Lu Heng would almost think that he was just worrying about nothing if he didn't have the slightest unease in his heart all the time. In such a silent silence, the boat was moving forward quietly. But Lu Heng, with complex thoughts, felt something then, frowned back and looked behind him. Before long, Xiao Ai at the stern also noticed. They looked in the direction behind them. In the dark night of the sea and sky, a light appeared. Later, the light became bigger and brighter, showing the shape of a huge ship. Compared with Lu Heng's shabby boat, that huge building boat was luxurious. From a distance, it looked like a moving palace. On the boat, the lights was bright and the figures was waving, just like a party. The sound of music, mixed with laughter, reached here from afar and soon woke up Huafong, who was asleep in the cabin. When Huafong ran out of the cabin with the little goo eagle, the huge building boat had come near the boat. The distance between the two sides was less than ten meters. Standing at the bow of the boat, Huafong could clearly see the singing, dancing, and laughing on the huge ship, and hear the laughing sounds floating along the sea breeze. Huafeng's face showed a surprised expression. Blissful Palace. Huafeng recognized the origin of this huge ship. Lu Heng was a little surprised, what is the Blissful Palace? Xiao Ai also came to Lu Heng at this time, in case of any misconduct on the approaching boat. Huafeng looked up at the approach of the huge ship and the figures of those who were having fun and explained. The Blissful Palace is a happy place on the South Sea. There are seven ships in total, and each one has a temple master. All the women on the ship cultivate the blissful heaven demon dharma. This kind of cultivation method needs to be indulged in joy and realized in laughter. 
Each ship goes to sea once every six months, and every time it goes to sea for 77 and 49 days. The women on the boat and the passengers on board enjoy themselves very much during the 77 and 49 days, singing and dancing and laughing. They stop when they reach the shore. Therefore, this blissful ship is also known as the place of the blissful world. If you are lucky enough to be invited to board the blissful ship once, you will have no regrets in your life. Huofeng said that when Xiao Ai's eyes turned cold and the wolf god showed a funny expression, he immediately realized that they thought of something pornographic. He quickly explained, the joy on the blissful ship is not the kind of body pleasure. The women in the blissful palace are not prostitutes. Although I have never been on a ship, it is said that women in the blissful palace should not be violated or humiliated, otherwise they will be thrown off the ship. The pleasure on the ship is the secret technique of the blissful palace, which enables people to experience many joys in the world firsthand. It is said that all the joys in the world can be given by the blissful ship. Huofeng smiled and said, it's a pity that those who can be invited to board are often famous celebrities, scholars, and cultivators. Ordinary people like me have only heard of them in rumors. Even this is the first time that I have seen it with my own eyes. With that, Huofeng looked at the big ship in the distance again. At this time, the ship had come five miles away. The distance between the two sides was so close that they could even see the figures of the women on the ship. In the bright lights, Lu Hang could vaguely feel a little unusual breath floating. He even felt better when he smelled the scent. Lu Hang nodded and said, This blissful palace is indeed special. Just a wisp of fragrance floating along the sea breeze can make people feel better. He wondered what joy it would be if he was on that ship. Huofeng smiled and said, The wolf god, if you show your identity, you will be invited to go aboard. Lu Hang smiled, shook his head and said, No, this kind of happy place is not suitable for me. Besides, I am an unknown, so I am not qualified to go aboard. Lu Hang refused with a smile, but when his voice fell, put on. A splash of water suddenly started up on the sea in the distance. It seemed that someone fell off the ship. Lu Hang was a little surprised, oh. Did some passengers offend the blissful palace and get thrown down? In the moonlight, two people, a wolf and a goo eagle looked up at the huge deck of the ship. However, the deck was full of laughter, and no one made any noise or paid attention to the drowning man. Huofeng frowned and said, it doesn't look like he was thrown down he jumped off the ship himself. Huofeng looked surprised, and he didn't believe this conjecture. Xiao Ai sneered and said, isn't the ship the most blissful place in the world? If you can board it, you will have no regrets in your life. Why do some people take the initiative to jump out of the ship? Huofeng coughed and suddenly realized that he had done something stupid just now, even if this ship is not a brothel, he shouldn't introduce it in front of Sister Xiao Ai. Huofeng, who realized that something was wrong, shut up and didn't dare to speak any more. Lu Hang looked at the rippling sea. Under his eyes, he saw a figure swimming in the sea and towards him. Oh. Is it for us? Lu Hang was curious. In the surging sea water, it could be vaguely seen that the person who fell into the water was a woman in white. After the woman in white fell into the water, the huge ship soon went away. On the ship, the happy people didn't notice the shabby little boat nearby. After the huge building ship drove away, a figure swam in the sea and finally caught up with Lu Heng's boat. Under the cool moonlight, the head of the woman in white emerged from the sea and smiled at Huofeng on the deck. The younger brother of the Yun sect, can you give me a ride? It was clearly a dark night, but the moment the woman smiled, it seemed that the whole world was bright. However, in the face of such a beautiful woman, Huofeng was unmoved, but coughed and said. Sorry, this small boat is full. You need to wait for the next ship. Chapter 149 Hua Feng's categorical refusal surprised Xiao Ai. Because the woman in white that was in the sea was really charming. Even she as a girl, has to admit the beauty of the woman in white. But in the face of such a beautiful woman's plea, Hua Feng was not moved. At this moment, not only Xiao Ai was shocked, but even the woman in white in the sea was also surprised. Because she could clearly see that the Yun Sek disciple on the deck had a clear smile and clear eyes. 
It seemed that what he saw was really just an ordinary drowning woman. But the woman in white knew how crazy a man would be when facing her. The woman in white could clearly feel that the Yun sect disciple was not a rigid person with a single-minded mind, but a normal man with emotions and desires. Can such a normal man be unmoved when facing her? The smiling eyes, though full of appreciation, vaguely convey a message, is that it? It seemed that although her appearance is beautiful, she could not shake his heart. This was the first time the woman in white met this situation, which made her feel quite interested. She put her hands on the water's surface, dragged her chin pitifully, and said plaintively, but the sea is very dangerous. Where can I wait for the next ship I have run out of strength to swim here? If you don't take me in, I'm afraid I will be buried in the sea to feed fish. The woman in white begged for help. She was so delicate and weak. If someone who knew her well saw her, he would be shocked. On the deck, Huafeng could not help pondering, saying, it's really dangerous. After thinking about it, Huafeng turned and walked into the cabin, then carried out a wooden beam half a zhang long, smiling. Don't say I won't save your life. The wooden beam can float on the water, and I give it to you. You can float in the sea with your hands on it, so you don't have to worry about losing strength and sinking into the sea. Huafeng smiled, while the woman in the sea looked shocked at him. At this moment, she could not tell whether the man in front of her was joking or serious. Lu Hang on the other side was amused, so he couldn't help shaking his head. Well, Brother Hua, don't joke with this girl girl, why did you take the initiative to jump into the sea? Lu Hang asked, isn't the boat in the blissful palace a paradise on earth? Why did you take the initiative to escape? Lu Hang was curious about this. Only after Lu Heng opened his mouth that the woman in the sea was surprised to find that there was such a huge wolf on the deck. Under the moonlight, the white wolf looked ordinary. However, under her magic eyes, it was dazzling and surrounded by fierce thunder. Such a terrible scene made the woman in white feel a little pressure. But her face still showed a smile, and she said, There are still other masters on the boat master, would you like to save me, a poor weak girl? Lu Heng replied, if you are willing to explain the karma and show your intention, then we will naturally welcome you. In the sea, the woman in white hesitated for a while, finally sighed, and said sadly, since the elder asked, I have to tell you the truth alas it has been two years ago my name is Lien Tsai, and I originally lived in Yoshion country. Stop, needless to say, the white wolf on the deck shook his head. Please come aboard, girl. The woman in white looked surprised, alas. I haven't started. The white wolf turned and disappeared at the edge of the deck, saying, it's hard to make up stories, so I won't bother you. Such words stunned the woman in white, while Huafeng laughed aloud. Well, since the wolf god has said so, you can get on the boat, said Huafeng. After Huafeng finished speaking, the woman in the sea was stunned for a moment, then showed a charming smile and said pitifully. But I really have no strength I can only ask you to help me. She looked expectant and stretched out her hands, as if she was really waiting for Huafeng to come and pull her. Xiao Ai was a little surprised by this reaction. Because she saw that the woman's attitude towards the wolf god was completely different from when she faced Huafeng. When facing the wolf god, the woman's reaction was slightly serious and cold. However, when facing Huafeng, she looked charming, as if she had changed into another person. Such discrimination. Xiao Ai looked at the woman in white in the sea, and then looked at Huafeng beside her, and suddenly understood something. Then she turned and walked away. Huafeng looked at the woman in white in the sea helplessly and said, Can you speak like an ordinary person and stop using that tongue? The woman in white looked aggrieved, What tongue? Do you really hate me so much, and don't even want to touch my hand? The woman in white lamented, but her delicate white hands opened on the water, waiting for Huafeng to hug her. Huafeng shook his head and wanted to say something. But at this time, a thundering sound suddenly came out from the distance. Then, dazzling lightning flashed across the distant sky. Huafeng on the boat and the woman in white in the sea turned their heads in surprise and looked in that direction. Between the sea and the sky, the Paradise Palace's ship had gone far away and had turned into a light spot in the painted black sea, and was sailing into the dark abyss of the sea and the sky. However, in that direction, 
there were dark clouds surging. In the dark clouds, lightning, thunder, strong wind and huge waves, a storm was coming. But the strange thing was the dark clouds that were moving fast in their vision. And it was spreading towards here. The ship of the Paradise Palace, which had been sailing far away, was caught in a fierce wind and rain and was covered with dark clouds. Between the billowing waves, the huge ship with bright lights shook violently in the huge waves. On that ship, countless passengers screamed in horror. And a deep cry from the depths of darkness. Nuwa. On the boat, Lu Heng suddenly got up. He looked serious and suddenly looked in that direction. In the cloudy and violent wind and rain, it seemed that the huge ship with bright lights hit something head-on, and the ship suddenly stagnated. Later, it cracked. A huge black lightning directly divided the palace-like bright ship into two halves. Wherever the black lightning went, the light disappeared and the evil demon Chi was furious. In an instant, the bright palace-like ship on the sea turned into a dark and gloomy place of death. All the lights on the ship went out, and all people on the ship didn't do anything or make any sound, as if they had disappeared. Until the ship capsized completely, no one rebelled against the evil demon Chi in the storm. Even the owner of the ship didn't give any response. Such a large ship sank into the waves silently with the lives of all the passengers. The dark clouds had already covered the sky and the sun, completely covering the small boat where Lu Hang, Hua Fong, and Xiao Ai were, and covering the starlight in the night sky. In the dark and violent wind and rain, there was a terrible shadow stepping on the waves between the wreckage of the sunken building. The black armor was far different from the style of this era. The cape flapping in the sea wind was full of holes and knife marks. Anyone who looked at it would wonder how many years it had gone through. The horse the man rode was not a living thing, but a strange and dangerous thing with blood-red eyes. With the fierce wind and rain, the terrible dark night appeared in Lu Heng's vision as if he were an immortal soul crawling out of the dark abyss of death. On the mottled face under the helmet, cracks appeared, just like clay sculpture. In the shrill and angry cry, the weird black knight, carrying the fierce wind and rain, rushed straight to the boat where Lu Heng was. Evil was raging. Chapter 150 Lord Wolf Above the deck, the little girl with silver hair and beastly ears looked worried and stopped Lu Heng unconsciously. The fierce wind and rain kept slapping the little girl, and she was already wet all over. But she looked anxiously at Lu Heng and waited for his order. Dark clouds cover the night sky and all the sky and stars. Only the dazzling light of the lightning was shining. However, when the incandescent lightning illuminated the world, it didn't give people a sense of security, but made people feel cold. The woman in white in the sea had already jumped on the deck, and now she and Hua Fong hid behind Lu Hang. Both looked frightened. The black knight who stepped on the waves looked fierce and terrible. The evil demon Chi almost shook the sky. Everyone knew that he must be terribly strong. The most terrible thing was the moment when the ship full of cultivators collided with the black knight, it was destroyed by a single blow and no one got out. You know, the old ascetic cultivators on the ship are all famous young talents. The temple master is a wuzhu level master. But so many people are as fragile as paper in front of the dark knight. Lu Heng's expression was slightly dignified. At the moment when the dark night rushed, he gathered dark thunder clouds in the night sky. At the same time, he was ready to let heavenly thunder sword come out of its sheath at any time. In the fierce wind and rain, the night sky above the boat was filled with clouds and lightning. A huge heavenly thunder clouds emerged from nowhere. The fierce power of thunder was surging on the sea, which made the sea full of evil demons even more terrible. White thunder and lightning cut the sky. It also lit up the fierce knight who stepped on the waves, and let people clearly see the mottled face under his helmet, which was actually a clay sculpture. Even the fierce horse it crouched on was a clay sculpture, not flesh and blood. Under the shadow of the heavenly thunder clouds, the dark armor knight rushed in. The evil demon immediately connected the heavenly thunder clouds in the night sky. In an instant, white thunder flashed between the sea and the sky. In the deafening sound of violence, the white sky thunder hit the black knight fiercely. The fierce evil demon chi around the black armor knight was instantly shocked and scattered everywhere. 
The momentum of the horse in the huge waves suddenly stopped, and made a shrill cry. The white thunder exploded in the dark and twinkled around the knight and horse, which could not hurt them at all. In the night sky, there was another terrible thunder explosion. The second thunder came in a violent way and hit the knight on the huge wave again, completely blocking his attack. In the shrill neigh of the horse, the third sky thunder fell again. In the dark, the dark knight waved his halberd and met the third thunder in the sky. The violent wind and rain beat against its body crazily. The incandescent thunder lit up the sea and sky and reflected the black armor knight like the legendary warrior who fought against the sky. The shrill and furious roaring voice came from the mouth of the black knight and shook everywhere. Nuwa. In the shrill cry, the knight angrily shot a dark thunder into the sky and hit the third thunder. The bright light and violent evil demon chi burst in the night sky in an instant. The third sky thunder, unexpectedly, dissipated directly in midair. However, the fourth sky thunder came close behind and struck fiercely again. In the fierce wind and rain, the fierce and peerless black knight screamed and was struck by the sky thunder again. The flash of fierce thunder made the armor on its body crack. And the fierce horse under his crotch hissed bitterly. One of its blood-red eyes was chopped off and turned into a gust of evil demon chi in the night sky, which completely dissipated. At this time, the fifth thunderbolt fell down fiercely, which didn't give the knight a chance to breathe or to fight again. At the moment when the fierce and peerless thunder light lit up the sky, the paralyzed black knight could not even wield the halberd. His stiff arm slants to the sky, and the posture that should have been heroic and fierce was now so weak. The pale thunder and lightning directly hit the black knight in the sea. The dazzling thunder reflected the dark sea water into a flash of lightning. The dark armor knight standing on the waves was frozen in the wind and rain. Huofeng, behind Lu Hang, saw this scene with complicated eyes. And the white-clad woman who saw such a scene for the first time was even more pale and shocked. She has never expected such a situation. At the moment when the fierce black knight came, she almost stopped breathing and didn't know how she ran into such a terrible monster. However, the monster just rushed to the nearest place. Even before it got close to the boat, it was unable to step forward. The ferocious thunderbolts, one after another, are all aimed at killing him, without any mercy at all. The knight was paralyzed and retreated. The sky thunder, which was hard to encounter in the world, was now blooming a fireworks show on the sea. The pale and fiery thunder was accompanied by the shrill and angry cry of the black knight every time it illuminated the world. 6. 7. 8. When the eighth thunder fell, the fierce and peerless knight was already weak and desperate even when he cried. The horse under him was already been full of cracks and may crack at any time. The original ferocious and monstrous horse was now full of cracks, just like the clay statues in the dilapidated mountain temple that have been neglected for decades. At this time, lightning flashed in the heavenly thunder clouds. The ninth sky thunder was coming. In the shrill cry of the black armor knight, the ninth sky thunder fell. At the moment when the pale lightning lit up the sea and sky, the woman in white could not help but close her eyes. Nine heavenly thunders. That's nine claps of thunder. In this world, not too many people could bear nine sky thunder in a row. This mysterious knight of unknown origin is so terrible. He must have been a powerful man. But now he ends like this. Ah ah ah. Between the sea and the sky, there was a brief silence. The evil demon chi that once pervaded the sky has completely dissipated, and it was no longer as fierce as before. The woman in white opened her eyes a little hesitantly, and saw the man in white standing at the bow of the boat, and the knight who was struggling to breathe in the distant waves. In the surging waves, the breathing black knight was full of cracks, and even the horse at his feet had disappeared. However, after being struck by nine sky claps of thunder, it was still alive. The woman in white was slightly shocked. Nine heavenly thunders. This black knight seems to have a more mysterious origin than she imagined. Huofeng, on the other hand, has a complicated look, and he saw it more clearly. When the ninth thunderbolt fell, the horse under the black knight suddenly rushed up and forcefully suffered the last and most violent and terrible thunderbolt. That's why the knight could survive under the legendary ninth sky thunder. 
However, even though the mysterious knight survived, he was now miserable and weak, and had no previous prestige. With his right arm missing, he stood powerless in the waves, and his left hand, which was full of cracks, barely grasped the bronze halberd, pointing diagonally at Lu Hang on the boat. But the halberd, which was trembling constantly, showed that the knight was very weak. Like a dying veteran on the battlefield, when facing a fierce enemy, he unswervingly raised his last weapon and wanted to fight to the death. It seemed that it was so tragic. Nyuwa. The knight's voice was hoarse. However, the blood-red eyes under the helmet were still fierce and full of killing intent. Chapter, 151. In the night sky, the ferocious thunder clouds slowly dispersed with the ninth thunder falling. Nine is the extreme number. The ninth sky thunder is also the strongest strike of the power of heaven's punishment. The ferocity of the ninth sky thunder is stronger than that of the previous eight. In this world, almost no one can bear it. It's just that the knight on the sea escaped the inevitable disaster by sacrificing his horse's life. On the deck, Lu Hung in white looked at the miserable and weak black knight on the sea and said. You came all the way to kill me, can you tell me the reason? Lu Hung guessed that it was perhaps summoned by him calling Yuwa's name. Now the knight's fierce flames were gone, they could finally talk. However, after Lu Hang's words fell, the originally weak dark armor knight rushed forward several steps, dragged his half-disabled body unsteadily, and roared angrily at Lu Hang. Kill! 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 Even though his clay sculpture body was weak and about to collapse, his roaring was still fierce and powerful. It struggled to rush towards Lu Hang, stepping on the surging waves, and constantly issued its battle cry. His momentum alone was greater than an army. Kill! Above the sea, the dark armored knight roared. Kill the disloyal. Kill the unrighteous. Demons, devils and evil gods, kill them at the Lord's command. The fierce evil demon Qi surged out of the knight's body again. The cold murderous thought locked Lu Hang on the deck. Even Lu Hang couldn't help but feel a little cold in his eyebrows. In the night sky, the heavenly thunder clouds, which had already dispersed, gathered again. This time, however, Lu Hang was not in control. The moment when the evil demon Qi locked Lu Hang, it seemed that it was also connected to the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky. In the surging of the dark thunder clouds, the nine thunderbolts gathered again. This unusual situation shocked the woman in white. She looked at Lu Hang in disbelief and could hardly believe the scene. Spare none. Use the heavenly thunder to kill him. Maybe the heavenly thunder clouds are enough to shock the world. But the old monster in front of her can even force the heavenly thunder clouds to gather again. Where did this old monster come from? Moreover, the dark armored knight is so miserable. One blow at random is enough to kill him, why use sky thunder? The woman in white swallowed her saliva and moved closer to her phone. This time, her fear was real. And in the night sky, the light of heaven's punishment was surging again. The black knight who was rushing towards Lu Heng roared angrily and fiercely, but was directly hit by the thunder. Boom! Lu Heng had just reached out to dispel the heavenly thunder clouds in the night sky. But the second, the third and the fourth. The sky thunder from the heavenly thunder clouds had never been so fast. A series of nine thunders fell directly from the night sky, striking the black knight. The only thing they heard was a shrill and desperate cry. Nyuwa. Later, the thunder disappeared, and calm returned to the sea and sky. Lu Hang's outstretched hand froze in mid-air. Nine sky thunders fell almost at the same time and directly evaporated the black night. There was not a shred of ash left. Lu Hang didn't even have time to stop. He looked up at the slowly scattering clouds above his head and didn't know what to say for a moment. It seems that the heavenly thunder also has a temper. After being fooled, the heavenly thunder was so violent for the second time. Any random attack was enough to kill the black knight, but there were nine claps of thunder falling from the sky. Lu Hang sighed and shook his head. It's a pity that the mysterious knight died too fast. Lu Hang still wanted to try communicating with him to see if he could ask something. The other side shouted the name of Nyuwa, but he did something violent and evil. There must be something hidden behind this. 
Plus, people in this world don't know Nuwa. It seems that it must be a secret from ancient times. He wondered whether Zhu Jioyo knew these ancient secrets maybe he could ask him next time. As a famous fierce existence in the world, Zhu Jioyo even existed longer than the ancient mythical beasts. In this world, only an old existence like Zhu Jioyo may know the story of Niuwa and the origin of this mysterious night. Lu Heng sighed, looked back at Huifeng and Xiao Ai, as well as the woman in white, and said, Well, this is over. Don't be nervous. Brother Hua, take this girl in and change into some dry clothing. Everyone is soaked. Lu Heng was the first to speak, breaking the calm of the sea. Hua Feng hesitated for a few seconds, looking in the direction where the Black Knight was, he was still uneasy. Lord Wolf. Hua Feng hesitated and asked, is that name a taboo? Lu Heng thought for a moment, smiled and said, maybe you can mention it on land last time I mentioned it on land, nothing happened. Hua Feng nodded and said, I know. He made up his mind that he would never mention this name on land or at sea. It's horrible. If the wolf god is not here tonight, everyone will be killed. Hua Feng felt lucky to have survived. After Hua Feng took the woman in white into the cabin, Xiao Ai, who had evaporated the water on her body with her spirit qi, came to Lu Heng with a worried face. Xiao Ai said in a low voice, in the story of the great god, she made people out of the earth and created innumerable people are there still a lot of existences like the black knights? Xiao Ai looked at the vast sea, full of worry. One mysterious black knight is so hard to deal with, if there are ten hundred of them. Lu Heng actually thought of Xiao Ai's concern. However, when looking into the deep sea, Lu Heng was not worried. He sighed and said, what the dark armored knight shouted was a word of justice. He must have experienced some unknown upheaval which made him become an evil demon. Maybe the next black knight we see can communicate normally. Lu Heng smiled and said, you don't have to be so desperate. Even if the next black knight also refuses to communicate, he still has heavenly thunder. Lu Heng has never been worried about evil demons. LQ is its age 9. Chapter 152 The fierce wind and rain between the sea and the sky gradually stopped with the disappearance of the black night. After the dark clouds slowly dissipated, the cold moonlight fell on the sea again, illuminating the sinking ship wreckage. The giant blissful treasure ship, which was originally a paradise of enjoyment on the sea, has sunk soundlessly. Between the huge two pieces of wreckage, there were bodies floating one after another. When Lu Hang and other two people approached, they could see strange black flames burning on the surface of those corpses silently. Both men and women, regardless of beauty and ugliness, are turned into dust under the corrosion of the black flame. Hua Feng and Lian Kai Yi, who had changed into clean clothes, also came to the deck and looked at the floating corpses in the sea. The woman who called Lian Kai Yi showed complicated expression and said nothing. Lu Heng looked back at her and said, You jumped from the blissful treasure ship. Is there anyone in the sea you know well? Lian Kai Yi nodded, but then shook her head, saying, I know someone, but I am not familiar with her. If I have to say. The woman sighed, she was my old enemy. It's a pity that she died so miserably that even her body would be burned up by this strange black flame. There would be no chance to fight against her again in the future. Speaking of this, Lian Kai Yi was no longer hidden and said, My old enemy, named Yu Yue, is the owner of the blissful treasure ship. This time, I was invited to the ship to see the happy means of their blissful palace, but we broke up because of words and disagreements, so I went away directly. But I didn't think this separation would be a farewell. Lian Kai Yi lowered her eyebrows and said nothing. There was sadness on her face. The delicate posture of the beautiful woman seemed so helpless that people could not help but want to hold her in their arms and comfort her. But Lu Hang on the boat did not respond. Hua Feng, who was beside him, teased little Gu Yan on his shoulder, and was too lazy to answer. After Lian Kai Yi finished, there was silence on the boat. The boat moved slowly on the sea and bypassed the sunken shipwrecks. Witnessing the floating corpses in the sea, Lu Heng suddenly thought of something. All the passengers on this ship are monks with successful accomplishments. With a thought, a big yellow seal suddenly flew out from behind Lu Heng. 
the evil spirit was floating on the sea. The originally sad Lien Kai Yi raised her head suddenly with a look of amazement. What a strong evil spirit! Her expression was shocked, and she watched the mysterious big yellow seal fly across the sea. Everywhere it went, the evil spirit was suffused. The sea area where the ship was slowly sinking was filled with floating corpses, which seemed more gloomy and terrible after the surging of evil spirit. Lien Kai Yi was so nervous. Senior. She stammered, what are you doing? Just now, the tragic situation when the Black Knight was directly killed by nine heavenly thunders has convinced her that Lu Heng was a petty old monster. She thought Lu Heng's cultivation was so profound, and his foundation was made of sky thunder. The Black Knight who can withstand nine immortal sky thunders was like a baby in front of him. He can't even get close to Lu Heng this kind of old monster that had been hidden for many years was definitely a horrible monster that survived in ancient times. The White Wolf can survive under the earthly havoc safely it may even be as the same level as Candle Dragon. Before tonight, although she had never really seen this kind of existence, she also heard that there was not only Candle Dragon survived in the world, but also another ancient monsters who had lived through earthly havoc. So after realizing the identity of the White Wolf in front of her, Lien Kai Yi was nervous though, she could still accept it. It's just that the current situation is too weird. The gloomy and dead air floating on the sea is getting stronger and stronger, reflecting the whole sea area into a ghostly atmosphere, like some evil ceremony is happening. In this situation, Lien Kai Yi is very uneasy. After all, there was an enemy in the dead. On the sea surface, with the evil spirit covering the whole sea area, Lu Heng directly launched the power of the netherworld soul seal without delay. Under the moonlight, one and another pale translucent figures floated on the sea. Those figures, both male and female, old and young, were the souls of the victims on the treasure ship. Now, after being called out by Lu Heng, they are wandering around. The sea area here has long been shrouded in gloom. Even if they wander around the world, they are not afraid of the wind. With a flick of his sleeve, Lu Heng directly opened the door of the nether world and sent all the wandering souls into the nether world. When these wandering souls are nourished by the yellow spring water, they will be able to recover their clarity. At that time, Lu Heng can have a detailed conversation with them. But this scene looks different in the eyes of Lien Kai Yi. After the seal showed, she saw one soul after another emerge from the sea. Then they were waved by Lu Heng, and all souls were taken away. Lien Kai Yi swallowed saliva and was frightened by this scene. She kept her mouth shut and dared not ask again. Afraid to ask one more question, the white wolf will take away her soul. Although it's sad to be struck by the sky thunder, it's even worse to be enslaved or sacrificed by evil if the spirit is taken away. Lu Heng had seen all the souls off, then turned around and looked at her with a little surprise. Why is your face so pale, girl? Is it the evil spirit that makes you uncomfortable? After saying that, Lu Heng carefully removed the power of Netherworld Soul Seal. The gloomy evil spirit on the sea was all disappeared with the disappearance of the yellow seal. Once again, the cold moonlight fell on Lien Kai Yi. But her face became even paler. Faced with Lu Heng's concern, she smiled awkwardly. She wanted to say something, but dared not speak freely. After hesitating for several seconds, she suddenly thought of something. The monsters that survived in the ancient times must be good or evil. The white wolf in front of her had killed the evil knight, and seemed to be full of righteousness. Maybe he is actually a good man. When it comes to the ancient evil monsters, none of them can surpass the legendary candle dragon. A thousand years ago, the candle dragon swallowed a country's life in the East Sea. Its monstrous evil spirit even led to the heavenly thunder. It is said that on that day, the wind roared, lightning flashed and thunder roared over the East Sea. The heaven and earth was completely illuminated by the falling of each heavenly thunder. However, in the face of the fierce heavenly thunder, the candle dragon just laughed and went against the sky, and faced heavenly thunder directly. The evil monsters were all afraid of the heavenly thunder, but the heavenly thunder were so weak in front of candle dragon. A total of nine heavenly thunders fell, but they failed to destroy the terrible evil monster. Even the ninth heavenly thunder only seriously injured arrogant candle dragon, 
which could not hurt his life. Since that day, the name of Candle Dragon has resounded through all over the world. Everyone has knew the strength of the old monster in ancient times. That was definitely not an existence that ordinary people could provoke. Therefore, after seeing Lu Hain, the first similar existence that came to the mind of Lien Kai Yi was the legendary Candle Dragon. After hesitating for a while, she saw that the man in white clothes was charming and graceful, and there was no evil spirit in his body. He was really not like the evil monster. Therefore, she finally got up the courage to ask. After all, the ghost of Yuyue was also among the souls taken away. Lien Kai Yi asked carefully, Do you know Candle Dragon? Lien Kai Yi was very cautious, and did not dare to say anything disrespectful. After all, if Lu Hang was evil, he maybe had good relationship with Candle Dragon. If the White Wolf has a quarrel with the Candle Dragon, it means that he may be on the good side. Therefore, after finishing the question, Lien Kai Yi nervously waited for Lu Hang's answer. Under the moonlight, Lu Hang heard Lien Kai Yi's question and looked back at the woman in front of him in a slightly surprised way. He was a little curious. How do you know I know Candle Dragon? Lu Hang was very interested, did you also go to the Dragon Falling Mountain? Dragon Falling Mountain the place where the dragon fell in the ancient legend two ancient monsters knew each other. Lien Kai Yi was reluctant to laugh, Senior, I'm still young, and I've not seen the place where the legendary dragon falls Senior, what kind of relationship is Dragon Candle to you? Friend, Lu Hang said, after a pause, and then added with a smile, it's a good friend, although I haven't known him for a long time eh? Lu Hang was puzzled, are you feeling sick? You look very pale did you catch a cold while soaking in water before? Lu Hang asked with concern. At that moment, Lien Kai Yi felt that she was going to cry. Ever since she became a successful practitioner, she has never been so helpless. The man knows Candle Dragon, and he is a friend of him Yuyue, it's not that I don't want to save you this time, but I really can't help it. Even if the leader of the Blissful Palace comes here, he should avoid the White Wolf. Is there anyone in the world who dares to provoke the ancient old monster who made friends with Candle Dragon? Even if he really took someone's soul, no one dares to talk about it. And how can I be so unlucky? I just jumped on a ship randomly and then came across this monster. The Black Knight who split the blissful treasure ship was obviously coming towards the old monster. The Black Knight didn't seem to belong to this era, he must be an old monster as well. What happened just now was clearly that two ancient monsters with old grudges fought for revenge. Why am I so unlucky? To be caught in such a war, and now is on the old monster's boat. Now it's no hope to even retreat. Under the moonlight, Lien Tsai was pale and shocked. At this moment, she felt that she was the most unlucky person in the world. The only people more unlucky than her were probably a boat of passengers on the blissful treasure ship. Chapter, 153 Legends and stories from ancient times have always been the things that people enjoy talking about. Lien Tsai was curious about them too. In the past, she was also curious about such rumors. But now she has experienced the struggle of cultivators from ancient times, and she only has one idea in her heart why am I the one who meets all these things. Although meeting an interesting little man, which made her happy, the little man was accompanied by an old monster. It was a strong demon cultivator from ancient times, and a close friend of the legendary Zhu Jiuyo. It's really interesting to hear people mention those secret ancient rumors, but it's not interesting to be in them. Lien Tsai looked pale and nervous. She was not only worried about her own life and death, but also could not turn a blind eye to the whereabouts of the ship of cultivator souls. However, she didn't dare to say anything for fear of offending the white wolf in front of her. She not only cares about morality, but also worries about her own survival the dilemma made her uncomfortable. Huafeng was curious to see her so uncomfortable. Girl, Huafeng took the initiative to ask. Why are you so upset? If the winds of the sea make you uncomfortable, you can rest at the cabin. Drinking some hot water might be even better. Hua Feng's casual inquiry made Lien Tsai stunned, and then her expression turned annoyed. This guy. She looked back at Hua Feng and saw that he was serious. At that moment, she could not even tell whether the guy was joking or serious. 
After hesitating for a moment, Lien Tsai smiled weakly and said, Thank you for your concern. There is no need to rest. One of the floating corpses in the sea was my friend. I want to at least, watch her soul leave. Lien Tsai's soft and mournful whisper tried to use the least irritating tone to talk about Yu Yu's soul. However, Lu Hang didn't speak, so Hua Feng just waved his hand and said. Then you don't need to wait here, said Hua Feng. Your sworn enemy's soul will give service to the wolf god. She can't leave for a short time. You'd better go in and have a rest. There is no need to stay here. After Hua Feng said this, Lien Tsai's face was pale again, and her smile was reluctant. Yu Yu's soul was going to serve the wolf god does this mean that the wolf god will use her soul to cultivate some evil cultivation methods? What's more, the words of Hua Feng were obviously impatient. She could feel it. After a little hesitation, she finally saluted them and said, Thank you. I will go to have a rest. With that, the woman hurried away and dared not stay on the deck. Lu Heng at the bow of the boat watched the woman leave behind, and now he vaguely guessed what the other side was worried about. Suddenly, he felt funny and helpless. Although this woman is mischievous, she is not a bad person. Why would Brother Hua scare her? Lu Heng said. Under the moonlight, Hua Feng also watched the woman's back, sighed, and said. Although she is not a bad person, my intuition tells me that this woman will be a big trouble. So it's better to let her go a little farther it's better to scare her away immediately, and it's better to separate her from us. Hua Feng's words made Lu Heng shake his head. This woman is quite beautiful, and seems to have some interest in brother Hua are you not interested at all? Lu Heng asked with a smile. Without hesitation, Hua Feng said, in the past, I would have had some thoughts about her, but now I won't. In the past six months with the wolf god, I have seen many strange things that ordinary people can hardly see in their lives. Compared with the breathtaking scenery that the wolf god took me to see, this woman's appearance is beautiful, but it is nothing in my heart. What's more, I hate old women who are acting like young girls. Hua Feng couldn't help smiling when talking about this. She and the palace master are friends. I'm afraid that her age is enough to be my grandmother. As soon as I think that the young girl in front of me is actually as old as my grandmother I can't accept it. This sentence that Hua Feng said with a smile made Lu Heng laugh. He shook his head and said with a smile, if brother Hua's word spread, I'm afraid that the female cultivators in the whole world will come to kill you ha ha ha. The two men laughed at the joke, and the laughter spread far away. Even if Lien Tsai in the cabin didn't deliberately eavesdrop, she clearly heard the conversation between them. Because the two men in the bow didn't avoid her at all. Such a distance is almost equivalent to talking to her face. Grandmother. This word makes Lien Tsai's face twist as if she had just eaten a dead mouse. If it wasn't because she was afraid even if she didn't want to say it to provoke the wolf god beside Hua Feng, she would rush out fiercely for an explanation for what he meant by grandmother. But now she could only think about it. Lien Tsai sat in the cabin with her teeth clenched, angry and resentful, but she didn't even dare to make a sound. Listening to the conversation between the two people, the situation seemed to be different from what she guessed. It seems that the white wolf god is not evil. But even if the white wolf god is a good demon, not an evil demon, she dares not be presumptuous in front of him. After all, the white wolf god's strength is real. Who dares to be bold in the face of such a strong existence? But the teenager of the Yun sect. Hua Feng Hua Feng. Ah. Hua Feng, right? I remember your name. Can you stay with the wolf god for a lifetime? When you leave the wolf god, I will have a good talk with you. Didn't you say that you would vomit when you saw an old woman pretending to be a young woman? Hum. Stupid little man, you don't know your grandmother's real charm. Sooner or later, I will show you what a real grandmother is. In the cabin, Lien Tsai clenched her teeth. Chapter, 154 Above the deck, Hua Feng didn't know what the woman in the cabin thought. He now stood beside the ship with Lu Heng, watching the floating corpses and shipwrecks in the sea fade away from their field of vision. The souls of these cultivators were taken away by Lu Heng and sent to the netherworld. 
Their bodies were soaked in seawater and gradually burned out by the strange black flame. Soon, even the bodies will not be left. Only the hull of the large ship would sink quietly at the bottom of the sea, telling the fish about the tragedy that happened tonight. It's a pity that the fish are not interested in it. This ship can only lie on the sea floor alone, probably never seeing the sun again. At half a sound, Huafong didn't take the initiative to speak until the wreck of the ship had completely disappeared from view. Wolf God, do you want to reincarnate those cultivators into the netherworld by taking their souls away? Lu Heng sighed and said, if someone wants to be reincarnated, as long as he has not committed crimes before his death, there is no harm in sending him to the reincarnation channel. Of course, I would be happy if they could stay in the netherworld. Lu Heng said, the souls of the old ascetic cultivators are much tougher than that of ordinary people. With the help of the dead chi of the netherworld, they can stay there for a long time. And it is easier for them to cultivate after death. Although there is no ghost cultivator in the world, perhaps such a ghost cultivator can be born among these people. Lu Heng smiled and said, of course, everything is voluntary. Later, when they come to their senses, I will go to show them the situation. It depends on them whether they go or stay. Lu Heng's narration made Huafeng nod, and the situation was exactly the same as he had imagined. In the moonlight, Huafeng sighed and said, it's their misfortune to meet this. But it's also their luck to meet the wolf god alas I don't know whether I envy them or sigh for their misfortune. Lu Heng didn't conceal the existence of the netherworld, and he also discussed the construction of the netherworld with Huafeng with a smile. Huafeng knew that although the netherworld was very lifeless, it would be difficult to return to the human world after entering the netherworld. Once the framework of the netherworld is built, many ghosts will be endowed with power. With power, ghosts can survive for a long time. Lifespan, a headache for everyone in the world, is not terrible for ghosts. Even the lowest level ghost can easily live for hundreds of thousands of years as long as he is loyal to his duties, doesn't make mistakes, and is not deprived of power. And the high level ghost kings could live as long as they want. There are many cultivators on this ship. Even if there is no one to help them, their souls can linger in the world for a long time. Now they have entered the netherworld, as long as they are devoted to building the netherworld, everyone has the hope to be a ghost king. Such a promising future is very tempting. Huafeng sighed in his heart, but for a moment, he could not decide whether it was better to live happily in the world or fight for the position of ghost king in the netherworld after death. After all, the wolf god asked him to go to the netherworld for a stroll. The gloomy world of the dead was really unacceptable to Huafeng, a living man. By contrast, the mortal world on earth is really wonderful. Huafeng sighed in his heart, while Lien Sai in the cabin frowned and was a little nervous. Lu Heng didn't avoid her while communicating with Huafeng. She clearly heard the conversation between them. The Netherworld Reincarnation The Reincarnation Channel Building The Netherworld Ghost Cultivators Lien Sai has never heard of these strange words in the past. However, every word seems to carry a huge amount of information. The White Wolf God can control the thunder, which is already a terrible thing. But now it sounds as if he still controls the so-called ghost world. He took away the souls of those who were killed. It wasn't to sacrifice them for some evil cultivation techniques, but to invite them to participate in the construction of the so-called netherworld. Huafeng said that it was an enviable opportunity would it be beneficial to participate in the construction of the netherworld. Doesn't that mean that it's not a bad thing, but a good thing that these people died here? But the netherworld does such a place really exist? Ever since ancient times, no one has ever heard that there is a place for souls to go after people die or is this so-called ghost world built by the wolf god from scratch. He wants to build a world where the souls of the dead can live. If such a world can be built, it will be a great thing for all living beings in the world. At least many people don't have to suffer from the pain of wind, sun, and sound after death. What's more, the so-called reincarnation channel these two simple words reveal something even more frightening. The existence of soul diffusion is an unavoidable dilemma for all living beings in the world. Even the strongest cultivators can't guarantee that their children will not suffer from soul diffusion. Once this happens, even if the parents don't want to, they must endure the pain and burn the newborn to death, 
so as to not attract some evil to the soulless body. After all, a body without a soul is the best material for many evil cultivation methods. Lien Tsai just doesn't know what the so-called reincarnation channel can do, or whether it is really the thing she thought that can benefit all living beings. If so, the white wolf god in front of her. After swallowing saliva, Lien Tsai recalled the terrible appearance of the wolf god. It is reasonable to say that those who control the heavenly thunder should not be evil demons. But no matter whether the white wolf on the ship is evil or not, everything she saw tonight can definitely affect the whole world. With such power, if he is a righteous person, it is absolutely the luck of heaven and earth. In case it ended up being evil, his behavior of building the netherworld and opening up the reincarnation channel is terrible. In the cabin, Lien Tsai bit her sleeve and wanted to slap herself hard. I've definitely boarded the wrong boat. If I left directly, nothing would happen. Now, I'm stuck on the boat. Chapter, 155 The small boat gradually moved away from the sea area. Under the cool moonlight, the sea area calmed down as the huge shipwreck sank to the bottom of the sea. The floating corpses that should have floated all over the sea are now invisible and burned by black flames. However, a strange evil demon chi was swirling around the sea and could not disperse for a long time. A few hours later, when the oriental morning star lit up in the night sky, the sea fell into the last darkness before dawn. It is also the most profound darkness. The original cold moonlight and bright stars in the sky are nowhere to be found at this time. In this absolute netherworld, even the wind and waves on the sea are much smaller and become like stagnant water on land. A certain oppressive atmosphere appeared at this time. Within that atmosphere, there was a small figure. The serious face was as lovely as a doll. Big red belly pockets, small underpants, fat little hands and feet the figure on the sea was a boy about eight years old. Only the little boy stepped on the waves, and the evil demon Chi was surging all over him. On the back of his hand, there was a strange blood tattoo, which was an ancient character, Nine. He came to the sea where the ship sank, frowned at the strange sea area in front of him, and said. Why is there nothing the evil demon Chi broke down here? The little boy said, Boss, do you want to come out and have a look? On the empty sea, the little boy said to the air in front of him. The next second, the tattoo on the back of the boy's hand changed slightly and turned into another ancient character. 1. The little boy was now a different person. Although he was still a cute little boy, he became lazy and no longer energetic and serious. The little boy looked around, then yawned lazily and said, it's really broken. Although there are still some evil demon chi, the source of the evil demon chi is gone I just don't know whether the guy ran away or died. After the little boy said this, the clear voice of a girl sounded in his body. How could he be dead? Said the girl's voice. This evil demon chi was left by the war general how many people can kill the war general in this world? Maybe the war general has finished the task of cleaning up, so it disappears again. And in the final analysis, the sudden appearance of the war general is somewhat baffling. The voice of the girl said. Who else can offend the empress in the South Sea? The people who know that the empress exists are less than ten in the world even if there are really some of them passing by the South Sea, who will be so bored to tease those clay sculptures that have lost their minds. It doesn't do any good, and it's easy to get fishy. In the little boy's body, the girl's voice said so. The lazy boy nodded and said. The eighth sister is right since you are so interested, I'll leave it to you. I'll go to bed. Then the little boy yawned and closed his eyes. The next second, the boy's body suddenly changed. Vaguely, his skin seemed to turn white. Between the eyebrows, a wisp of dark red flowers appeared. The ancient characters on the back of his hand had also become the characters of eight. When he opened his eyes again, the one standing on the sea had become a little girl. However, it is different from the strong evil demon Chi of the little boy. After the little girl appeared, she was surrounded by a strong pure and holy spirit Chi. She looked around coldly and said, Give it to me. I don't expect you lazy pigs hum. The wind blows. The fog gathers. The little girl who showed her figure didn't delay for a moment, and directly started the magic. 
The strong wind emerged from nowhere on the sea, cleaning up all evil demon chi. Later, the misty pale fog emerged continuously on the sea and soon covered the sea. The little girl in the fog, with her hands and fingers knotted, shouted at the depth of the fog. Reproduce. With a loud shout, the fog swelled in an instant. Then, from the surging fog, abruptly came a shrill and angry howl. Like the vast battle roar from the ancient battlefield, it was full of the ancient atmosphere. In the next second, the fog separated and a strange black shadow filled with the evil demon Chi rushed out of the deep fog. The ancient armor, mottled figure, and the fierce and strange horse under the crotch appeared in front of the little girl. It was the mysterious knight who was killed by the sky thunder. It is indeed a war general. The little girl frowned and flew forward, far behind the charging knight. In the fog, the fog around the black knight was raging fiercely, simulating the scene of the storm at that time. In front of the war general, the rudiment of a huge ship loomed. In the fog, there came the sound of music and laughter from the ship. However, the black knight held up his halberd and chopped it down. The dark lighting instantly separated the huge ship, and the evil demon Chi took away the lives of all the living people on the ship. This scene was tragic and terrible, but it didn't change the little girl's expression. Because she knows that the real play is still to come. Close behind the mysterious night, she sensed that a terrible power of divine punishment suddenly came from above the white fog. Hmm. Sky thunder. The little girl was a little surprised. The next second, a white sky thunder fell from the sky and struck the black knight fiercely. Even if it was just an illusion simulated by the magic, the power of the sky thunder still made the little girl feel awe-inspiring. In the fog, the black knight roared angrily and waved the halberd to the front. The bronze halberd was covered with copper rust cracks. And the battle halberd was pointing toward. Another sky thunder hit the black knight directly. This time, however, the little girl didn't pay any attention. Her figure quickly shuttled through the fog, leaving the black knight howling in the fog and rushing towards the direction where the black armor knight was roaring at. In the fog, she saw a small boat vaguely. A small boat appeared as a faint outline in the fog, with several figures on it. It was shadowy, mysterious and strange. The little girl was shocked and realized something was wrong. The figure standing at the bow of the boat was a man in white. However, the distance between the two sides was too far, and she could not see the other's face clearly. And vaguely, she had an illusion that the man in white was looking at her. But everything in this fog was an illusion. It's just a phantom. How can he be watching her? The little girl flew straight forward, trying to see the faces of the people on the boat. Obviously, the appearance of the war general was related to the figure on the boat. But in the little girl's memory, she had never seen anything similar. Never even heard of it. She never heard that the evil demon Chi of the war general would lead to heavenly punishment. Now in the fog, the thunder fell and struck the war general. Such a situation was totally contrary to common sense. This was not a natural sky thunder. It had someone behind the scenes. It was the man in white who controlled all this behind the scenes. But how could anyone control the sky thunder? How did this strange man in white do it? Why did he and the war general have a fight? The little girl was full of questions in her heart. To solve this question, she just had to fly forward and take a good look at the man in white. Even if it was just a phantom, she could also roughly see something and then infer the origin of the other party. In her heart, it was so planned. In the fog, the lovely little girl quickly approached the boat. The white fog was surging in front of her. The man in white on the boat seemed unconcerned. However, when the distance between the little girl and the boat was closer, the illusion of the man in white on the boat seemed to be aware of something, and suddenly turned his head and frowned at her side. His eyes locked on the little girl. Buzz. At that moment, the little girl's mind suddenly buzzed. At the moment, she saw a pair of eyes full of pale thunder and lightning. In those eyes, there seems to be hundreds of millions of heavenly thunder endlessly surging. The terrible power of thunder hit the little girl's heart and soul instantly. The indescribably huge sense of oppression was overturned. The little girl gasped, flew out and fell violently into the sea, blowing up a huge wave. 
and the endless mist also dissipated with the little girl's magic. Everything in the fog, whether it was the shrill and howling black night, the strange little sea boat, and the man in white at the bow all these things disappeared from the sea. Between the sea and the sky, she returned to the original dark night again and no longer saw any fog. Only in the cold sea water, a little figure appeared with an unbelievable look on her face. I can't even peep at his face. What did I bump into? The little girl's soul and heart have been strongly impacted. With her strength, even if she faced the sky thunder, she would not be so embarrassed. However, she suffered ten thousand times more terror than facing the sky thunder directly. If it were not for her other fifteen brothers and sisters sharing the trauma at that moment. She couldn't even speak now. In the little girl's body, there was a cry from her brothers and sisters. What are you doing, the eighth sister? I was sleeping well. What's your problem? What did you bump into? You got a backbite. An existence whose level is higher than us. Can there be anyone whose level is higher than us? I'll go. I was scared to death. I slept well and it suddenly came out I was really scared to death. Sobbing it's terrible it's terrible I'm so scared. Shut up, you sissy. I want to vomit when I hear your voice. Don't make any noise, and ask our big brother's opinion. Yes, boss, what do you think? I'll lie down and watch. In the little girl's body, all kinds of voices were making incessant noise, just like the food market. However, the little girl who suffered the most was silent. She wiped the blood on her mouth and looked at the sea in front of her quietly with a cold face, as if she saw the strange boat coming from the fog once again. And those shadowy figures on the boat. Puff, the little girl spat out blood and finally spoke. The war general is dead. She looked at the calm sea area in front of her and said, in the face of the heavenly thunder and the mysterious existence, it is impossible for a war general who has lost his mind to survive. But I found a more interesting thing than the mysterious existence. You will be interested in it. The little girl's words made all those around her be quiet. Then, the boss's lazy voice sounded. Oh. What did you find? Tell me. On the sea, the cute girl looked in the direction of the disappearance of the boat and said coldly. Although the man in white on the boat is mysterious, strange and powerful, he has nothing to do with us. It's better to stay away from him. But among the people around him, there is a scabbard with excellent talent. He has a low cultivation base, and his heart of Tao was broken, but he could recast his heart of Tao and continue to cultivate. And there is a sharp and awe-inspiring sword Chi hidden in his soul. This young man has clearly become a rare hidden sword isn't this the perfect scabbard we need? With this young man, the problem of the Maluo sword can be solved. After the little girl's cold talk, there was a sudden silence on the sea. The next second, the light flashed, and one after another shadows flashed from the little girl's body. They was either lazy, serious, insidious, witty, or weak a total of sixteen figures appeared on the sea. Eight cute little boys and eight cute little girls. However, the boys were all surrounded by evil demon Chi, while the girls looked holy and beautiful. A total of sixteen figures looked at each other, just forming a circle. The argument went on. Hidden sword. We finally found it. Two thousand years we have waited for two thousand years, and finally we have. If the Malu sword's problem can be properly solved, we will be able to achieve our wish. But isn't that mysterious man in white very scary? Who knows as he is a monster survived from ancient times can we afford to provoke him? You are afraid of nothing. We are not looking for his trouble our goal is the man around him, okay? That disciple of the Yun sect has a low cultivation base, so we can find a chance to catch him. It seems reasonable. And the Malo sword is such a good treasure. That kid of the Yun sect must be grateful and have no complaints if he has any complaints, slap him half to death, and then push the Malo sword to him. Cough boss, what do you think? Do it. A little boy stared and scolded, we finally find the hidden sword, should we miss it? The kid of the Yun sect must keep the Maluo sword. Let's follow him now and find a chance to catch him. Oh, oh. Boss. What you said is very good with me. 
Boss is the most handsome. Oh you are such a sissy, can you shut up? On the sea, the noise was boiling. Sixteen little boys and girls were all very happy, just like a carnival. On the sea far away from here, Hua Fong, who was lying in the quilt with his sword in his arms, turned over and woke up with a sense of inexplicable cold in his sleep. Oh. Are you awake? Beside the bed, the woman who called herself Lien Tsai held her cheeks and looked at him with a smile. The distance between them was so close that he could almost feel each other's breath. This scene looked like a man and a woman who are in love with each other. In the quilt, Hua Fong froze for a moment and shook. Ho Ba! A mouthful of thick phlegm vomited towards the woman beside the bed. Lien Tsai quickly dodged, You what are you doing? Hua Fong stared at her and says, This is a question I should ask, okay? Can you stay away from me? Next time, if you get close when I fall asleep I will throw shit at you do you believe it? Chapter 156 Hua Feng's vulgar words made Lien Tsai a little unbearable. In her plan, she originally wanted to disturb the boy's heart and take the initiative through such close contact. However, when Hua Feng woke up and saw her near the pillow, not only did the boy feel shy and flustered, he even calmly forced her back with such hurtful words. This fight, she was defeated. Lien Tsai stared at Hua Feng, and she could hardly believe that a boy who should have been young and frivolous could be shameless as a goof. He even openly said that he would hit her with his excrement should she try again. Lien Tsai felt a strange feeling of being both angry and feeling funny. She smiled and said, If you give something else to me, I will be willing to accept it. Lien Tsai smiled charmingly, and her eyes swept around Hua Feng. Later, without waiting for Hua Feng to react, she left with a light smile. At least on the surface, she didn't fall behind. But Hua Feng curled his lips and was completely unmoved. He looked at the sky outside and found that it was already dawn, so he did not want to sleep. He dressed up and went out of the cabin. On the deck, the little girl with silver hair and beastly ears still stood at the stern, pushing the boat forward with aura. In the bow of the boat, Lu Hang, dressed in his usual white, was standing with his arms folded in his back to the people on the boat, no one knew what he was thinking. Hua Feng did not dare to disturb the wolf god, so he walked towards the stern of the boat and came in front of Xiao Ai. A smile on his face. Good morning, Xiao Ai, Hua Feng said, you've had a hard time, just leave the helm to me next. The little girl with silver hair and animal ears glanced at him, shaking her head and said no. She said, no need, I find that using my aura to push the boat and cultivate at the same time is beneficial to my cultivation. So just leave the boat to me. You have not yet recovered from your serious injuries, so rest more later. After saying this, Xiao Ai closed her eyes and paid no more attention to Hua Feng. In the morning light of dawn, Xiao Ai was holding the boat with one hand, a faint aura surrounding her, and while pushing the boat forward early, she was refining the aura in her body. Such a strange scene made Hua Feng's mouth twitch. It was already scary enough that one could walk and cultivate. Xiao Ai could even use her aura to push the boat and cultivate at the same time. This is no longer dual use of one mind, this is multiple use of one mind. Xiao Ai was practicing, and he didn't dare to stay and disturb her, so he could only walk back. However, just as Hua Feng reached the door of the cabin, he saw Lien Tsai looking at him with a smile on her face as she leaned against the cabin door with her hands held. The smiling look in her eyes was clearly not good intention. Seeing this scene, Hua Feng was speechless. He had planned to go back to the cabin to make up sleep, but now gave up resting. He walked straight towards the bow of the ship and came to sit not far behind Lu Hang. With Wolf God by his side, this woman wouldn't dare to pester him, would she? As he sat down, Hua Feng glanced back and indeed saw Lien Tsai turn around and walk into the cabin. It was obvious that she really did not dare to come over and disturb them. But Hua Feng couldn't leave for a while. The small boat was moving silently in the vast ocean. Under Xiao Ai's driving, the boat was moving faster and faster, and it was also becoming smoother. In the end, the sails were even closed. The presence of the sails was a hindrance because of the excessive speed of travel. One day, two days time seemed to pass more quickly on the sea. 
Hua Feng sat behind Lu Heng every day. Even when eating food, he let the little Gu Yan take dry food over, and he just casually eat food with water. Only the time to defecate he will leave. In the two days, Lian Tsai did not come to bother Hua Feng again. She didn't know if she was really afraid that Hua Feng will pull out something and hit her. On the deck at the bow of the boat, Lu Heng fell into a days long contemplation and did not move for a long time. The encounter with the Black Knight had made Lu Heng realize one of his weaknesses. He lacked the ability to keep people. When facing an enemy like the Black Knight who came to him, the only means he had was to destroy the opponent outright, without the ability to trap the opponent and keep him. If this did not change, the next time he encountered an enemy like the Black Knight, even if he might know any important information, Lu Heng would not be able to probe it out. Now that Lu Heng was not in the Fire Pass country, without the help of the wizards to set up a big trap to trap the demons, everything will have to solve by Lu Heng himself. Lu Heng had previously read through the book collection of Fushan City and seen many wonderful techniques. If he really wanted, it is not impossible to set up a temporary trap to trap the demons. He just wasn't satisfied with the power of the trap. Nowadays, he had a new idea to use the power of heavenly thunder to keep enemy. Previously, when he was in Fushan City, Lu Heng had seen a very interesting spell called Wind Thunder Trap. The core of this spell was to draw mortal wind thunder into a cage to trap the target demon. Even if it is not a heavenly thunderbolt, a mundane wind thunderbolt can still cause great damage to demons. It is only because that spells that can control wind and thunder are extremely rare in the world. After all, even mundane wind and thunder are too violent and unstable. The scroll of bamboo slips that Lu Heng had seen in Fushan City was already described as a secret divine manual when placed outside. However, although the wind thunder trap was powerful, it could not meet Lu Heng's requirements. The retention time was too short. He wanted to try using the power of heavenly thunder to replace wind thunder and create a heavenly thunder trap with heavenly thunder as its core. If it can be completed, not only will it be incredibly powerful, but the power of heavenly thunder will also be raging. If the heavenly thunder trap successfully traps demons and evil, it can at least last for a century, so it can already be called a powerful trap. Although the idea was good, the actual operation was too difficult. The spell mentioned in the bamboo scroll was fine for attracting wind thunder, but heavenly thunder was very different from mundane thunder, and Lu Hang's first attempt failed straight away and every one of his ten subsequent attempts ended in failure. On top of the boat, Lu Heng let out a long sigh, but he did not let it discourage him. One wants to create a new divine spell, even with the finished products of previous generations as reference, it could never be done overnight. Lu Heng's mind was at peace. It was best if it could be done. If he couldn't, he could practice the wind thunder trap again. Although the wind thunder trap was of average power, it was enough in most of time. In such a leisurely practice, the small sea boat sailed through the long sea and had left the sea where the shipwreck had been. And since that day, Lu Heng had not encountered any storm or demon evil, everything seemed so calm and quiet. Chapter, 157 Although the sea was rough, there was no violent storm. They even met two merchant fleets at sea, each of the large ships in the fleet far surpassing their small rickety ship. Both of those merchant fleets were a little surprised that this small sea boat was out on its own. After all, the legend of the two eight godmen was now circulating on the sea, and wherever that two eight godmen went, evil demons gathered and sea monsters ravaged the sea. Ordinary mortals simply did not dare to go out to sea at this time. Most of the encounters at sea were far apart, and even when they met, neither side had any intention of coming closer, and eventually watched each other disappear between the sea and the sky from afar. Lu Hang's boat was still alone on the sea. Finally, in the noise of Hua Feng and Lian Tsai, the boat docked and arrived at the first country they had visited since they left the sea. The immortal kingdom, where everyone from the lord down to the commoners lives forever. Who finally arrived at the immortal kingdom. Standing on the deck, looking at the land that was still far away, Hua Feng revealed a smile, once we reach the immortal kingdom, Senior Tsai won't have to suffer on this small rickety ship of ours. As he said this, he looked back at Lian Kai Yi that was not far away, and said with a smile, 
there are many caravans to and from the Immortal Kingdom, and they can take Senior anywhere. However, Huo Feng's meaningful comment failed to embarrass Lian Tsai. The woman, who had long since changed back into a white dress, paled slightly and whispered sadly, You are so eager to drive me away you hate me so much. Her soft and sad appearance made people pity her. Only such a expression could no longer sway Huo Feng. At the beginning, when Huo Feng saw the woman's soft and pitiful appearance, even though he knew she was acting, he could not help but feel a sliver of guilt that he had done something wrong. However, after a few days together, Huo Feng had already become accustomed to such charm. Lian Tsai's mournful, sad, joyful and smiling words of charm were unable to shake his mind. The only thing he felt now was trouble. It was good that beside the wolf god was still a clean place. As long as he stayed by the wolf god's side, this woman would be not too unrestrained. While Huo Feng stopped speaking, Lu Hang looked at Lian Tsai and said with a smile, Does Miss Lian not want to go to the immoral country? Lian Tsai said with a soft face, I don't have any friends or relatives in the immoral country. So I have no one to visit when I get off the ship I want to ask Wolf God to take me to the Siren Kingdom, I have a friend in the Siren Kingdom, so I can ask her for help. Lian Tsai's soft whispers made Huo Feng roll his eyes. An old evil woman who knew the Lord of the Bliss Palace needed to find someone to help. He couldn't help but laugh out loud and said, Senior Tsai is really soft. With such words, it was almost as if he was explicitly tearing down the stage. It was just that Lian Tsai was not embarrassed to hear this, but smiled and looked towards Lu Hang, waiting for Lu Hang's response. Lu Hang looked at Lian Tsai's expectant face, and then looked at Huo Feng at the side, and he was a bit amused. Could it be that this beautiful woman who had achieved success in cultivation really fell in love with Huo Feng? This kind of drama of being pursued by a beautiful woman is really very protagonist-like. With a kind of interest in watching the drama, Lu Hang also smiled and said, Go and discuss with Brother Hua. This boat was hired by Brother Hua, if you want to stay, you have to have Brother Hua's permission to do so. Laughing lightly, he kicked the ball back to Hua Feng, and Lu Hang left with a smile, leaving the place to two of them. Soon, the small boat approached the port of the Immoral Kingdom. Under the slightly overcast sky, the harbor was surprisingly quiet. There were many ships at anchor, but not many people in sight. The city gates at the back of the harbor were also closed and not open. Lu Hang was a little curious, why is it so quiet here? Hua Feng explained, the people of the immortal kingdom are different from normal people. Although they are all immortal, they are pale and afraid of the sun. During the day, they hid in their homes to rest and sleep, and would not go out until after the sun had set and night had fallen, moving only at night. Therefore, the gates of the city are tightly closed during the daytime. Merchants who come and go and want to enter the city to make purchases have to wait until after nightfall. And the night market in the Immortal Kingdom is notoriously bustling and lively. The night time passes quickly when you hang around the place. So the merchants who come and go choose to rest during the day and enter the city at night in order to have the energy to go to the night market to sell their goods or make purchases. It's midday now, but everyone has gone to bed, that's why we don't see many people. Hua Feng's explanation made Lu Hang a little surprised. Long life, pale complexion, fear of sunlight. These undead people, do they still like to suck blood? Lu Hang jokingly said. These few characteristics that Hua Feng mentioned were simply exactly the same as vampires. After Lu Hang finished speaking, he saw Hua Feng nodding seriously and said, That's right, just as the wolf god said, all the citizens of the immortal kingdom like to drink blood. From the lord of the country down to the commoners, the entire nation loves to suck blood. They are not interested in normal meals. Therefore, although the night market in the immortal kingdom is bustling, there is almost no food for outsiders in the country's restaurants, only freshly killed food. When you enter the immortal kingdom, you have to prepare your own food, or go to the market and buy some ingredients to bring back to the ship to cook for yourself, otherwise you will go hungry. Hua Feng's serious account made Lu Hang a little speechless. They're really vampires? He tentatively asked again, then these undead citizens, do they bite people? If they bite, will people also turn into their kind? Lu Hang's inquiry caused Hua Feng to be stunned and shook his head, I have not heard of such things. 
Huo Feng said, although the Immortal Kingdom is an important seaport, it has always been mysterious and outsiders are only allowed to appear near the bazaar and are not allowed to enter the city. So although there are many merchants coming and going from the south to the north here, few people have been able to explore the real situation within the Immortal Kingdom. Many things are only rumors on the surface. The real conditions within the Immortal Kingdom, such as their population, why they can live forever, and who their ancestors were the outsiders have no way of knowing. Hua Feng's narration made Lu Heng frown slightly. While not far away, Yen Sai pondered and began to think about that question Lu Heng had just asked. Will undead citizens bite people will normal people turn into undead citizens after being bitten? She silently lowered her head, and a guess came to her mind. Could it be that this mysterious immortal kingdom existed back in the wolf god's time? Or perhaps the wolf god knew their ancestors? Chapter 158 The sky of the immortal kingdom was covered with a faint cloud. The clouds were not thick, but they covered the sun and made it invisible. So what fell on the land was a slightly gloomy light. Although it is also day, it gives people a gloomy and deep feeling. In addition to the desolate and empty scene on the bank, this scene gave Lu Hang a rather sinister and terrible feeling. Huo Feng didn't care about this. He took Gu Yan to get off the boat to go and register. Although the citizens of the Immortal Kingdom will not go out in the daytime, they will employ foreigners to manage the port. Ships entering the port need to be registered. The gentle smiling Lian Tsai naturally followed and got off the boat with Hua Feng. Under the gloomy skylight, the scene of a man and a woman leaving at the same time, if only seen from the back, would feel like a fairy couple. After all, both of them, regardless of their appearance and temperament, are definitely not ordinary people. It goes without saying that Lian Tsai is an absolute beauty. Her every frown and smile are enough to make all men fall in love. Although Hua Feng can't be said to be handsome, he has a special temperament that can't be ignored. The two walked on the dock one by one, attracting many curious eyes. After all, it seems that the two are really well matched. However, Lu Hang, who knew what it really entailed, just watched this funny scene from the boat. Lian Tsai, who has cultivated for many years, should have been used to the world's turmoil and met many outstanding men. It is hard to impress her. However, Hua Feng clearly didn't do anything special, but somehow he made this female elder like him ha ha ha. Feelings are really unpredictable. Lu Heng waved his hand casually, and scattered the swirling heavenly thunder in his hands, ending his cultivation today. Now he is very free. After the souls of the dead on the blissful treasure ship woke up, they saw the extraordinary things in the netherworld. After Lu Heng explained the situation in detail, no one chose to reincarnate. All the souls of the dead were willing to stay to help Lu Heng build the netherworld and do a ghost job in this unfinished netherworld. But now they can't stand the power of ghost officials. Although several cultivators' soul are tough and some even retain their supernatural powers, they still are not really ghost cultivators. Without the nourishment of the ghost spirit chi of the netherworld, these souls would not have been able to stay in the human world for long should they had stayed there. If you want to be a real ghost official, you must get rid of the dependence on death chi. Even if you go to the human world alone, you can survive for a long time. Only in this way can you be regarded as a real ghost cultivator. It is not difficult to achieve such a state. You just need to introduce in and death chi into the soul, reshape the soul, and completely change the nature of the soul. But this kind of cultivation requires a certain amount of time. Now on the dark land of the netherworld, there are shadowy figures sitting, all of them are the souls of the dead who are cultivating ghost cultivation methods. In a short time, they can't help Lu Heng, and Lu Heng doesn't need to interfere in their cultivation. So, Lu Heng is free now. Lu Heng found a breakthrough in the cultivation of Heavenly Thunder Trap. Now he can barely build a framework, but he hasn't really used it. But even Lu Heng, who has been used to cultivating alone, feels bored after so many boring days at sea. Now they are at the port, so he wants to get off the ship and go for a walk. After telling the bow horse to stay and watch the boat, Lu Heng and Xiao Ai got off the boat and walked toward the shore. When the huge white wolf set foot on the land, a few people at the wharf looked curiously at them. Although there are a lot of people taking magic animals out these days, 
the white wolf in front of them is different from ordinary magic animals. It has a special temperament, which makes people dare not look at it directly. In the distance, Huafeng was holding a guideway to talk with the dock manager. Lien Tsai teased the little Gu Eagle, laughing softly from time to time. Different from Huafeng, Gu Yan likes this beautiful sister very much, and the relationship between them is very good. Lu Heng walked out of the dock and walked along the beach, intending to stroll outside the city. However, Lu Heng had just walked out of the area where the dock is located and was stopped by someone. Foreigners are not allowed to leave the dock. Please go back. Several soldiers in armor stopped Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, and said seriously, no foreigners are allowed to step into the immortal kingdom. Please forgive me. Although the leader was wearing armor, he was a cultivator. He bowed to Lu Heng seriously, which was very polite. When magic eyes peep at it, the white wolf in front of them is bright and fascinating. It is not an ordinary monster, so people dare not offend. Seeing this, Lu Heng sighed and took Xiao Ai back the same way. The immortal kingdom is mysterious. Unexpectedly, let alone the city, people were not even allowed to step in the wild. Is there any big secret hidden in the city? Lu Heng was curious and returned to the ship with Xiao Ai. Since he can't wander around at will, he stopped playing for a while and continued to study the heavenly thunder trap. As for the secret of the immortal kingdom, Lu Heng has no urge to find out. There are so many secrets in the world. If you explore every one you see, wouldn't it be a waste of time? Soon, as the sky gradually darkened, the deserted wharf gradually became lively. All the boats around them were lit with lights one after another. The dim light attracts many moths and mosquitoes at the seaside. When the sea breeze blows on you at night, you will feel the cold. The city gate in the distance has been opened, and the market of the immortal kingdom has officially opened to these merchants at the wharf. The merchants drove the beasts off the ship and walked toward the city in groups to sell their goods in the night market. Of course, there are also simple wandering passengers such as Huafeng. The city at night is lively as Huafeng said. However, Lu Heng has stopped wandering and doesn't plan to get off the boat and enter the city. Only Huafeng and Lien Tsai finally entered the city to stroll. Plus a small Gu Eagle. According to Huafeng, this city is not the capital of the Immortal Kingdom, but only one of the harbor cities of the Immortal Kingdom. There are three similar seaport cities on this land. Although the Immortal Kingdom is only a country on the South Sea, its land area is not small. Except for the four open seaports, no one knows what the inland of this country looks like. At night, the man clad in white was sitting alone in the bow of the boat, between his hands there was a faint flash of white thunder from time to time. However, the power of the heavenly thunder is hidden by Lu Heng, so it is not scary. Most of the lights of the ships moored near the dock have gone out now. In addition to the remaining staff, most of the crew went ashore to play in the busy night market. Therefore the wharf, which was just busy for a short time, has fallen back into the former silence. Lu Heng, who was sitting at the bow of the boat, was probably the most prominent person at the wharf at this time. He doesn't know how long it has been in such a quiet silence. Chapter, 159 At a certain moment, Lu Heng noticed something, and his brow slightly wrinkled. The twinkling thunder light disappeared silently in his hands. Lu Heng on the bow fell into darkness. However, his eyes were looking straight ahead at the sea in the distance. Vaguely, he saw some shadows swimming in the sea. Some kind of ominous evil demon was floating along the sea breeze. Xiao Ai sensed the ominous atmosphere and quickly came to Lu Heng. Lord Wolf. Xiao Ai whispered, it seems that something is approaching in the sea. Lu Heng nodded and said, there is evil demon Qi, but the breath is not strong. It should be just some ordinary sea demons. We don't need to interfere. Lu Heng's words fell, and the dark sea surface lit up in a bloody light, instantly illuminating half the port. This is the warning set by the immortal kingdom in the sea. Once a sea demon approaches, it will release red light and expose its position. Seeing the red light, everyone knew what it meant. The sea demon. It's the sea demon. The sea demon is coming. The sea demon attacks the harbor. On the dock, there was a cry of panic. 
Many ordinary boatmen were screaming loudly and running towards the shore in a panic. For these ordinary people who grew up on the seashore, the sea demons are terrible evil. These monsters swim in the sea and often attack the mortals on the shore, or disperse and devour the fish in a certain area, causing the fishermen to get no gain. As usual, a sea demon is already a disaster. However, the dazzling blood light on the sea outside the dock is one after another, which means that there are more than one sea demon in the sea today. Everyone screamed and fled toward the shore. Some of the old ascetic cultivators who stayed on the ship rushed to the deck to protect their ships. On the farthest land, the patrolling sergeants had already rushed towards here. Those soldiers in armor rushed directly from the land into the sea, but didn't sink to the bottom of the sea. Instead, they stepped on the waves. One ship after another was crossed by them, and a total of seventeen figures were dispersed tacitly in the process of the charge. In groups of two, they rushed straight to their respective goals. When one group rushed near Luhang, one of the solider was the one who stopped Lu Heng in the daytime. The eyes of both sides crossed. The soldier saw Lu Heng in white at the bow. But now he didn't recognize that the man in white was the white wolf before him. He glanced at Lu Heng, ignored him, and rushed directly to the vast sea outside. Between the dark sea and sky, there was a shrill cry from the sea demons. The red blood burst in the night. In the city, the originally bustling market was briefly quiet for a while because of the red blood light that was lit on that day. All of them looked up at the rising direction of the blood light, stunned and puzzled. The sea demons? How dare the sea demons come to the immortal country to attack the harbor? Nothing serious will happen, will it? People were in a state of disbelief and discussion. Businessmen and customers who were haggling over prices had forgotten their quarrel. They all looked up at the night sky in the north. The illusionist performing illusions on the roadside forgot to perform them, so the fish in his hands became a dead vine at some time. Hua Fong, who was originally wandering around, also frowned at the northern night sky, full of puzzling thoughts. The immortal kingdom has always been a forbidden area for sea demons. No sea demon dared to enter the sea area of the immortal kingdom. Why are sea demons attacking the harbor now is it that a big demon took the lead? Around Hufong, Lien Tsai shook her head and said, it can't be a big demon. She said, the red lights seem to be numerous, but from the perspective of movement, they are just some ordinary sea monsters. Soldiers patrolling outside the city can solve this problem. Lien Tsai said that, and her expression was a little confused. Because ordinary sea monsters never dare to approach the immortal kingdom. Now there is no big demon to control these sea demons, how dare they come to attack the harbor? This is simply different from common sense. At the market, it was not only Huafeng and Lien Tsai who thought of this and were puzzled by it. Those who have a little common sense of the sea are curious now. However, those sea monsters were soon killed by patrols outside the city. The blood-red light in the northern night sky quickly disappeared and the sky returned to its original appearance. It seems that the sea is calm again. But just then, a strange bell rang outside the city. Buzz. The long and strange sound of the bell spread to every corner of the city. The people in the market were shocked to see that all the people of the immortal kingdom around them, after hearing the strange and long bell, were all prostrate on the ground and bowed down to the distance. Whether men or women, old or young. Another strange bell rang, and suddenly blew a cold wind in the direction where the people of the immortal kingdom were kowtowing. A huge shadow appeared over the city. The huge animal body is like a goat magnified hundreds of times, as huge as a mountain. For sharp ears stretched out, which let it have the ability to listen in all directions. The huge nine tails waved behind the huge beast and flew in the night sky. Each beast's tail is like a dark cloud, which is larger than ordinary people's imagination. However, such a terrible beast is dragging a mysterious chariot. The chariot was covered with white cloth, and it was indistinct. It was impossible to see the people inside. Such a terrible beast is just a pack animal in front of them. Seeing this scene, Lien Tsai's face changed slightly. Boy! She recognized the identity of the beast, looked in the direction of the disappearance of the mysterious chariot, and guessed who was in the chariot. The Immortal Lord. 
Grasping Huafeng's hand, Lien Sai looked unusually serious. Things have changed. Tonight is not an ordinary sea demon attacking the port. Even the mysterious immortal lord has been alerted. Something big has definitely happened tonight. Stay close to me. I will escort you out of the city. No we will only be safe after returning to the wolf god's side. While talking, Lien Sai dragged Huafeng through the crowd and walked out of the city. In the crowd not far away from them, a little boy about eight years old stared at the two who had left and whispered. The situation is a little bad even the immortal lord has been alarmed. Do we still have to do it? Chapter 160 On the crowded and noisy market, people were frightened by the huge beast flying in the sky that night. Even if not everyone is as knowledgeable as Lien Sai and they can't recognize that what Boyi carries is the chariot of the immortal lord. But they knew that it was definitely a big shot of the immortal kingdom. At the market, outsiders were all talking about it. The immortal kingdom has always been mysterious. No one in the country will leave the country. Its people's exclusionism is famous in the South Sea. The outside world knows little about the leader of the immortal kingdom and other high-level officials. Now there is a big man of the immortal kingdom who shows up in front of people something important has happened tonight. The crowd was uncertain, but no one dared to leave the city. Even if they were worried about their ships outside the city, they could only stand in the city anxiously and tentatively ask the local people to find out the situation first. In this world full of dangerous beasts and monsters run rampant, if you are accidentally involved in the fight of those top people, you may die at any time. The way to survive is to stay away from those top figures. In the noisy market, the only people walking toward the city gate were Huafeng and Lien Kai Yi. Lien Tsai pulled Huafeng with an anxious look and seemed really worried about the current situation. Huafeng, who was pulled by her, wanted to break free, but it was hard to speak for a while when he saw how nervous Lien Tsai was. But. Huafeng looked suspiciously at Lien Tsai's side face, and always felt that she was taking advantage of the situation. Not far behind them, a few small figures followed them. The children in big red belly pockets and red underpants were not conspicuous in the busy market. No one paid attention to these children. That little bitch seems to have found us. She ran so fast. No matter whether she is aware of us or not, we have to do something. They can't go back to the old monster. When shall we start? Boss, they are almost at the city gate. Wait a minute. Wait for the pervert of the immortal kingdom to go away. Damn, he even led the pervert out does he know we are here. It's supposed to be a coincidence. If that pervert knew it was us, he wouldn't do nothing. It should be that he happened to come here on something and saw the sea demons attacking the harbor. Alas what a damning misfortune. Wherever we go, the sea demons nearby will chase us. There is no privacy at all the curse of the Mayuo sword is really disgusting. The third brother. It was you who advocated taking the Mayuo sword. Bah. I said that at the beginning, but none of you objected. Now you want to blame me, don't you? No way. All right, don't make any noise. You can quarrel after we've caught that man. In the crowd, the always lazy boss stopped the noise of his brothers and became very serious. He followed Huafeng not far or near, and looked at the man and woman in front of him. The man of the Yun sect, who has the hidden sword, is an important sacrifice for them to solve the curse of the Mayuo sword. No accident is allowed. Otherwise, he didn't know how long it will be take for another cultivator with the hidden sword will appear. The lights of the market reflected on the eight little boys and girls scattered in the crowd, but they looked gloomy and strange. At one moment, Huafeng and Lien Tsai turned a corner and finally saw the city gate at the end of the street from afar. In the night sky, the huge beast named Boi had pulled the mysterious chariot out of the city and disappeared in the dark. But at this moment, Huafeng was surrounded by eight powerful evil demon Qi. The moment when the eight evil demon Qi erupted, they directly turned into a cage, trapping Huafeng and Lien Tsai in the middle. Who? At the moment when the evil demon Qi erupted, the face of Lien Tsai changed, and a bright moon rose from behind her head. The cold moonlight fell on her and Huafeng, and turned into a pillar of light, blocking the eight black demon Qi that came to them. 
Seeing this, the little boys were surprised. Oh! Luna Pith Mirror. The boss looked at Lien Tsai in the moonlight and said, Are you the descendant of the little demon girl Gu Yu? On the long street, because of this sudden outbreak of evil demon Qi, passers-by around have already panicked and retreated. Under the bright moonlight of the Luna Pith Mirror, Lien Tsai looked at the eight white and fat boys around her and immediately remembered the group of monsters in legend. Urba God Man Lien Tsai said in disbelief, How dare you enter the immortal kingdom? According to the legend heard by Lien Tsai, the monster named Urba God Man once offended the Lord of the Immortal Kingdom. That time, the Lord of the Immortal Kingdom was so angry that he chased these monsters for three days and three nights, which shocked the whole South Sea. At the moment of thinking about this legend, Lien Tsai also understood how the sea demons outside the harbor came. They were all attracted by these eight monsters. Lien Tsai was nervous and subconsciously blocked to a phone, these eight monsters were not ordinary evil people. And they appeared in the immortal kingdom did they come to kill her. Because of the hatred of her master. Lien Tsai was in a panic. The little boss said with a scornful poo, Immortal kingdom? Why can't we come to the immortal kingdom? Luo Yujun is outside the city, are we afraid of him? We will not be here if we were afraid of him. The third boy said, don't talk nonsense with her. Brother, let's hurry up and get him this woman is the descendant of Gu Yu the demon girl, and we can catch her back to cook too. That's right. Catch them back together. On the long street, the little boys shouted in unison. The evil demon Chi was surging, and you couldn't see any cute from them. The boss nodded with a sneer and said, just what I want. Do it. As his voice fell, the evil demon Chi swept wildly. The eight dark demon Qi turned into eight ferocious and ugly black snakes and went directly to Huafeng and Lien Tsai in the center. The Luna Pith mirror hanging above the two people was trembling constantly, and could hardly support the impact and entanglement of the eight black snakes. The boss yawned and said with disdain, Humph, too weak. They are far weaker than Gu Yu the demon girl. At the same time when his voice fell, soldiers of the immortal kingdom rushed to both ends of the long street with sharp weapons. The cold demon Chi swept across the street, and the dozens of soldiers shouted in unison. Private fighting is prohibited in the city. Both sides should stop immediately. In the face of these eight strange little boys, the soldiers who came here today are all cultivators. Their skin color under the armor is extremely pale, and their blood-red eyes are as strange as demons. Every soldier has a sinister death chi, which can't be ignored. What was more frightening was the black armor on their bodies. The dark black armor has existed for many years. Its surface is full of scratches from swords. Even the decorative style is far different from today. For Huafeng and Lien Tsai, they felt even more familiar because the black armor seems to be from the same era as the armor of the black knight they met on the sea. Lien Tsai and Huafeng looked at each other, and they both guessed. By this time, the 83 soldiers had rushed to the nearest place. 83 soldiers charged at the same time. They seemed to be connected with each other, which magnified the already powerful momentum at least several times, and it was even more frightening. However, in the face of the horrible soldiers, the eight little boys showed disdain. Wearing black armors. Do you deserve them? The boss immediately slapped, and when his tender pink hands were fanned in the air, a violent hurricane was set off, directly blowing away all the soldiers. Those powerful soldiers can't even defend themselves. Such an exaggerated scene made Lien Tsai's heart beat faster but God man is really terrible. The soldiers of the Immortal Kingdom are famous in the South Sea. They are the main reason why other countries don't dare to attack the Immortal Kingdom. But now, 83 soldiers rushed here, and they were directly slapped and blown away. She finally realized the strength gap between her and Urba God Man. On the long street, the boss pooed with disdain and said, Do you think that wearing black armor can make you stronger? Luo Yujun, you're really a joke. Brothers, let's do it. The boss shouted, and eight little boys made efforts at the same time. The eight fierce black evil snakes suddenly merged into one, showing more ferocity. The moment when the pitch black snake came roaring, it directly broke the beam of light from Luna Pith Mirror. 
the moonlight broke into countless silver lights, and the huge black snake roared and bit Huofeng and Lian Tsai. In the turbulent black air, Huofeng and Lian Tsai were swallowed by the surging black snake before they even had time to cry. Later, the eight boys didn't dare to delay but flew up and fled toward the distance. In the night sky outside the city, the huge monster boy screamed angrily in the night sky and was stopped in the middle of the sky by eight little girls. When the evil demon Chi burst out inside the city, the huge beast wanted to turn around. However, when Boi Yi turned around, eight figures suddenly appeared in the night sky, all of them were cute little girls. As pure and holy spirit Chi rose to the sky, the eight little girls formed a magic array and directly trapped the mysterious chariot pulled by the huge monster. The cold night wind was blowing the plain white curtain hanging on the chariot. A figure could be seen lying lazily in the chariot. Seeing the eight girls blocking the way, the figures in the chariot made a surprised sound. Oh! Burba God man! How dare you come to the immortal kingdom! The sound from the chariot was extremely strange. It was two people talking at the same time. One was a hoarse old man's voice, and the other was a beautiful woman's voice. One is soft and the other is evil. Two voices ring at the same time and speak the same words, which makes people unable to judge which is the echo. But the eight girls knew Luo Yujun very well, so they just laughed. We haven't seen each other for a thousand years, Luo Yujun. You are becoming more and more androgynous. That's right. It's getting more and more disgusting. He he. Amidst the playful laughter of the girls, the figure in the chariot was silent for a while, and then spoke slowly. I haven't seen you for a thousand years. You monsters are still so annoying since you like to die so much, let's skip the polite part. I said that if you dare to come to the immortal kingdom, you will be ready to die. Now, it seems that you intend to die. In the chariot, Luo Yujun said coldly. A bleak cold light flew out of the chariot in an instant, and immediately crossed the space limit and directly cut off the head of one of the girls. Scarlet blood rose to the sky. The speed of the cold light was so fast that no one could see it clearly until she was beheaded. The girls around the chariot were shocked and retreated dozens of feet in an instant. Star Blade. Have you mastered it? All the girls felt unbelievable. In their eyes, the bright cold light flashed back to the chariot again. This time, no one could see clearly. In the gush of blood, the girl whose head was cut off embraced her fallen head with both hands. The head separated from the neck made a painful howl. Luo Yujun, you are dead. I will kill you. While howling bitterly, the little girl who had lost her head turned around and ran away directly towards the distance. In the city, eight dark evil demon Chi also rose to the sky and fled to the distance. A total of sixteen figures turned into sixteen bright lights across the sky and didn't dare to stay at all. In their plan, eight boys were going to catch the hidden sword, and eight girls were going to stop the old monster that might attack them outside the city. However, now the old monster didn't attack them, but they ran into their sworn enemy Luo Yujun, and this pervert has mastered Star Blade. At this moment, who dares to stay longer? Sixteen lights escaped at the fastest speed regardless of the cost. They were afraid that the old monster who saw the play outside the city would also come. While in the chariot, Luo Yujun looked at the sixteen escaping lights and smiled coldly, and a strange voice with echo sounded again. Run. Can you run away? Luo Yujun sneered and patted the chariot lightly, and the huge boy roared and dragged the huge chariot towards the distance. That speed was not much slower than the sixteen escaping lights. Amidst the howling wind, the giant beast dragged the mysterious chariot and disappeared from everyone's sight. At the same time, on the dock outside the city, Lu Heng, who was standing on the deck, was looking up and sighing as he watched the huge chariot disappear after the sixteen lights. So Urba God Man is eight little girls. Tut tut this time, I really learned a lot. Although the fight in the night sky was only a short time, it was extremely wonderful, which was even more wonderful than watching a movie. After all, movies cannot provide such an immersive experience. However, just after Lu Heng sighed, a small goo eagle flew from the city in panic and appeared in Lu Heng's view. Wow! Wow! 
the little Gu Eagle secretly sent out by Lien Tsai witnessed all the development of the matter. Now it was extremely anxious and flew to Lu Hain with its wings flapping. At the moment of meeting Lu Hain, the little Gu Yen shouted loudly, wronged, afraid and anxious, and told Lu Hain what had happened in the city. After hearing this, Lu Hang's face was slightly stunned, and he looked in the direction of the sixteen escaping lights in disbelief. Only then did he realize the seriousness of the problem. Urba God Man did it come for Huifeng and Lien Tsai, 